Why, hello. How you guys doing? Today's going to be an interesting day, chat. I'm attempting to learn some code to make a game because of you. Awesome, dude. Best thing you can do, focus on choosing any engine you want to. And then, try to make an object move in that engine. That's it. Just make an object move. Not as spooky as you would think, you know? Today is an interesting day, because within this week, we will have a global emote. That's right. 
Twitch is granting upon us an actual global emote, chat. A real global emote. Yeah. You are all getting it, too. If you were part of the train, you are getting it. They have made it so that each time a community breaks the world record hype train, a new emote is added to the chain. And to get it, you have to break the previous chain. Since we were the first, you get it. And it's me in a banana suit, by the way. It is amazing. Check it out. I'm linking it in chat. There you go. It is so good. Yeah, it's actually a really, really cool thing for Twitch to do. You actually donated 97 bits instead of 100? Oh no. Well. It's not in yet. The emote is not in yet. It will be. It will be. I know. Immortalized on Twitch is kind of a weird thing, right? Yeah, it's supposed to be out this week. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see it yet. None of you guys see it yet either, right? By the way, if you are missing your Kappa Infinite, please put in a ticket for Twitch. They should be getting them to you. Um, I know some people are having problems with it still. Yeah. Support ticket. Yeah. Should everyone have it? If you were part of the hype train where you gave 100 bits or more, or gave a gifted sub, or subbed yourself, then you will have it. If you don't have it after that, then it means that you don't, like something is wrong. Lendrake with a three gifted subs. Wait a minute, are those tier threes? Holy shit, dude. Thank you very much. Wow. Yeah, even prime sub worked. Yeah. Do you take breaks? Only on Thursday. So tomorrow I am not streaming. Let's see. Google Calendar. Do I have anything on the calendar today? I have no calendar today, which means I'm going to go do stuff for the other house. Nice. Foxhole today? Not yet. We're going to play Bitcrap first. And we'll see how heavily addictive Bitcraft is. Yeah, Bitcraft. We've been waiting for this game to come out, dude.
Alrighty. I still do not have Bleed Purple HD or Hey Hey guys yet. Still waiting on those. Yeah, definitely put on a ticket for that. You're supposed to have Bleed Purple HD, Hey Hey guys. Yeah, what was the other one? Hog Chomp and Kappa Infinite. <laughs> Basically, just to let you guys know, you guys broke their system so hard, you did things that people didn't even know were possible. The fact that Twitch's payment processing system didn't go down is insane, frankly. They had to basically put in a system where the API slowed down all of its outgoing messages to not die. So it didn't die. It worked. It worked great. But <laughs> it looks like it's taking forever to chew through some of those calls. <laughs> it was a lot, dude. My, I'll give you an example of how insane this was. I have these things called activity feeds. The activity feed is a direct connection to everything that happens on the channel first party from twitch they just turned into white blocks of screen they just stopped working you just you just blew them up <laughs> i had to fully i had to change them in obs to google and then switch them back to get them back again like four times throughout the hype train at the end you destroyed the website yeah, we're going to do Curse Quest reviews later today. Yeah, we are. What song is this? Uh, this one is Binding Void. It is in the tower. In a secret area in the tower. Yeah, there's also a new one. We're getting a fifth emote. Which is mind-boggling, man. What's the one crab Dark Souls game with the shells? Did it include three shells? He doesn't know about the three shells, chat. <laughs> was there watching it the whole time? Yeah, dude, it was... Bonkers. Absolutely bonkers, to be honest with you. Yeah, you guys actually broke Twitch. No, not chat broke Twitch. God damn it. This is the most long standing toy. You've had it for three days. And it hasn't gotten old yet, which means it's permanent. It's gonna be permanent now. New people that come into the community are gonna be like, what the hell's wrong with these people? <laughs> uh... Pirate Software's community is the most horrifying community around. All they keep doing is talking about CBT. Why? I know it's not. They're wrong. That's a therapy. Yeah, sure. All right. You made us this way? I don't think so. I think I found you like this. No helpers, hell divers today? When did I say there was no hell divers today? Hmm. Hell divers. Who said I wouldn't be sending dudes later? Oh, actually, I need to switch up the uh, the YouTube stream. It's saying the wrong thing. It's saying that I'm playing Helldivers on YouTube. Are getting 12 hours of only Bitcraft? I don't know yet. So this is an alpha, and I don't know how much content the game contains. We're going to find out. I know that there may be a couple of bugs. And I have intentionally left myself blind because I want to give an actual good representation of how I feel about it.
Because I think that's important, you know? Lord, the bit goal? Yes. The bit goal is going to be like that for a little bit. Look, I exist. I'm real now, chat. I'm about to make it everybody's problem. It's finally time. It's time. Ugh. I slept so weird. I slept so weird. It's a weird day. Really hope this is good. Dude, so do I. Do you have keys? I do. I do have keys. And I'll be giving them out. I think that'll be cool. Yeah. And I don't know how I'm going to give them out yet. Because we don't have as many keys as there are you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hey, it's the crypto get There's no crypto in it. Jesus Christ, dude. These devs have been fighting that shit the whole time, man. There are so many people. There are so many people that tried to say that it was crypto, and it's not at all. It's so funny, dude. They had to they had to remove all of them from the leaderboards. So, like, if you didn't know about this, this game is coming out. It's a it's a um, survival crafting sandbox game, right? It's an MMO. It's a big survival crafting MMO. <clears throat> and we were like, oh man, this game looks really cool. So they had this thing where people could sign up, and when you sign up, you could like invite other people. And then it gives your account points for a leaderboard. And I was like, oh, that's cool. We could get some keys, give them to the community, and everything like this. So we we shoot up to like 13th place in like a day. And I was like, wow, that's crazy. And then we dropped to 50th. And I was like, what the hell? And then I started looking at these other accounts, and they're all like named gibberish. Like they're named like FGS, DHS, just like just random shit, right? And some of them are named like a bunch of crypto names. So it turns out... For some reason, all of these crypto bros thought that the game was actually dealing with Bitcoin in some way, or other cryptocurrencies, probably because it's named Bitcraft. So they tried to make these Telegram groups, and they scammed people saying, hey, if you sign up with this, you get free crypto when the game comes out. So they got thousands and thousands and thousands of accounts on Telegram to sign up for it. The devs were like, what the shit? They deleted all of them, and it turned out we got first place. <laughs> So if I go pull this up on their actual Twitter, everybody ahead of us was a scam account. And this is what it actually looked like. <laughs> we were in first place by a mile, man. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, oh. Well, okay. Yeah. It's very funny. So last night, last night the moderators were actually playing this, and they were like, you're going to love the shit out of this. What did you win? Let me go pull it up. I think we got a bunch of keys. So I got, I got a, like a bunch of keys, and I gave some of the keys to the moderators, and I have more keys to give away to you guys. I think we have five keys to give away, if I remember, remember correctly. Let me find out. Yeah, I think I have five to give away. And uh, I think that was basically it. I'll have to look into the rest of it. There was some other stuff. I just wanted you guys to see a cool game. So I wasn't really paying attention to that. There was no monetary thing for me, anything like that. So I'll, I'll look into the rest of it. Yeah. Give me a second. I gotta hide something. Uh, closing all this shit. I was working on all the, the com company accounts. Corporate accounts yesterday. 
The corporate. Corporate account. Yes. Because I'm an old, old corporate man now. Oh god, wrong button. You can could, you could call that whatever you want, dude. You can spell company any way you want to. No, seriously, that's what it is. So, I got, um... I got the business accounts made. And then I performed the magic trick that no human being should ever have to perform in their life. I went to 30 different sources of income across the internet. And I changed them all over from one set of accounts to the other set of accounts. And then most of these are going to take two to three days to resolve. And I won't find out if I did it right until payday comes around and I don't get my money. And I go, where money? And they go, oh, you did it wrong. Wait till next month. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's a little spooky. It's a little it's real shit. So I got three hours of sleep. It's a good time. It's a good time. It's great. Yeah. Also, those new accounts are just kind of sitting there right now. And, uh, I think they're set up correctly. They have little things next to them that look like a spinning sad disc. And it says, if you don't add money to this within 30 days, it gets deleted. And I go, oh, that's a good sign. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's great. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. And then I, then I had to remember that all of the business stuff that I've been doing automatically debits my account, which means today I get to go through all of the other transactions that are in there, and I have to go through and check to see where those are debiting from, and then set all those up, the recurring payments for everything. It's great. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's a spooky-ass time right now. The, the creation of the machine... That's the scariest thing of all. It also appears that the house payment didn't go through on the first day of the month, and I don't know why. So I have to call them today and be like, why didn't you take my money? So that's cool. That's also a scary one. Everything is... its The, the scariest thing in life is creating the machine, whatever machine it is that you're building. Once it's running, who gives a shit? It's everything is good. You know what's going to happen every month. You know the timing and all this stuff. The problem is setting it up. You're, it's like when you you get like a like a lawnmower and it's been in the garage for a long time and you go and pull the string on it and it just goes and you're like, is it going to start? And there's that moment where you're like, is it is it running? Is it going to run? Shit. And then oh, right now there's little pieces of it that aren't running and I just got it freaks me out. It's not unsolvable, but it is horrific, is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Machine. Building the machine is tough. Is it going to explode? Maybe. Can you do that noise again? No. One time only. Yeah. We need the long lemon. Dude, you're a long lemon. Did you know that? <sighs> you ever done a house tour? On the new place? No, I haven't even moved in yet. What is that? Is that for Meatball? To them? Are they going to shred that? Let's see. I'm going to show them. It's a ferret bed. It's a cat opening up a can, and the whole thing is a big opening can. That is a bed. It's very cute. The ferrets will inevitably destroy this. They love to destroy. The ferrets are small destruction elementals. They love to destroy it. Their to all of their toys last a certain amount of time. And that certain amount of time is 
directly correlated to how much rope is used in the construction of that thing. Is it made entirely out of rope? It lasts a little while. Is it anything else? Dead. Gone. Annihilated. Reduced to fluff. <sighs> Alright. You just want to find out if this game works. Uh -huh. Uh old man maybe i will maybe i will i need to update everything though because this is a totally new thing so i'm gonna go over here and do this i'm gonna make its own button it's getting a coveted button slot on the stream deck yeah rare a rare thing a rare thing the button slot see. What are we calling this one? I need like a hexagon. That's what I need. I need an image of a hexagon. I love hexagon. I love hexagon. Or database image. Database image. Yeah. Hi, Bezos. We're going to wait. Yeah, I'm really excited for this, though. Like, I have been for kind of a while. Because... Seeing new games try things like this is not generally normal. You normally don't see that. Hey, cool. It does have a category set up. That's perfect. Alright, there we go. I've got all the buttons set up. We're going to see if this actually works. I'm going to take it over to YouTube's side real fast. I'm going to put it over on YouTube's title. There we go. And don't worry, we will do the TTS later on today. We'll get into it. Do the, maybe some voting on people's curse quests and stuff. It's a whole gaming day. The whole day is game. And I want to see if this works over on Twitch side. Let's see here. <laughs> well, it didn't change the category. Why no category change? Why no category change? The API is mad. I'm going to try it again. I'm going to try this. I'm going to set this up again. Hey, Shay. Beans is sneezing a ton. No, he's going to vomit. Something's wrong. Check on him. Beans is suddenly gagging. Yeah. Yeah, he was like laying on his side sleeping and then woke up doing that. Damn it, Beans. Stop having problems. Don't have problems, Beans. Little Beans, no. Yeah, he wants to play? Yeah, but that was a really bad... That was not good. His tail's poofy? That's not good. What the hell? <sighs> Beans is always making me worried. Can I see him? Is he all right? Why'd you get so poofy? Oh, man. Hi. You know you get to see everybody today. Oh. <laughs> I wouldn't wait. There's no reason for it. 
He's only got two days left and he's fully healed in the exterior. I don't know why he was gagging either, but... He woke up doing it. Maybe he, he aspirated while sleeping? Did he s choke on his own spit? Because he was laying on his side. And then suddenly started doing it. I don't think there's a reason to not ha have him play with the others. This is Bean's day. This is... Beans finally gets to be Beans today. And he misses everybody so much. And when you take him in there, I want to know, because I want to be there. We are going to... Later today... Is it going to be, like, within the hour, or... When, you, when are you taking him out to show up to everybody else? Oh, I didn't know. Okay. I guess later today, then. One minute. I'm back. All right. No, I need to, I need to talk to Shay. Uh, next time Shay does playtime, we're int reintroducing Beans. Who's now trying to destroy the cage, which is great. Yeah. Because I was like, dude, what's going on? Because I just woke up and I had no idea what Shay's plan was. Yeah, yeah Beans crimes. He's not doing crimes. We're just... We didn't want to reintroduce him too early because he had surgery. But he's fully healed on the outside of his body, which means he's definitely fully healed on the inside of his body. He looks okay. Everything looks fine. We want him to get back with everybody else. That's what we want. So. And he is so upset being alone. He's so upset. So anyway, we've got this set up now. Oh, oh, wait, wait. I'm changing this to games. I'm going to switch all this over. The music is really lovely. You'll hear it in a second. Really nice music, yeah. Very journey sounding, yeah. Is there any way to get access? We have a couple of keys to give out, so that's something. Let me do this. You can't buy alpha access? Not as far as I know. I don't think there's any way to get extra access right now. Here are the sign-ins for stuff. This is the sign-ups for things. Oh god. If it'll load. Come on, Twitch. There. Yeah, so I've got the devs over on Discord. Uh, on a Discord chat, and they say you cannot buy in yet. So there's no way to buy into the keys. Not currently. We got it because we signed up early. That was the that was the big thing for this. Returning user. Oh wait, I have to go sign in? Buh, 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 buh. There we go. It'll send me an email. Interesting login flow. Hidden. Oh, wait, cool. It actually starts it out correctly. Good. 
I have not actually logged into the game yet. I've intentionally not done that. I wanted to do this completely blind. Bold. Bold. Please note this is an alpha version of the game. Many features are under major development and some are still missing. To read the current list of known issues, you can press F1 at any time. Thank you for your understanding. Your UI is using the light mode theme by default, and you can also try out dark mode under the graphics tab of the settings menu if you prefer. By default, you will start on low graphics, but we encourage you to raise it to a higher setting if your system permits. Happy exploring. Oh, oh, my eyes. They've returned. Good. Good. Yeah, good on boarding. I like that. Yes. Cranked. Interesting. I dig that. Audio's nice. So I'm going to give little pieces of feedback, I think, throughout all of this, because the devs are watching. These are things that I'm going to write down as well. So I'm going to keep a running sheet over on the side. First thing that I would want to see on this... Toggle to keep audio in the background. Running in the background when the game is in the background. Many times we'll have games that don't do this automatically. This one does. I like having the option, though. And this game doesn't have the option. It just always plays. Whether it's the focus or not. So that'd be something I would add. This is good. WASD. Oh, whoa, wait a minute. You don't move with WASD. Oh, weird. It's... You move the camera with WASD, and you click around. Diablo style. Okay. It is. It's a point and click. I didn't expect that at all. And you can actually hold the button down. That's nice. Where are you going this way? Sprint. We can actually hold down sprint or toggle the sprint. And we do have a stamina bar down at the bottom. That's an interesting way to move. It looks like stamina slowly is removed, but it doesn't come back. Oh, you caught me. You're faster than I expected. You need some stamina running after me, which won't come back on its own. The fastest way to restore stamina and health is to eat food, but you can only eat so much until you're full. In a pinch, if you don't have food or find yourself full, you can rest on the ground with R. Although resting in a bed or shelter is much cozier, so stamina will return faster this way. Seeing as how you just awakened in an open field, though, I suspect food and shelter may not be options yet. So how about we start with what you can do? You just fall asleep on the ground! So regenerating stamina is quite low. Perfect, you'll discover you can press R again to stop resting and stand back up. Alright. Yeah, it looks like it's very, very slow. Where are my manners? Allow me to introduce myself. The makers call me Wisp. You probably don't remember much of the times before, do you? Do you recall your name by any chance, or have something I could refer to you by? And if you don't remember, you can just make something up. Or... Actually, wait, no, we're doing pirate software. No one can impersonate me now. Yes. Yes. There we go. Nice to meet you. I've been out for a while. So let's get you recalibrated. I wonder if they allow people to have the same name. Long Lemon will not be my name. Not for Tato Software. No. No. Usually it take, takes like me like half an hour to make a name. Well, I have the same name everywhere. Potassium will not be it. No. You know, Pirate Software sounds like a name of someone with great style. You should consider changing up your look to match. I mean, now that you don't look great already. All the time, why don't you try to open your vault? Oh, that's pretty nice. So they even have a search bar in this. We can change up all the hair and everything. 
Green eyes, I like that. That's cool. This is really nice. You can just change this. You just change this at any time. I dig this. I want pajama pants. Give me some sandals. I am definitely missing those pants. <laughs> there we go. I was like, what happened to my pants? You're just a doll underneath, dude. You're actually a robot doll. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. Nothing. You're actually a doll. Yeah, like a robot. I like that. That's cool, actually. And I get sandals on. Is there a glove option? What is this? Off-white body. I need to be the most pale possible body. The most pale. Good. What's the longest hair option? There we go. Now we're getting there. I have to shave half my hair now, Chet. It's the only way. It's the only way. Dude, I'm actually really impressed. For an alpha. Because this, this is their first entrance to showing the game off. They have a ton of options for this. Like a ton of options for this. What is that hair? Ginger hair. Their body shapes? Torso. Yes. Ew. He's so excited, dude. He doesn't want to be inside anymore. Shay was cleaning out Beans' ear and it was gross. Purple eyes, green eyes. I think it's really interesting how many different options you get just kind of out of the box. That's not really what I expect. A lot of the times games like this, you won't get any options really whatsoever in the beginning. And this one actually has a ton of options for customization. I kind of like that hair more. I think I'm going to go with that one. I kind of want that one, but longer. But I'm just going to leave it at that for now. What is travel? Wait, we can get boats? And carts? Hmm. Wonderful. You look fantastic. Thanks. Feels good, man. Your memory, on the other hand, seems to have some degradation. Don't worry. You'll pick up how to do things again by rediscovering them in the world. I'll lead you to some resources you haven't discovered yet so you can expand your knowledge. To start, I'll teach you how to gather again. Let's start by creating... by clicking right-click to gather from this bush. So we actually have a tool power and a hit chance. So super low-end stuff. In addition to gathering resources, acquiring items can unlock new knowledge as well. Hit C for your compendium. I didn't let me hit C. Try holding right-click to open your context menu to gather flint from these resources. Oh god, it's going to be RuneScape, dude. We're RuneScaping now. You know that's how that's going to go. You know that's exactly what's going to happen now. I can feel the RuneScape coming through. Are Crypto Bros still molding over this game? Not containing F NFTs? Yeah. They're like, why isn't this crypto? I told everyone it was. It's not. <laughs> Never was. So you gotta build a crude workbench in there now. Okay. Stick shelter. We need a stick shelter. Wicker basket. Campfire. Crude workbench. We need sticks. And a claim totem. Okay. What is this? Be able to begin building. We should build a workbench. I'm going to try and get all of this stuff. Gathering it from the flint pile. I want to get as much junk as possible first. And maybe some food. 
Now, interestingly enough, it looks like I'm getting mining XP as well. So gaining experience. I need a machete to gather from that. So mining level is going up on this, and I can just gather that from a flint pile. I don't have to do anything with that. But I actually need a machete to gather the berries on that. Kill one billion rabbits. I have this I have the sticks. But it's like build now. Do it. So is this my claimed area? I think that's the big question that I have now. I don't know if I've somehow wandered into somebody else's claim. Or if this is like an NPC area that I landed next to. I just happened to land in one. Because it's like a blue color, which I don't think is owned by me. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to head out this way. It's a dungeon zone, so I spawned in a dungeon zone. Lucky. I kind of like this hill over here, and it looks like there's a lot of resources here as well. Thank you for those gifted sums, by the way. That's really nice of you, man. Yeah, this is, this is going to be Thor domain expansion in a moment here. What is that? What is that? Hyrulite ore. Okay. We're going to build... I think this is a good spot. we got a hill. There's a ton of different resources in the area. <clears throat> We've got trees over there. Yeah, I think this is this is it right here. I want to make a claim totem. Oh, it's tiny at first. Look at that. Look how small it is. Okay, we got to get more sticks. You're free from your nine-hour stream? Congratulations. Thank you for the raid, by the way. It's very nice of you. You're awesome, dude. Yeah. So no, I'm I'm gonna find out. We have to get all the sticks first. It's really interesting that you have a fully persistent shared world MMO with actual land claiming. Not like a Minecraft server where everybody owns their own server. One world. That's not like a super normal thing. I like that a lot, actually. This is not on a claim and will decay, decay over time. A claim totem to protect your land from other players. How do I claim? I need a tool. Okay, so we're going to have to build now. Let's build that. We're building the workbench, so then I'll build a hammer, and then I'll build- yeah, I'll build a mallet, and then I'll build the claim totem so we can actually claim the location. Do you have a flag? Yeah, exactly. That's what it is. You no longer want a structure. You can always deconstruct it with the right-click context menu. That's cool. Find yourself changing your mind in a location. You can also cancel the action. With escape. Is, I wonder if there's a way to increase the size of the text. But isn't much. The simple workbench will help you craft the basics. I'm going to try crafting a flint tool bundle from your workbench. Yeah, let's do that. Craft it. We're doing it. I'm going to see if there's an option for text size. We have a mallet. How do I equip the mallet? Do you have a character sheet? Cargo. Collection knowledge. Items. Does not appear that I do. There we go. Equip tool. Can I equip all the tools? I can. Alright, there we go. We're equipping all the tools. Now I can actually build this. I was told by the devs, there is no option for text size yet. So that's going on the list. Add an option to scale text size for accessibility. Now, this entire list, every time we find something that feels weird, I'm going to be sending this to the devs afterwards, and they're also listening in right now. So, we'll always be giving feedback on this stuff. Before you explore too much, this is part of being an alpha tester. When you're alpha testing a game, beta testing a game, any of that stuff, give as much feedback to the devs as possible. Even if you think it's tiny, even if you think other people are actually going to say this stuff write it down and don't wait till the end to kind of, kind of try and remember what it is that you you had a problem with write it down as you do it because this is a closed alpha this is small time right 
Before you explore too much, you find a place to sleep. Sleeping allows you to set your home location to return to easily. Oh, so would I die, right? Is there death? Oh. Have to build a shelter. Let's do this. Wait, is that a shelter? No, this is a shelter. How do I rotate this? Q and E. Alright. Alright. We're going to put our stick shelter there. Done. This is not on a claim and will decay over time. Oh, because part of it is outside. Well, shit. Okay, we can rest in the shelter. I need to look at this and see if we can increase the clam size. Activate this clam. It is now up for two hours. Yes, this is my spawn point. Okay, so we've set our spawn point now, and it looks like I'm regenerating stamina much faster than I was. Yeah, way faster than I was. Yeah, the decay timer feels very forgiving. Look at this. Look at that. 25 out of 5,000 supplies. What can I throw into this? Can I just feed it? I wish to feed it. We can start doing research. Rentals. Recruitment. Oh. It's like a full guild system. Oh god, they're finding me. The other goblins are fighting me. Is that Felix? Is that one of the mods? Felix, is that you? Or is it a different Felix? I have to pay rent? Yeah, you do. That's right. Bitcraft, world of peasantry. It's time. We're gonna have barons. Castles. War. No. <laughs> Oh, uh, I have to add supplies to this. I actually don't know how to add it. What are we naming this? Asgard. Done. Oh, it looks like the G cuts off there. I'm writing that in. So, tall letters, or letters with tails, have their tails cut off in the town naming, or claim, claim naming. Context menu. For instance, G has the bottom half cut off. There we go. Rename. Asgard works. Yeah. It's all text boxes. Might be. I, I'm I'm putting it under specifically this text box because each one of these is going to have its own problem, right? It there'll be there'll be different context menus. So making sure that you're specific about it can be very helpful. So we're gonna we're gonna bug it all, dude. Writing a billion of these. What's the goal of this game? It's a survival crafting. Yeah, making sure that we're specific is very important. Cause they may fix each one of those individually and it won't fix the others. Okay, so we can unlock up to 15 members with this. Up to 300 tiles. We need more supplies. How do I add supplies to this? Interact. Is that what we want? No. How does one add supplies? Do we feed it? What? Well, that just dropped it on the ground. Claim it. Do we feed it in here? Where? Oh. We have to drag and drop supplies cargo here to charge your claim. So we can't just put random items in it. We have to make a supply cargo. Yeah, no. No, we need to make a supply cargo. So let's go look at our crafting table and see if that's something we can build. No. That's another one. In the... Crafting... Search... Context menu. We're just going to... That's going to be a lot of bugs for that. We're going to do that. Create a tailoring bench and create a supply pack from it? That makes sense. So we've got all of our tools hooked up already. A farming tool. A fishing tool. Hmm. I'm going to start grabbing some stuff, dude.
So I'm going to get a whole bunch more supplies. I'm going to start setting some stuff up. I'm going to start building new new tools. Yeah. Yeah, they got fishing. That means it's actually an MMO, Chet. It's, it's a full MMO now. We have fishing involved. It's true. Yeah, I need to be able to find new materials first, but now that I have the tools, I can, so I can get these plants over here. I don't think I want any more flint right now, but I definitely want this. Lavender. So lavender is new. And it's giving me a whole bunch of new crafting recipes. And it looks like I'm using a machete. I need a level 2 machete for this one. So that's a new material. So grabbing new materials is going to give me those new recipes. H is the character menu. Power sources. Badly... Uh-oh. Badly damaged head power source. Interesting. So our... Our equipment is power sources. We have sprinting multiplier. Stamina drain. We have professions. Oh! I like that. That's a lot of professions. That's a lot of professions, man. I'm a big fan of that. I want to collect all the things. We got ads in a moment. We're going to wait for Bezos when the ads hit. When the ads hit. So, just give it a second. Is this unbeta? This is a closed alpha for this. Hexagon, bestagon, dude. I'm going to put that there. Okay, we need boards. So we can't build that yet. Oh, Bezos, we're waiting. I wonder if I could build some, like, move some of the buildings. We're going to find out. Let's hit the queue while we're waiting. Gizmogi with 500 bits said yesterday I managed to get the cursed quest, and I just want to say I'm super hyped to make something amazing. Sorry That's all I wanted to say. P.S. Thor and chat, you're all amazing, so thank you you're for amazing. being here. All hail thank cursed you. Long Yellow Thor. Long Yellow Thor. <laughs> XX Lone X Wolf XXLW has obtained the cursed quest. Oh ho! Are you there? With all of your XXX. Oh, is, is my Discord crashing? Discord? Oh shit, Discord's crashing. Unironically, Discord just crashed. Wow. I said to force quit it. That's new and interesting. All right. I've never had Discord do that, ever. All right, for the curse quest, let's see here. Answer TTS. Lone Wolf, are you there? I mean, XX Illidan XX. I mean, XX Lone Wolf XX, are you there? You're here. Would you like art, cooking, or interpretive dance? You have to choose. You have to choose. Only Lone Wolf may choose. Yeah, you gotta tag me in the response so I can see it. Streamer's vision is based on movement. It's true. Paintbrush calls out to my goblin mind. I shall art. Okay. 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 Here's what I need you to do. Since we are playing Bitcraft today, I need you to do this. Let me grab this real fast. 
We've got a I've got a beautiful image here for you. All right. I need you to draw a Bitcraft robot character, all right? However, you have to make a simple modification. Now, while their features are very very kind of simple, right? We go into this, we'll look at this. You can see my features are rather simple. I need you to make something a little bit more complex. You ready for this? Yeah, simple character. You're going to need to draw a Bitcraft robot, but with my face. That one, that one, specifically, actually. And you have to draw this. You can't use Photoshop, no. You have to draw this. In that style. Maybe the glowing eyes, too. You know, we, we, we really need to get the glowing eyes in there. I think. What do you... Might even look kind of like... Kind of like that, you know? That looks pretty good, right? I mean, we're, you're well on your way now. What do you think? It's so hard? It is. What do you think, Lone Wolf? I think it'll be pretty good. You have to draw it. You have to draw it. Can't be photoshopped. Why this? This is what a curse quest is all about. It's what it's all about. This sounds like the biddiest quest. But for your birthday, I accept. How dare you? How dare you? It's not my birthday. God damn it. The contract is sealed. How to receive a curse quest? One person a day gets it, actually. Only one person a day. I wonder if I can move this. Move building. Oh, that's nice. That's a, that's a nice thing. A lot of the times games won't have the ability to move stuff like this. So this is pretty cool. Having this right out the box. I'm I'm actually really happy with that, frankly. Oh, the nice the nice little like animation for that is cool too. I dig that. Alright, let's see. Got our rough farming station. Got our rough tailoring station. I think we built what would what do we build over here first? What is this? It was a farming station. So let's build our tailoring station. I'd like to build that probably right next to it. And it looks like we can do that immediately on that piece, but I don't know what this is. A wooden log. Now, we don't have a log yet, so let's go down a tree. And I think I have enough for this. Yeah, because we have an axe. Soggy bird. I want to eat that. Rotten log. What is that putting in my inventory? Is that giving me the logs I need? Or sticks? We'll find out. There we go. We're getting our logs. We need three of these. Then they take up an entire inventory slot each. Digging that. Wow, this is leveling up quickly. Alright. Interesting that they're doing it as pips. I wonder if each pip gives you something. I wonder if there's a, a, meth, a meaning to that. The old KFC is soggy bird. True. True. That is true. Alright, so now... Now we have to go over here and use this. And I actually have to click the item. Oh, no, we can just hit it. Two, three, four. There we go. Let's build the whole thing. Tailoring station. This game looks beautiful. I'd love to play it. I'm going to be putting out those five keys throughout the stream. And we'll go from there. We've got rough twine on this one. So this over here requires rough rope. And rough untreated planks. So that's fine. What is this? Flint tool bundle. We already did that. Primitive mallet. A bundle that contains all the tools you need to get started. I wish that would explain which tools, because now I don't know which tools I need to create individually. If that makes sense? That's the one concern that I have now. Where it's like, I don't know which tools I need to build, because this doesn't tell me which one it is. Is there a way to find that on my character? Make everything? Maybe. Yeah, that's going down in there. We're going to write that one down.
flint tool bundle said which tools it contained so that I don't accidentally make duplicates. There we go. Is Cap your guild? No, nobody's in the guild yet. Nobody's in my guild yet. All right, so we need to make this item first because we've never made one of these before. And this is actually giving me tailoring experience. It's kind of nice. We can claim that there. Now I can make rope. In order to make rope, I need to get three more of these. Spool of thread is two of those. Rope is four of these. And we're turning five plant fiber into one of this. And it looks like we can claim it like this. I don't know if I have to stay near it. We're going to make that rope. Want to ask you about my favorite game? Have you ever played Command & Conquer series, especially Red Alert? Yeah, dude. I grew up on Command & Conquer. Love that. Oh, and I'm going to tell you right now, uh, not is the best. Yeah. It's just kind of how it is. It's kind of how it is. I don't make the rules. Okay, we've got our one rope. That's done. What else can we make in this? A spool of thread. So making new materials is kind of the right way to go. This is how we make our supplies as well. So we want to make as much twine as possible. The really interesting part is I don't know if I can... Can I craft and then walk away? Looks like no. And I'm also using stamina by crafting. Yeah, it's... Brother of Nod, dude. What do you want? No, it's not lame. It's a crafting system. You have to manage your time effectively. You have to make sure that you are using your time correctly. Survival games are built or, or die on that kind of behavior. So when you have a bunch of people in your town, in your area, you need to make sure that each person is kind of different objectives to make sure that you have all the materials you need. Makes the most sense. I'm getting a new material now. We have strawberries. Basic berries. I'm going to go back to sleep for a minute. What does this do? So we can actually get sh satiation out of this. Eating it. And shift E just eats the first item in my inventory. Very nice. So let's go get more plant material. Need to get all the plant material we can. So here's an interesting thing for the devs. Are you guys doing a server wipe and character wipes between your closed alpha, maybe open alpha, like each stage of this? Because to be honest with you, so far this is really cool. And I think that the crafting systems have so much kind of depth to them that I can immediately see myself being attached to kind of the progression that I've had. But it would make sense to delete everything, like 100%. I just gained a level and I don't know what happened. I clicked an arrow and it went away. We are very likely to wipe, they said, which is good. There's no PvP. I don't know if they ever plan on adding that, but no PvP currently. Okay, that's back and equipped. Need more plants. Need more plants. I like how slowly everyone is arriving, taking all my beautiful plants. Thank you for the $10 to the moderators. It's very nice of you. Get him. There's no music right now. It's just kind of like a relaxing environment. There's like a light ambient music. Do the plants respawn? They do. They do. Nice relaxing kind of a thing. Oh look! A dead bird! Delicious. Wait, I have cargo now. You're carrying your first cargo item on your back. Which you may notice slowing you down. <laughs> I have a dead bird!
an animal body that could be processed for meat and hides. Oh dear. We need to make a drying frame. Oh god, there's so many there's so many stations. Holy shit. Holy shit, dude. Okay, we need a we need a carpentry station. I'm gonna build that. And that needs some wood logs. And a bunch of these. I need to go get more wood logs. Oh god. Oh god. There's instantly like a billion options. Invite other people? Not yet. I need to, I want to build the carpenter station, then I want to make the thing so that I could do something with the bird. It's not getting anything. I just chopped up that log and got nothing for it. I think I got XP. I think it was it. Probably put the bird back down. No, it's my bird now. No one else can have it. We're eating this bird. We're eating this. And there's nothing anyone can stop me. Like, no one can stop me from eating this bird. I don't even care if it slows me down. Woods with no logs? Chevres with no hooves? Oh god, it's all happening again. Alright, now we can get our carpenter station. I think that'll allow me to build the boards that I need for the other station. And I have one log. I wonder how many boards that'll turn into. An empty bucket. Roughed Rough wrath material pack. Large cart material pack. How do I make this? Rough untreated plank. Made it a carpentry station. But this is our carpentry station. Hmm. 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 We'll have to find out how. Leatherworking station, smithing station, forestry station. What is it? What is a forestry state? There's so many stations, dude. Okay, now I need to go and make more of this. There's so much crafting. There's so much crafting. Hey, tailoring level two. I love that this is a huge amount of crafting. I actually like kind of deep and complex crafting systems like this, where you just have a lot of them. Like a lot of stuff to go. Because many times they'll be like, oh, here's your one crafting station. And like, that gets kind of boring, right? It's nice to have a whole bunch of them. I know the magic circle needs to be bigger. Soon. We will increase its power. We will increase its size. Yeah, I would say that it's a bit of crafting. I would say that. Thank you for those bits. It's very nice of you. And don't worry, I'll be doing the TTS soon. There's so much game in this game, dude. Okay, there we go. Now we've got our forestry station. I think this will allow me to plant more trees, which means I can get them closer to my little base here. I'm still not sure how to make planks yet. But we will figure it out. Now I'm going to go over to this. First things first, though. I need to make... This. Our supplies. I'm going to make 100 supplies. So I need to make more of these. There we go. Thank you for the $10 to the moderators. Very nice of you. Yeah, it's, a close, it's in closed alpha with this much. What are the packs in the carpenter station? So what I'm trying to build right now is this right here. The supply pack. Because we need 100 supplies to keep our our base going, basically. So I'm just going to make all this rough twine. And then turn that into supply pack. And then turn that into base supplies so that my, my base doesn't degrade out. Yeah. 
Vampire survivors mechanics? This is definitely not vampire survivors mechanics, dude. Mechanic and vampire survivors. Move. Mechanic finished. <laughs> you claim that out. I think I make that a second time, actually. So I've claimed that twice. Let's see if we can interact with this. Where did those supplies go? Oh, I guess they're on the ground. Can't place cargo here. Pick up cargo. Hey, there we go. So now I've got eight hours of supplies. Each one of these is a full eight hours. Oh. Somebody else gave me some cargo, too. That's very nice of you. Thank you. Yeah. Actually, it looks like it was five hours. That's good. Did you have to use that for research, too? I don't know. That I can't just put in there. So it's good to know. So now, let's go look at our forestry station that we built. And it looks like this can be used for supplies as well. We can actually just turn logs directly into supplies. This is a neat, neat system. That's good. Rough wood log package. So we can package up all the wood logs, and then we can have 20 wood logs in one inventory spot, but it'll go on our back. So this is all about transporting materials and trying to keep the package sizes down. I like that. Terraforming dig site. Stone chest. Scholar station. Wooden wall. A loom. Rough drying frame. Fishing station. Cooking station. That requires those special planks again. Oh my god, there's so many things. Campfire. We're going to crudely cook some food. Because we hadn't built a campfire yet. Yeah, dude, there's so much in this. There's so many tools as well, yeah. There's a massive amount. Plain trail mix. We need wild grain. Okay, I'm going to make one of these. I need a level one pot. <laughs> Did I make a pot? Okay, there's a saw. We don't have a saw yet. Let's make a saw. That likely will allow us to build the thing that we need. The, um... The planks. We probably need a saw to do that. And a chisel. Because I don't think that was one of the ones that we got. Yeah, see if they have a question mark, we don't have it yet. Okay. We'll build all these tools. Yeah, dude, Bitcraft is looking awesome. When are you releasing the alpha keys? I'm going to do it slowly over time. I think we'll do it every hour, man. Because I only have five of them. So, like, it's... I know, I, I wish... I wish we had more of them. But I have five of them. There are so many of you. Oh my god, they're giving me... The community is throwing supplies at me. Oh... Uh. Making all these items is actually kind of neat. I wonder if I wonder if there's a UI somewhere that shows me all the items that I've equipped, though. I want to go down the Scholar route. Harvest and study up the Tier 1 materials. I'm a, a sucker for crafting? Dude, I'm super into it. There's the pot that we need. So that's the pot that we need there. 
Oh, hey. The devs just gave me another 20 keys. Alright, I'm giving out the first one of these. I'm going to grab all these keys. Actually, I'm going to throw them into a file real fast. Thank you, devs. Awesome, awesome devs. Thank you very, very much for that. I'm going to start giving these out. All right, you ready? First one is going on Twitch side. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Silence, chat, silence. Silence. It's going to go. It's going to go. Shh, 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 shh. Goblins can't. I can't do it. I can't do it. Keys in chat. It's gone. It's already gone. It's flown up. Good luck. It's going to be difficult for you to be the one to get it. I know. I know. I'm going to spam it again. Just in case no one got it. Wow. There it is. It's enormous. It's going to be a mad dash now. Do not be upset if you don't get it. There are a lot of you. <laughs> There's only one key there. Where do you redeem? Actually, yeah, do you have a do you have the, the link to the website where they redeem this? Because it's on their it's on the website for the game. And I don't actually remember what the exact link is for that. It might actually be in-game. I think you have to redeem it in-game. You have to redeem it in the client. So in their Discord is where they're distributing the, the EXE for the game. As funny as that is. You have to download the launcher and do it in-game, yes. You have to download the launcher, go download the launcher, and you have to wait, and then do it in game. I know that's weird, but this is a closed alpha. So you're gonna have you're gonna have a little bit of oddity to this. Seems to us, no, it's fine. It's not risky. You're good. Let me get a link to their Discord, one sec. I have not seen anything wrong with this game at all. Just to be real with you guys. They don't want to hide me to channels. I want to have an invite. Give, give, uh, invite people, copy, hey look, there's a link to the discord, ta-da, it's called bitcraft, discord.gg slash bitcraft, so they actually have a proper link from discord, which is super nice, you can go into there, you can find their client, you can download it. And no, this is not a sponsored stream. I just think the game looked neat, and I wanted to try it out. And they are very cool devs. Badly damaged head-powered source. So we already have this. I don't think we need another one. We have all these special items already on our character. And it says possible output, so maybe we have randomized outputs for this. The announcement channel in there has the instructions on how to get this. Alright, so now... Now that we have all of our tools, let's go back over here. Can I construct things more? I cannot. Interesting. I'm going to go and drop this on the ground for now. I'm just going to flop it out, you know? What is this? Rough cooking station. So we can't build that yet. How do I get this? A small fence. A rough grinder. What does a rough grinder do? For grinding goods. A wicker basket. Small stockpile. Cargo stockpile for three stock for three cargo. Okay, we're doing that. Oh wait, no, that's too big. Crude workbench. Cooking station. Tailoring station. Tanning tub. Forestry station. Carpentry station. Stone masonry station. Smithing. We're going to do the masonry station. I am slowly encapsulating myself in the crafting. Soon there will be nothing left. It will just be me and my stations. Good. Good. As it should be. What is this? Stone chunk. I need more twine as well. Alright. What does this do? Pyrolite vein. Interesting. Wild fiber plant. I have to slowly but surely get my way through this. Pyrolite outcrop. 
Okay, that's a huge amount of mining XP each time. Nice. Nice. We're just gonna chew away at it. Tribes of Midgard, which I love. I don't think I've ever seen that before. What does your hardware utilization look like? Let's find out. Let's see how the game is doing in terms of that. It is using 28% of my CPU. And it's using very little of my GPU. About 20% of the GPU. It's actually really well optimized. As far as I can tell right now. This is funny. It's using less of my GPU than Minecraft does. <laughs> OBS is using twice as much of my GPU as the game. Yeah. So that actually is not bad. Went on Steam though. Closed alpha. That's why. Likely. I would not be surprised if they were going to a Steam announcement later. Alright. Next key's going out. This one is going out on YouTube side. Key's going out on YouTube side. I want to switch back and forth so that both communities get it. I just put it out on YouTube. YouTube community. There you go. I'm actually going to do them both at once. Twitch side, here's yours. There you go. The hell is this? A new game, man. It's called Bitcraft. Oh, it looks like it gave me a chunk in my inventory. That's not what I expected. That's interesting. What's this? Where do I get that? So I can just take this over here and just drop it in, yeah? Okay, so I'm getting ore chunks. But this. These are actually cargo now. Okay. So it looks like that big stone, anything that's like a double slot item is going to end up being a stone. Or end up being a thing. Oh, we got ads. We're going to wait. Waiting in the ads. Actually, I'm going to craft while the ads are going on. There we go. How do you claim the key? You have to go to their Discord, go to the announcements, and then install it, install the game, and you, you claim the key in-game. Yeah. I misspelled my email, damn F, dude. Actual F. One moment. What do you mean the key worked multiple times? Uh oh. <laughs> what do you, What do you mean it worked multiple times? <laughs> hey, uh, devs. Chad is saying that your keys don't get consumed when you use them, and everybody is using the same key. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> How many of you guys got in from that key? Did it work? Did it actually work? A, no a lot of you got into the same key. I wonder if it had like a, a time window. Well, if you get in good, have some fun. Hope you enjoy the game. I think this is quite fun. I did not get in. Don't worry. I have more keys to give out. Don't worry. Could just be a window. All right. Ads are over. More crafting. Claim. I need to get more stuff. The goblins have absorbed all plants nearby. I have to go farther away. I'm eating all these berries at the same time. My character's now fully food, full of food. I need the lavender. Yeah. More plant fiber. And basic flowers. I don't actually know what I need to use flowers for yet. We'll see. I wonder if items have durability in some way. I wonder if they do. I like how quickly resources regenerate. 
That's pretty nice, to be honest with you. No durability yet, but they plan to add it. That's good. I think it's a good thing. Durability is always a good thing in a game like this because it means more resource sinks. You want to have as many resource sinks as possible. You know? Oh man, look at all the lavender over there. Yeah, we're going for that. Yeah, loads of potential for expansion. With the amount of crafting systems they have in this, the potential for expansion is enormous, dude. Yeah. I've got some stacks of fiber for you. I kind of want to get them myself. Yeah. Durability is good for the game, but unfun for the player. I disagree. Like, for instance, I'm actually really looking forward to durability in Ashes of Creation. Do you know why? Because repairing things is a skill. So you want to seek out the bla the best blacksmith around. And if you don't find the best blacksmith, well, then you really don't want them repairing your stuff because they could they could damage it, right? So there's there's ways to make durability interesting. There's definitely ways to make durability interesting. You have to make it a game mechanic. Next key, we'll do it soon. We got something to give out. Yeah, gold sinks, material sinks are definitely needed. Why is the process so slow? Because I'm level one, my dude. I just got to level three out of an unknown number of levels. I'm a little baby. I'm a little baby with starting tools. So the process is definitely going to be garbage. Right? Where does a man activate his key? What you have to do is you have to go and go to their Discord, which is discord.gg slash bitcraft. Go to announcements, download the game, and then you will find it. Uh, you'll be able to put the key in in-game. Yeah. In the actual game client itself. You know you got me hooked on StyleCraft? That's funny. That's awesome. So what I'm trying to do right now is I'm just going to... I'm going to get as much material, like all the plant fiber forever, basically. And then we're going to go back and just craft it all at once. Which is nice. I wonder if this increases drop rates of some kind. Or has a skill cap requirement for nodes. Or increases... It doesn't seem to be increasing speed, so I think that's based on my tool. Because it's doing damage to it. In Valheim, durability is not a resource sink, like most of the survival games. True. It's also not a resource sink in Enshrouded. In Enshrouded, uh, when you click on, like, a repair station, you just get all your repair. Everything just repairs. Your crit chance goes up. Interesting. What does crit chance do? Is it actual damage? Or is it, like, crit chance, like, special item drops? You ever play Old School RuneScape? Yeah. I actually find this to be more compelling than Old School RuneScape, and I think the reason why is graphically more interesting to me. And also, I like the idea of building a base. I like how in-game chat is just talking about the Muffin Man. Oh, there was an actual crit. Is the game legit good? I find it relaxing. I like that. And I find it to have a lot of options that we haven't explored yet, so I don't know. Not yet. Takes time. And I'm trying to collect as much stuff as possible. And then I want to do this. I want to go into this dungeon area. Because I don't know anything about that just yet. In fact. Let's go up here real fast. I think I have enough material. I'm going to go rest quickly. Oh my god, there's so many there's so much stuff here. I'm gonna rest here. How much time is the day cycle? I don't know. I'm not sure yet. You can actually rest anywhere? Yes, but you get you get more stamina by resting inside of a, a house like this. One moment. Not a fan of the hexagons? I actually really like hex hexagons, to be honest with you. Yeah, I'm gonna widen the base too. Long Lemon, maybe expand the claim. Not yet. I actually don't know how to expand it. Let's see. Interact. That's all we have. Research. Unlock up to 300 tiles. I am now researching this. Oh, 
already researching another upgrade. So it's 15 minutes. So I used a bunch of supplies. And now if I go back here and pick up the cargo and go back over to here. That used a bunch of my supplies. So you collect supplies and the supplies are also the currency to do research. This makes the most... I, I like that. It gives you a reason to just keep building things. Let's go make all of it. Yes. Craft it all. I do not enjoy hexagons. Unfortunate. You will never be the best at gun. Yes. One moment. Ta da Oh, nice. It just keeps doing that. Can I interact with other menus at the same time? I cannot. So it does fully lock you in. That's good, though. That's honestly a good thing. Because it gives you time to kind of, like, just chill. And you don't actually have to have that open at the same time. Interestingly enough, there's a bug. I was able to go over and interact with this, and then walk back over and also be doing the twine at the same time. Which is quite funny. I get a claim treasury. Area 300. So this is the research upgrade that I'm doing right now. Increasing the number of members. What is this? Perfected tools. Tier 1. Unlock crafting tier 1 perfected tools. Unlock up to 20,000 supplies. So these are all the tier 1 upgrades. Interesting. You can have a donut planet though with hexagons? True. Tortuga has all the tier 1's done. That's the, that's the town that you guys are building. Kronos? Yeah, I wanted to see the whole crafting system and everything on this. It looks like the tiers get rather massive, too. Like, holy shit. There's a lot to go into this, and they don't even have a lot of upgrades on all of these. Look at this. So the towns could get huge. They're challenging and very much a long-term goal. That's good. That's really good, actually. Did you go live early today? No. Went live at the same time as normal. I go live at midnight. P PDT, I guess right now, because we're in daylight savings. And then um, I end at noon. Every day. You're number one on their leaderboard right now? Yeah, that was from you guys joining the game. Yeah. Yeah. See the bots got ad ads, you know? I have seen it. In, uh... In, uh, Helldivers. Hey, look! Hey, look, a key! Over on Twitch side. There's a key there, for the video game. Hey, look, another key, over on YouTube side. Who could have done this? Who could have dropped the key in chat? Who could have that been? So I'm actually gaining a crit chance here. You see, I have a crit chance of 4%. I guess that would make it craft faster. And now I have a crit chance of 6% because I gain a level. So you're getting a ton of experience. You're getting a ton of cra like crit crafting chance. And my base damage, I guess, damage towards the craft is increased based on my tools. That's cool. I like that. Or even go to redeem the key. Go join their Discord. Discord.gg slash bitcraft and go into announcements. Get the game client, and then you do it in the game client. I accidentally copy-pasted it twice. F, dude. Got the key? Nice, dude. Got the key, thank you. Yeah, it's definitely working for multiple people at the same time. I'm going to put that on the list. Access keys are not consumed on the first use and will work for multiple people within a time window it's on the list yeah no it's definitely working for multiple people though yeah it's kind of funny okay we've got all of our stuff now crafted on this there we go 
I'm going to go grab one of these packages. Thank you for that. Put this in here. Yeah. Access keys only work for one person. It gets consumed with the email confirmation. People are saying they get full access. One sec. I gotta go blow my nose. Ugh, I'm back. Ugh. I got an email confirmation and put it in. It worked. I think it's... Yeah, no, some people are getting it multiple times, dude. So I, I think what's happening... Yeah, no, people saying it, it gets consumed, but we're getting multiple people even getting the email confirmation. So I think there's still a window where it's happening. It's something they'll have to test. It's a test thing. We bring up the possibility that this may be happening and then they test it. Yeah. Because we only gave out, like, three keys, and there's, like, eight people that got into the game that are talking about it. So, there's there's no way. Alright, let's see. Members. Got all that set up. Grab all the things. Grab all the stuff. Goblins always break stuff. Ah. It has been so dry here this week. One moment. All right, I'm back. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, no, right. Vaseline up your nostrils is the only way, dude. I have a really cool announcement. If you guys didn't see this, uh, Twitch has done something really lovely for us. Really huge, actually. And I know this may seem like a really small thing, and some people may not give a shit about it at all. But this is like a really, really huge gesture. And when you're a streamer, this is something you can kind of only dream of happening. And this, that's, it's funny because it's such a, a thing that some people just won't care about. But I really care about this. Look at this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause the in-game music and we're going to play the browser. Twitch has made me into a global emote for everybody who is a part of the train. It's got code in the background and it's me as the long lemon at the moment where I said, did I break it? Because the API imploded and it's animated. Everybody who is a part of the train gets it and you're the only people in the world who do. And the only way that anyone else can get it is by beating your hype train. So if somebody else wants to unlock this, that community has to beat the hype train. It's not in yet. It's going to be getting it's going to be going out over the next week for everybody. I don't even have it yet. So I'm really excited for this. And it's just like Twitch I didn't expect that at all. It's cool as hell. That's honestly amazing. So thank you. Seriously. That's like a it's something that every streamer wants to get a global emote of themselves. Everybody does. Because it's like a huge... It's like you did it, right? Is that permanent? Yes. It is a permanent emote for everybody who is a part of the trend. Yeah. So, that's a huge deal, man. That's, uh, that's massive. I love that it has all this code in the background, too. <laughs> did I break it? <laughs> it was the moment where the API died. <laughs> Where the API stopped working correctly, and you guys did necromancy on it. Yeah. It was that moment. It's very funny. So, thank you, Twitch. That is... That's huge, man. I'm gonna put the link for this in chat. I... I... That's huge to me. And it's such a... It's funny, because it's such a small thing for a lot of people, but for me, that's a... That's a big deal, dude. That's a really big deal. We actually fixed... So, we found out what the Era 2000 was. That was on my side. Wait, did you guys get... Error 2000? Oh, that's not on me. That's not on me then. I'm going to reach out. One moment. Twitch was saying that that was because of my side. But I tell you now, it's not. There's no way it could be. We have a perfect connection. 
So I gotta let them know. Yeah, bunch of people got error 2000. If you get error 2000, just refresh. Are you going to get AV1 access early? I'm going to be doing AV1 access the moment I get access to it. I want to be doing AV1 encoding for sure. Yeah, if your account's going to crash because of it, for sure. Happens every time. We don't know why this is happening. Twitch's side says that my my OBS is disconnecting and the reconnecting, but on my side it's a perfect connection, so we don't know why this is happening. We're waiting to find out. What is AV1? A new encoding well, it's an old encoding method, technically. But it's uh they're now adding support for it, which is huge. It's a big deal. You gonna be playing Foxhole? I will be, yes. I will be. Yeah. Did you get the emote? You will. If you if you gave in a hundred bits or a sub during the the hype train, you will get it. If you don't get it, please put in a ticket, support ticket for Twitch, because they you guys slammed it. It's gonna have some weird issues. It has. I let my I let my partner manager know that it is uh, that error two thousand happened because we've been trying to attack down what's causing this, and uh, we've got a bunch of ideas and theories and stuff. So the more data we get, the more times that this happens, the better. Well, not the better. We don't want it to happen, but at least we're figuring it out, right? Testing. Big community. That's what happens. Uh, okay, let's see. We haven't made one of these. So I need to make a spool of thread. Every time you build a new material, it's got a question mark saying you haven't made it yet. So I'm going to build everything that is new. Okay, I got that. Now I can make rough fabric. Let's look at this. I still can't make these. Let's go to this one. I can make everything in here. I have everything there. I can make this. Let's go make twine. And we will build our masonry station now. Yeah. Okay, let's see how our research is going. Two minutes on this. A rough stone block. Crushed pyrolite ore. Let's go grab this. We're going to turn this into a crushed pyrolite ore now because we have the material for it. And I think that might give us mining experience? Or no, it gives us masonry experience. There's a new type of XP. That's kind of interesting. Rough pebbles. Crushed rough shells. So we can take shells and turn those into a material as well. There's so many materials. How many people are playing together? I don't know. It's an MMO. Everybody's on the same server together. And the world is enormous. So, yes. I need to have basic mortar as well. I don't know how that works. Okay, let's go collect this. We've got a new material now. Oh, that gave us a lot of that. We get my inventory is slowly filling up. Oh yeah, we wanted to cook a food too. We hadn't done this yet. Materials acquired. I need to get more berries. We're gonna go grab some more berries. Can you invite us to your place? Not yet. I, I know people are really excited to like try and try and play with me, but I want to make sure that I am doing the crafting first to get a, a full understanding of the systems involved. So I'm intentionally not allowing people in because I know you guys can immediately build everything, and I just want to I want to chill on it at first. Yeah. Otherwise, I want people to get like a good good feeling for how the game feels. You know. Yeah, because I know you guys. <laughs> I really like the foraging system. 
Something about this just feels kind of nice. What I, I'm going to add is a feedback piece. They need to add audio variants. And what that means is every time you hear a sound go off, it's exactly the same sound. And since it's always exactly the same sound, it can become grating over time. If all you have to do, all you have to do to fix this, is you have to add a slight amount of variance to the sound. Maybe 10% variance. So 10% pitch shifting up and down each time the sound plays. So you play with it 90 to 110% pitch each time the sound goes off. Adding a 10% pitch variance to audio or to sound effects will make them less grating with repetition. It's a really cheap way to get rid of that grating feeling of having the exact same sound play over and over again. Repetition like that can get boring or annoying for people as a result. Yeah, it's a small thing. I learned that I learned that a while ago, but it's something that is often overlooked. It's it's often overlooked. Usually what I'll do is I'll take three sounds of three separate Is that a mushroom? Mushroom. I need a tier two machete. I can't wait to harvest machete like mushrooms with a machete, dude. Yeah, so usually what you'll do is I'll get three separate sounds, and then I take those three separate sounds and I do pitch shifting on playback. So we choose a random sound among three, and then ten percent variance within that. Yeah. Three variants randomly selected, and also 10% variants. You get a near infinite number of sounds. Audio sound design is often overlooked in general. It can be. Yeah, it really can be. Okay, there we go. We have that. But they didn't increase my radius. How does one increase radius? Interesting. I feel... Huh... Hmm... Okay... How do I use this? All right, so we have to add individual claim tiles to this. Interesting. So it's not... I expected it to be you upgrade and then it gives you a radius, but you add individual tiles so you can make your town look like whatever you like, shape-wise. That's really interesting. Now, understand something. This is going to lead to what we call in the gaming industry of TTP. TTP is time to penis, which means... The first thing you're going to see is people making a dick-shaped town. That's how that's going to go. It will be. It's exactly what's going to happen. You know it's true. This is any game that where you have any creative ability at all. Anyone. In fact, Diablo 4 had this where people drew a dick in the snow by walking through the snow in the shape of a dick. Yeah. It's legally hammer-shaped. True. True. Oh, this is cool, though. This is really easy to do. It's a lot more easy than I thought it was. I just kind of want to, I want to make it a big circle. Hexagon. You know what's funny? I didn't think it was going to be like this. But I actually like this more. Because I have so much more creative control over the size of the base. I didn't expect it to be in this window, though. I think that's the one thing where, like, the UI... It was not expected for me to find it here. If that makes sense. But I do like this more than just making the radius increase. Even though I'm just making the radius increase like like I had expected it to be. Yeah, it's a little bit less intuitive. I would say that. <laughs> the devs just said, yes, our TTP is low. <laughs> it's true. It's normal, though. Any game with creativity involved, any game where you have creative control at all, is like that. I remember in World of Warcraft, the, the lowest TTP in the game was in, um, what was it called? Which expansion was it? There was an expansion where one of the starter quests for the expansion, you had a barrel on your back that would leave a trail of gunpowder behind you. Yeah, World of Draenor with the bomb pack immediately drew a dick with the, with the gunpowder. <laughs> <laughs> so funny, dude. Interesting. 
Oh, that took a moment. Oh my god, there's so much cargo as tribute, you goblins. You don't need to do this. It's very funny, though. Everyone's like, I'm doing my part. Take the tribute to Tortuga? True. I do like this system, though. I really like this system. And it's quite nice. Members. Pirate software. Perfected tools. So, if I can add all those supplies, I want to start doing the research on this. This is a one-hour research. 300 tiles, though. That's enormous. That's not a small amount at all. That is absolutely huge. Okay, so there we go. We've started this. We're now low on supplies. I'm going to start getting all the supplies again. Okay, so the devs actually told me something. I can make the UI semi-transparent. Ah... That's nice. So we can make the UI any amount of transparency we want it to be. The max is like 4,000 tiles. That's so many tiles, dude. That's really good. You're wondering about Triumph Score and Destiny 2. I haven't played Destiny 2 in years, dude. I got turned off by their monetization. I haven't played the game since. Not a fan of it. We got ads. We're going to wait. I'm finding this game really interesting. There's so many deep systems, I feel like I'm barely scratching the surface right now. Frankly. Yeah. It's cool as hell. Let's start doing the uh, Tomatoes uh, the, uh, underscore TTS. cannot be trusted with 500 bits said, Hey Thor, I would oh. like to ask for some advice. I work for a small indie studio where I'm the only programmer, no seniors, nothing. My problem okay. is I don't not sure if what I do, right, is good or not. 98% of the time I can do what my boss asked me to do and we didn't notice any performance related issues but I know a junior is not going to write the best code and I'm not yeah. sure what methods can be done in order to improve because there is always room for improvement. The best thing you can do is test your code. It is not going to be good. And that's okay. It's alright. If you're a junior in a position where you are making things alone you are going to write bad code. If you are a programmer that is doing anything alone you are going to write bad code, no matter how senior you are. Teams make programmers better. Review makes co programmers better. So, best thing you can do as a solo dev, or a solo programmer in a project like that, is test your code. So that there's a objective way of looking at it, instead of just subjectively you thinking it's working correctly. So yeah, look for that. Look for ways to test the performance in a way where you can objectively find out, is this actually more performant? When you don't have the chance for peer review. Yeah, test plans. Test plans for everything. Ex Dovos with 1000 bits said have fun in the grinding hell. <laughs> I love grinding, dude. I actually love this. Pikachu0707 with 500 bits said Yarchir 500 no update on the project today. Just wanted to say thank you. I've been playing and replaying Heartbound and I don't remember the last time I laughed and cried and just enjoyed anything this much. You okay. really are the best. And don't try to throw this one back. It's nah. really all you. Nah. Nah, it's you. Something Throw the back. wise with 500 bits said it would be awesome to see you and Twitch CEO Dan Clancy on a podcast or discussion together. I love oh, yeah. that H has been so open to making content with creators. Anytime. You have a unique opportunity to talk about the record hype trains and it was so fun to hear about how that went at Twitch from an insider. Oh yeah. I actually really like Dan Clancy. I watch his stream quite often. Um, Dan Clancy is engaging in what we call dog fooding. Uh, dog fooding is when a executive or like C level executive, anybody who's at the top, goes and engages with the product or service that the company provides directly. And that is exactly what he's doing. And it's really good to see because having a CEO that is streaming, not as an employee, not with all the bells and whistles and everything handled for him, but just as, as, a, as, a, as a streamer is a very good thing. In fact, he got declined for partnership the first time. <laughs> Which was really funny. It was really funny to see him do it. Yeah. Dog fooding is a term sounds weird. It is. It's it, the, the term is we eat our own dog food is the joke for that. But yeah, no, he actually got declined for partner originally. He is uh, DJ Dan Clancy. 
and he streams over Starlink internet, so his internet connection is kind of shit, and he streams him playing music. And he, he plays music and he sings. And he's gotten better and better at streaming. He's actually gotten more, his production value's gone up. He's learned about the systems. He's added new things to his OBS. But he had everything being like kind of, you know, kind of basic at first. And he's gotten better at it. And he's learned a lot, not just about the platform, but about the culture of streaming. And I think that's a very important thing, especially for somebody who's going to be a CEO for a company like this. It's an incredibly smart thing to do. And you know what one of his first things that he did as a result of that was? He let me stream on YouTube at the same time. He let all of us stream on multiple platforms at once. Because he realized that would add to Twitch. And he was right. It's a very smart move. Really smart guy. Honestly. Really smart guy. Almost everyone? No. Everyone. Unless you have a, a contract specifically with Twitch saying you can't do it outside of that, you can stream on multiple platforms, which is a very rare thing. It's very specific to certain creators. Can I repair this building? There we go. Yeah, this building was slightly outside of my radius. There, I've got it repaired. So yeah, no, it's really good. Yeah, Dan Clancy's awesome, dude. I think the dude's doing an awesome job. And I'm not just saying that because he's the CEO. I would, I've been brutal in the past. When he first started, I actually... I, I was like, who the hell is this guy? Because when he, when he first started, he did an interview with some people and and one of the things he said really turned me off he was like no i understand what streaming is because i took some uh drama classes in high school it was something along the lines of that and i was like this ain't it man like that is not nope and then he was like am i out of touch and most guys would be like no it is the children who are wrong but no he was like no i'm out of touch uh i'm gonna go start streaming and he did so to his credit he went off and realized no i need to i need to actually get in touch with these people. I need to actually see what it's like to be a streamer. And he did. So, good on him. 100% good on him. But when he first started, it was weird. It was a very weird kind of a feel at first. And I, I'm quite happy with the way that it's gone. Why can't they move that there? Interesting. Can only build on a flat surface. Oh. So it begins. The great terraforming of our time. I love that I can move these buildings from anywhere and I don't actually have to be next to them. Okay. I understand. I understand. This is going to be complicated. This is going to be very complicated. The idea of slowly but surely rebuilding my base is kind of compelling, to be honest with you. And I think the reason why is I, I love organization in games. I love rebuilding stuff. I love kind of optimizing things. And it feels very nice to do that. And I don't think that's a gameplay option that a lot of people enjoy. All of the time. But I enjoy that all of the time. I am a big fan of that, personally. Yeah. Like, I'm a really big fan of that, personally. I do a lot? Yeah. I think what I want to do right now is I'm actually going to do build. We're going to go over my claim. And I'm going to start doing this. See, we have these big hexagon units here. And I want to start, instead of getting little pieces. Okay, that's a little bit weird. I have one problem with the hexagons, chat. The hexagons don't line up with the small hexagons. I don't like that at all. Yeah, they're off grid. I'm adding that to my feedback. Flame hexagons are off grid from terrain hexagons not lining up feels very awkward and bad yeah no I don't like that at all I want these to align and they don't align and it makes my brain sad yeah that sh those should align with each other that's how I feel about that 100% Slowly but surely expanding. Expand! Maybe it's, maybe it forces you to terraform more? Yeah, but it doesn't feel right, right? I'll give you an example. When you're thinking of, like, expanding in Minecraft, you can expand via chunk, right? And the chunk is exactly... It aligns directly with the size of the blocks. 
these don't align with each other. So if you look at this, that right there down there does not align with the edges of that actual terrain hexagon. If you're already doing hexagons and you're doing terrain hexagons, just make them line up. That's how I would feel about it. I think that's, that's for me, that feels awkward. Doesn't mean they have to change it, but I hope they do. Moving that building there. Just keep that one where it is. Alright, we're starting to get there. Starting to get more stuff. More placement on things. My campfire's there in the middle. We don't need a flint pile. Okay, let's think about this. What do we need to build? We need to build some stuff. No, don't build a claim near my claim, you goblins. I swear to God. Scholar Station. Okay, we still can't build those. I still don't know how to build that. What is this one? A small fence. I need to build a grinder. We don't have one of those. Okay. We've got that. I'm going to go get another stone. Got a stone. There we go. Now we need to go and get logs. Actually, wait, there's a log right here. Yoink. Oh, wait, that's a big boy log. What do we do with that? <laughs> that's my favorite twitcher. Oh, God, no. Oh, God, no, Sophie, why? Hexagons definitely causes some headaches as the developer. Yeah, no, I wouldn't I wouldn't expect otherwise, to be honest with you. It's one of those things where you have to get like a hexagon size that makes sense where it feels good to the player, but then also fits into the world, which is not easy at all, frankly. So I get that. For me as a player, the first thing that I would expect is that my hexagons line up with the terrain hexagons. That'd be the, that's the first thing that I would expect. So when they don't, it immediately causes this desync where it's like, well, why? Right? Because usually when you want like a crafting kind of efficiency open world sort of a thing like that, you want it to, to make sense. Is the Twitchy a switcher? You say they can't. But they can't. They can. They can do it, Chad. It is possible. It is possible. Do you know how? You make them the same size as each other. That's how you do it. That's the only way you can do it. Yeah. So what you would do is instead of having so many tiny ones, you'd have a big one and you unlock each one of these individually. That's how you... It, mathematically, that's the only way you do it. I know. Surprising, right? That was the immediate thought that I had was like, oh, this is how this would work. If that makes sense. I need to find more rotten logs. There we go. That one. I like how the terrain has changed in here. It's more foresty. Can you do it by division by four? Is that true? Can you do hexagon tessellation div divided by four? I didn't know you could do that. I don't know if you can. I don't think you can. I think they have to be the same size. No. I think mathematically they have to be the same size. Yeah. You can't tell hexagons we tried. Yeah, no, it's a mathematic problem. The only way you can do it is, is like, say... Say instead of giving me, like, 300 more tiles, you gave me five on each upgrade and five is the full size of one of these hexagons like you treat them like chunks in minecraft it's like oh, you unlock a new chunk you unlock one more tile grid and then it, instead of having all these tiny ones you give me one big one if that makes sense that would be the that'd be the expectation i would have for the brain you know if you don't want to do it that way it totally makes sense but i'm a player and as a player i just give the feedback right maybe like this is what i expected this is how it does it, it feels weird you know
Yeah, so he said, claim hexagons are off-grid from terrain hexagons. Not lining up feels very awkward and bad. Since this is a problem of mathematics and you cannot tessellate hexagons, I feel like it would be better to unlock fewer hexagons, but unlock the entire terrain hexagon instead. This is feedback. Not a demand. Not a, you're a bad developer. It's like, this, this would feel better to me. I'm a player. I have a feeling. Not, I'm a player and do this, dev, or you're bad. Right? It's a feeling thing. Anytime you're a player, it's about how you feel. That's the important thing with that. What is this? Okay, so we can make our pyrolite ore concentrate now. Cool. Concentrating it. Oh, does that grind on its own? Oh, it grinds on its own! We have our first automated system. You forward to the designers? Okay. Um, Alessandro, I'm going to send all of these to you right now. He's one of the devs on the project. I'm going to keep adding these into the chat for you. Um, actually, you know what I'll do? I'll break these up into pieces. So that way you can have them as individual thoughts. Instead of having them all in one block. Because one block feels awful. <laughs> this way you can you can prioritize them any way that you want to. I'm actually just going to send these to the devs in real time while we do this, guys. sec. Slowly but sharing these. Then we're going to give out some more keys for the game. Yeah, it's always, it's always a feeling thing. So when you're giving feedback to devs, especially in early times like this, be like, hey, I feel this way. Not it has to be like this. I feel like this would be better. Because one of the things you have to understand is when you're developing a video game, you don't really know, you don't really want to know what the, how the player would design it directly because it may not work, right? And it may not meet their expectations. But you do want to know how the player feels because if you can understand how the player feels and like why they feel that way, you go, you know what? I have an idea to fix the game in a way that works based on our design and also fixes the bad feeling that you have. That's the important thing. Yeah, it's a feeling thing. It's always a feeling thing. I demand it feels this way. You can demand all you want. I'll just ignore you. <laughs> yeah, always always give feedback like that, though. It's based on feeling. Unless it's just crashing, you're like, Dev, please. Please. Yeah, describe the issue, not the solution. Sometimes you want to describe the solution. Be like, hey, it would feel better like this. And then the dev goes, that's an interesting way of doing that. I didn't think about that. Maybe that would work. We'll talk about it and see if it fits. Right? Always. I feel like you should buy the demo. The demo is free. The demo is always free. I feel crashed. Hmm. I demand you have fun playing games. I do have fun playing games. Yeah. I do actually have fun playing games. I Unironically, even. Okay, let's think about this. We've got that grinding now. Have we gotten all the things in this? We have not built this yet. Rough wood long package. We don't really need that, though. That's fine. This one... We can make it now. Oh, we just needed a big boy log. Okay. Okay. All right. We're making our logs now. We're making the planks. Can I key to the demo? There's no demo. You can't. Okay, guys. You ready for another set of keys? You ready for this? I'm going to do one over on YouTube. Remember, to get the game, to use the key, you have to go to their Discord, which is discord.gg slash bitcraft. You have to go to their announcements. Download the game. Inside of the game, you put the code in. There's the first code over on YouTube. There it is. Now I'm putting one over on Twitch. Yeah, it's a key for closed alpha, dude. We're playing a closed alpha. There we go. Can you do raffles? No, I'm throwing it in chat. I like throwing it in chat because it's fun. What is this? Basic crop oil. Crop oil. An empty bucket. I feel like having an empty bucket is a good idea. We get 10 of them. Interesting. I want to go build this crafting station first, though. 
Rough farming station. Now we can build our farming station. Alright, that's good. I like that the inventory is so large in the beginning, and I like that I can move all my UI and stuff. So, like, if I want to with my inventory, I can just move this around. That's a very nice feeling thing. I'm actually putting that as feedback. I'm saying being able to move windows at my leisure is a very good thing. This is good. This feels nice. Server's full now? Not surprising. Do you have any games? Many games I can play on Steam? Um, you mean like games that I've worked on? If so, you can go play Heartbound. Heartbound is a game that I work on. It's from our studio. It's quite fun. I really enjoy it. And it is a early access choose your own adventure RPG with a bajillion different routes. And I just keep adding content to it. It's fun. Where do you enter the key? In-game. So you have to go and get the client off of their Discord. Discord.gg slash bitcraft. Yeah. Actually, uh, mods, can you pin that up? Would you be able to do that for me? Is give them the instructions on how to... How, where to get the client and how to get... How to use the key? Would you be able to pin that? No, not that. That one won't work. That... that um, to make an account won't work that. They have to get the client on their Discord. So like a link to their Discord... Here, I'll save this one. Um, yeah. Like, basically, the, the basic instructions on how to use the key, because everybody's going to ask. They're not going to know. There's no way to know. Server's definitely going to be full right now, yeah. Basic fertilizer. I'm making poop. I'm doing it, Chet. That's right. Making poop. Fertilizer. Ate a bunch of berries. Done. What's this one made out of? Oh, that's made out of flowers. Okay, so we can make fertilizer now. We have fertilizer in our inventory. What is this one? We've done everything on that. Let's go see if we have anything over here. A rough rock. Okay. There's so many options over here. Look at this one. We have all those materials as well. Alright, let's go back into this. Now that we have access to those planks. That's a fence. We don't need that. A smithing station. Oh, that's a big... That is a big station, actually. It's on an uneven ground. There we go. Oh! We encountered an unexpected error. Unfortunately, this requires a restart. F. <laughs> I blew it up! Crashed. It'll happen. I'm not worried about it. Server down! Did I break it? Yeah, I know, right? Oh, oh, oh. Immediately got back in. Totally fine. Okay, so for this one, we need to add all of our current materials. I need to get some rough rope, which I think I craft over at this station over here. Oh, wait. I can, I can create something first. Let's make some rope first. Before the wisp comes and talks to me. There's a five minute grace period for getting back in the game. I'm calling that out. That's good. The five minute grace period. You log back in on a crash is much appreciated. That's that's very good. That's a piece of feedback I just put through. That's good. That's really good. Is it possibly just for the alpha? There'd be no reason to remove that. Yeah, that's a good thing. Oh, wow.
Oh, wow. This is just the general area that we're in. Hmm. Hmm. Hey, Kronos. I think I'm ready. Yeah, that zoom is really nice. Look at that. Nyrrl. 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 I think I'm ready, Kronos. Where do I go? Now that I've learned all these things. Alright, I'm grabbing this. You see, the moderators got in early. The devs just said that we did this like one day ahead of the alpha for the five minute grace period for logging back in. Awesome. W devs. The mods got in early. And we actually have the location for them. And we're going to head over there. How do I destroy my own town? Is there a way that I can abandon my claim now that I have this? We'll add more keys later. Don't worry. Deconstruct. Deconstruct. Goodbye. And now all this will slowly degrade. Goodbye, stuff. We migrate. I need to go to North 1465, which is actually where I'm at right now, and East 1124. So we're going directly to the east. We move east, goblins. Actually, I want to see what's in this dungeon first, because I haven't actually seen this yet. What is this? What is the dungeon? Yeah, I want to trade with this guy first. What? Mark of Heimlich. Okay, interesting. Look at all the weird stuff. I want to see what's in this dungeon, though. What? What is this? Open chest. How do I get over there? We have to dig through the rubble and get these chests. Okay. We can work together. Cool. Did I get the item or no? Oh, God damn it! Can I not move? I think it actually broke my character. It softlocked me. Yeah, I was trying to interact with it and somebody else took the item and it softlocked me. Bug. We'll bug that, yeah. Error. Interesting. So this broke the login queue system. Interact with the chest. Having the item in it in your head and then someone else taking the chest causing it to despawn will permanently soft lock you that's a pretty good bug that's a good bug because that'll end up being what's called an edge case what we need what we did there yeah, something crashed. It, it broke. What ended up happening there is I had the item in my hand. I was trying to put it in my inventory, and somebody else got it first. And because the item was in my hand, and the chest despawned, we ran into a system or a situation where I character softlocked. Yeah. Interesting. Weird bug, right? Yep. So I think that's good. 
Hey, it's a good find. I said that to them. I know, there's no reason to make me skip the queue or anything like that. We gotta get the actual experience, right? Crashing. Uh, no, hitting logout. Hitting the logout button to escape from the soft lock forced me into the queue and did not give me my five minute queue protection. Since I had to hit the logout button for it, which means players would be forced to alt at four in that case. So I gave it as feedback. There was a logout error message too. Yes. Yep. Because it didn't get crashed. Bingo. Hitting the logout button does not give you the five minute queue. Hey. We got two for one on that one. Cap Infinite, if it's not through to you yet, please put in a ticket to Twitch. Support ticket. What is Bitcraft? It is a survival crafting MMO that they are in closed alpha right now. They just went into closed alpha yesterday. Yeah. Inventory needs a sort button? Good shout. It would be nice to have inventory sort buttons on the player and for chests. I agree with that. That would be a nice thing. Got three left in the queue. Do you know what Bitcraft was written in? Yeah. They have their own server infrastructure system called Spacetime DB. We got ads. We're going to wait for that. Primage and I want to do a review of it. Yeah. Isn't Bitcraft secretly mining your Bitcoin? No, it's not. It's very funny. Do you know all the new titles for Helldivers? I think one of them is like super... I don't even know. It's like Super Cadet or some shit. It's very funny. Yeah, did I break it? That's gonna be me every day, dude. Such a good name for the global emote, too. I'm going to break this- super private, that's what it is. Oh! Oh! Now it crashed for real. <laughs> we invoked it. Oof. It became enraged, Chad. That's fine. We killed it. We killed it for real. Yeah, that one was a crash crash. It actually closed the client. It's quite funny, actually. Oh, I got right back in this time. So it looks like you want to get into these dungeons with a team. But that, that dungeon collapsed as a result of that. So we're going to wait. We're going to wait for Bezos. I'm going to do one of these alerts. Krulfi with 500 bits said hello Thor. Your shorts hey. and my friend with his idea finally persuaded me to start making a game in Godot. Mm. As a software developer with 13 years of experience it's easier than I thought it would be. It is. However my friend who had the idea of the game is overworked and have not finished GDD since February. I understand oh. that working 10 plus hours leave you with no energy but I want to push forward with game development. What would you suggest? Work with them on creating the, the game design document. Don't leave it all up to them. You know? Because that's quite a long time to, to wait on the game design document. It is. And you shouldn't wait. Go make it with them. Or make one yourself. Really comes down to that. It's okay to be overworked. But if you're in a team, you got to communicate and work together. So yeah, I wish you luck on that, man. Is Bitcraft in closed beta? Closed alpha, actually. I'm going to give it another key right now. Throw it in chat. YouTube side first. There we go. And now, Twitch side. Twitch side, here you go. And please follow the pinned announcement on how to claim that key. I'm going to go put that on over in there. On YouTube as well. I can actually click this. There we go. Pinned. There we go. I got it pinned, little ham. Beat you to it. All right, perfect. All right, so now, since we crashed, that ruin collapsed. You have, like, a, a time limit to do it, which is sort of weird. You have limited loot inside of those chests. Only one person can get it. 
That is a little bit weird. I wish it was instanced loot. I think that would be kind of the big the big thing for me, is I wish it was instanced. But I that really depends on the in-game economy, right? Like, is that supposed to be instanced? Is it supposed to be rare items? I don't know. No. No trade item. I have to get to Kronos' Tortuga. Servers are relatively stable for a closed alpha, too. That's quite impressive to me. I didn't really expect that. You know, I uncovered new land. 0.06% explored. Holy shit, the world is huge. Point oh six. That is huge. Is there teleport? There is, yes. But I need to find the locations first. Point oh seven percent. We are a hundred grid spots away. My god, it's enormous. Can you pull up the full map? We can pull up the map for this that I've discovered so far. We're on a caravan. All of the goblins. You can hear all the running. Is this 2B2T? It's about to be. Hey, I just found another grid node and it stayed at 0.07%. Oh, what is that? Tier 2 pickaxe to equip to mine. Interesting. New materials that I haven't seen before. Look at all the goblins, dude. Look at them all. What is the goblin army? We are heading over to the town that was created by the moderators called Tortuga. The city of pirates. We're well on our way. We're doing it, chat. Wait, we can click to move on the map? Wait, really? There's your accessibility option. That's awesome. Hey. But is this it? Have we arrived? We have. Wow. It's a mess. <laughs> Is this Tortuga? Welcome to Goblin Country. Hi, uh, Kronos. How do I join? How do I join Goblinville? How do I join Tortuga? I want to emote at people. How do I emote at people? Yeah, look at all the stuff, dude. Wait, what is that? Did they make like a tile floor over there? That's neat. What is this? Interesting. Shift number to emote. Nice. All right. Touch the stone. Where is the stone? Oh, there it is. Join claim. Are you at maximum amount of members? Upgrade your claim tech for more. I'm screwed, Chet. I'm screwed, Chet. There's no openings. Recruitment order expired. Please. Chrono, save me. Chrono, save me. 
Wait, is, can I can I automate this more? Oh, I can't automate it more. Save me. Save me from the wilderness. I'll die out here, Crocs. I'm gonna stop starving to death. Oh, god damn it. You goblins. Let me into Tortuga. The goblins are also doing the, doing the same thing as me. God damn it. I'm just gonna sleep on the ground. I'm going. I'm going to the river. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna sleep out here. I cannot rest in water. All right, fine. You know what? I'm just gonna fish. Why can't they fish? Can't fish while swimming. You win this time, fish. Curtis is trying to get me to the guild, guys. Calm, calm yourselves. Hey, okay, there we go. Now we're good. Um, research related. You've got 24 minutes on adding more stuff into this. Okay, that makes sense. Very cool. That works. I like that. That's cool. I like that there's a system of ownership and hierarchy as well. Where can I put my supply stuff? Because I need compendium things for me. I have to learn compendium stuff. Okay, that's a stockpile. This is a stockpile. Is there any quick stack? There is. Okay, there's quick stacking. But not if it's... Oh. Client dead. I wonder what that unexpected error was. I wonder if it's because I was trying to rapidly quick stack something that was not full. That didn't give me my five minute protection. Interesting. Interesting, because that one was a crash. Hmm. Hmm. Unexpected error causing a client restart does not give the five minute. Relog protection. There we go. Okay, so let's try that again. I want to see if this happens again. It doesn't do it the same way. Now, here's the thing: you cannot, you know, you can't quick stack partial stacks. So if I take this out, we split this stack, and we, I can repeat this. I think I can repeat the crash. I'm going to try this one more time. I'm pretty sure I can make it crash every time. I'm pretty sure I can repro this. I love reproducing things. Clip it and send the links to the devs. I'm actually in a chat with the devs right now and I've been sending them the information the entire time. So, here's the here's the big thing. I'm going to split this stack. We're going to split it to give it a amount of two. Splitting that off. We're going to go over here. We'll put this over like this. That quick stacks. Now, I'll try to do this. Even though there's only four slots left, I have 18 in the stack. And I'll spam this. Doesn't work. And now, we'll right-click on the item. And the database is probably going, wait a minute, you're going to do all these things. Is it going to disconnect me? Maybe it won't. Let's withdraw this. Put that one back in. Maybe it only happens when you have a stack of 20. How edge case is the edge case? Maybe it's not happening anymore. Maybe it was something else doing it. Not enough reproduction. Could be anything. Unlikely hotfix.
Hm. You cannot quick snack a resource unless your addition is less than the maximum combined stack size. If an item stacks to 20 and the target stack has 14, you cannot double click a stack of 20 into it. It must be a stack of six or less. This feels awkward and cumbersome as you must manually split stacks before quick stacking. There we go. That's a that's a weird feeling one. That's definitely a weird feeling one. I don't know what that was caused by. The dev says, I think it might be related to splitting stacks. Could be. We can keep splitting stacks. Because we were technically trying to split the stack there while doing that. Which is interesting. Is that a boat? I want a boat. Can you build from chest inventory? Or do you have to do it all manually? There's a smelter. Has it, does it have to be from your stuff? Oh, we've never gotten a piece of charcoal. I'm getting one piece of charcoal. That has unlocked some new materials for me. Spam then split? Could be. We've done all this. We've never gotten a pelt. That's new. Rough spool of thread. Those are stockpiles. We need to find out where Cronus has put the thread machine. Where is it? Is this a smithing station? That's cool. No, I don't want that. Fishing station. Oh, this is new. I'm just trying to craft anything that I have never seen before. So that way I unlock as many new recipes as possible. Right? And this is the Scholar system. Scholar is what I want to level. I don't know anything about it. And I want to level it as much as possible. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make a bunch of basic pigment. I'm going to claim that. And that gives me the ability to make basic ink. So I'm going to make all of the pigment. The scholar was the thing that is most interesting to me. Yeah. I'm getting a scholarship, Jet. Also, by the way, um, the goblin army grows strong. There are so many of you from so many walks of life. I have something that's really cool. There is a member of our community that actually works in... Let me, let me get the exact title here. Let me see. He is a chemist working in pet nutrition currently. And we've been talking about formulating a ferret diet for the rescue. So we can have a better time of building the diet that we need to. Yeah. Oh, is there no sound? Did the game sound crash? Oh, it did. Let me fix that. Audio game is not working. One moment. I'm going to link this over to here. And I'm going to link it back into the game. Sorry about that. I didn't realize that had broke. It must have happened when it crashed. There we go. Now it's good. Yeah, so we're actually we're forming a ferret diet out of this. And I've given him a whole bunch of research, a whole bunch of data... All the stuff that I know, all the stuff that Shay knows, we've been in all to him, and uh, we've just been working on it. Yeah. Recipes to cook ferrets? No. 
to get food for them. To form a, a good raw food and ferret diet for the rescue to make sure that they get the best possible nutrition. Pulling in more of an expert than we are, right? So they taste better? Yes. <laughs> Gotta make sure your ferrets taste good, right? That's part of it. Wait, why is this paused? Shouldn't be paused. Can only one person craft at this station at a time? Is that what that is? Not enough stamina. Okay, I started to die. I need a house. Oh, you know what I'll do? I'm just gonna eat. Spam. Pocket is in use by another player. There we go. We're gonna continue this. I am becoming a scholar. If you start projects, I will finish them with my scholar powers. By the way. All you have to do is you start projects and then you walk away and I can actually craft them and I'll gain all the experience for scholar and your stuff gets made. This way you can actually have specialists doing different tasks. I want to be the lore master. Yes. God of scholarship. I dig that actually. Yeah, specialization is going to be big. And I'm really excited for that, actually. So I can start on each one of these. I need to go get a lot more flowers. Cool boat. I don't want that. God damn it. So to make these, we need to get basic fish oils. I need rough plant fiber to make rough parchment. How to make rough plant fiber. Not this station. Which station is it? There's so many stations. Oh, God. Oh, God. There, have this. I need a I need to build a house. Time to build me a little shelter. So we can have multiple shelters. It looks like the pocket is in use by another player. Pop up does not go away. The pocket is in use by another player alert does not fade out over time that is just permanent on the screen now another bug what's up help this guy out what's up first time live watcher here just normally checking on youtube i saw your short about five minutes ago about doom spirals the passing of my father recently and my family leaving me alone as well as getting fired from my job. I don't know if I have time. I don't know if I have it in me to do better. You do. You may not feel it right now. But you do. Money is gone and so is the drive. I was wondering if you had good advice on getting back into writing or music. Even you don't want to. You have to understand something. It's okay to not feel creative right now. Right now is not forever. It's very easy a lot of the times for us to feel like, Ah, this is how things will always be. But when has it ever been true? It never has. Like, I've gone through some really terrible shit in my life, too. I was homeless for a year. I used to be married, right? Got a divorce. Horrible feeling. But that's not every day. Those are brief moments of really horrible shit that you deal with, and then things change. So, if you're having one of those bad times, it doesn't mean that bad time is forever. It means that bad time is right now. And it's time to start constructing the future you want to have, which takes time. So you deal with it. You do it. And then, something that happened in the past. That's it. So don't worry. 
I know it sucks. And it's okay for it to suck. It's okay for you not to feel creative right now. But it's not forever. Don't don't ever forget that. Yeah, this too shall pass is a big one, dude. Let's see. Yeah, it's too often we attribute things like that. Fleeting fleeting issues. Things that are only for that time period. To being permanent. It's too often. Just takes time, man. What is this? Ooh. Okay. So we can har- can we not harvest these? It's growing something, clearly. I'm gonna go create- oh, that's a well there. I need to make a- a bucket. Here's an interesting thing. I can just do this. There we go. So just by adding all these to my inventory, I can unlock everything that I wanted to. No problem. Got seeds. So this is going to unlock a whole ton of recipes for me this way. Which is good. So I can go around each one of these and just be like, I want all the things. Because Kronos and them have obtained so many resources and now I'm getting all of the recipes for those resources. So this is kind of the catch-up mechanic. You like join a guild and then you get access to all the stuff. The thing that's interesting to me is there's so much crafting, there's so much depth to all of this, that it immediately makes you lost if you do this catch-up this way. That's why I want to specialize. That's why I specifically want to specialize in, like, I want to be the scholar, right? Like, I want to craft ink and make parchment and do that kind of stuff. Because specializing lets you gain mastery over that general area. Yeah, thousands of hours worth. Like, 100% is thousands of hours worth. I want to do either scholar work or I want to be a chef, right? But I immediately feel like there's so much depth into each of these crafting areas that I, I can actually just kind of really actually specialize in one of them. You could do the, the thing. Which I think is cool. I think it's really cool, actually. Empty bucket. Oh my god, there's so many of these. Mask fragment. Schematic perfected pyrolite knife. Interesting. So you can get schematics. I wonder how those schematics actually work. Are they consumed on use? Because they stack. They they must be consumed. They must be. Right? Hello, Kronos. Oh, wait. I don't want that. I'm trying to put that... <laughs> I can't get rid of that. Oh, well. Here, have this. I'm locked in, Kronos. I'm giving you the items from the chest. <laughs> Pocket is in use by another player. Wait, what? Did it just delete those items? Interesting. Equip tool. I got rid of my flint quill. I now have the pyrolite quill. Okay. I'm still unlocking all these recipes because I'm interacting with the materials for the first time. I need to go get a ton of flowers. Oh my god. 
Okay, there we go. So I'm going to go harvest just an absolute shitload of flowers after this. And then we'll get that unlocked so that I can go and do everything else. Are these stone chests? What is that? I'm just going to dump all my stuff in here. Keeping that one. There we go. Dumping all my stuff. In that stone chest there. And maybe somebody else will be able to find value in this quill. Because I don't need it. Alright. Off we go. It is time to go find flowers. A bajillion of them. I need the lobby flowers, though. None of these will work. Yeah. Mm, might be over here on the grasslands. I think these are the types of flowers you get in this biome. And we need the lower level flowers over here. Lower tier, anyway. Hmm, see any. Interesting. Finding materials is definitely going to be difficult. Even though they respawn, you will be material locked 100%. Unless you find good sources of material. We've got ads. I'm going to wait. H. Grew's 10 with 500 bits said, Hey Thor. Have you heard of the artist Fish in a Birdcage? I'd recommend no. giving him a listen. A fun thing to know about him is he titles all his songs with a rule number, with his most recent being rule number 34, which was released on April 1st, Yard Cheer 500. <laughs> You're Something goblin. the wise with 500 bits said Dan Clancy recently showed off the new Twitch mobile app, which will add scrollable short form content like shorts, in the form yep. of clips which is cool because everyone already has a bunch of clips waiting on their channel. Yep. You're a great case study for discoverability and clips because of shorts. Would be cool to talk to him about it. It would be cool. I'm actually really interested to see how that goes. Um, we knew about that for a little bit, and I, I've been waiting for that to kind of get announced, and I'm interested to see how that feature goes. Really interested in that. Basically, Twitch is going to have scrollable shorts from our, our clips on the, on the phone app. They're trying to improve the phone app dramatically. Yeah, it's a cool feature. I, we're waiting to see how well it does, you know. Yokel Abductee with 500 bits said hi Thor, I have just received some devastating news, my mam mm. has been diagnosed with metastasis brain cancer after last year surviving breast Shit. cancer, the doctor's prognosis is grim, giving her only a few weeks. At least I know I can come here to this stream for comfort from your kind and empathetic words of wisdom and the chillness of the stream to be able to reset my saneness when I need it. It's gonna be a really tough time man, it is. Only thing you do is spend as much time with her as possible. It's, I think the biggest thing you have to understand is people are going to tell you it gets better. It does not get better. It's different. And it's okay that it's different. And it's okay to be upset. It's okay to be, you know, devastated. Doesn't need to get better. It is okay that it is different now. But it is something we all go through. Losing your parents, you losing your grandparents, all of that is something that all of us have happened. So, you can at least share comfort in that. And that it is a common problem. Not just you alone, you know? Sucks. Sorry to hear that, man. Died UMX with 500 bits said thanks for answering my question on Monday. 500 Always. characters is difficult to fit a complex question into. It is. I think you were mostly right. I enjoy the puzzle solving, the cycle of tweaking and seeing the result. But yeah. that requires something to already exist, and getting to that point is what I quickly lose focus on. Makes sense. That, and analysis paralysis. Anyway, analysis paralysis I'm making a Lunar tough. Lander style semi-educational game, where the player has to design the auto landing system, no manual control allowed. Ooh, that's cool. I think that's a really neat idea. Yeah, I'd be interested in seeing more about that, man. I'm trying, oh, there we go, we get some berries over here. I'm at least going to harvest some berries while I'm out here. Because we can bring those back. 
I'm interested in seeing if we can find some more flowers anywhere. The old base had some good flowers around it, but it looks like they don't respawn very fast. So it's really going to be about managing your land correctly. The more people you have, the harder it is to manage the land. So the better you have to be about resource management. What I could do... Hey, Kronos, do we have the ability to make a level 2 machete? Is that possible? I'm working on that. Okay, because if we could do a level 2 machete, I can go and start getting plants of level 2 variety. And if we can do that, then maybe we can do like a little bit better on this. Oh, that's a cargo item. We don't want that. Because then I can start getting flowers from other sources. And I haven't found any other flowers that we can get just yet. Oh, wait. I've had a whole stock of flowers. Yeah! Oh, it's wild grains. That's totally different. This is a... This is a food item. So we can use this to grow plants. Maybe I'll go down the farming route. Farming seems fun. Yeah, this is a this is a grain thing. I'm gonna get us all the grains anywhere. I'm not seeing any flowers anywhere out here though. I love that it's like a resource management thing, you know? Yeah, bread for the mods. I actually really like that it's a resource management thing. Where we really have to think about it and be like, how much of this are we gonna collect? We can make bread? Good. I wonder how often these respawn. Also, is this like a node, right? Like, if I don't fully consume all of it, does it regrow? And if I do fully consume all of it, is it gone? Like, how long does it take? Resource respawn randomly in the world? Not necessarily where you harvested them from? That's interesting. If this goes unharvested for a while, does it not respawn? Can, can an area just become overgrown with stuff? That's a big question. Right now I'm getting more foraging skill. It's spreading. Resources also seem to respawn invisible sometimes. At invisible flint blocked by buildings. Interesting. That's weird. Is this game paid? No, it's enclosed alpha. I actually don't know what their monetization model is going to be. In fact, um, Alessandro, uh, one of the developer side, do you guys have a public monetization model for this yet? Or have you guys not decided how you're going to do the monetization for it? Is it fully free to play? Well, there's got to be a monetization model around it somewhere, right? Like, is it co paid cosmetics? Like, is there like a premium tier? There's got to be something. You can't have a fully free video game if it's a live service game, generally. I just love watching you and feeling a part of a nice place online. Thanks. Anytime. Anytime, dude. There was a blog post on monetization. Can you link it to me? This is on Steam. Uh, look at the pinned comment. Have you played Factorio? Yeah, I love Factorio. Let's see this. Our thoughts on game monetization. This is going to be interesting. Let's see. Our thoughts on game monetization. This is from Clockwork Labs. These are the guys who are making the game. These announcements, we've understandably gotten quite a few questions regarding how we plan to monetize Bitcraft. Monetization for a game is one of the most important things to get right, not only for the company and the success of the game, but also for the community. Because it's such a complex topic and is sometimes associated with strong emotions, I wanted to share with you analysis of current state of monetization in games and our philosophy of monetization. We usually talk about monetization in games through terms like buy to play, subscription, free to play, pay to win, pay to progress, etc. However, rather than just categorizing games into these broad monetization schemes, I'd like to instead try to arrive at a deeper understanding of game monetization by taking a look at what historically has been monetized in games. That is to say, what are the things that game companies are selling 
And what are the game impacts of selling those things? That's a good that's a good way to look at that, frankly. Good it's a better analysis than just saying that, if that makes sense. When you monetize a given aspect of a game, it will have both a positive and negative impacts on not only the gameplay, but also the company and community. Additionally, monetization is inseparable from game design. It's impossible to change one without affecting the other. True. It's absolutely critical to get it right to have a long-running game that players love. Let's start by listing some of the commonly monetized aspects of games, i.e. things that, that games sell. This list is not exhaustive, but covers many more popular things to monetize. The game itself. Yeah, just buy the game. Access to the game or live service, subscription fees, early access to the game, cosmetics, collectible characters, convenience features, so quality of life stuff. It shouldn't be. Ability to progress faster, in-game currency, items which otherwise are earned through time, effort, or skill. Less commonly, item, uh, less commonly, games will also sell access to exclusive clubs or ability to run organizations like guilds. In order to distinguish these things from other monetization schemes, we define monetization schemes as clever ways to more efficiently monetize things listed above, e.g. premium currencies, subscription token schemes, loot boxes, etc. They're just kind of an ends to a means, right? It's, an, it's another way of monetizing these items, but in a different way. So monetizing the game itself. Monetizing the game itself has one major upside, is that everyone who plays the game gets exactly the same thing. The game. Assuming this is the only monetization for the game, that puts everyone in a level playing field as long as you can get into the field in the first place. This is a huge win because it's very easy to keep uh, design a balanced game around this assumption. Unfortunately, there's several significant downsides for players, the community, and the company. Biggest one? Live service game. If you're a live service game and you only have an entrance fee, it can be very devastating. You have to have some kind of maintenance fee in some way, either through monetizing consumable or not consumables, but like cosmetics or a monthly sub in order to keep up a live service game. That's a very difficult thing. Yeah, servers cost, man. If selling the game is exclusive monetization mechanism, it doesn't allow them to run the game as a live service because all the revenue is collected up front. Bingo. This is why you have to have expansions. This is why you have to have cosmetics. Like, even look at Guild Wars 2. Guild Wars 2 has no monthly sub, but they have a ton of cosmetic options and other things in the game that you can get in order for them to have that maintenance cost for the servers. Monetizing access to the game or live service. Access to a live service through subscription or similar mechanism is similar to selling the game itself. It has many of the same pros, e.g. level playing field and cons, e.g. smaller community, but it does allow the company to continuously fund development of the game indefinitely. Some additional pros are that paying for a live service reduces the uh, chance that players' expectations will be out of whack since they're not paying for everything all up front. Smart. Yeah. Forces the developer to make a game that remains fun for years. You have to keep producing content if you have a live service maintenance cost. If you're constantly doing this, right? Like, if you're constantly paying every month, the player expects new content every month. Or they go, why am I paying for my sub? If you're not releasing new stuff, why am I paying? Right? That is that is the big thing that you end up getting from a player base. Yeah. It implies many of your players will never experience a huge portion of the game that you as a developer have spent time and effort creating and disincentivizes disincentivize the dev from making too much of the content accessible to players who don't purchase a subscription. That is the other side of it. The developers cannot make it so that you experience everything because then why would you pay for the sub? You just cancel your sub until they put out new content. You need to make it very thick. Right? The game has to be thick for that to happen. Other monetizable aspects of games. Every other aspect of a game that you can monetize that comes with its own set of pros and cons must be evaluated independently in the context of the game's design. What works for one game doesn't necessarily work for another. Our philosophy is this. We should avoid selling anything in-game that is understood to be earned, and we should always sell things that are understood to be bought. Good. 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 If it's an earnable thing in the game, you should not be able to buy it for real money. It should not be a... Your credit card should not be a skip button. That is a really good quote. That is a really goddamn good quote. Credit card should never be a skip button. That sounds almost like circular reasoning, but we feel it's actually an immensely important distinction. It is. Since it's pretty abstract, I think it's helpful to use the analogy. Analogy: We should never be in the business of selling medals of honor, and we should always be in the business of selling Lamborghinis. <laughs> True. You should earn the medal of honor, and you should buy the Lamborghini. I agree with that. I super agree with that. Medal of honor represents something that can only be earned, and a Lamborghini represents something that can only be bought. 
There is no reason why these two things can't co- exist within the same context. Mini games don't have the concept of Lamborghinis. Their entire game is built around the concept of earning things, Medal of Honor, through gameplay. So when they go to monetize their game, they run into trouble. Do they sell their Medals of Honor? Mini games say, of course we won't sell them, but we will sell things that make it easier to get them. That's the same as selling them. This undermines the very concept of the Medal of Honor. The point of the Medal of Honor is that it can only be earned. Lowering the bar for those willing to pay is almost as bad as selling them directly. In fact, it's, it's worse, frankly. It's equivalent to saying, well, a lot of cheating is bad. But is it really bad if we just allow a little bit of cheating? You know? Yeah, I agree. These devs are awesome, dude. This is indeed the basis for a lot of pay for convenience seen in MMOs these days. Mixing these concepts is how we believe pay to win can begin to creep into every facet of a game and dilute the value of playing a game. The problem is that uh, is not that people are paying to get something they want. It's that people are paying to get what you were led to believe could only be earned. Smart. They have a very deep understanding of game economy. That's good. That's a really good thing. Does this mean that people don't want Lamborghinis? Just because they can't get a Medal of Honor? Of course not. It just serves a different purpose. For example, if Riot Games sold the ability to climb the rankings in League of Legends, there would be no meaning to the rankings. Monetizing rankings in that case is directly counter to the purpose of the rankings in the first place and is destructive to the fun of the game. Skins in the context of League of Legends, however, are a completely different story. League skins are a great example of the perfect Lamborghini. Selling cosmetics. That's what it is. Smart. Very smart. They're great to show off. They don't help you get some other Medal of Honor, and no one expects you to have earned them. Funny thing is, if you don't have a skin, people look down on you in League. They're like, oh, he's not a serious, like, singed player. Doesn't even have a skin, dude. Nah. <laughs> True. It's 100% true, though. Can a game have compelling enough Lamborghinis to support the development of the game without compromising the Medals of Honor? Yes, it can. That depends entirely on the game and the game design, but it's clearly demonstrated that it can be done successfully. I will caveat that you cannot, as a matter of game design and practicality, always dry the line so cleanly. That's true. It becomes especially difficult if players are able to sell things among themselves. For example, we may not always be able to prevent players from selling their own Medals of Honor. You can, of course, prevent players from trading certain things, as many games have done. But in a game which is based around economics and trade, items need to be tradable. Even if you prevent trade, players will find a way to trade outside of the game for real money. Yeah, they'll be like, hey, I've got a location where they spawn. I'll sell you the location if you give me real money. RMT is always a problem. It will always be a problem. If you don't know what RMT is, it's real money transaction. This is a very common thing. Win trading in MMOs is another thing like in PvP games. Like, they'll do win trading to raise you through the ranks. They'll do boosting to raise you through the ranks. There are all kinds of different stuff, man. All kinds of different stuff. Yeah, 20 bucks for a treasure map. Bingo. It's exactly what that is. Fortnite skin accounts. All kinds of things. All kinds of things. We can. What we can always do is avoid selling Medals of Honor ourselves so that even if players do trade them, at least in the case the original recipient is receiving a benefit for having earned it. Understand that we will always try to draw the line cleanly where possible. That's always the goal we have in mind. I apologize for taking that analogy entirely too far, but it's the clearest way to express your philosophy on monetization design. What does this mean for Bitcraft? Given that Bitcraft is a community sandbox MMORPG, by this point in this long post, it should become clear that for us, monetizing access to Bitcraft is pretty much non-starter. Long term, it will live and die by the healthiness of its community. Part of the vibrant community and bustling economy is that the world is full of people. We also believe we're building something new and interesting, and we want as many people as possible to have access to it. It simply does not make sense to restrict access. For those reasons alone, we believe Bitcraft must be a free game at launch and remain free, a free service indefinitely. There's another important point to make about free access to the game, though. MMOs are an inherently difficult game to make. They take a lot of iteration and many years to perfect. Personally, I would feel much better letting the players decide at which point they feel the game is good enough to spend their money in, rather than potentially misleading players up front. It gives us more room to be experimental without feelings like we've broken promises the player paid us to deliver on. In the end, I think that will result in a better final game. You guys get it. There are very few companies that get it this early in the game. That's good that's really good with regards to what we plan on selling specifically we believe that we have some very interesting and innovative ideas in the space but we're not ready to share the details at this time 
Just know that any decision that we make with regards to monetization will be aligned with this philosophy. Good. Good. I am interested to see what direction that goes. I am interested to see it. It sounds to me like cosmetics are the highest thing. The one weakness that I see for cosmetics in this game is while the world is shared, unlike a game like World of Warcraft or Final Fantasy XIV, there is no shared town. What we do a lot of the times with cosmetics is we sit in Dalaran and we show off our cool mount. That doesn't exist in this. So I'm interested to see how they solve that problem. That is definitely a problem in terms of I can't show off my cool Lamborghini, right? So I'm interested to see what they do with this. Yeah, this was written 2021. These devs are very based. Yeah, no, this is good. Yeah, this is a really good thing. I think this is a really good thing. I'm interested to see how the devs solve these. Having that kind of a core philosophy is incredibly compelling to me. Yeah, I'm glad we made a section of our Discord for this. I'm glad that we're playing this game, and I'm glad the community is involved. I'm excited for this. Yeah. What does base mean? It means that... <laughs> Here, let me, let me give you some zoomerisms. Based means to be unique and be your own self. It is a slang word... Popularized by the rapper Lil B and used across social media spaces and offline. It is not to be confused with to be based somewhere. Yeah. It just means, oh, he's going his own way, doing his own thing. He doesn't he doesn't go along with anybody else. He's like, no, I'm doing I'm doing my thing. This is how I feel. Yeah, that's what it is. That's all it is. It's a it's a slang term. That's what it is. Yeah, it's not based on something. It's just it's slang, dude. Yeah, that does, does not mean biased. It's very funny. There's so, there's so much Zoomer slang. You know what my favorite Zoomer slang is? You ready for this? I'll show you my favorite Zoomer slang. My favorite Zoomer slang is Riz. Do you know why Riz is my favorite Zoomer slang? Because all they did was they took the center of the word charisma, which means the same thing, and turned it into their own word. That's all. It, it's just charisma. Riz. That's all it is. Riz just means charisma. You're too lazy to say charisma, Zoomers. You're too lazy. You're too lazy. Insane to me. Actually insane to me. Blows me away. Flipping a grunt is a pretty good one, dude. <laughs> Oh, flipping a grunt. It's mind-blowing. Yeah, it is. It's just it's just charisma. It doesn't mean chorizo. God, what's the matter with you? Chorizo, dude. It's very funny, though. But no, th this is a really good direction for this game. I think that's a good direction. I think the devs have a very good take on that. Um, I'm excited to see what they do with that. Because it's, it's rare that you get a studio, a startup studio, that's making games like this, right? especially large-scale games like this, that understands the deep implications of monetization inside of a shared space, right? And that's really what that is. What is Ligma? My friend. Ligma balls. So sorry. So sorry it had to happen to you like that. That's... Oh, that's sad. Now you know. Now you know. Oh. Yeah. 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 You guys remember when uh, those two guys got the entire news using Twitter? You remember that? So when Elon Musk bought Twitter, these two guys went out in front of Twitter and they had, like, boxes with them. Uh, and they were, they were acting as if they were employees that just got fired and the news ate it up. And they had the last names. One of them was Ligma, and the other one had the last name of Johnson. And the news thought they were real people, and their names were everywhere for like a week. It was really funny. It was really, really funny. I couldn't handle it. I was like, you idiots. You didn't even... Really? News was just putting their name everywhere. They're like, I can't believe that Elon Musk fired Ligma and Johnson. And it's like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, God damn it. Yeah, 100% got him. Absolutely, dude. I love that stuff on the internet, man. The internet is, is great for memes. It's a good meme. Oh. 
I just noticed that your hair color is brownish. Yeah, in game it is. Yeah, I changed the brownish. In real life, my hair is like this dark brownish with like red tone in it. I don't. When I was young, it was blonde. I was a little blonde kid. Bonjo is getting me to make a licorice soda, like black licorice. I'd drink that. I don't even drink soda anymore. But I drink that. I love licorice, dude. Hollow Oak, thank you for the $10 to the moderators, man. What is soda? Uh, liquid death is what that is. Yeah. Yeah. I quit soda and I lost 80 pounds. Mm. Isn't that just sarsaparilla? Kind of, yeah. No, liquid death is water. You're right. That's a company now. Yeah. Dude, I have so many items. I have all this wild grain. I'm getting my foraging up, though, which is good. So when I do find flowers eventually, I'll at least have, like, a very high foraging crit chance. My crit chance is already at level 10. Or 10%, rather. So I'm critting quite often now. I need a higher level machete. Cronus, let me know if you manage to make a higher level machete so I can get out there and, like, get those. What's the difference between soda and sparkling water? Sugar. Is there luck? Yeah, so you see crit chance there? That's just, like, faster. I don't think I've gotten anything, like, special materials, but I'm also farming low-level materials. You want more keys? Yeah, sure, we'll do more keys. Let me go send one out on YouTube first. There you go. There's that one on YouTube. And I'm sending one out on Twitch now. There we go. You're gay? Congratulations. It's 2024. No one cares. Yeah. You... Yeah. It's not surprising. It's not surprising. It's n it doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. <laughs> A little bit of resident sleeper there. Yeah. Fantastic. Many people are. Very cool. You know, like... Yeah. D good for... Good. You know what? It yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I just think it's funny. People are like, I'm going to say something outrageous, right? Like, they just say they're gay. It's like, okay. Yeah, cool. Yeah, get it, you know? Have fun. Does it get progressively more difficult? I don't know yet because we're still at tier one. It's very clear that you need to specialize in an area. Right now, I'm trying to specialize as much into foraging as possible, so I can get a very high crit chance for foraging. And then after that, I'm going to try and uh, bring up Scholar, because I want to I wanna do that. Kronos gave me a, a nice quill, and I think he's trying to build a item for me to do better foraging, so I can go and get more flowers. Better flowers, anyway. Right now, I'm getting a bunch of wild grains, which I don't know what I can use those for yet. We'll find out. So I'm going to bring those back to town. They're likely for farming. I've got a lot of wild grain seeds. So it looks like I'm randomly getting grain seed that is more rare. So it does look like there's at least luck-based drops of some kind. I just don't know what they are. I don't know how I'm getting See, I just got one. Yeah, there's luck-based drops. For sure. I now have an 11% crit chance. Thanks for the code. Anytime, dude. Good to see you today. Good to see you, dude. What is this game about? It is a open world crafting MMO, and the map is enormous, dude. We are just we have just seen this. It is huge. From here to there was a hundred. And we're at fourteen hundred and eleven hundred. So like the map is big. Big. Can we join the alpha? Yeah, I keep giving out keys. The devs gave me twenty keys and I've been giving them out slowly. I've been giving them out one at a time on YouTube and one at a time on Twitch. I am literally getting that bread, that is true. Actually, I'm getting that grain, which will then turn into bread. I'm getting that bread with extra steps, is what's happening here. How can I join the guild? Uh, Kronos will have to give you the location to go join it. and I, we're, we're restricted by in-game mechanics, where we can't add everybody in, so we're slowly expanding that. It takes time.
Is this an NFT game? No. There is no indication that they're doing anything with NFT or crypto or any of that kind of stuff. Whatsoever. In fact, they removed everybody who's doing anything with with crypto at all from the entire leaderboard. <laughs> Which was quite funny because everyone's like, crypto! It's all about crypto! They're like, no, it's not. Go away. In fact, let me show you this. You're going to really enjoy this. If we go to their Twitter, just so you can feel a little bit more secure in this. Bitcraft. Going to go look at their game real quick. From Bitcraft Online Crypto. You ready for this? There is no crypto, no Web3, no blockchain, no NFTs, no drops, etc. in Bitcraft Online. Bitcraft is an upcoming open world sandbox MMORPG that we hope you and your friends will enjoy. If you showed up expecting crypto or similar, there is none. We hope you will stick around and in to enjoy the awesome community and our game once it is out and ready to play. None. Good. Good for them. Good. I don't want any of that shit in the game anyway. Because that shit sucks. Alright. I've got all of my stuff. I'm, I'm probably going to go get some more berries, too. We need some more food in the, in the base. Some good food. Eat some berries along the way. Because this will give me everything I need for producing fertilizer. So we can use that, too. Oh. We got ads. We're going to wait. Time to do some so more Pay 2 with 50,000 dong said how to make ground beef taste better. Ooh. You know what I like to do with ground beef? I like to put garlic powder, onion powder, salt, pepper, and cumin in it when I'm making hamburgers. I really like a good hamburger with some cumin in it. Cumin is really, really nice with that. And I know that may sound weird. You may have never tried that before, but you might like it. You might actually really like it. Yeah. You can also mix other types of meats into it. Pork into a, a beef patty. Um, lamb into that to kind of lighten that up. Veal into that can be kind of nice. There's all kinds of different stuff. It's really good. Different ways of doing it. Yeah. Cruel Fee with 500 bits said BTW. I was able to buy bits yesterday, but not on record stream. Rip oh. Kappa Infinite for me. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Lemon pepper. That's nice. You can do that. Yeah. Cumin's a Tomo Tom Tom with 500 bits said, Hey Thor, how's it going? Stay awesome. Do awesome things. Today You're I awesome. just wanted to tell you that you made a mistake. Oh. I'm going to get heartbound for free with the channel points. I'm That's going fine. to watch so much and get those points and there's nothing you can do to stop me. But while I wait, could you put the demo in the point rewards too? It's just too expensive for my blood. The demo is free, you 500. But no, that's totally fine. Uh, if you are watching the stream that much, you are more than, more than paying for the, the game. 100% just by being here. That is bringing a lot of value to the community and it's a huge deal to me, so thank you. Thank you. One Mandalo, one with 1,000 bits, said, Ya cheer, 1,000 high Thor. I was truly touched by the amazing hype train and I think you deserve it so much. Blew me away, Looking dude. forward to what the game jam will bring. Also, you said a while ago that you love Hotel California, actually. Was that serious? And if yes, yes it is. what do it's you one think of my the unplugged songs. version from Hell Freezes Over? Yar I've, never goes. I've never actually heard that. I'll have to listen to it. But yeah, it is one of my favorite Since songs. Since Spence with 500 bits said, Hello Thor, I have a banger of a question for you today. Oh. I have made the jump and have gotten into coding and programming. Starting in Python, I have made a slot machine and password generator. Okay. I want to learn more and make this a potential career for myself. Cool. Should I focus on self-learning or sign up for a boot camp degree program? Why not both? Like, to be real with you, if, if you want to do it, if you want to go all in, if you really enjoy this, why not both? Like, learn as much as you possibly can. Learn as much as you possibly can. I want to kill that bird. Oh. Oh, get wrecked. Yeah, waddle away. Waddle away while I shoot you with arrows. Dude, look at him get wrecked. My character is terrible at using a bow. I find this game to be incredibly accessible for people with physical disabilities. And the reason why is because a lot of it is just point and click. Even on the map, you can actually open the map and be like, I want to move over here. And your character will actually run all the way there. By the way, I'm not even going to harvest that bird. I just wanted to kill it. That's right. I just wanted it dead. It's true. 
What are you gonna do about it, chat? So happy about that? I know. It's really nice. <gasps> I need a level two machete so bad, dude. We don't have any flowers. How am I gonna become a better scholar if we don't have any flowers? Uncovered new land. There's so much land in this land. Words aren't real, that's true. Oh, dude, the map is huge. The map is enormous. When is it planned on releasing to public testing? So this is closed alpha. I don't know what their timeline is for this. Um, in fact, Alessandro, if you were there, do you have an answer for that question? He's one of the developers. Not official announced? Okay. Yeah, they don't have an official announcement on this yet. At all. There's some flowers at that location. Ooh. Hmm. I'm thinking about this. Is there a river in the background? Wait, is that Tortuga all the way over there? I don't think so. I don't think that is. Is it? No, that's a different town. That's somebody else's city. Who is that? I love that, like, we can just see people out in the distance. We have no idea who they are. What happened with Helldivers? I haven't seen. I've been playing Helldivers so much, dude. And I wanted to try Bitcraft out today because they've got new stuff going on. Wait a minute. Why is Vandalon 4 getting attacked? We have to take Tibbet, dude. We have to take Tibbet. Vandalon 4 is getting attacked. God damn it. It's a defense mission. Oh. In uh, in Helldivers. It's Helldivers. Vandalon 4. Look at all these mini bases. Oh, oh, oh. No. this how do we what is this read this is the fifth ruin I've explored in the past week this one is much simpler and seemingly less dangerous the others were riddled with traps or just plain unstable one wrong move and they come crumbling down I've left notes with my findings in as many as I could I hope it'll help future adventurers come to see my collection have you So we just got a trade guy. At any time. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Full, like, progression system for itemization through those guys. Because this is the largest of these I've seen so far. The largest of the ruins? I didn't know if it was something we could interact with in, like, any capacity. You had two, two machetes for all of us. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, what's up? <gasps> Why, thank you. Yes! Wait, what? Okay, it's a tier 1 tool still, but it is a higher level tier 1, somehow?
I need to get the skill to level 20 first, and then get the next tier. Okay, it'll harvest faster. Perfect. Thank you very much for that. I'm going to go over here and see what we can't do with this. Because I have a whole ton of plants now. What is this? So, wild grain. Doesn't look like I can do anything with wild grain at all. Huh. What do I do with wild grain? Let's look in the open compendium. It's in Phoenix Trail Mix. It's a food. Okay, so let's go to the cooking station. Is there a cooking station nearby somewhere? Usually it's like a campfire, yeah? Or is it this? Is this a smelter, though? Okay, that's a rough smelter. What about this? Is this for cooking? This is a kiln, so that's not for cooking. Do we not have a campfire? I don't know if we do. Oh, it's, oh, it's that. It's that. Found it. There we go. Okay, so I need to make all of this. Plain trail mix. We're going to make 93 of that. There we go. There we go. Now I can become a chef. Slowly over time. I see a lot of berries. I'm going to drop all this stuff on the ground. Don't need that. There we go. Let him cook. Cooking. Ramsey ain't got shit. That's right. Soon I'll be high enough level. So interestingly enough, I don't think there's critting when it comes to this, is there? Because I have a hit chance of 100%, but I don't have any crit chance. My tool power is only 8. So until I get to a higher level, I won't have any chance to crit at all, it looks like. What are you playing? Bitcraft, yeah. And see it all over the stream. There is, you can do it with smelting. You're getting XP, yeah. So what I'm doing right now is every time you hear that noise, I'm actually getting experience for cooking right now. That cooking XP, where I have 528 XP now, you know, 544. When I crit, it will give me 16 instead of 8. And when I level up here, it's probably going to take the, the hit chance and turn it into a 2% crit chance. A 1% crit chance. Oof. So I'm actually gaining cooking levels when I'm doing this. How do I look at my character? No issues. Build. Is it build? No, it's not build. We don't want that. Inventory? No. Compendium? No. Is it H? I was thinking character is C for some reason. So if we go to professions. Oh, can I just take things? Oh, this is for the actual tools. So this is how we equip the tools. I have a flint pot. So like a really shitty pot, right? And that's why we're only getting 80 XP each time. That's the reason. Because I'm a shitty cook. Yeah. Yeah, there's a potential to be RuneScape, but with more world building, that is exactly the case. Why is this stopped? Not enough stamina. Oh, shit. Yeah, so now I get a rest. It's a poor craftsman that blames his tools. Nah, dude. Cast iron for days. <laughs> As somebody who cooks every day, if you got shit tools, you got shit tools. <laughs> Where do you download this game? Check the pinned comment. Thanks for your kind words earlier. Anytime, dude. Anytime.
Get it some of these alerts. Dinner Manon with 500 bits said good morning everyone. Thor, morning. you have a community that likes to troll you. That is called community-based trolling, or CBT for short. No, no, no. Enjoy. You're training me that hitting that button is a bad thing. You know that. The great goddess Freya with five New Zealand dollars said great to see Beans almost all better after his little emergency. Yes. Yeah. I'm Congratulations on doing CBT, complete no. Beans therapy. Two in a row. Two in a row. Two in a row. It's the worst Lounge toy. King with two dollars said I've hit a block in coming up with Fruit Fact 777. Fruit Fact. Fruit Facts. No more Fruit Facts, apparently. You could have hidden something in there. You didn't do it. I'm proud of you. David Tiffany with $10 said, Hey Thor, I just want you to know your shorts really have helped me the last few days. I lost my job and separated from my fiancé. Now I'm going Oof. to be working on a ship. Thanks for your positivity. Working in a ship? That's kind of cool. You know? Go be a sailor, man. It's kind of neat. Yeah. It's kind of cool as hell, actually. No, it's not crying banana suit Thor. No. No. When is the crying banana Thor emote? Uh, so the, the did I break it emote is apparently going to happen sometime this week. Hmm. I can't wait to get a better tool. I think it's the first thing that I'm realizing with this is like the higher level tools are incredibly impactful. Because I'm getting so little against my my actual skill here, right? The crit chance is a huge deal. The tool is a huge deal. Because like if we look at this, let's go to H here. We're gonna look at my professions. This is only for cooking. It's only 8 damage. The pot power is 8. And if we go to my harvesting, foraging, right? That one is 12 machete power. So like 50% more at the first tier up. That's so huge. If we go to scholar, 50% more. Pyrolite quill. Yeah. For some reason, Pirate Software is in the lead in the leaderboard in XP. I mean, yeah, we we won it. Yes. <laughs> I just want to get selected to be given a key. Oh, we just put them in chat randomly. Yeah, we got to craft better tools. You won by five miles, dude. The community is huge. Community is massive. Yeah, leaderboard's not in game. It's on the website. I think the biggest thing that I'm, I'm restricted by now is the amount of cooking power that I have. How many keys are left? Let me look. I will give you guys another one. I don't even know how many are left. There goes to YouTube. And there one goes to Twitch. I'm going to craft better tools. I will. No, no. God damn it. No. Oh, you goblins. I swear to God. I swear to God. Oh. oh, server was chugging. Let's go see. Cooking is level four now. Chat is goblins. That's what happened. So it looks like you get twice as much experience as the damage you deal to the craft. So I'm dealing 8 damage each time, so I get 16 XP. Which is kind of interesting. It's very RuneScape in that way. Really RuneScape way of handling this. And I think this is good. I like slow crafting systems like this. The one thing I will say is that audio, I really want it to be randomized in some way. Because it's just the same every time. You don't want that. You want it varied 
by plus 10% pitch, minus 10% pitch, so that it sounds a little bit different each time. Yeah. The dings. I'm going to see if I can turn it off. They're very repetitive this way. I agree. Thank you for the key. Anytime, dude. Sounds like a clock ticking. A little bit. What if they replaced it with the Discord notification sound? But only for April Fools. <laughs> uh, what if they replaced it with a Skype call sound? For the oldies. Like me. But only like one in a hundred of them. All the other ones sounded normal. Team Spain, yeah. ICQ chirp. Yeah, no, dude, 100%. Little Ham has a cool suit. Where'd you get that clothing, dude? The hell? I've almost finished my craft. Yes. Tremix done. Yeah. Sleep in a pile. Have all this food now. Holy shit. That gives a ton of stamina. That is so worth it to craft. What, dude? It gives 80 health and 80 stamina. That is ridiculously worth. Uh, you'll have to talk to Kronos about how to get into the town. Alright, I'm going to get out there and start harvesting again. Run, run, run. I need to find flowers or berries, either of which will bring up the skills that I want. I want to have basically a whole bunch of skills for cooking, and I want to have skills for harvesting, and I want to have skills for scholar. So flowers and berries are kind of the things that I'm after right now. Berries come in tiny little bushes. There's a berry. There we go. Are we winning? We are. Yeah, see, they give me 12, which is going to give me 24 XP each time. Oh, there's one. Here we get our strawberry bushes. Strobes. That is ridiculously faster, Kronos. With a 24 crit, which will give me 48 XP, this is going to speed up very quickly. Better tools are incredibly, incredibly useful. Very immediately obvious. So progression feels quite good. Not collect berry th berry store. No. It's mad with you. Do you like to eat berries? I do. Certified better tool. No. Or crafted better tool. No. Do tools degrade? Not currently. Um, people were saying that the devs were thinking about adding durability. I think durability does make sense. Sixteen damage. Really? It's like a micro crit. Cause crit is twenty four and it did sixteen on that one. Weird. I'm gonna go get this this flower over here. There we go. We found some lavender finally. It'll give us some plant fiber. And some basic flowers. This is exactly what I was after. So this is going to give me the flowers that I need. Specifically so that I can go back into town. Your lavender? If it was your lavender, it'd be in your inventory now, wouldn't it? Now, wouldn't it? Competitive lavender picking. 
That's right. That's right. It's mine now. It's mine now. Yeah, I'll beat you at lavender picking. I'll pick a mean lavender, dude. Cease bullying? I refuse. No, not cease bullying Thor. God damn it. Uh huh? What you got? What's up? Pick it. I only got 21 of the basic flowers. Oh, no, no, you keep that. You keep that. I don't need that. That's, you're fine, dude. Have fun. Go make your craft. I'm trying to get flowers. That's what I'm after. I don't really even need the, the plant fiber. And flowers are kind of rare on these. That's why I'm hoping to get the higher level, like, harvesting. What I'm after is I'm trying to get foraging to level 20. Because if I can get that, then I can get the higher level tool, where we can get the level 2, two machete, and then I can start getting the higher level flowers. Yeah, it's flowers. Flowers I'm after. Flowers is the biggest thing that I'm after. Oh, you have them? Oh. Hmm. Why, thank you. That's incredibly nice of you. That I can use. Thank you. Then we can get it. Counting by Thor. How dare you. Oh yeah, wait. Come back. Come get trail mix. I ran away. I have so much trail mix. I've made so much food. Is there a day-night cycle in this game? I think so. I'm pretty sure that we... Experienced that, kind of, didn't we? Pretty sure we did, right? Air crossover. Yeah, trail mix, my dude. Here is 10 trail mix. Enjoy. What do you got, Darth? What's up? You may also have trail mix. Hey, hell yeah. Yeah, I'll trade all the trail mix for flowers. If you bring me flowers, I will give you trail mix. Because I'm, I'm naturally getting all the materials to make trail mix, and the trail mix is insane. It's like 80 stamina per food. So it's a lot. Yeah. So I'm just going to make food. I'm going to make a billion food. We're losing Tibbet? Better take it. Better focus on Tibbet, dude. Food billionaire. It's true. I'm like, I'm a food billionaire now, dude. It's true. Rich in foods. All I need is I need wild grain and basic berries. And I'm hoping to get my foraging skill up high enough to be able to get to level 2. How does bladder stomach work? Do you need to go body? Oh no, it's a stomach. It's a stomach thing. Although it's funny because you say it's a bladder and it looks like an organ with a yellow indicator. So yeah, you could probably think that that's a bladder, couldn't you? It's <laughs> you're from TikTok, love the content. Make sure that you're following the real channel. There are many fake channels of mine. Yeah. Hey, thanks. That works out. Yeah, there are, there's many fake channels of, of pirate stuff around TikTok. There's only one real one. I should probably add a socialist command. I never did that. If you go to my Twitter, it's the post. It's the, the pinned post. Yeah, it is. It is actually. It does look like a cookie, doesn't it? It's quite funny. Yeah, ironically, people are pirating my content. It's very funny. It's all commodity-based trade. I haven't seen an in-game currency yet. They may exist. Just haven't seen it. My crit chance is now 15%. Hmm. We took the creek? Yeah, we did. Not cookie-based trade, no. Not commodity-based trade. God damn it. Goblins. Goblins, all of you. 
Yeah, no, I have a link tree. I have a link tree. It's over on um on my Twitter. It's the pin pin tweet. Competitive bush trimming. True. But also, how dare you? You mean X? I don't. <laughs> I don't mean X. It's the dumbest name for an app I've ever heard. I miss tweets. I'm never going to call that shit a post. Yeah, it's weird. It's just dumb. Okay, so, our home. I wish to teleport back. Wong. Oh! I don't... I don't think there was an error, game. I refuse to engage with your error. I refuse. I won't do it. I won't do it. I refuse. <laughs> I simply choose not to crash. I simply refuse. Error rejected. Oh look, it's ads. VILQ81 with 500 bits said good morning Goblin Lord. Since the emotions after hype train are back to normal now, Dr. Yes. Watt would like to ask if you were able to visit his detective's office winking face. Not yet. Not yet. I will eventually, though. I will. Troy Tech with 500 bits said eight years ago me and my extended family was eating out at Red Lobster. Mm. My younger brother was bragging he could get the waitress's number and everyone expected him to H as the suave family member. I went to the break area to get away from my family for a bit and ran into her there. Talk for about 10 minutes. When it was time to go she walked up to us and handed me her number saying call me. I'm not supposed to get the girl so I was laughing my off. Level That's 777 H train next at Christmas. That's very funny. That's very funny. Das Bootler with 500 bits said ya cheer 500 hi Thor. Hi. I'm a bit late with this, but I just wanted to tell you the most cursed thing a former government employee can hear, but I will pull oh. an M. Night Shyamalan on it. Thank you for your service. No. To this community that you have built up, I mean, you have inspired countless goblins to improve themselves and make cool stuff. So glad I found my way into this community. Keep on keeping on. Oh, and Dark Desert Highway, 777, buy the demo, etc. Oh, God damn it. There's so many, in there's so much insider baseball. Spartan Anator 007 it's so good. with 500 bits said, Ya cheer 500, check your PO box while you're out tomorrow. Okay. Status shows is waiting for pickup. Not sure right. if you'll need to talk to the post staff to get it or not. I will. Hope it's a cool addition, and that you don't have it already LMAO. I don't know what it is. We'll see. I don't have very Somewhat much Somewhat underscore eccentric with 500 bits said hello Mr. Streamer. Hello. As a bald man I am thoroughly jealous of your hair. So much hair. Gamer of the century levels of hair. Or, so much hair. Wait, does that mean you are the streamer of the century now? Anyway, so much hair. have a nice stream. P.S. Beware of turbines. I have so much hair. I have so much hair. Ugh. So much hair. Full of hair. So you guys think I should restart now? <laughs> it was Madge. I felt like, you know, finally telling it I was gonna crash. That's fine. I allowed the game to crash. I allowed it to crash. Let's go back to crafting. I love they can do community crafts so people can come by and like start a craft and then not spend their resources on it and then I can actually cook. Interesting, you get teleportation sickness, so you get a you get a cooldown on your teleport. That's good. I like that. Cool mechanic. Yeah, they gave my account Q priority. I believe. Or that was my five minute save. Because it's a five minute save thing.
Plain mushroom skewers. Dev said it was the five minute save. Yeah, it's the five minute crash protection. Is what saved me. Yeah, it kind of works intermittently. You get to choose if you want to crash on that one. Yeah, it was a bug. Interesting that it says effort to craft, so it shows the total amount of XP that I'm effectively going to get. Which is cool, actually. I quite like that. You can see my cooking is now slowly going upwards. My crit chance on cooking is now 10%. And you can eat mid-craft. So I'm actually eating this while I'm crafting to get my stamina back up. Yeah, let's send it another key. Twitch. Enjoy your key. You get it first this time. There it is. YouTube. Enjoy your key. There you go. Hey, Kronos. You wouldn't happen to have a pyrolite cooking pot, would you? Because I'm finding myself enjoying cooking more. Where do you put the key? You have to read the pinned comment. You can make one. Please. Please make me one. Because I'm cooking so many. There's so much cooking happening. Because we go to look at professions, I've got like the shitty tool. Yeah, I'm level 8 already. I am. I'm cooking for an army. Yeah, if you make me one of those and then you put a box near me over here, I will fill it with community food. Because I'm just, I'm producing a shitload of food. Is this spore? Definitely. You figured it out. Yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying the cooking system. I really like that, because it goes into harvesting, which is kind of fun. Oh, what is this? Jawi? What's up, man? Do you want food? Is that what you're after? What's that? Beginner's stone carvings. Alright, here, have some food. I don't actually know what that is. We'll find out. Okay, what does this do? The scholar might be able to decipher some valuable information from this at a research desk. Oh, because I'm going down the scholar route. Okay, we're going to look into that. Hello? Hey, thank you. Have some of these. Get some more flowers. We need to use the flowers to turn that into... Some pigment. Mushroom? Mushroom. I could definitely cook some mushroom. Yeah, I definitely- I need this. I absolutely need this. This is turning into one of those things where it's like, you are good at a profession. So people come by and they trade you stuff and you give them stuff in return. So you win and they win. I like this. This feels very good. Mushrooms and berries. There you go. Because I can't cry. I can't harvest mushrooms. But I can definitely cook mushrooms. Being the consumable guy is always a good thing because everyone's always consuming their consumables and they need more. I'm always consumable guy. Nice. Yeah, bring me a lot of mushrooms. 
Give me a lot of mushrooms. I'm going to run out of tr plain trail mix in a minute here. And I definitely need th that new cooking pot. You bring more funny stone carvings? Trade. Open trade with me. Yeah, I need a better pot. I do. The pot is bad. It's bad, Chet. Oh, that's a lot of stone carvings. Sick. Thank you. I will figure out how to use these at the scholar desk. I'm not quite sure yet. That's not something I've done yet. So we'll see. Hello? I will give you these rough plant fibers because I don't know what to do with these. You can have those. What is this? A pyrolite pot! Oh, thank you. Hell yes. There we go. Now it's going. You just made my life awesome. Thank you. Better pot. Time to cook. That's right. It's time to cook, Chet. Jesse. Jesse, it's time to cook. Someone has to make the trail mix, Jesse. <laughs> it's time. Community needs the trail mix, Jesse. <laughs> oh shit, Mr. White. <laughs> Use plant fiber for scholar parchment paper? F. I shouldn't have given that away. I have failed. Hello, lettuce. What do you have? That is way too many of those. I don't need those just yet. Hold on to those for a minute. Oh my god. I won't have any room. No, I can't do it. I can't do it. Let me let me get through this trail mix madness first. Because I have to I have to distribute trail mix to people. In fact, let me let me go handle this at the uh this desk first. Dude, how do I even use these? That's at a rough scholar station? Where do I use these? Research desk. Do we have a research desk? We don't have a research desk, do we? I'm gonna put these in here for now. Cause I'm gonna run out of space. Yeah. Continue my, my craft. I love that I can eat while crafting, by the way. Oh, man. You are a lifesaver. Enjoy your trail mix. That is fantastic. If you give me wild grain and berries, I can keep doing this. I need more berries now. Bring to me berries. I need five stacks of berries. I need 250 berries. And I can make even more. The trail mix is almost finished. Soon. I am producing value for them. It's not just streamer farming. I produce food for them. They produce berries for me. It's a trade. It's a trade. They can't get berries unless they eat food. Yes. Hello, old man Mori. Have you brought berries? Mmm, it's a small amount of berries. Thank you. Thank you for your berries. Bring to me as many berries as possible. I am almost done producing the next gigantic batch of trail mix, which is enormously helpful. Although I only always need to keep a stack on myself so I can actually cook. Criticizing berry trays? No, not criticizing. All berries all berries count. All berries are useful. Hello. No, I don't need those. No stone carvings. Not for now. I can't use them yet. I'm doing I'm doing the cooking route. I'm going the route of cook. Thank you though. There is a if you go to the the box nearby, there's a box nearby that people are putting those in. Berries. There's some berries. Enjoy. Enjoy your trail mix. Thank you for the berries. I will produce many more trail mixes now. I'm almost done with this batch. You have 42 berries, but you're not in the clan, so I cannot drop in here. Uh, you can trade with me, though, Wolfgang. 
I can't give you any trail mix just yet, though. I'm almost finished with this craft. I'm getting there. Uh, wait, wait until I'm almost, I'm almost finished. We've got like maybe a thousand more, which is not that much as funny as that is because I'm getting 12 each time. So I'm going to wait, I'm going to wait for right now and then I will trade with you. You got like 400 more getting there. Yeah. Let him cook. Cooking just hit level 12. We got a 15% crit chance though. We're doing it. Pupils? What's up? Nice. I don't have any trail mix to give you just yet. Oh, that's mushrooms. That's a lot of mushrooms. I'm probably going to cook a bunch of mushrooms next. When the trail mix comes through, trade me again, pupils, and then I'll give you the trail mix. Actually, I can't do this trade yet. I think my inventory is going to be full when I do this. So give me just a second. Is this that social MMORPG we're talking about? No, this is a different one. Yeah, this is a crafting survival MMO. You can't bury trade. God damn it. I'm on to you. Now this is good. We've almost got it. This is that was the other what was the other MMO? Ashes of Creation. Oh god, my inventory. Hello. You can trade with me now. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna open up this this box real fast. We can actually open it. Oh, there's so much stuff in here. Where'd the items go that were dropped on the ground? You just get them? He's got five items, so I have to give him three of these. There we go. That should fill my inventory again. I have I don't have enough inventory. There we go. Trade, 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 people. Pupil. Pupil. Why will he not hit trade? Okay. That was weird. Hello? What item is this? Fiber seed plants? We don't need that. Let's do this one. And that one. All right, go for it. I got all these mushrooms. All right, I'm going to start these mushrooms to the max. That I remove all the mushrooms from my inventory. Now we have less of a problem. Now people can start trading with me. Trade. There we go. Massive. Oh my god, there's still more. There's still more. I'm just gonna start cooking these mushrooms. Just gonna start cooking the mushrooms. Oh god. Oh god, my inventory is so full. My inventory is so full. I can't. Oh wait, maybe I can. Here, just take it all. Here, have 30 of them. Oh god, my inventory's full again. This is fine. This is fine. I need a crafting box. I do. I'm producing too much value. Do items get destroyed on the ground? After two minutes, yeah. Chad, I'm producing way too much value. Person in charge of planting the village out is Kronos. Ugh. I have too much I have too much food. Level 13 cook, let's go. I need to eat some more of my own my own food. 
You're doing a 700 megabyte update available? It's updating now? Oh, the game is updating. Really? Do you have a referral code for Ashes of Creation? Yes, do. Exclamation point AOC. Yeah. If you want to trade with me, now's the time. Because I've finished... I'm about to finish all the mushrooms. Okay, we're going to start these. I can multi-track drift. Oh, that's a way to do this. Good luck, Wolf King. Stay safe on your plane. I'm multi-track drifting. Can I have game key? I'm going to give them out every time. Are those actual people? Yes, these are all people. Yes. Yes, they are. Does anyone need food? If so, come trade with me. I have many foods. I now have mushroom skewers. They're plain. I will give you these mushrooms and trail mixes. Hmm, yes. You may have 10 trail mix. 20 trail mix. Enjoy. More mushroom. Yes, good. Hello, Moldrum. What would you like? Yes? Alright, you just need food. Alright. I want him to T-pose around you. I know, right? Hello. You have to have a balanced diet of mushroom and trail mix. Enjoy. I'm almost done with the next... Oh, it looks like I just got finished with the next one. Okay, we got some more of that. I'm going to start this craft now, and I'm going to multi-track drift. Like this. There we go. Level 14 cooking. We're going. What is this? I need basic star bulbs. I don't even know what that is. We're rapidly getting to the location where I can cook amazing things. I want to cook these meats. There we go. I can cook meat. Meat cook. What does that give? Meat's just as good. Meat's not bad at all. I can cook meats. Hello. Have some mushrooms. What is that? Oh, no, I can't take the vegetable seeds. You can get rid of those. That's not for me. That's for somebody who's doing farming. Yeah. Yeah, you can queue multiple jobs. Here, just take the mushrooms. I need, like, berries and um, wild grain. Or mushrooms. Berries, wild grain, mushroom, or meat. That's kind of what I'm after right now. When is the next key? I don't know when I feel like it. The game's not on Steam. No, please look at the pin comment. I'm excited for it, though. I think it's quite good. I think this is going to end up being a lot of fun, man. I like being Chef Guy. Chef Guy is really fun for me, actually. There you go. Bam. Mushrooms all day. What do you got? 37 berries? Bam. I need wild grain. We're running low on that. If you can find it. We're going to start this, and we're going to multi-track drift into mushroom land. There we go. I really like the crafting management. It's super compelling, actually. What do you got? Nice. Give you a lot of stuff. There you go. 
That's really good. So with that... We should have enough to do the next batch, like the next big batch of trail mix. And we're about to level up again. I'm already at... I don't even know how much percent. Eighteen percent crit chance. That's really good. Community Baker Thor, how dare you? Nineteen percent crit chance going up. All right, next one. Claim all those mushrooms. Start this craft, and we can start another craft of this. There we go. I need wild grains. Wild grains is what's holding me back right now. Gonna eat another meat. Eating another meat. If you need food, come to me. I have more stacks. Depending on ones and zeros. Good. Good, but also kind of liars because they make up everything, you know. So watch yourself with that. It's true. Let's see. Trade offer. What do you need, demon? You just want food? You may have mushroom. Enjoy your mushroom. If you bring to me mushrooms, I will give you more mushrooms. We need mushrooms. Hello, Moldrum. Hey, mushrooms. Nice. More mushrooms. Tromix takes a long time, but man, does it give a lot of XP. I am almost to the next level. I'm level 15 cooking right now, so at 20 I should be able to get the higher level cooking pot. I don't know if anyone can build the higher level cooking pot, the tier 2 one, but I am almost ready for it. I'm getting very close to being ready for it. There you go. Enjoy your food. Yeah, it's very runescape. It's very RuneScape. I like that, though. It's RuneScape in a way that feels different, because you have land ownership, which I find more compelling. Town building and land ownership kind of stuff in games is something I really enjoy. I like that a lot. Legitimately. This region base, one server. One major server. There we go. Nice. Basic flower. Cool. Wild grain. Cool. What are the claim cords? They're up here above my head. They're right there, on the screen. Level 16 cooking, 20% crit chance now. At least with this craft. What's the server cap? I actually don't know, but it is one server. And they're in closed alpha, so like, you're looking at the worst the, po the infrastructure can possibly be right now. Look at how compelling this is and how many people are online with the worst possible infrastructure. Right? Oh, I am out of food to trade after this. That is all I got left. Thank you for those. When I finish this trail mix, we're going to have a lot more. I need to start a mushroom-based project. There we go. And we're going to start that back up. I don't have any food left on me right now. Only one that I need so that I can keep eating while cooking. What is that? A moonlit crawdad. It says that that's bait, though. That doesn't seem to be something I can use. Can be used to cook food or as bait. Okay, no, I can use that. I just can't cook it yet. When I when I get some more uh, trail mix, I'll be able to give that to you. Yeah. Key time. I like how everyone just wants the keys. They're like ravenous for this, dude. You mean a key like this? Is that what you mean? Or a key, or a key like I'm about to go give to, to YouTube. Hmm? 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 
Can you play this game solo? You could, but it'd be highly inefficient. But you could do it. Oh, oh, oh. Wait a minute. Let me start up on these mushrooms. We are ready to start trading food out again. More food. Yeah, anytime. That is going to drop some of those on the ground. Shit. Um, give me a moment. Let me queue up all these mushrooms first. And now we should be good to go. There we go. Yeah, now we're good. Multi-track drifting. Alright, good. I think I've got all that stuff going. That's good. I'm running out of inventory space. Yeah, I'm going to give you all of these items. Because I can't use them. What is this? Breezy fin darter filet. There's some food, too. I don't think I can cook those yet. <laughs> I don't think I can make these plain roasted fish. We'll see. Oh, we got ads, too. I'm just going to leave it crafting during the ads. Oh, there's so many. There's so many. Oh, I haven't been able to do any pen testing on the Spacetime DB stuff yet. I am interested in doing it, though. Like, really interested in doing it, to be honest with you. There you go. Have a whole bunch. Yeah, I think it'd be nice to do. It'd be fun to do. Learn a bunch of shit, maybe. Gonna eat that. Throw these over here. Put that up there. Oh my god, there's so much food being produced. About to be team killed by a recruit? True. Thoughts on Windows 11? It's trash. <laughs> There's so many performance issues that I deal with as a streamer on Windows 11 that I reverted back to Windows 10. I haven't touched it since. Oh my god. Okay, let's craft this one. Then we can do that. What is this? Mashed plant bulbs. Plain roasted fish. Okay, we can craft that too. Okay, I'm going to go back to this one. There's so much stuff to craft. Oh my god, there's so much stuff to craft. Crafted it all. And I can make these too. Those are going to go quick. Alright, there we go. Alright, now we're back on it. I was able to craft plain skewered bait fish. So I can craft the moonlit crawdads now. I can do it. We're moving up. Slowly but surely moving up. Where's their key redeemed at? You have to read the pinned comment. Yeah, they have to actually read the pinned comment. Difficult. This is actually fun. The art looks soulless. You've never played older games, have you? You've never played, like, RuneScape, have you? What does soulless mean to you? Yeah, it's kind of a dick thing to say. <laughs> I think it looks great, dude.
Jesus. No, I actually quite enjoy this, man. Basic servo. Okay, we're level 18 on cooking now. I'm getting there. If you want food, I have food. But I require mushrooms as tribute. I need mushrooms. Or berries. Or wild grain. There is a boat. Yeah, people are making boats. I'm basically bound to the to the chef role now. I'm the king of all chefs. Require mushroom flesh as tribute. It's true. I have so much mushroom. I have an absurd amount of mushroom now. But I'm roasting fish. That's new. Cooking billionaire. God damn it. Yeah, two more levels and then I can use the, uh, the tier two cooking pot. And then all of this goes faster. There you go. That's a lot of mushroom. We like that. Nice. You love to see it. Okay, let's go into this. We're going to queue up another mushroom set. There'll be 41 mushrooms to that, and we're going to get back to cooking this fish. I'm having to do multi-track drift. There's just so many recipes. So I've got like five queued up recipes. And basically every time I hit this, we get double the amount of experience as the damage being done on screen. So I get 24 XP there. And if it crits, I'll get 48 XP. And we need 26,000 total for the next level. We're at 25,000 already. Yeah. Is the alpha closed? Yeah, it's a closed alpha. Closed alpha. If you want to, if you want to play... We've been giving out keys. I've got three keys left. So do keep that in mind. Oh, I just finished another one. Another recipe's up. Let's go to the next one. More mushrooms. There we go. I have roasted fish. If you're a fisherman, I could use your fish. Or crawdads. Either one. I will pay you in food. No way, you only have three keys left? Yeah, we've given out 20, man. We've given out 17, technically. The goblins have definitely ravaged the land. That is true. Is that a... Is it an enemy faction over there? An enemy base? Striving for the same resources as our base? How dare they? How dare they? Will they be handed out at random? They have been. I just put them in chat. It's first come, first serve. That's Tortuga? Like, second? When do we get Tortuga? When do we get three Thorga, dude? Three Torga? Also true. Fortuga? Also true. Level 19. Kronos, do you have the ability to make a level... Uh, a tier 2 pot? Like cooking pot? You able to do that? I don't know if you have the skill for it. I don't know what the skill required for it is, frankly. Because I'm level 19 in cooking now. Eight mil is nuts, yeah. We still need a schematic found in dungeons. Okay, so we don't have a schematic for it. Damn. Damn.
Yeah, because I have... I have level 19 cooking right now. Oh, I can get profession achievements. Wait a minute. A beginner cook title. Okay. At novice cook, I actually get a full set of gear. What is this? This is achievement points? I'm not sure how that works. What are these points? Achievement points. Yeah. 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 That's pretty damn cool. Oh my god, there's so many achievements. How do I change my title? It's probably under the vault, maybe? No? Under stats? It's under V? Where under V? Was it this? Beginner cook. There we go. Cool. Why are they clicking? It's the sound for the XP going off. I do find it to be a little grating as well. I agree with that. I hope that they add some variance to it or give me the ability. Maybe I can mute it. Let's see if we can mute it. There we go. Made it a little bit quieter. Oddly enough, hammering is not a sound effect. Which seems wrong to me. You know what I mean? It's also not music. What is it? It's, uh, it's unassociated. I'm going to put that in as a bug. So the way that this works generally is you add them to what is called a sound group. And it sounds like that hammering does not actually have a sound group assigned to it. That's the problem. They usually will have like a system of flagging for sounds or things like that. It's a pretty common thing. Alright, I have a bajillion food now. Come get your food. Come get your mushrooms. I have a bajillion mushroom. I have to give away this food. Or I will eat this live crawdad. I'll eat it whole. It's drilling into your brain? Good. Good. It's part of you now. All right, let's see. Um, I have some mushrooms. Enjoy. Next. Come to the mushroom shack. It's time. I have so many mushrooms to give you. Well, nobody wants any food at all, dude. He gives 80 stamina, too. Get over here. Let me eat this. Come on. We found them in the forest. We don't even know what they are. Eat them, dude. No, no, think, don't think about it. Just eat it. Oh, meats. Meats. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. I can just cook that right up. Hold up. Sick. Meats are great. Level 20 cooking. I've done it. I've done it. Mmm. All right. Next one. Yeah, it goes into the vault. More. Yes. Yes. So how do I put on the clothing? Let's see. There we go. We're a chef now. We're chefing it up. Look at me. That's a cool looking suit, actually. I like that. I like that I now look visually distinct. Because I've become a, become a chef, you know? I actually really enjoy that. It feels like progression, even though it's cosmetic. 
if that makes sense. I, I really like that, actually. It's that kind of, like, visual progression that you want. Feels very, very good. Here. You may eat of the meats. No longer a peasant. Now, now an actual professional chef. I become a dishwasher? Yes. I wash the dishes with live cooking mushroom. Ooh, okay, wild grain is good. Let me give you some fish. Some fish tacos. Enjoy. That'll actually make us some more stuff. Hello, lettuce. Good name. Nice. Wild grain? Wild grain? Oh, this is good. This is a good order. We like this. You're gonna get... You're gonna get one of each. Look at that. Hello. Yeah. 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 Give you a second one. Look at that. Good smorgasbord of foods. One moment. I'm going to start these other ones. Start that one. And start this one down here. What do you got? I need berries, by the way. And you have berries! Lifesaver. Enjoy all of your foods. One bajillion foods for you. There we go, that's a big one. The amount of XP that I'm getting now for this is disgusting. Because I'm critting so often. God damn. Alright. Uh, let's start those there. We'll go back and claim this, and we'll start that craft. You've got more mushrooms here. That's a lot of mushroom. I am now out of food. We're now officially out of food. After this one. Give me a moment to restock... Food land. What do you got? Get some berries. Nice. I have... Oh, I actually have some bait fish. Skewered bait fish. You can eat that. And some meats. There we go. I do have a little bit of food. I have one more stack of food. And then the one piece that I have to do. We will need to do all these berries. Start back in the craft. There we go. I have one stacking giveaway. If you stick around for a minute, I'm almost done with these mushroom scares, and then you'll get more mushrooms. If not, that should work. Because it's still 800 stamina worth of food. Level 21. Actually, how much how much crafting are we getting? Oh, we have 26% crit chance now. Jesus. I just have to break my brain like that. The mouse cursor not lining up just ruined my life. Nice, dude. Enjoy that. There's actually, there's another thing that's coming out today. And I don't remember which short this is. Let's see, Grayson. Let me see here. What do you got? I have nine mushrooms. But I'm, I have 80 more, and then I'm finished with this one. So give me just a moment, and then I'll be able to give this to you. Also, if you get me, what are these called? Basic star bulbs out there? They're a vegetable. I can make those into a food. But we need a lot of them. Okay, hold up. Claiming those. You can have that and that. There we go. And I will start back on this and start crafting all of these. We're basically out of food again. There you go.
Enjoy, Muldrum. Things are confusing. Watch. Basically, what's happening is they're bringing me in materials. I'm accepting trades. And I'm giving them food back. They're giving me the materials to make food. And I'm giving them the food. Not sure why it's not accepting. Here, let's cancel it. And then restart it. It's because you accepted it. And then I changed the trade. And it broke. I've seen that happen a couple of times. There you go. Initiator missing required items. What? Are you... It's putting the apples in twice? Oh, you mean the berries? I don't know, man. I got no solution to that. Nice. That's a lot of mushroom. Alright, good. There's, there's so much food happening. Oh my god, there's so much food happening. I'm gonna eat another one of these. I'm also trying to keep my stamina up at the same time this is going on. There you go. I am out of food now. You've obtained so many mushrooms. I'm limited only by my ability to finish the crafting now. I have no food. I have no food to give you. I have a little bit of food to give you, I guess. I have six mushrooms. <laughs> so little food. There we go. There we go. I have some I have some more mushroom skewers now. They just came off. Yeah, I'm, I'm basically just... I'm getting DDoSed with food. Is what's happening. Food DDoS, dude. Oh yeah, my cooking level is 20 already. I think I'm 22 or some shit. I'm level 21 right now. Please stop making people join the alpha. No, I refuse. The game is fun, dude. All right, there we go. Uh, I need a lot of berries. We need a lot of berries. We have so much wild grain now that I'm very low on berries as a as a problem. It's a problem. Because for every one of those, I need two berries and two wild grain, and I have like a thousand wild grain now. I just need all the berries forever. Yeah, all the berries. Oh. Okay, I don't want the stone carving. I'll end up throwing that out. That's fine. Um, we'll give that to somebody else who's going to be a scholar. I'll just, I'll just put it in the box. But that bulb, the star bulb is new. That's on the ground now. If someone wants to take that to the nearby thing, that would be good. I want to know what this is. So the plain mashed bulbs is something I can actually just eat. I'm just going to eat it. Level cooking is 22. 22 level. We're getting there. It's going up faster now. The amount of crits are actually increasing the amount of XP that I get, generally. Um, I don't have anything that's off the cooker right now. I need more... I need, like, a, a higher tier of cooking craft. Or cooking pot is what I need right now. Oh, you can just give it to me. Alright. There's no food. Can you rotate the camera 180 so we can so the ticking switches ears? It's mono. You know, it's mono. It's in my right ear only? 
What? One moment, that shouldn't be the case. That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense at all. Oh, the ticking is from someone crafting to my right. That's not the... Okay. Yeah, that's why I was like, what are you talking about, man? This is like, no, the, the XP sound is definitely not that. You want this. Okay, that's why I was so confused. Okay, we got a bunch of trail mix, though. Yeah. There you go. Long lemons, incredibly generous mushroom alms. I know, right? What do we do? Craft mushrooms. Okay. We're there. What do we need now? What is this? Ground meat and mashed bulbs. We can make a higher tier of food now? Ooh. Oh, that is a lot of stuff. What is that? Salt? We do need salt. Hold up. There you go. Okay, so now... What the hell? Why can't I craft... Now we can make these. I need mashed bulbs. Yeah. Hello. Take that. Salt is definitely going to be useful. We're starting to get to the point where it's like... I'm using higher level materials... Or we're able to combine foods. Actually, I need a bucket of water. And I need as many star bulbs as possible. Do we have any star bulbs? Because I can make vegetable stew. Which is 150, 150. We're starting to get the higher level foods. Are there any other skills besides cooking? Oh yeah, dude. Look. Look at look at them all. <laughs> There's so goddamn many. I'm just focusing on cooking because then I can sit still and like manage all this food and it's like a consumable resource. It's definitely yeah. There's a lot. Okay, those are done. Now we're going to craft all of this. There's only nine of those. Oh, there's so many. Nice. Berries, nice. Have some delicious cooked fish. Yeah, I'm, I'm running out of inventory space, so you're going to have to give me a minute. Or give me a lot of berries. I mean, a lot of berries, too. What is that? Perfected pyrolite. Oh, buddy. That is a higher level pyrolite pot. That is a faster cooking pot. Mm, perfected. So it does three extra damage on each craft. So now I do 15 as a baseline. It is a, a unique tier of the same tier. This is a 12 damage one. I'm going to put this on the ground. Kronos, are you on? And now I do 30 damage crits. Yeah. They just wasted so many resources. Well, maybe there's their resources. Um, here's the pyrolite pot on the ground. My pyrolite pot. This is going to increase the amount of cooking power that we have by a lot. We literally just made one for you? <laughs> you got to communicate. 
It's very funny. It's very funny. Oh well, F. That is, that is how it goes. That being said, uh, having 15 damage that now crits into 30 is pretty huge. I've got a 28% crit chance now. So we're doing 30 damage a lot. And now it's a 29% crit chance. It's going up. It's going up. Level 23 cook. Feed me so that I can feed you, Chet. This is the way. Ultimate crafting, man. We're about to get ads. Don't damage the food, I won't. New skin for RuneScape? I know, right? I enjoy it. Okay, we got more food. I'm going to start on these skewers as well. I'm now cooking fast enough that I can take in more orders. We need more berries, too. Berries are kind of the key right now. Love the YouTube vids. Thank you, man. Thank you very, very much. You're awesome as hell. Thank you. Weirdo right, we with go. a cello with $20 said the hunters make me so viscerally angry that I can't put it into words. I need to use... get even. I have ripped yeah. the model into Blender. I can't kill all of the hunters, but I can use them for adult content. I will have revenge. Well, hold, hold, out, hold on there now, Satan. That's it. It's going a bit... It's going a bit far. There. All right, you know. Whoa. But also, use the last sickle. It rips them apart. Yep. Yokel Abductee with 500 bits said cheesy bread thick, cooking by Thor, chat broke Twitch, cheerful nope. banana Thor, nope. cheating bitches thrive, crypto Bitcoin, there am, challenge banana Thor, choose Bitcraft today. Hum something links all these but I cannot see what it is. God damn it. Rosa Koza with 500 bits said hi Thor, have a great day today. I, I want to thank you and Stain for Heartbound OST. The music gave me the courage to confront my past trauma and talk about it with my mother. Really? We talked things out. The OST was playing in the background the whole time. The song was Firefly. The music was beautiful and encouraging. Rivers of tears after and I feel our lives profoundly changed. Thank you Thor for what you're doing. Really, thank you. That's not something I would ever expect. That's wild to me. I'm, I'm glad it has that kind of meaning to you. Holy shit. Jeez, dude. Thank you. Chris Locality with 500 bits said, Hey Thor, how do I find a mentor or someone to help me figure out the 10 years of my marketing, front-end dev career so I grow professional and financial? Everyone says I'm underpaid. Best thing you can do? You don't even need a mentor for that. You should apply somewhere else and see what they're willing to pay you. It's very easy to find out what you're worth by going to somebody else and showing them your skills. And you don't tell them how much you're interested in being paid. When they ask you what you think you should be paid, you say, what are you willing to pay me? It's a dance. It's a little dance to try and find out what they're, what they're going to pay you. You can also look up your own market value based on your job, on your title. It's a pretty common thing. No, not crying banana Thor. No. We're back from the ads. So plain vegetable stew. I need water... And star bulbs. Oh, I'm almost out of... Almost almost dead. One moment. Eat. Eat. I gotta eat my own food. Eat. Okay, there we go. Now we're back up to full stem. I have an abundance of food, community. I have an abundance. I am overstocked in mushroom skewers. You need to come steal them from me. I have many mushrooms for you. About to get another level as well. Meats. I love meats. Give you two stacks of this. Yeah. 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 27 meats. Let's go. Start that craft again. Okay, we're going to claim those. I have a lot of mushroom now. We have a problem. I have too much. The next person who comes and trades me has to give me very few materials.
What is the crit, crit chance now? 30% crit chance. Oh. Hey, star bulbs. Nice. I need way more of those. So we can craft a new item. A special item. I need two more of those and then one bucket of water. If anyone can bring me a water bucket. Then I can make a single plain vegetable stew, which will be new. Not crafted yet. A new item. It's a tier one meal. Ugh. It's a new tier one meal, which is kind of huge. Okay, we've got meat now. I'm going to start crafting this. There we go. Oh, man. Eremite pot. 17 damage. Equipped. We've done it. Thank you very much. Okay, I have... I have one to give back to you. Which is a perfected pyrolite pot. That is now on the ground. Please don't let that go to waste. Give that to somebody else. It's sitting next to me on the ground. Somebody take that. What? Why did I say close window? That was weird. Yeah, somebody grabbed it. That's good. I'm now doing 17 damage per, and I'm doing 34 damage crits. Which is sick. And I'm a level 24 cook. I'm doing it. Has anyone ever managed to claim the 500k points for a heartbound key? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely, dude. Happens all the time. People have been here for years, man. I've been streaming for seven years. What are we doing today? We are crafting. Okay, that is super useful. Plain chilling tea. Interesting. What does this do? It gives plain chilling tea plus 10. I don't know what that is. Any basic flowers? Weird. Can anyone bring me five basic flowers? And a lot of star bulbs. Like a ton of star bulbs. Oh, Alessandro, I will definitely do that. Let me get through this round of cooking real fast. Uh, who can come take all these, these foods from me? Who can take all these foods from me? I'm going on an adventure. An adventure. I'm take all my foods. I wish to give, I wish to give adventure. Hello, lettuce. Enjoy. You won the lottery. I'm gonna cook this one item, because it's new. Nice. New item obtained. What does this do? It gave me a buff. Heat protection, plus 10. Okay, so now we're getting into the buff foods. Let me finish this craft here, and then give that out to everybody, and then we're good to go. And we'll go and do that. Also, if anybody can bring me um, two more star bulbs, I can make one of the special foods right here as well, which is the vegetable stew. That's what we've seen and heard from Dune Awakening. It looks awesome. It looks really good. So basically what's going to happen in a minute here is uh, Minch, who is the game director for this game, wants to show me some other biomes, and we're going to go around in a boat and see them. So I'm going to do that. Yeah. I just hit level 25 in cooking, though. There's so much to explore in the world, but I actually I like, I like making consumable items in games. I really enjoy that. Still possible to get a key? Yeah, here, let me send out some more of these. The devs have given me 20 of them. We have three left. There's one for Twitch. There you go. And here is one for YouTube. There you go. There's only one key left now. Is this an MMO? Yeah. It is a survival crafting MMO. All 
All right. Can anybody come take all this food for me? Or give me some more star bulbs? Either way. Eh? I just need two star bulbs. I don't know how long they take to make. I think they're a farming item? I think they're a farming item. Yeah, already gone. I'm giving out 19 of them. Got one from here. Thank you. Anytime. Oh, don't just thank me. Thank the devs, man. They give them to me. If nobody has those, then I'm going to go do the thing. All right. I'm going to go do the thing. Minch is here from Clockwork Labs. How do I get on your boat? Hello. How can how do I boat? <laughs> I wish to boat. Oh, there we go. I'm on the boat now. It worked. And I will eat one of these so that I don't full of sadness. There we go. So Minch is uh, the game director for Clockwork Labs, which is the studio that made this game. And he's going to take us to show me some other biomes, because it's not just these biomes. These are kind of the, the starting area ones. And he wanted to show me some of the other ones. I haven't seen any of the rest of this game. I actually haven't seen any of this game. Is there any guild? Yeah, that was the guild that we were just in. The server's chugging it. It's trying. I think it's every time we enter a new zone where I haven't been before. As you can see, like, this is where we're at right now. The map is enormous. So when we load, like, a new area, you can see that it is 0.13% explored. Oh, what is this? Trade, trade request? What's up? Masterful skiff. Well, thank you. How does this work? He can give you a boat so you can follow in your own boat. Boat. Okay. Added to vault. How does a boat work? Let's see. Travel. Deploying vehicle. What happens if I deploy a vehicle while I'm in a vehicle? There we go. Oh, nice. Okay. It looks like traveling in someone else's boat is what causes it to vibrate. But traveling in my own boat is not. Yeah. Yeah, likely it's vehicle issues, man. Vehicle issues are so tough in a in an MMO, in a shared environment. Vehicle issues, issues, especially with passenger vehicles, it's just oh, it's rough. Yeah, it's sink it's sinking issues for vehicles. I'm not surprised. That's like one of the hardest things to fix. Network sorcery. Yeah, it is. We're already kind of getting into some areas where I really haven't seen any of this kind of stuff. Like the taller tree area. A little bit denser forest over here. We've seen these same types of things before. I think I've seen those goats before. I think people have killed those. Look at that giant tree over there on the left. I wonder how far the player base has gone. I think it's the big thing. I wonder how far people have gone so far. Like, we're going to get to a point where suddenly there's just no more... Like, civilization. Like, nobody actually has things. Sounds again for the boat voyage? Oh, the sounds are on. They're just very quiet. Yeah, it does. It has rivers. So, it clearly, like... The map generation has actually got all the rivers and everything like that. Between these. What do I need to access this game? Do you have to read? Pin common. Are there NPCs? Uh, there are. They're very far and few between. Oh, look at this big, big lake here. There's still people living out here. There's still other players all the way out here, dude. Like, this is kind of wild, frankly. 
Yeah, bigger trees. There's larger trees like that one over on the left there. The big massive one. We've seen a couple of those now. Big massive like fallen tree on the left there as well. I haven't seen that. Looks like larger fish as well. Yeah, those are bigger fish. I don't think we've seen those before. Salmon, maybe? Looks kind of like a salmon. What is that? There's a large man over there covered with chests in his fur. There's a large chest covered man. Who is that? I don't think we've seen this guy before. Look at him. Oh my god, look at the hands. Look at the hands. Hello. Who are you? Who are you? Name's Brico. I've been building stuff for centuries, and I ain't about to stop now. So he sells deeds for certain things. Mark of Brico. Currency earned through selling various construction or ancient materials to Brico. Can be used to buy various goods. Interesting. Okay. That's awesome. So it's one of the NPCs there. You'll usually find like an NPC and a dungeon next to each other in these big purple zone areas. It's it's like surrounded by a purple zone so that people can't build on it. I love that. It's very cool. Why doesn't the game support Linux? It's in closed alpha. Give it some time. Yeah, you can go underground from that thing. You can. Yeah. Can people build around the dungeon? Yeah, they can, but they can't really block you from going in, so... At least, as far as I know. But there's also a million dungeons out there. Look, there's another player out here, even. We've gone so far, and there's still players. Oh, look, there's another Brico over there. We've hit the edge. It's time to run. There's another dungeon over there. Oh, yeah, I have to store my boat, huh? If I didn't store my vehicle, would it just get left here? <laughs> would it, like, deg degrade over time or something? Oh, that's funny. Well, I'm glad. You still find it on the map? Yeah, but I'd have to go pick it up. We plan to add a remote collection. Oh, that's good. I love that we've only uncovered 0.23% of the entire world so far. Is that a dev? That is the game director. Yes. He's typing in chat. You can actually see the pop-ups of text above his head. This game is massive, dude. We haven't even seen the cliff sides or anything like that. Trade item request. What you got? What is this? Ambrosial dumpling. In this year, missing required items. F. I sold the piece of meat wrapped in dough and baked in an oven. That is like super high end food. So the food goes nuts by the end game. It was absolutely wild by the end game. Why, thank you. I will eat this dumpling. You cannot overcapacity your food, your stamina. Who is this? I haven't seen this one. It's like a turtle. Heimlich. Who are you? I've been collecting trinkets and doodads for a long time. I'd be willing to part with them, or some of them, if you have something to offer. Let's see. So this one has marks that you can get if you give him specific materials. So there's different currencies for each one of the different types of vendors. So you can target a vendor, give them the things that they need, and it looks like you're repairing old world components, ancient components for stuff. And then we can get a schematic for Heimlich's house. That's kind of cool. Oh, that's really neat. You can have the NPCs move into your town. Mm. Mm. 
What was that? 12,000 members in a barely active chat? Hey, chat. Tell this guy about Kappa Infinite. I think he wants to know about it. Yeah, I think he wants to know about Kappa Infinite 7 and your bongos. Yeah, I think, I think that's what he wants to know. Sounds like it. Seems like it. Oh, and uh, phone users rip. I'm sorry about your chat now. Yeah. <laughs> Barely active chat. <laughs> I am so smart. Thank you, chat. Wonderful. Oh, look at this tree. Wait a minute, I haven't seen this tree before. Yeah, we haven't seen a birch tree before. That's new. Yeah, the world is massive. I think I've seen terrain like this, where we have the darker area. You see the biome kind of cut off here. We've seen this. And it looks like it goes into like a, a deeper... Like, more difficult to rank, because I think all these things in here require level 2, is what it was. What is this? So we've got all these ores before. That birch tree was planted, so a player planted that tree. Really? Nope. Yep. Gotta put my boat. It's funny, I can deploy my vehicle in the water. Oh, that's weird. There we go. Off we go. I like to creep around my home and act like a goblin. Dude, that's the funniest post on the internet. How are we feeling today? Good. I'm checking out this game called Bitcraft. Up there, that's the game director. And... He's showing me the different biomes and stuff, and it's an it's a survival crafting MMO. So this is all a shared world. All these areas you see, those are owned by players. Those are actually towns owned by players. So we're going through and we're seeing like how expansive the world is. And what you'll see is when I get to these world edges, right? You see like on my map in the top right? When I get to the edge here, you'll see uncovered new land. I've only seen 0.27% of the overall world. What is this? What is that? A terraforming dig site. Was this made by a player? And they just left it here. Can't dig next to water. <laughs> That's interesting. But we can raise the terrain next to the water. So you can terraform it. It's like a Stardew Valley MMO hexagon Minecraft. <laughs> there's so much. There's so much that it is all at once. I think that's cool. Yeah, raising the terrain like this is really awesome. Yeah, hexagon world. I love the terrain deformation like that. I think that's really, really cool. Yeah, I think it's really awesome, to be honest with you. Being able to do that is cool. It's great. How high can we make this? Or oh. It looks like it's getting harder each time as well. And there's no skill associated with this one, so there's not a profession with this. So it looks like it's based entirely on... Your tool, in this case, which is the shovel. My shovel's like 8 skill for this. Yeah. Pure labor. Oh, my stamina. Oh, God. I have to eat the crazy dumpling. There we go. We're good now. Don't worry about it. Oh, stirring the boat? Yeah, we can do that. We're going to use some interdimensional travel. Oh, no. 
We're going through the warp, Chet. Just uh, keep your hands and arms inside the boat at all times. All right. Yeah, just just don't try not to look outside the windows. Yeah, it's the warp. Don't, just don't think about it. Don't think about it. Just don't think about it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah, do it. Definitely do it. Max jump distance of five. You mean keep the boat inside you at all times? True. Yeah. Oh! It happened. Your position is out of sync. The server could be under heavy load. It is unhappy. I can't wait for their anti cheat to ban me. <laughs> It's like, wait a minute. What the hell is this player doing? <laughs> it's very funny. That'd, that'd be the best way to do it. The best anti-cheat is when the game director teleports your character and you get banned. That's the way, dude. And he's like, I can't believe this guy cheated live on stream. Banned from the community forever. There are still people out here. Look at this. I don't even know where he teleported me. I'm at 201439 now. We're like way out in the boonies, man. We're hundreds of blocks away. My God. Whoop. Where are we? I don't even know where we are. Or is this this? No, wait. We're in the same location. We're in the same location, but everything disappeared. That's what it is. He says relog. He said to relog. Okay, I'm gonna relog. Logging out. That's very funny. Server is full. Banned. I can't believe it. I can't believe I got banned by the game director, guys. <laughs> Yeah, dude. All right. Now we're back in. Hello, Wisp. Oh, so this is what you were trying to show me. A totally different biome. Look at this. Oh, man. You guys really do have a lot of... How many different biomes do you have in the game? Check map if you want. We're way out in the boonies now. We're at 2200, 819. And this material... Help me. Oh dear. Way northeast of last position. This requires a tier 2 pickaxe. So this is all tier 2 material, it looks like. And it's pine. So this is pine wood out here. can't jump down there it looks like how did you jump down there you have to click to climb is it like this oh there we go I haven't actually climbed yet I hadn't done that that's really interesting I like that I didn't you you spend so much time kind of like on the flat area that I didn't realize you could climb yeah look at that Are those morels? Yeah, they are. Takes a level 4 machete to get that. You know morels only grow when there's fire? They grow out of the ashes of other, other materials after forest fires. A lot of people out here in Washington, they'll find that they grow uh, when they do burn piles for like wood garbage and stuff on their land. It's really interesting. They'll like burn, out, burn a bunch of stuff and they're like, wait a minute. Why these morels growing out of this? Yeah. 
You guys have made something that's really beautiful. You know that, right? It's just kind of nice. This is a, like, spend some time in it game. Even though I do like doing a little bit of goblin cooking, I will say. This is definitely a spend some time in a game, and it's quite quite nice. And we've still only seen 0.31% of the world. Let him cook. Yeah, exactly. Is that an ocean? Are we actually at... Oh, God, wait. Why am I climbing back up? No. Come back down. Invalid origin. What? I think I have bugged myself. I'm going to deploy a vehicle. Oh, wait. Now we're good. We've done it. It's fine. I've survived somehow. Did my boat bug? Bug? There we go. There we go. We got it. So you actually have a fog. Fog effect out in the ocean, too. So there's whole oceans in this, too. I thought it was just going to be rivers and lakes, but this is... This is actually awesome. I think the thing that's crazy about this is you've given yourselves a basis for adding as much content as you'd ever want. You could add infinite depth to this at this point because you've created an actual world. A massive one, too. Can you claim areas out in the water as well? Can I build an under underwater base or anything like that? The boats are great, yeah. That's the plan? Oh, that's sick, dude. And look, there's ocean fish out here. Way bigger ones as well. We want to allow building platforms to build on. That's neat. I'd love to have like an underwater dome bubble base, you know? On the, on the ocean floor with maybe a tube going up. Things like that. Weird stuff. Or even a floating city. Yeah, that'd be cool. City in the clouds would be neat. All kinds of stuff. What's this game called? Uh, go to the top of the channel. The pinned comment, my bud. And if you do exclamation point bitcraft in chat, you can find out more about it. Elevator to internal base, choose up or down, yeah. Yeah, bitcraft, bitcraft. You guys all use the command at once, it's not gonna show. It's too many of you doing it. We're just, world is huge. At higher tiers, you need shipping of resources to advance. Yeah, so we, I noticed that it's going to turn into supply lines. Like, right now we're doing, like, inner in-base supply lines, but it's going to turn into supply line supply lines. And, like, stocking up for exploration parties and everything like that. Because otherwise we're just going to run out of materials. Yeah, only 0.33% of the game explored. Is it an MMO? Yes, it is. Shared persistent world. Yeah. Store in my vehicle. Yeah, World Gen is awesome, dude. I'll pay for the key at this point? I know, right? They're in closed alpha, though. So, like, all the stuff that we're doing here is going to get wiped. I am not surprised about that. That's how that should go. You know, it's in alpha. Oh, look at the waterfall. Hmm. That's kind of cool. I dig that. Yeah, it looks like jelly. I know, right? I need it. Oh, here's another one of the dungeons. Which NPC did this one get? Or did it not get one?
I wonder if we got one inside. Oh, well, let's see. What is this? Ancient Adventurer's Note. That pillar almost trapped me in the cellar. As I climbed the stairs to exit the basement, it came crumbling down and blocked the way. It's a shame. It seemed that there were more treasures, or there were some treasures down here. Oh, so you can actually... We can work together to get rid of it. That's kind of cool. I like that. So it ends up being one of those things where you can work together in a small group. Yeah. No real open world MMO? This is an MMO. What do you mean it's not an MMO? There's hundreds of players on the server, what are you talking about? Where's the PvP and PPL? You know an MMO isn't defined by having PvP, right? And you typing in all caps doesn't make that point any less true. <laughs> What's the matter with you? Calm yourself. What is an MMO? It, it is a meaningless term, unfortunately. Oh wait, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop hitting this. We have ads. The ad breaks go for two minutes, and I don't want them to miss anything. I'm gonna wait. Same people asking for PvP and Helldivers. I know, right? An MMO is a massively multiplayer online game. Massively multiplayer online doesn't really mean anything, because what is massively? How massive is it? Multiplayer, okay, so there's more than one. But how many is... How many does it need to be before it's massively? We used to explain this as games that didn't have lobbies. But World of Warcraft has lobbies, they're dungeons. When does it become massively? We don't know. Online, okay. So MMO doesn't really mean anything. It really hasn't for a long time. It's really just described to be like a shared persistent world now with lots of players. And that's kind of what it means now. But even then, what if it's not a shared persistent world? Like Lost Ark. It's a bunch of instance worlds. It's just vague. It's vague and kind of eh. How can I play this? In comment. We've been giving out keys for it. It's a closed alpha right now. Never got my Kappa Infinite. Put in a ticket to Twitch. Support ticket, my dude. Minecraft is an MMO. Technically, you can make it an MMO. Our Minecraft server is an MMO. I didn't make this ruin. Really? Okay, that's really interesting. With only two people as well. We got 10 seconds left on the ads. Okay, so Minch here is actually the game director for the game. And he said that he didn't make this dungeon, the other game designer did. And he's never done it before. So we're going to try and get through it without failing it. We don't know what... We don't know what it is. We don't know anything about it. We need to break through a collapsed pillar as the first piece. This seems like it's made for people with higher tool power or more people. Is there any keys left? There's only one left. Okay. What is this? It's clearly a door of some kind. Maybe it doesn't work yet? What is this? Oh, we got some roots here. We can break through this. Because there's a, there's a chest in there. Actually, let me go see what this chest is. Ancient cloth. Okay, so there's a chest. Oh. Uh. I appear to be soft locked. I took the item out of the chest, now I'm soft locked. Hold left mouse button. I am holding left mouse button. 
Nothing is happening. Nope. I dragon dropped an item from the chest into my inventory. Oh, okay. I know what it is. When you dragon dropped an item from the chest into your inventory, because you were holding left mouse button on the item, it thinks that I was still selecting the item instead of actually using anything in the environment because the chest deletes itself when the item goes away from it. It's likely caused the chest actually being deleted, is what it feels like to me. At the time that you transfer into your inventory. Thanks for the bug report? Absolutely. Because that happened to me last time and I had to relog. By moving the item in my inventory, it got me out of the softlock state. So I think it's definitely tied to that. I'm going to try it again on this chest here. We'll see if it works. I don't want QA. I love finding bugs, dude. My first start in the industry, I was actually QA for four years at Blizzard. And then I went off to lead of AppSec for uh, Battle.net. And then after that, I was red team. And then I left. And then I went to Amazon. <laughs> Window closing while still play, uh, playing. I'm still holding item. Yeah, I think so. I'm still holding item is what it looks like. Edge cases like that are always going to happen, dude. Like, edge cases are always going to happen. So now if I click on this one. And I drag and drop this into here. Oh, no, that one didn't do it. I wonder what the difference was. There's got to maybe like a race condition caused it because that's the second time that's happened. So there's got to be something I was doing. Mm. Mm. I think we can't solve this. Mm. Yeah, this puzzle. I don't think we can. Yeah. Ancient key or IQ. Our IQ is too low, chat. We can't solve it. Well, we got some cool items out of it. Hex coin and ancient cloth. Those are things I've never seen before, so that's neat. New items. Male service. Is it possible to get male and female ones and then breed them? And get, like, a farm of them in your base? Is that a thing? Not yet, but maybe. That's kind of cool. I dig that. Beans is destroying things. He wants to play so bad. We want to add animal husbandry soon. That's kind of cool. With the amount of professions that you have, that would be awesome. You know? Even more professions for more stuff like that is just neat. There's so many different options there for being able to, you know, do things in the world and try stuff. And it looks like the... Oh, and mounts too. Yeah, with animal husbandry. That'd be awesome. I dig that. Mounts, pets, uh, storage transfer. A ferret? Yes. A ferret. Maybe a rideable ferret. Maybe a large, rideable ferret. Hmm? Hmm? <laughs> a large ferret mount, maybe. Named Beans. You know, I was... Just saying. Well, that to the ideas list? Nice. I dig this. Where can I get a key? We only have one left, so I'm probably going to put it out a little bit later. We've given out 19 of them. I love these little microbiomes with like, just like a ton of plants will just appear like this. It's just neat, you know? You get a neat microbiome and you're like, oh wow, hey, there's, the, there's an area here of materials that are actually quite good. Yep, all Perlin noise. Noise, honestly, noise is amazing for world generation. What are those orange nodes over there? Oh, they're actually the services. And they have completely different patterning on them because of the female ones. Kill them. Yeah. Thunk. These have dramatically higher HP now, too. And we basically have a hunting party going. No escape. Murder. What? I don't see Bambi here. It's fine. Yoink. Actually, I'm just gonna let that flop on the ground. <laughs> Hunting and combat are getting more love in the next update. That's awesome. Is this the in-game music? Yes, it is. Yeah. Interesting. So you can't climb that because it's too slippery. 
We're trying to reach Tundra. All right. Is there any reason not to move to one of these biomes? Could I start in one of these biomes, for instance? And, like, survive and do fine? Oh, that was weird. Because I did see... You can't spawn here right now? Okay. I did see that I had a, a potion or a consumable earlier that I made that allowed me to have heat resistance or fire resistance in some way. Would that be a requirement for certain biomes to live in those? Some yes? Okay. I like that. I like the idea of the end game in a game like this having so much to do with surviving the elements. Like, maybe you have a main base in a more temperate climate, and then you have, like, a a big, you know, really nasty area that you have a, a side base for, and you have to, like, progress in that area by bringing consumables or special gear or anything like that. You know, that's that's super compelling for me. Because I did see that immediately, I was like, oh, it's got heat resistance. Like, that is definitely what I'm after. Yeah, like outposts, exactly. Like Valheim, yeah. This is like Valheim, but an MMO. And, frankly, quite a bit larger. Like, ridiculously larger. Climbing. We got another dungeon up here. Oh, here's the tundra. Careful, from this point onward, temperature drops. You won't last long in the cold unless you're wearing warm clothes. I'm losing two health every couple of sec seconds. I'm slowly dying. Plain hot tea. I now have frost resistance. I have cold protection for the next minute. This is actually... Yeah, this is one of the items that I got earlier. So that'll protect me from dying in the cold. Maybe if I got, like, warm clothing, too. Yeah. Oh, the music's gone. You know it's the age of the world when there's a... It shouldn't say clothing? Oh, no, it didn't say clothing. You actually need a power source. Oh, you know what? You're right. Yeah, that was a different thing. You don't have clothing, really. and the Clothing is all cosmetic. Power sources are the things that you get. That are like equipables. Because you're a robot. You got pieces. What is this? Five quill. So tier five stuff out here. Yeah. This is 100% endgame stuff. I love this. Yeah, the H menu, you can actually see your power sources connect to your character. And then in your professions, you can actually see every one of your profession items here. And then each one of them has a specific tool assigned to it, which I think is quite fun. Yeah, you'll need to import a lot of stuff out here because you won't be able to survive otherwise. You wouldn't be able to have food or anything like that. And you need consumables or a power source that makes it so that you're immune to the frost damage. Since the frost damage that's being done is two... Does that mean that I would only need two frost resistance? Because I see that this is giving me ten cold protection, if that makes sense. Or could I build a building that makes me more resistant to cold in the area, like uh, campfires, things like that? Not exactly? Alright. Oh! I got out of sync for a moment there. 0.44% of the world has been uncovered so far. By me. Oh, it is upset. Server med. Gonna have to make so many bases? Yeah. Getting rubber banded a little bit. Damage is flat right now. Okay. Yeah, because I was thinking, like, the level of extreme for the cold is, like, what does 10 frost resist mean? You know? This isn't tundra yet? Okay. Because if what what does ten resistance equate to in terms of two damage is kind of the idea. This is peaks, okay. I really like this environment, though. I think it's quite cool. Pun intended. What game? Bitcraft. It is a new 
social sandbox MMO with crafting and survival. And the world is massive, dude. Absolutely enormous. Ridiculously so. When does it come out? Don't know. They don't have a they don't have a public thing. This guy right here, Minch, is actually the game director. Gotta climb down this. I no longer need my hot tea. Where are you heading? He's trying to show me all the different biomes, and we're finding a tundra right now. Because we just... Getting a little bit of rubber band. We just went over the peaks, and he showed me some of the... The, like, frost mechanics. It's the environmental damage mechanics. Yeah. We can do our boats again in a second, eh? Where's it going to release? Steam or some launcher? I don't know. I don't know what their strategy is. Right now they have it over their Discord. And we've been having a blast with it. There we go. Should be close. Nice. How can we play? It is a closed alpha right now. We were actually giving out some keys earlier. I gave out 19 of them. We have one left. Oh yeah, Mitch, is there controller support for this? Some people were asking that. I actually don't know. I didn't check. We played around with WHD. I actually like the point and click more. WHD feels like it could work. But the point click actually feels good. Yeah. Not working perfect in this build, so we disabled it? Makes sense. I'd be interested in trying WSD, just to see how it feels in terms of difference. Or even a controller. We need WSD for controller support? Makes sense. Yeah, I, I always talk to the community about controller support, because a lot of people don't realize it's incredibly important for people with physical disabilities, because it ends up being the kind of, like, gateway for them using their own custom devices. It's such a huge thing. Controller support unlocks all of that for people. So it's good. Yeah, they're working on it, basically. Yep. How about both? I mean, that's the idea. That's what he's talking about, is they're, they're testing things and trying stuff. Closed alpha, man. You're talking very early days and looking at how, how much there is. And all this stuff is interactable, too. Like, all these take professions and things. We actually had towns earlier. So the rest of the community is building a town currently. Yeah, it does look good. How can I win one last game? I've just been giving them out in chat. There's no special trick. You either get it or you don't, right? How deep can I dig? I think there's a bedrock layer, effectively. There is a limit. Can you recall back? I can. Yeah, you can teleport back to your town. There's also, like, you can build other bases. Oh, what is this? It's a new NPC I haven't met you before. Actually, it's two NPCs I haven't met before. Who are they? Varu and Laru. Welcome. Hey there. We know just what you need. Making you look your best is our specialty. Oh, they sell clothing. And they have Mark of the Twins for their currency. Shirt and suspenders, tattered cap. What is this? Deed mask, four points mask. You look at this. A mask with four extruding spikes. Oh, I love that. Because, yeah, you, you would just have a, a mask, right? It's not actually your face. It's a mask. Because it's part of your robotic form. That's neat. That's really neat, actually. I dig that a lot. You can change so much about the expression of the character with extra pieces like that as well. 
Little tiny stuff. Even though it cuts through the hat. <laughs> yeah, you're a robotic form. You're a robot. You're a little like robot doll man. Yeah. So you can change everything about yourself. Anything you want to. At any time, too. Your town is starving without their cook? Unfortunate. Let them eat sand. I will return one day. But not today. Robots don't need to eat, though. Nah. I really want to see that tundra you were talking about. Yeah. Well, I don't want to head back. This is cool. Not yet, anyway. So, just so you guys know, in our Discord, at discord.gg slash pirate software, we've created a role for Bitcraft. So if you join that role, you'll get access to that section of the Discord. And we've got resources and stuff that are going in there. So we're going to build a community around this game. Because I find this to be very compelling. And no, it is not sponsored. They are not paying me. They didn't ask me to do any of this. I think the game is cool. I'm interested in this. Because I think that this is unique and interesting. And could catch on quite a bit. I think it's actually quite nice. Yeah. I, I'm going to play this. I find this to be fun. Yeah, good on you. Not my style, but I'm here for the vibes. Exactly. Yeah. What is it about? It is a massive open world survival crafting game where you build towns and work together to try and, you know, survive in the elements. And there's crazy different biomes that actually add more difficulty. And I think it's very fun. It's also free to play. Their plan is to go free to play entirely and then add some kind of extra thing like maybe cosmetics or stuff like that. I read through their entire monetization stuff earlier in the stream and I... It is rare that you find a studio that gets it. I think that's the biggest thing. That they understand the complex relationship between being a player and playing a monetized game in some way. And you should definitely read their monetization, like the way that they see monetization, because it's exactly the same way that I see it. So, I was quite happy with that. This is awesome looking. Look at how the biome just changed over like that. Look at this. Look how nice this is. The whole world is built out of hexagons, by the way. Yeah, does anybody have that link from earlier? For that article? Let me pull this up. I want to give this to them real fast. Because this is really important. A lot of the times people here are free to play and it scares them. You know? Bitcraft monetization blog. Yeah, our thoughts on game monetization. I'm linking this in chat for you guys. When people hear free to play, a lot of times they go, oh, it's going to be pay to win or something. But no, you got to read this, this blog from them. I put it in chat a whole bunch. It's really, really good, dude. It's exactly the same way that I feel about monetization. The, the way that you always have to remember this, if you're a game developer, the only thing you have to do is make your players feel comfortable. If they enjoy the game, if they trust you as a dev, they will support you. And they'll support you in a greater degree than anything else. If you try to exploit that relationship, if you try to treat them badly, or take things that are effort-based and make them monetized, you will lose everything. And they get that. That entire blog is them explaining how they get that. And it's something that you see so many studios fail. So, good on them. Makes me comfortable enough to, you know, go all in on this and be interested. And I'm really critical, so... It's rare for me. Isn't that what happened to Eve? Yes, it is. The slow burn of taking effort-based things and turning them into monetization schemes. Key giveaways or no? I've been giving keys away the whole time. If you're only here for a key, understand that there's 14,000 people on this side and another 2,000 on the other side, and we got one key left. So, don't be too upset if you don't get it. This environment is awesome. I love the kind of like oranges and purples in this. Oh no. I've been left by the game director. Is that a... Is that a wolf? Is that a pig? What are you? It's a boar! I think the game director crashed. <laughs> oh wait, wait, wait. There he is. You crash out? What are these? 
Music is by Austin Wintory and Rachel Hardy. The music's beautiful. It's really good. So it's a tier 4 material there. I don't have that high tier. Yeah, they killed it. It's really nice. Is that... I'm interested. I wonder if this... Um... The fireflies are interactable in some way. Silken hex moths. They are. I can actually get the hex moths. I didn't realize that. Look at that. I'm using my hand to capture them. At least I think that's my hand getting them. I got a hex moth cocoon. And a silken hex moth. I guess there's not a tool for this. Or maybe I don't have a tool for this. What profession is this for? Hunting. It's a hunting profession tool. Do I not have a hunting tool? I do. It's a bow, though. Maybe you would need, like, a net. Yeah, because it doesn't count. And the, the bow doesn't count for this kind of hunting. This was a last-minute addition. We're going to expand more in the future. If you add bug hunting, I will lose my mind, dude. <laughs> so something you didn't, you may not know I actually went to college to be an entomologist an insect scientist, specifically in myrmecology which is ants <laughs> I would lose it, dude love bugs yeah, this is quite cool I dig this ants are way cool, that is true see, that's the thing, though Anything you have like that, there's so much opportunity for the ad things. Because if you think about it, what is that node? That node is propagated into the world based on noise, wherever that's going to land, right? It has a flag set on it to say what profession it's a part of. And then if you look at our professions here, every profession is just a list of numbers, a list of flagged resources it can tie to, and a profession crafting system to give it a tool. That is not incredibly expensive in terms of development time and process. So they can add a ton of this stuff into this system because they've just they've given themselves a basis, a bucket system to just add new content. It's brilliant. It's really good. We can continue north to the northern coast. We spent four years building the systems and tech and are ready to add a lot of content. Yeah, no, it's clear. Adding bucketed systems like that makes it so that it's so much easier to add content. Yeah, you saved yourselves a massive amount of time. It's it's funny, too, because people will see that and they're like, wow, well, yeah, no, it seems so easy to add. And it's like, no, the hard part was building the framework for that. You built the framework. Now you can just add whatever you want. Now it's playtime, you know? Yep. Lots of preparation for content edition. Bingo. That's the right way to build that, too. Bucketed systems like that is the correct way to do it. it takes time. It takes a long time to do it. That's what we did in block game. It took us two years to get that right. And now I can finally just add content to the MMO. It's quite cool. It's really compelling. Would you follow... Did he follow us? North to the northern coast. Oh. He blinked into existence over there. I think we desynced a little bit. Word in the street is a pirate software doesn't need sleep. Don't know what you're talking about. I sleep all the time. I'm sleeping I'm sleeping right now, dude. He crashed whenever you look at him. <laughs> oh. Yeah, the game is really beautiful, man. Really beautiful. And for closed alpha, the servers are actually staying up pretty well. How many players do you guys actually have online right now? That's the part that's really interesting to me. We are goblin testing the servers right now. Yeah, exactly. If you want, we can get on a Discord call if that's easier for you, by the way. If you'd like to get on. Then they can hear you as well. But that's up to you. Depends on if you're comfortable with that. We got ads in about 30 seconds. 
We're gonna have to wait on the ends. What? Oh yeah, he's gonna call. Cool. We're gonna need ads in about ten seconds here. Ads are two minutes long. We wait for everybody for the ads. I don't. I don't. You know, you're not gonna miss any content if you don't monetize. If you don't buy a sub or anything like that, we wait for you. So just, just wait. You'll be good. Don't worry. Won't miss anything. Happy to hop on. Nice. I'm gonna call you. Boop. Hey, what's up? I'm gonna set it up so that they can hear you, and we are in an ad break right now. They'll still be able to hear you. But there'll be people that are going into ads, so they can't hear you. So it's like the community gets split. So I just, yeah, I was, I just muted the stream. So I. Was there following. we go. Nice. Nice to meet you, by the way. Yeah, nice to meet you too. The game is great, man. You you guys are doing an awesome job. This is actually freaking cool. It's way more deep in terms of the crafting than I expected. Way more deep. I was immediately yeah. kind of like, whoa, yeah. Like usually when you hit a game like this, it's like open world survival crafting. I was like, okay, so the. The world is what everybody focused on, and the crafting is going to be kind of like an inch deep, but wide. And this was like, mm -hmm. it's really wide. I was like, oh, now I'm going to get into this, and it's really deep, too. Oh, oh, now we got ads. Now we got to wait. Yeah, wait. we. I mean, we've been testing the game for the last two years, or I mean, more than that, but really doing these pre-alphas for the last two years. And so we've been just doing longer and longer tests, building up the content, and trying to make sure we didn't launch this with just five hours of stuff to do. Yeah, no, definitely. I feel like I could play this all day and just have things that I'd want to accomplish when I wake up. For sure. Here, <laughs> just give me one sec. I'm just going to close my door. Perfect. Is that Primogen? No, that's the game director. Yeah. Game is Windows only. It's Windows and Mac right now. And um, I don't know what they plan for the future, but this is a closed alpha. So, like, you're talking early stuff, right? Is it the dev on the call? Yes, it is. It is the game director. They have a number of devs. Works on Linux using Proton. Everything works on Linux using Proton. Already, I'm back. All right, cool. We got one minute and five seconds left on ads. Yeah, so I know you were talking about the, uh, like, why wouldn't you just come start in this biome? Basically, the way it's kind of laid out is each biome has different tier ranges of different materials. Yeah, I noticed. So, you just you just get locked, soft locked, basically. Yeah, well, so... And the other thing is kind of the complementary material types of that tier get spread out more and more as you go up the tiers. So if you mm. start at tier one in the kind of like the grasslands and the forest, everything's close by. As you get to tier two, you start having to go to like two biomes that are a little bit further apart. And then as you reach the higher tiers, you basically need stuff from like the far reaches of the world. So you can base in the center and import everything. Or you can base in one of the extremes and import the stuff you don't have even further, but have some stuff local. Makes sense. Yeah, makes sense. And yeah. We got five seconds left. Almost. So you can just ask me whatever and I'll do yeah. my best to answer. <laughs> Most definitely. All right, ad break is over. So he was explaining while we were while we were on the ad break is that as you go up in the tiers, the biomes actually get farther and farther apart. So it makes it more and more difficult for you to exist in that biome without having logistics, which is kind of cool. Could you turn up a uh, volume? Sure, I could do that. But yeah, so tell me tell me more about the biome system, because I'm seeing that in this biome, we have a level five machete gather for this. How many different biomes are there? So right now there's 10 biomes, including the ocean. Um, and that's something that we'll probably add more to. But I think most of the biomes that we have still have a lot of room to, to add more stuff to them. Um, and you're correct in that basically like this thing here requires a tier five machete, but each biome is going to have a, a range of stuff. So I could probably pull up the spreadsheet actually here and see, mm, but basically, yeah, this biome probably has like some of the plant fiber stuff from like tier four to tier six, but then mm -hmm. it maybe has only like stone of tier two and tier three, something like that, for example. So it's more of a plant-based so, biome. So that's higher, right? Exactly. And so this biome might also have like no tier five fish or no tier six fish. And so once you get to tier six or tier five, for example, it might be good because you have the plant fiber here, but you have none of the fish and maybe the fish are on the other side of the world in a different biome. Hmm. That's and awesome. The, the way that the skills and the materials are designed is that you basically need all 13 skills to kind of advance through that tier and the materials of all those skills. So 
there's kind of there's not a way to advance fully through a tier without having a little bit of everything and a little bit of everyone. Yeah, I, I, I found very quickly, like, it is good to have a person specialize. So, like, I was immediately being the cook, right? Because the cost of creating a a tool for that profession is quite high. So everybody bands together, makes the tool for the one guy. That guy is able to get the next tier of goods, and then you kind of upgrade everybody, you know? Totally. It, there's good. been a lot of tests figuring out exactly, like, how to get people to work together. Uh, some of the early play tests was definitely everyone just soloing and in a shared world which is kind of how a lot of mmos end up and we were definitely set out from the beginning like that wasn't what we wanted we wanted to really yeah. put all the systems in place to make people team up yeah we had the same kind of a thing i've got a a, a minecraft server that uh i made an mmo in because i was like minecraft is kind of boring in vanilla and one of the first problems i had was people because i put all the professions in people would just sit in their house and just do the profession alone so like I've I've been through the exact same process. I was like, oh no, we got to find a way to make it so that it, it is optimal that you work with other people was the biggest thing. And yeah, and I've, that whole process is it's tough. It's iteration to try and figure out how to make it compelling to play with each other, not just make it feel forced, but make it feel like that's optimal. And this feels like it's optimal to work with others, not like I'm being restricted. It's like I'm I'm trying to be a more efficient player, and that requires me to work with others. Yeah, one of our philosophies is discourage, don't disallow. So we try to allow you to do basically whatever you want. That's why you don't have to like lock into a profession or change classes or do any stuff like that. Uh, you can just go do anything. But we try to put the little carrot on the stick there for you to feel like, oh, if I just continue doing this one thing, it would be better for me and better for my team. Yep. It, it also felt like, man, I could get so much more done if I had another pair of hands. And then it's immediately where like, if you have that sort of environment, you want to work together. It immediately becomes a team game. So like, yeah, no, it worked. It worked really well. For sure. And I think one thing you'll see as you go up the tiers too is in early versions of this game, uh, as you got higher up, the low level players, we saw players not really wanting to work together with the low level players because it's like, oh, they're just doing this low level stuff I've already done. They're just polluting my base with little crummy buildings that are pointless for me. Um, and so we restructured the whole progression around like these funnel up uh, items. And so as you certain items, as you start to get them to higher tiers, you need inputs of the tier below. And that kind of cascades in like a giant pyramid scheme, basically. So mm -hmm. to craft a tier 10 ingot, you need like 256 tier one ingots, however, 128 uh, tier two ingots. And the, basically that funnels all the way up. And so now we see that when players are building these towns, when a new low level player walks by, they're like, hey, come on in, bud. Like, welcome to the team. Like, yeah. let's put you to work. Go make some iron for me. <laughs> exactly. No, that's that's a good way to do it. Um, making sure that those baseline materials are always worth it so that the the newest players are always valuable. And I, I, I do think that is super important because you're also going to have some people that are like, I just want to pick flowers. That's that's what I want to do in the game. I just want to pick level one flowers forever. You know, it's, that's what they like to do. And I see that you even see that in World of Warcraft, right? Like, I just want to do herbalism. That's all I want to do in the whole game. I don't want to raid. Don't want to do dungeons. Just want to do herbalism. It's like a normal for thing. Sure. So it's it's good to have a route for those kind of players and like a point, you know, an area for them to exist in the game. Feels good. Yeah. I know Um, I've seen a lot of people ask too about like combat and merchanting and trading and some of the, these other things of like, will these be added as skills? And one thing that we've kind of thought about is like the things that are currently skills right now are basically intended to be like things that you sh can and should specialize in. But there's lots of other activities and stuff in the game that kind of everybody wants to do. And so we're being careful to like not just add those as skills, like things like exploration, trading, combat, yeah. um, vehicle or like a uh, mounts and vehicles, uh, the, all the, these types of things that kind of everybody wants and everybody can benefit from. So we're trying to add those in as activities in the game and figuring out a different progression mechanism for those so that this doesn't feel like, Oh, I want to be a cook, but I also want to have a boat. And you have to like choose between those things. Originally, boats were like made with carpentry, but we're like, hey, this doesn't feel right. To yeah, because then you have to be a carpenter. There's no other choice, right? Exactly. Yeah. If you, if you want to go anywhere, decisions. you have to. Yeah. People are making decisions on their skill based on the rewards that they wanted and not like what they just enjoyed doing. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. They, I mean, all of this stuff that I've seen so far just oozes that you guys have gone through a lot of iteration and playtesting to get to this point which I didn't realize how much you had done with that. And it it was very apparent from the moment I started playing it. I was like, oh, wait a minute. They've played this a lot. Like, because these systems make sense. They feel compelling. And that doesn't 
just happen. A lot of people are like, oh, yeah, they just designed a good game. No, you you reach a good game by playing it and having other people play it and getting that feedback and like trying things because your initial on paper ideas just usually won't work. Like you'll you'll have an idea that you think might be cool. You try it and you're like, wow, this sucks. (laughs) So this has turned out really nice. Like you guys are doing this is really, really good. Thanks. I appreciate that. Love the world generation, too. It's freaking sick. Yeah, I think this is a fairly new biome that I think basically there's a constant tug of war between like the game design team and the art team of like, how do we make this look really cool, but then also make sure it stays functional and like easy to traverse and has the resources that it needs to have. And so uh, this biome is definitely a newer addition there that I think we're still finding exactly the sweet spot on. But I think it looks amazing right now with all the the massive cliffs and stuff, but we might need to still get it a little bit better in terms of uh, ease of traversability. Uh, I, I really think it would be like kind of annoying stuff. to build a town here right now. It'd be crazy annoying to build a town here. Maybe a tiny outpost, though. Like, can you have, yeah. mul- you can have mul- multiple towns or no? So each player can only own one claim, but you can be a member of many, many claims. So what we've seen is what people actually usually end up doing is they build like their mega base or like their capital city, and then they send out kind of like um like outpost parties to like go set up like a smaller claim to do like on-site processing rather than just bringing back the raw materials oh. because i don't know if you've gotten to the packaging of items yet but basically you know say say you mine a rock you get a, j- a big stone chunk that is a cargo so you can only fill your boat with so many of those yeah um but if you build a masonry station and then you break it down into stone and pebbles you can package that into like kind of like a cargo container of pebbles that can hold way way more than you could otherwise and uh, then you can just bring those back in bulk and so having that little outpost to process stuff and then bring it back to the capital city more dense is a lot more uh, viable it makes a lot of sense too, like having having that, you know, transport being a big deal, having to think about inventory space being a big deal, like all of that is important to that kind of progression too, because it it gets people to work together because it's like, well, I can only carry this much stuff. Let's get another guy, you know, I can only craft this much stuff. You know, I, I was even running into being the cook for the whole village there. We even we have like maybe 20 people, 25 people somewhere in there. I was running into throughput issues. Like as my skill sure. went up, it started making it each time I, I teared up my my cooking tool. It was very apparent, even though I was getting like a plus three or a plus two, that it was adding so much more value to my ability to cook for everybody. Because I went from like 10 or eight damage per, per tick on it to 17. So it doubled, but it it more than doubled my throughput because now I have a higher crit chance too. And that crit chance was going up so high that it was like, now I'm getting 34 hits, you know, instead of yeah, 17. Yeah, I think the crit chance might be a little overtuned. I think it's we might need bit. to lower that a little bit. But um, yeah. yeah, it's great great to see that. I think one thing that we don't have enabled right now, but we've played with um, internally is, so gathering, you can have many people do it at once to gather it faster. Building, you can have many people do it together to build it faster. Terraforming, same thing. Crafting is one thing where right now, each project can only be done by one person. Mm-hmm. Um, the main reason for that is just like we don't want people like siphoning other people's XP if they kind of are trying to craft something that they like really spent a bunch of time gathering. But I think what we probably will allow is like when you start a crafting recipe, you can say like make this like open or private. And then if you set it as open, you can have like 10 people there helping cook faster. And so if you make like a big quantity project, you can have like everybody helping cook it faster within the same project slot even. That makes sense. I think that's cool. I was actually even thinking of things like if somebody brings me the materials and they set up the project, they could assign me to cook it, right? Or just like say, hey, can somebody cook this? And then I cook it and then they're the only ones who could pick it up. Like I was thinking of all these different ways of doing work orders and stuff because I know like as a person who leads guilds, there's eventually going to come a time where some dude steals something he's not supposed to and it's going to be drama. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, so we, there, there is a few systems in place right now. So like for the town that you have, once you build a enterable building, you can kind of override permissions with that. So you could say like only these people are allowed in this building or only these people are allowed to use storage in this building oh. so you don't have to just give permission ba- basically actually in the last um in the last pre-alpha that we did we kind of saw that the maximum size that villages comfortably kind of got to was around like 15 Ooh. to 20 space because... fish <laughs> yeah there's a there's an issue with some of the corner hex tiles uh mm-hmm. as you can imagine hexagon uh grids adds a lot more complications to things it does uh 
But uh, we saw that people only really got to these like 15 person villages because it just became too hard to like trust everyone and yes. not have more granularity on the permissions. And so what a big thing that we worked on from that last play test to this one is adding the rental system. So basically you can build enterable houses, which kind of work like Animal Crossing, like you go inside and there's a big space inside. And then once you're in there, you can build a little totem to make that house for rent and then someone can rent it and there's like tenant rights and all this kind of stuff that prevents the owner from like taking their stuff or kicking them out or all, all these things uh, that we're going to add more con configuration on in the future. Um, but what it means is you can have like the cook's house or whatever, or the cook's warehouse, and then you could have all the cooking materials in there and only a few people with permission. And then, you know, there's a box outside that people are bringing stuff That's inside perfect. and you don't need to worry about someone taking everything. You could also even have like a shop counter inside the cook's house that anybody can walk mm. in and basically treat that as like a bakery that they're just buying stuff from. And now like the cook's guild of the town is making money from other players oh, in the town. So you can have intra-town economies. You have no idea how compelling all that sounds to me. Like I, I you, you have no clue. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I definitely, uh, I have a history it. coming from these types of games. And so I, I had a lot of ideas of like, okay, I think this is what we need to get players to to do it. And exactly like you said, like it's really just putting, we're trying to put the systems in place so that players can kind of do a lot of stuff with them. And so right now we have the rental system. We have the barter stall system, which allows you to basically like asynchronously trade uh, mm -hmm. with other players. I think that's a big nice. thing next will be exactly like you said, work orders is another big one that's coming down the pipe some point uh still in design phase right now but figuring out the right way to have that so you can um yeah. basically like set up a work order for someone to do it for me I've, I've played massive games like eve online like i was a an alliance leader in there with like 1200 players in our alliance right and like that's a lot of management and what we ended up doing was excel basically for everything right because you you have to manage it all somehow but having inside systems like contracts and things like that in eve you could do things like hey i want this crafted here's the materials for it, here's the payment, and then you deliver back the, the crafted product is sort of the idea with that kind of stuff. And like yeah. in any systems that allow me to do either easier throughput trading or easier throughput crafting or just be a tradesman, right? I love that kind of stuff. So like the idea of like somebody brings me the berries and the uh and the what was it wheat or whatever it was the, the the material i was getting and then turning that into and then all they want back is the food if i could do that in a more automated way instead of like managing it all out that's that's cool all of these all of the things that you're talking about sound awesome so far that's such yeah, an so interesting you, way to develop it you actually can do something sort of like a work order it's not the most amazing ux because it's kind of just using a system that's not fully designed for it yet is with the barter stalls you could set up a thing where you say like hey i'm buying the raw grain and the raw berries yeah and then you're selling whatever these completed food items for some some markup if you want or for no markup and then basically what you're doing is you're sitting behind the barter stall with your cooking station and just as the stock of berries and stuff comes in you're crafting it and dumping the completed stuff back in the barter stall and so that's perfect the the only challenge there is it's not like a you come with one quantity of ingredients and you can immediately get one output back you need that person kind of crafting it and putting it back in stock mm -hmm. for you in the barter stall, but work orders will allow, will allow that to happen with like a single kind of quantity of ingredients. There's like a tiny island over there? Is that where we uh, just swam from? Yeah, that, that's where we just came from. So it's a little peninsula piece. I love this. Yeah. So I, I love the idea of like making like ahead, a sorry. fishing village here, you know, like something like that. It's like, this is, you have such good access to the ocean. It's kind of flat along the edge here, you know, maybe a little fishing outpost, something like that. Definitely. We've seen stuff too where like, Here's a here's a challenge of like what happens if you want to get what happens if you have a cart down here full of fish and you want to bring it into the inland of the tundra. We've seen people basically build a giant ramp along the edge of the cliff here through no terraforming. Way. So they can not quite these large of cliffs in the it was in the coniferous forest we were in before, but building a little ramp to like go up a mountain to That's a get huge their amount cart. of player effort too. It is. We there was like dozens of players coordinating for like many many hours to to build a small ramp. That's crazy. Yeah, you can mine into the cliffs. You can terraform all these up and down levels. Yeah, it's really awesome. We, actually, we can throw one down here. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's show them. I can see the hexagon sadness here with these plants. <laughs> so yeah, you can make it taller. So we'll like dig it here. 
you can see we've just raised it. And we have to keep doing that. And as we work together, we can get it taller and taller and taller. Yeah, at one of the ends of the pre-alpha tests, we had about 50 people all in one spot screaming dig and just building a pillar to the <laughs> to the max height. Uh, and that's when we that's when we learned that whatever numbers we'd put in here were far, far too low uh, for uh, how fast it scales up in terms of the cost. That's very funny. They'll always do it. They'll always dig together. Yeah, I've definitely learned. I'm sure you've learned this making like an MMO mod for Minecraft. It's like whatever you think the the values are of oh, like yeah. nobody will ever be able to do this. They do uh, it. basically like 10x or 100 exit, and probably people will still do it. Yeah, no, that's exactly it. I remember I first put in the experience in there, and people hit max level in like four hours, and I was like, oh, okay. And then I, I multiplied it by I think 500, and people were still hitting max level in like a month. And I was like, you're insane. Like, it's ridiculous. Because be there will be some people that are just like, I'm going to play this 16 hours a day, every day. And that's how that's going to go. You know, I'm out of stamina. Ugh, eat another food. Yeah, this yeah, is we... the terraforming system. So you can actually, like, slowly terraform. And you work all together to do this. Yeah, we kind of wanted to... So I'm sure you're familiar with, like, Minecraft 2B2T. And just, oh, yeah. like, how much of a hellscape the terrain of a sandbox game can get if you just let people do stuff and so one thing that i think was like an interesting game design challenge for us is like how do you take a game where like claiming can be used like constructively or destructively to like grief someone to like lock block them in or something like that terraforming can be used constructively to build something cool or destructively to mess up the terrain how do you basically like add these systems where you can't balance it so that building something is easy but destroying something is bad when it can be used for both and so we tried to think of like clever ways to build guardrails into the system so that people can still build cool stuff. But if someone's trying to mess up the world or mess things up or grief you, you can kind of get rid of it easier than they can grief it. So uh, for example, with the terraforming, the further you get from the natural height, the more and more work it becomes. So if, if you have a lot of coordinated people, you can kind of coordinate to still build something cool. But if someone is messing these up and just like trying to build like random pillars everywhere in an ugly, annoying way, it's always going to be cheaper for you to terraform it back to the original uh, height or towards the original height, at least. Yeah, and we can see this here. Increase to 42 height is 165 or decrease to 40 is 100. So we can actually change that. And you can see it in, in a, immediately. Anything that deviates from what the baseline was for that hex grid is now or that hex tile is now more expensive to get farther yeah, and farther can, away from that base you can see on the left in the the current height and the natural height uh, yeah that's awesome that's really awesome actually that's a really good system that's a great way to do that does anything naturally degrade over time so definitely uh, uh buildings and that kind of stuff do terraforming does not right now at least um another thing we've talked about in the future is having it so that the roads are maintained by walking on them so it'd be like they degrade over time but if they're walked on that kind of like repairs them so it keeps like used roads from decaying but it keeps like unused roads might slowly decay uh that's a bit more complicated and uh, maybe technically taxing that we're we're gonna add some other stuff before we get to that one probably but uh the way the buildings work is um we kind of have this like no harm no foul policy on the mm -hmm. uh on the claims in the building. So if you're building out in the middle of nowhere and you build a modest sized claim, maintaining that should be very easy. I know a lot of players get really um, anxious about games when they have a claim and they have to maintain their base and, oh, I have to log in every day to put more supplies in here. We definitely wanted to make sure that this is a kind of cozy and comfortable game that if you are just playing solo, if you're a hermit in the woods, you can just build your claim, dump, you know, resources play into it, yeah. Play for an hour, dump a bunch of supplies, and you can log off for the week, and you don't need to worry about it. But if you want to build a massive city, that cost co climbs non-linearly, and so you really need a lot of players to move in. You need them basically like paying rent, paying taxes, using those taxes to buy materials off of players and visitors, and using those supplies to maintain that big claim. Um, if you are a person living in the woods and your claim runs out, your buildings will stay around for quite a while, and so if you come back, you can you know refill your claim and repair it up, especially if if you're built in some isolated area no one's even noticed your base um or another player if you've truly like quit the game another player can come by and reclaim and resupply your claim and now it's theirs and they can repair those buildings and take them that's or they can interesting sell, 
they can also salvage the buildings for materials. And so after a long time, the buildings will decay and we want to add more like art and kind of cool stuff to make that look more thematic. But um, yeah, they, they eventually will decay completely. What happens if somebody has a chest on that land and it decays? Do the items drop on the ground? Can you go and like, like scout a dude and be like, oh man, that, that big base is about to decay. We're going to get a bunch of resources. Anything it's a like good that? question. So the buildings themselves can be deconstructed for the materials that were used or some of the materials that were used to build them. Right now, I think for chests and stockpiles, the cargo and the items don't drop on the ground. We could definitely do that. I think that's that's a very yeah, easy thing to add. I feel like that'd be like one of those things of like knowing the surroundings and being like, you know, this this other massive guild has fallen apart. You know, their their base is going to fall apart at this. Like we think it's going to decay around this time. Let's be there to pick up the items, you know. For sure. It builds like a flashpoint interesting thing. Well, so the thing is right now, the um, the buildings only decay if the claim is empty. And if the claim is empty of supplies, it's basically treated as if there is no claim. So mm -hmm. as soon as the claim is dead, you can go, you can just oh, open just the chest it. and loot oh, the okay. items. You don't, yeah, you don't need to wait all. for the chest to decay. Yeah. Yeah. Just take it all. Um, nice. That's cool. Also, yeah. look at this. I, so now we've got it at 285 and to decrease it back to, back to low. Let me see. I'm going to stop here. Oh, wait. Cancel. I'm going to wait for it to go all the way through. I don't want to see what it costs in the next one. There we go. So to raise it again now, it's 330, but to lower it, it's 240. So these two values are getting farther and farther apart from each other. It's getting way, way cheaper and way, way more expensive to raise because we're so far away from the natural height of the ground. Yeah, it's good. So basically, it's always going to be half as much work right now to put it back as it was to put it there. That's and good. so if someone's going around trying to make, and whether that's going up or down, it's whatever its natural height was. So if, if yeah. someone's going around trying to just make giant pillars in the train, number one, they're not going to get very far by themselves. And number two, resetting it is always going to be easier for you. Like you're going to be able to catch up with them if they're just trying to mess it up. Yeah. So um, how many people can fit on the server right now? How many, how many players actually are there currently? Good question. So let me see. I have an API that I can hit here. Nice. Tell you. Um, it's something that we are still testing. And I, I'm sure you've, I think you heard a little bit about space time DB, right? Yes. I wanted to talk to Primogen about that. We were going to do like a talk on it and like look into the tech completely. Yeah, we, we definitely would love that. I'm sure uh, Three Blave would uh, really enjoy that. I know mm -hmm. he's, he's uh, the top evangelist for space time dv and very curious to see what other people who he respects their opinions think of it yeah most definitely um, also for those who are wondering that map is not just massive i've only seen 0.71 percent of the total map and we've explored all of this yeah <laughs> yeah not tiny not tiny 0.71%. You could put yourself in the armpit of this map and maybe never see another person ever again. <laughs> so I think uh, right now we have around 450 people in the game. Um, mm -hmm. And we're kind of slowly uh, bringing that up as we see that things are stable. Um, we did a bunch of uh, like testing before the, uh, before the alpha. And I think the, the main thing is like space time DB is still in its infancy. So we're actually in the weeks leading up to this it was like okay we can support 100 ccu then the next week it's 200 the next week it's 400 the next week it's 600 yeah and uh but obviously that's just we didn't have that many people to test and so we're testing with bots that are just walking around and doing stuff and so the real load on the server is always kind of um difficult Unknown. to yeah it's difficult to fully uh guess just from those tests so i think the good news is we have a whole bunch of things that are going to do like order of magnitude uh improvements to mm -hmm. the uh the server capabilities that we just like they're in progress and they're not done yet but we're like hey we don't want people to wait anymore for the for the closed alpha and we we got it to a point where it's like okay we can do enough people to do a decent test um so r right now it's around that um but expect that to be up in the thousands uh in the near future look we found half of stonehenge <laughs> <laughs> it's actually kind of funny because like one of the things I was really about realizing about that is since you guys are just starting out with Space Time DB and just building this out, you're seeing it at pretty much the worst it's ever going to be right now. Like, <laughs> like if if you're able to do this right now, that's phenomenal. 
So, yeah. yeah. So we actually built from when the game started development, we built what we kind of now refer to as jank time DB. Basically, we were just building the server that we needed to make the game run. In fact, at first we went out there and said like, hey, what can we get off the shelf to build this game? Yeah. We're like what backend is available? And we kind of found out that at the time, which was in 2018 or so, 2017, um, there was nothing that could do exactly what we wanted. There was a few things, there was a few things that out of the box did like multiplayer for games, but they didn't do large scale multiplayer or like spatial, spatially large multiplayer. And there was obviously some things like spatial OS, but they didn't handle persistence. And so we basically realized there was nothing that could easily do for us massive scale multiplayer with persistence. And we needed both of those things. And so we basically just started building our own thing, uh, which was basically just using the patterns that we thought were the best thing to use to build this type of game. And we quickly realized like, hey, this thing is, this server is starting to look a lot like a database. Uh, and also, hey, this is starting to look like something that could be useful for more than just us. And so we we actually went back and decided, you know, we should Let's rip this whole yeah. thing out. Let's rethink it and kind of do it the right way that it's more general. And let's just build this out as its own product. And so that was kind of the start of Space 9 which was around this time last year, that kind of that uh, starting of se separating these happened. And so the game was built on this jank time DB version of, of what eventually would become Space 9 And we just basically finished the migration yeah. to space time db for bitcraft around the end of last year but obviously space time db was very early in development that it was just very quickly as it got new and new newer and newer features um that were able to improve the performance we started to be able to like go from one ccu to 10 to 100 to 200, 200 to 400 yeah. to 600. Uh, i think right now we could probably That's do small. up to a thousand but um it might be we'll, uh degraded it depends point. on like what people are doing. It's like, especially as people in the early game, there's lots more running around and doing stuff. And then as you get into the, the you know, tier two and beyond, it's a lot of, uh, you know, sitting in your base and crafting and stuff like that that takes up way less server resources. So it kind Definitely. of depends who's playing and where they're at. Yeah, um, it's, it's it's one of the things that I think a lot of people don't realize too is people are like, oh, why don't you just use bots to test it? Like you're saying you use bots. Bots don't actually replicate a real user because... You have to remember there's also network traffic stuff. You have degraded connections for some people. You have people being all over the world. Like there's, you, you cannot use a bot to get a fully organic, same as a real player experience to test performance. You can get close. You can get a, a general idea, but you can't get the, the perfect same exact what a player would do. There's also things that players would do that are like weird, right? <laughs> I can give you a great example of that. So when we first started testing with bots, one of the engineers made a, a bot script that would connect a whole bunch of uh, connections and basically send requests to the server to like simulate player actions. Mm -hmm. The problem was they're only writing, they're not reading. And so actually what we found out was like 90 plus percent of the load on the server was just subscribing basically to all the data of like, if you're a real client, you need to get all the information from the server of all the stuff around you, all the other players. And so we re we thought, oh, we can handle this much. And then we rebuilt the bots that were actually like headless clients that actually subscribed to all the data. And then we're like, oh, these yep. people are or, like, the amount of uh, server load that each player needs is a lot higher than we thought uh, when we were just testing with this simple bot. And even that is those bots are just moving. They're not doing all the other stuff that players can do. So. Um, I'm going to bug this real yeah. fast. Uh, oh, this is no issues list. I'm going to write it to that chat there. Requires a tier two machete to dig. <laughs> Requires a tier two machete equipped to dig. Wrong tool. Oops. That was an accident. Sorry. No worries. <laughs> On a mud pile. Should be a shovel, I think. Yeah, it's typo. I've been trying to report any of the th little things that I've been finding over. Because, you know, it's it's alpha time. It's time to report everything. All typos, anything you can ever see. I appreciate that. I, I think basically, at one point, all of the content in the game was done by me. And then we have a few other game designers. But basically, one game designer has mm -hmm. essentially done all of the content in the game now that i'm kind of coordinating a lot between all the other teams it's a tough thing to do possible but very tough yeah good job damn Ooh, i guess we're getting to is this like a mix of the coniferous forest yeah 
move back into the uh, the pine tree room. It's actually really walked nice. quite a long way along that coast. I have to say that's pretty cool. I've never really done that walking along that like lower path of the tundra. That's very. It was really neat. Nice. I, I, th I thought that biome was like quite cool, especially the little areas where it kind of became ponds at the edge there. Where there's like the For thin, sure. like thin kind of a thing there. The the way you guys have set up these biomes is awesome. I love that I can put down these pins and like remove them at any time too. Yeah, it's definitely the tundra was inspired by like fjords and stuff. We were trying to have it so like you have the upper flat area where it's kind of like the meadows on tops of the cliffs, but then you have these big cliffs by the, the ocean and then maybe some rivers and waterfalls cascading mm -hmm. down. Yeah, no, definitely. I, I love how many like little things there are too, where it's it give it's making me want to have a profession and then be like, oh, I'm gonna go out and like investigate things. And then these dungeons as well. You can find these dungeons out around the world. Oh, they they want to know if the game's gonna be available in the Steam store. Eventually. Good question. So I mean right now we're just uh uh distributing the game through our mm -hmm. website and our launcher and stuff. I think it's very likely we want to be on another, uh, like a platform, but at least for right now, we have like way more people. The, po the point of going on Steam for us would mostly be to just reach a lot more people, but we already have way more people than we can actually let play the game. And so we don't want to do that uh, yeah. now, or at least in the near future, when we're essentially just adding more people that want to play the game, when we don't have the ability to actually let them play. Yeah, because so then, then they'll uh, get upset for sure. We're working on that. Uh, one thing that uh, I forgot to mention about Space Nine TV and the servers is that right now this is only running with a single uh, a single node. But the plan for Space Nine TV and ultimately for Bitcraft is that pretty soon we're going to have it do like a uh, like spatially segmented stuff, like server meshing or whatever you want to call it. But basically, it'll be many many nodes uh, of Space Nine TV running the game. And so what we're talking about today is just a single node. But in the future. Uh, you'll be able, it'll just have those stitched together and you'll kind of get handed off from one server to another as you walk around. Is the intention to have that cross-platform as well? All in the same, like, node yes. system? So fully yeah, cross-platform, I mean, all in the same node system, same persistent world? Yes, the, the goal is, I mean, uh, very ambitious, but the goal is one persistent world. Uh, so similar to um, even Albion, I think Albion now has, like, some other region servers, but... Um, I guess with respect to that one thing that we have in mind too is like there's no reason that these nodes need to necessarily be in the same physical server location and so what we're actually thinking about the idea of obviously so uh, early to say but having the massive world be kind of geo segmented in the same way that the real world is so like if you are playing from india you maybe spawn on the continent that is hosted by, like that node of the server is hosted in India. So you have low ping. But if you wanna to travel to your friend who's in the North American spawn continent, you can travel there and play with them, but one of you will have higher ping. Um, so that way, <clears throat> excuse me, if you wanna like play with other people that are in your region, you guys can all play in that region of the game world so that you all have low ping. That is great. You've, you've effectively created a yeah, that's that's the tr that's the true dream right there is the uh, the fully shared persistent world on a global basis where it matters that way. And it's like, oh, I, I have bad ping over here. I'm going to go back over to these areas that are more for my region. That's yeah. really and cool. Kind of gives like a home court advantage too for uh, as we get to some of the empire stuff, maybe as far as being able to play and, you know, have control over some regions of the, the world. You're building an actual world at that point, like an actual world. That's quite cool. It's very compelling, especially with like, if you guys haven't noticed all the pop-ups that are showing up here, but watch this. When I get to the edge of this kind of like black border here, I'll climb up this hill just a little bit. See that? 0.83% of the map has been explored by me. This is 0.83% of the map so far. That's 0.83%. Like, the game is so huge, dude. This world is not even uh, nearly as big as we're planning to go, as you can imagine. I yeah. think uh, th this world, we we're uh, on the fence whether this might be a little too big for this alpha, um, but we, we decided we'd rather have people have more space than not enough space. Um, and uh, the plan is that basically in the future, we'll have a whole bunch of the world kind of like pre-generated or, or generated, and it'll all be kind of stitched together. 
And what we'll do is we'll kind of have some of those nodes like not online or not active or not a lot, like there'll be barriers basically. And then as more players join, we can kind of like knock down some of these barriers so that we don't, like a big part of the game is making sure that the player density is just right to create these interactions and this like social sandbox stuff that we really want. Mm -hmm. And so we don't want to have like one initially generated massive, massive world. And at the start, there's not enough people in it so that you, you're not encountering any players. And so we want to say like, okay, you know, these, these kind of world nodes are active. We spawn players in those, get to the right density. And then as we start to go beyond that, we say, okay, we're going to open up a new node. And now people can move between those uh, seams. So what is, here's something that's interesting, right? Let's say that in the future you go, you know what? This area of the game doesn't really work. We want to add some more biomes in this middle ground, right? How do you handle that in a world that is already pre-generated and you don't want to delete the world? It's a good question. So I think in general, the simplest thing to start with is just is adding. And so I think that's why we want to be very careful about what we do add because we generally don't want to take it away. Um, so probably the idea is like we're going to start with stuff that we we're going to start with only worlds and stuff that we've really tested and say we add a content patch that is, you know, adds a substantial amount of content that might mean adding a new uh, like world uh, map tile that uh, introduces a new biome, for example. And so we can kind of add content to the game and add territory to the game through that. As far as removing those, we've talked about this as well. Um, but the way we're thinking about it right now is this would probably be more structured as like kind of seasonal content potentially. So it would, if you imagine like uh, there's the kind of initial core world, and then we say, hey, you know, for this season or th like there's going to be some uh, content cycle where, you know, a volcano erupts and a new continent emerges and it's all fresh and pristine. And then we say, okay, people can basically like run in there, base race, you get to build everything up, you get to claim it from kind of being pristine, who's gonna control the whole continent. And then at the end of the season, it's like, oh, the volcano's rumbling, you know, there's gonna be a disaster. And then players have this understanding that, you know, this, this world tile is only gonna last a certain amount of time. And then we basically like collapse the whole thing back into either a giant ocean tile or we re-add the, the world seems like the borders to prevent you from going into that tile and then you know for the next content thing we could bring in a new piece of content in that world spot basically that's a really cool way to do that that's a very very cool way to do that i dig that a lot we, and even then you can tie seen... that to cosmetics too and you can just be like hey you were there you were you did the volcano thing you have your cool volcano looking character now you know whatever it's going to be anything that a player can earn for like being part of that part of the world is neat all that stuff yeah. is neat I think I we really that. see like there's a huge like there's not too many games that have like true persistence that lasts a really long time. I think Eve is one of them. RuneScape yeah. to some extent is one of them. But even these games are seeing the kind of appeal in terms of like retention, reactivation um, and just player fun and engagement of adding seasonal content. And then yep. the trouble here is how do you add seasonal content like a fresh start server without kind of invalidating all the people who've been playing it for 10 years or 20 years and all the progress they've that they've made and so we really think trying to like marry those two things in a way that doesn't kind of degrade the long-term progression of the main world but also allows new players and old players to kind of come in and like have a sense of like starting from scratch or some sort of fair uh you know reset starting line um how do you like put those things together where you don't just have like the, the re regular servers and the fresh start servers that keep getting wiped and they're completely separate. Yeah. No, this is, that's really good. See, the, I, I think the biggest thing is it's, it's not even just down to how you're going to solve these problems. It's that you know that these are problems, which means that you have, you've gotten ahead of that and you're like, okay, so we've got all these ideas. We know the types of problems are going to be there and now you have a way to adapt around it if and when that comes to pass, that there is an issue in the place. You guys have thought about a lot of this, and for a very long period of time, it's very good. It's exactly what I want to see, honestly. It's great, man. Yeah, I think we, we'd we be crazy to think uh, that this would be easy, because yeah. um, I think that this type of game is kind of like, for a lot of players, it's like the holy grail, or developers, it's like the holy grail of like the kind of combining all these things into one game. And a lot of people have tried and failed. And so we knew going into this, like, we need to be very, very thoughtful and careful and think through everything because there's a lot of like competing systems. It's like just by the very nature of like a survival crafting game is like give players full control to do whatever they want. And then an MMO is put a lot of players together that have different goals and interests. And what happens when you put those together? Well, they clash really badly. Yeah, so it explodes. 
we need to think like, okay, how do we tune everything? It's like, okay, we can't let you build like you can in Valheim. We can't let you terraform like you can in Minecraft. We need to think about like, what is the right way to do this when you have an MMO as well in the same world? Yeah, we had to do the same thing on the Minecraft server with like, we want you to be able to build things, but what happens to the world in five months, right? So like, we have the same kind of a thing as if you... If you stop playing the game, your town eventually degrades and the land returns back to the way that it was in the beginning. <laughs> it's exactly the way it's it's same kind of a cleanup method because there there has to be some way to stop it from becoming, as you said, 2B2T. So like, yeah, there's there's always got to be systems in place to add some kind of a restriction to stop the game from just imploding. There's no other way to do it. I love these little fireflies, though. They're great. Yeah, I think another one that comes up or another kind of like game design thing we had to figure out early was how do you deal with the player density? And so if yeah. you've ever played, have you ever played Worm Online? Oh, yeah. So this is a game that was doing a lot of stuff similar to Bitcraft. But the thing that I remember when I first logged into Worm Online was I ended up in essentially like a suburb of player claims. And I was just walking and walking for minutes, tens of minutes, maybe even hours to find a place where I could actually set down my claim and have my space. Um, and we kind of identified that the problem with this is like, and then the issue with that is you're in this giant suburb of offline players and you, it's so hard to find another player who's online because you have to be so spread out. So yeah. we realized like, hey, if you want to be able to like interact with lots of other online players, but every player has their own amount of space, we need to number one, think about like how much space does a player need? But then we also need to think of like, how can we compress more players who are online into ha still having enough physical space, but into a closer, geography to each other and that's where the kind of like oh. enterable um instance buildings came up ads have have crept their way into the stream i'm gonna go grab some water so i'll be right For back sure. give me just a yeah, minute me too All righty. I am back. Me too. Nice. Yeah, this is this is freaking awesome, dude. It was funny because like, I was seeing what you guys were doing. I was watching some of the videos and I was like, there's so many unknowns for this game. I just want to jump into it blind and like play with it. And I immediately I was like, okay, we're going to play the shit out of this. <laughs> like there's it's it's it's. It, it's very easy to understand like how deep these systems are and how how much that's going to grab a player like me and also be something that's fun for a community especially of, of one of our size because like sometimes you'll find games like this they're like there's a smaller team they're making something cool it looks compelling and then you throw ten thousand people at it and it dies right but with this it looks like you guys are building an infrastructure that will eventually be able to handle pretty much anyone who wants to play it you have aspirations to do that you have the technology that is advancing in that direction 
The systems are deep enough to be compelling and interesting for a very large number of players working together. This is awesome, dude. It's really awesome, actually. Yeah, I appreciate that. I think uh, when you, when you said your background came from Eve, I definitely knew that you would. We, I was hearing you talk on stream, and I'm like, okay, he gets it. He understands mm -hmm. what we're trying to do. And uh, you know, in a lot of ways, like our main inspiration was like progression of Minecraft, or sorry, progression of uh, RuneScape, kind of like the the core player progression of RuneScape with editable world of Minecraft with the kind of large scale alliances mm -hmm. and player coordination and logistics of Eve. Yep. Uh, that, uh, you could sum up the game with kind of those three references. Obviously there's a lot of other um, games that we look at um, to take reference from, especially like sandbox multiplayer um, games. But yeah. uh, essentially like you can kind of think of it as like Eve, but grounded. Um, and so uh, Eve really is a bit unhinged, forward... yeah. <laughs> well, especially like, a lot of players have trouble like wrapping their head around the like grandioseness of the Eve world because it's all in space and it feels so kind of like something it like it, you can really only get an idea when you're looking at like the, the star map or whatever of like the regions and how everyone controls it and how stuff is connected. Um, but we're trying to think of like, hey, what if you put all that in a contiguous world, um, which is uh, a different beast. And uh, we actually had the, um, the CEO of uh, CCP games, the Eve Online, uh, play Bitcraft at GDC, and he's, oh, he's wow. also an investor advisor to us. And uh, he was like, "I see what you guys are doing with this, and I'm excited to play." So that yeah. was really reassuring for us to hear. Yeah, between so Kronos, who's my lead moderator, he was actually the corporation leader of the oldest corporation Eve Online, so the very first one that was ever made. And then I was the alliance leader of Strybog Clade, which was the largest Triglavian alliance in the game. So between the two of us, we've got about 30 years of experience in that social sandbox game. And we're also gearing up to run a massive guild in Ashes of Creation, which I think we've got about 8,000 people in the secondary Discord for that and 102,000 people in the primary Discord. That like So for the entire community size. So when we see something like this, it's like, if we want to engage as a community with something and it has the throughput for it, that's rare. That's like super rare. And social sandbox games are absolutely the thing that I love the most. And they're the most rare kind of MMO. It's usually like a theme park kind of MMO, not really a social sandbox kind of MMO. And this is, more, this is a social sandbox MMO in kind of that core way where it's like, we have to work together. We have to talk to each other. You build trade alliances or anything that goes along with that. This is, this is great, dude. I could see, honestly, just keep playing this. <laughs> yeah, I think you're going to be really excited. The next alpha, we're hoping to have the Empire system in the game, Ooh. which we've already fully designed out, but uh, we're just uh, working on building. It wasn't ready for this alpha. Um, but that's basically going to add that like Eve Alliance scale uh, to the game of like basically unifying towns under a shared banner, having essentially like a an emperor or a king, uh, whatever you want to call yourself, as the kind of, the top of the uh the empire and assigning roles out to your uh different subjects like your ambassadors and your kind of um your dukes or whatever of your of your regions and then basically your players need to deliver the logistics supply chains all across your empire to maintain your control of that territory that's awesome i love that i i think it's 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 kind of wild you guys have created such a uh, like a like a you have to work together to f defeat the land system right to defeat the game mechanics and the world rather than just pvp because a lot of them just immediately turn into well we have to get them to fight each other otherwise there's no way to get rid of them you know <laughs> it's like For no sure. the game is hard there is there is you know difficulty in keeping your supply chains active and you have to you have to have logistics and that means we'll have to not only run logistics we'll have to run backup logistics we'll have to run like worst case scenario logistics we have to make sure that those supply lines always stay open or we start losing settlements you know start losing the ability to progress or the ability to maintain anything if we don't have that in place and i i love that i love that a lot really like these environments i can't wait to like do ridiculous let's terraform and mass kind of stuff you know yeah, this game is amazing. You're totally right, dude. It's wild. Actually wild. I haven't seen something this ambitious in a while. And when you do hear of things that are ambitious like this, they're not even close to what you guys have made. And this is Appreciate closed that. closed alpha. So, like, what? <laughs> yeah, We've been careful to not, like... To not move faster than we think makes sense because it'd be very easy for us to say like hey we're in open beta or whatever but really like the state of the game doesn't really reflect what i think that title 
deserves. And we, we really want to just say, like, set expectations correctly. Like, this is a game that is going to take a long time to build. And it's a game that we've already been working on for a long time. Uh, at the start, it was only with, you know, a very small handful of people. And it still is. I mean, the whole game is being built right now. Um, if you don't include the Space 9DB team, the whole game team is 25 people about that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but a year or two ago, that was like 10. Uh, and so uh, we know that it takes time to build something this ambitious. And we don't want to rush it and like, quote unquote, launch it before it actually kind of is in before a place to be like a permanently persistent live service thing. Yeah, it makes sense. No, I'm I'm going to tell you now, it with what you guys are putting on offer in closed alpha, with the aspirations that you have and the ability to achieve those, I, I'm going to be here every step of the way, man. This is cool as shit. Like, I'm super into this. I, I really like that direction, too. And it, it is most definitely... It's, it's funny because there's not like... I, I think social sandbox MMOs and like big collaborative MMO kind of stuff like that, where you do have to maintain supply chains, you do have to do the logistics, you have to get out Excel and manage everybody, right? There's a very few kind of players that really go for that a lot of the times, and I'm one of them. So <laughs> when I find out that there's something like this that exists, like this is, I, it's going to absorb my life 100%. I love these, absolutely love this. And what you guys have put out is unique in that area. I haven't seen anything else like this at all. It's very cool. Yeah, I think probably the thing that distinguishes us most from a lot of other multiplayer sandboxes is not just going the like, this is a full loot hardcore PvP thing, yeah. which I, I, for what it's worth, I love those games, but we're, we want to try and make something different. And the thesis of Bitcraft was like teaming up with a whole bunch of other players, like a lot, a lot of players to basically rebuild civilization. That's the thesis of the game. And so we really want to try and focus on like, how do you design systems in a way that doesn't have the kind of underpinning of PVP to like equalize conflicts or deal with disputes of like, if my claim is too close to his claim, who wins? What's well, like, I'll just go kill him and delete his claim. Well, what happens if you can't do that? You have to rethink yeah. some of those things. And uh, it creates different sorts of um, creating systems where it's like, well, what happens if you could like, why don't you merge with his claim and team up? Uh, if we can create the systems to encourage this different type of gameplay, I think it creates a lot more of a, a social uh, it does. experience. I'm just looking at your map on the stream and seeing yeah. all the the locusts uh, descending upon there. The good news is we have had quite a few pre-alphas, and I think we've tuned this in such a way that those map icons will still show there. But mm -hmm. um, very quickly, if those claims get abandoned early on, they will not be active. And so you can just go through and wipe those out, most of them probably. That's awesome. Yeah, for, for those who didn't get to see the beginning of the stream, this is actually our base. These are all players. These are other... The, everybody else in here is is players. There's actually Jeanette, you know, one of our moderators. Um, let's see. A Kronos is around here somewhere. And you can see we've expanded out this way. We have a bunch of crafting stations. They're trying to reorganize stuff. They're rebuilding everything. And there's a bunch of other people's towns and stuff nearby as well. So I've been doing food crafting for them. And it looks like they're getting a bunch of animals to try and do this. Kronos is raiding? Oh, he's out there getting dungeons. He's doing dungeon stuff. Because there's dungeons and things out there. And yeah, we've we've basically just been building out this base. So you build towns and then share these environments with each other. Yeah, it's great. What happened to your beautiful house? Well, Zaphiroth, unfortunately, we had budget cuts. And um, we had to turn it into a fire. So that happened. Yeah. It's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. But no, this is... Like, I... I I, I think it's amazing because you guys saw the world generation that you just saw, right? But now you get to see what you can do to that world. You can build out these massive industries. You can build out all the supply chains between them. You can work together and try to survive in the land. Is there death in this, by the way, at all? Is there any way to die? Because I know you can run out of stamina. No, so the, we were trying to keep it a little bit more light and happy. But basically, if your health reaches zero, you get knocked out. And right now, that gives you a debuff. Kind of like res sickness in mm -hmm. wow and then you get sent back to your uh to your home we've talked about having like kind of number one not making that a teleport that people could potentially find ways to abuse um and number two saying like okay what happens if you die repeatedly or get knocked out repeatedly um does that like stack up do you have some sort of like hard hit points or like some you know you have like a first hit points bar but then your max hit points comes down as you get some injuries and you have to like make medicine to cure those or something like that um but right now like there isn't uh in the past versions of the game we've had more um 
adversity, I'll just say in the game, like animals that attack you, you know, things that you need to worry about. Um, but it was kind of getting in the way of the new player flow of just like getting in, crafting, gathering, getting set up. And so for now, we've kind of shut that all off in the content side of things, um, but we're really planning to add it back. We just need to do it right so it doesn't get in the way of the early game. So it feels um, good, yeah. Yeah. No, that makes um, sense. I see there in your base, you have a barter stall uh, just over behind that uh, shelter. If you wanted, you could check that out. I don't know if you looked at that oh, yet. Oh, I haven't but actually I seen it. Yeah. It's the little thing with the, the tent above it uh, or the, the red kind of uh, fabric over top of it. So we can um, add an offer. Oh, this is actually pulling from all of the chests I have access to. So in, right now it's not. Um, in the future, you will be able to link it. Right now you have to put the items in the stock, the items and cargo in the stock category okay. there. But you can basically, it's essentially a barter trade. So you can trade anything for anything that you've discovered. And uh, I believe if you are the co-owner or owner of this claim, only you can access the stock and your members of the claim should only be able to access the storefront. This was something we changed, so I'm not 100% sure if that's been affected right now. But um, yeah, you could set one up and just see um, yeah. if one of your goblins is able to <laughs> execute the trade. What is the currency that is used, by the way? Because we've only done trade to trade barter for this right now. Yeah. So this kind of goes back to the core philosophy of the game of like we really just want to create the systems and let players do what they want there is kind of the hex coins there that you have in your inventory which are kind of a currency that the travelers um favor but mm -hmm. um there's it also is the only thing you can use right now for rentals for uh house rentals um but that's just because we uh we want to make that more um kind of open in the future we just it's simpler to add it for just a single item than create like barter rentals uh makes sense for right now but um really with the idea is like if if you decide in your village that like mushrooms are currency or or skewers are currency maybe it's not a good currency because people can inflate it by going out and picking mushrooms yeah uh you you could do that uh it's certainly kind of it's up to you and what we found in past pre-alphas is Sometimes towns have set up essentially like starter quests where they say, hey, if you bring me 20 logs, I'll give you a, an upgraded axe. And now that is essentially is a, a quest for new players who walk by the town or join the town. You don't need to necessarily have any currency to get started. What if, and the chat was actually asking about this, do we have the ability to mint our own coin for our town? So like if we had like Tortuga coin, right? We, we built it out of iron, iron ingots, then we made our own coin and then we issued that as a currency of trade. So it would be something that instead of using a interim item, like a uh, a thing, we'd have one that was specifically for our town, and maybe we could that have you an control the minting. Drain. Yeah, we control how yeah, many so of them there are. We've definitely thought about this a lot. Um, I think probably it would come into the empires. Like empires would be the ones um, yeah. minting this out is where it makes sense, and that way, like you don't have like if you've ever played the game Eco, you'll know that like you join into that game They're and everyone Eco makes their own chat. Yeah, about this. Yeah. <laughs> And then the problem is every town you go to, they have their own currency. So any currency you have from the other town, nobody wants it when you go to a new town. And so it kind of gets messy quickly. And so it's actually better if like oh, an entire region, like in the real world, has a currency that is shared. And so people yeah. can trade between towns with the same currency. So maybe at the empire level do, or maybe at the node level even. Yeah, I think probably yeah. at the empire scale, because then it's kind of cool of like empires can like buy and hold each other's currency to like affect the value of it. Like there's all kinds of cool stuff that can come like, from that, like economic warfare. Yeah, we could give like 20% of the total minting of our coin to that other empire and they can give us 20%. So we have like a buffer of it and now we can do trade with each other regularly exactly. and like our people can work together. That would be neat. Exactly. Yeah, Yeah. yeah exactly. And then, uh, yeah, I think that that'll probably be a cool... Uh, way to introduce that and probably like right now there is a kind of like a gold and silver type material that are more rare in the game and so maybe we make it so like you know the coins can be minted out of whatever That'd metals really or neat. maybe only the rare type the rare untiered metals um so that, we'll have to think more about that that gives a lot of like political kind of sort of evolution there too where like you start off as a small settlement everybody's kind of subsistence farming you guys are trading in barter and then you move up and it gets more and more complex and then you have minting currency and then you're, you're trading between nations and like that gives a, a whole story and progression to that where that it feels natural to me that makes sense yeah our idea is that like the basically the world the ancient history is written by us through the lore and stuff but the whole world history of the game is written by the players from the moment the game first launches and is persistent forever that like whatever happens in the game and even to some extent stuff that happens in the alphas will be remembered by players in the history um 
you know, what empires exist and how those come and fall and like the initial kind of survival crafting, you know, wilderness start of the game to then building into the more like town building and civilization building stages of the game will kind of be the, the natural history written by players. Yeah. So I see how this works now. I can set up a thing that's like, hey, I want to add a request for mushroom, right? And I want to say, I need you to bring me back. What is it? It's three. Is it three per skewer? I don't remember. I think it might be five. Might be five. Okay, so we want 50 mushrooms per skewer, and we'll say save on that. So now what it is is you bring 50 mushrooms in, and you get 10 mushroom skewers back every time you go to this stock. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And so you could actually even set the um the, right now this is going to happen two times before it runs before it runs out of orders. So there's kind of two aspects to the if you look at the listings there, there's the the right number under the denominator or like the the denominator, yeah. which is basically how many orders before it runs out of like you, you've done this as many times as you want to do it and then the left number or the the numerator is basically how many can be done right now. So you could set that to infinite and then just as long as you put skewers in there, people It'll will be able it. to yeah, exactly. It'd be like the mushroom shop. Can we actually rename this? You should be able to you can rename all the other buildings, but not this one, I guess. So yeah. we'll have to we'll have to figure out why that's the case. Because if you look on the chest in front of it there, you should be able to rename that. Somebody just got one. So now we got the mushroom there. So now I've got there the mushroom go. off that and I can go back over here. We can literally set up like a shop, a storefront right here, and I could be a a trader that just buys all your mushrooms and sells out mushroom skewers. And exactly. that could be like what I do. I am the mushroom vendor and I could just sit here and build this. Yeah. You got it. That's great. You need builds. This is not factorial. <laughs> it would just be right in front of me. Central Bank of Tortuga. I mean, like that that's really what we do is I, I wanna I wanna craft consumables. Why? Because everybody needs them and they keep using them. <laughs> that's how you make money in games, man. Love this. No, this is crazy compelling, man. It really, really is. It looks like it's 10 mushrooms per skewer, so you may need to update that before you go broke. I just got ripped off. It's too late. <laughs> <laughs> it's very funny. It's um, but very you could funny. also, uh, for that shop, you could do the uh, kind of the lowest common denominator of that. So it could be like one skewer for 10 mushrooms instead of 10, uh, 10 skewers, and then it's a That's little true. bit more granular. A little bit more granular. But, or, or you could yeah. only deal in bulk, and maybe you're... Uh, People buy in bulk, you give them a discount. You could have both of those as different trade orders. Oh, we could do like 40 of them. Yeah, I know that would totally work. That would totally work. I think that's all the food oh. that I have in there. And so the cool thing is that butter stall, it's not just usable by your uh, town members. Anybody who's walking by can do it. And so mm. you can actually set up things where like maybe you have a house and inside that house you have a bunch of barter stalls and only the town members can enter the house so you get like better deals or you know you sell everything for at cost inside the house but then outside the house you have the, the public square market where you're basically having a margin on everything and you can even be buying and selling the same item with a margin and you don't even need any stock to get it started you just say hey we're buying this for five coins we're selling it for six you put five coins in there and you don't even have any of that item yet and then the first person shows up sells it someone else buys it you make one coin and then that can just cycle indefinitely until yep. you have like a massive cash stack in there yep that's 100 percent true oh man oh man wait till spiffing brit gets his hands on this and breaks the economy i mean it's all interplayer economy so like you could just break the economy like that's that's the whole point of it is if somebody if there's a loophole you make a deal you know, you make some, you make yourself a little bit more wealthy at the time, and that's the whole point with that. I think this is cool and as hell. I think this is everything supply and demand. So if there's, yeah. if you craft too much of something because it's really good, well, eventually there's so much supply that nobody wants to pay for it, basically. Except for food, because you always gotta eat. <laughs> that's the way. This is awesome as hell. Hmm. Man, this is cool. This is really goddamn cool. I love this, dude. So what are the next steps for you guys? Now that you guys have done your closed alpha. How long is the closed alpha running, by the way? The plan... Well, so we... There's not a set date right now, but I think we're ballparking that there's around like one month of kind of content and stuff before people kind of start to reach towards the end of that. 
And mm -hmm. so we don't want to have people just like finished all the content and leaving the test open and people are just wasting away with not too much to do. Uh, we'd rather take the test down and already are working on more stuff and throw up another alpha for people to get started with some new features and some new content. Uh, so I, right now we're thinking around a month, but um, depending on how many people are coming in later in the month, um, we might leave it up for longer than that. So they have a chance yeah. to play more. If you have like a rolling um, audience sort of a thing, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, with the amount of players we can support, it's always going to, it's, it's definitely going to be rolling. I think there'll be people coming in kind of later and later in the month for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but really like, so basically a quick history is for a few years, we were like prototyping the game, trying to figure it out with a very, very small team. And for the last two years, we've basically been in pre-alpha. We've done 11 of these pre-alpha tests that ranged anywhere from one day to 10 days. And uh, that was kind of just like getting the systems in place, figuring out the problems that we'd run into that would cause, you know, hey, why aren't players working together? Why aren't players teaming up? Um, how do we incentivize these with new systems um, or tweaking the systems? And then we've kind of finally got those to where we think like, okay, there's a nugget here that's good and like kind of works. It just needs more content and more like, fun horizontal stuff to do in the game yeah. <clears throat> excuse me and uh basically that's when we decided okay it makes sense to start calling this um alpha now instead of pre-alpha um and so the plan right now is to do a few of these uh closed alphas um and the reason it's closed is just because if it was open the queue would be you know a few hundred thousand people long and we it's don't broken want, uh, yeah that's not the experience we want to give people uh, so we want to we want to get our infrastructure in a place where we can support essentially going from close to open. And then on the game development side, we want to basically get enough stuff in the game that it could be online for a lot longer and not be running out of reaching the end of the content, basically. So yeah. I think there's going to be a few more like closed alpha. This is closed alpha one in our minds. Then there's going to be like closed alpha two, three. Um, we'll kind of see how long these last and how much ground we're able to cover between them. And then the goal would be to eventually move to open beta once we've got enough of the tech to support that being quote unquote open and like basically people can self-serve into the game and then also making sure that we have enough content that the game could be online for quite a while and there's enough stuff to do that the game is engaging to kind of be perpetually online for a while that probably won't be the last like wipe of the world um that would come probably with um some like like early access soft launch or something like that after that um but it would be lasting quite a lot longer um, and be closer to kind of the final version of the game. That's awesome. Yeah, no, this, this is super, super cool. Because, um, like, the way that I'm looking at this is as you guys expand out, I know more and more of our community is going to want to enter, right? And that's that's there's already people clamoring in chat because you guys gave us 20 keys. There's already people like, where do I get a key? Where do I get a key? When do I get to play this? And, like, you guys have to understand they have to scale up this server infrastructure. They have to like learn where the limits are and then keep trying things. Oh, hell, that's awesome. Thank you. Decayed Ancient Quill. Interesting. Yeah, so that can be used by the the uh, scholar yeah. uh, skill to uh, basically research how to reach the next tier. Yeah, that's an awesome piece. But yeah, that's that's really what that comes down to is it's it's testing and trial and testing and trial all of that is yeah so as far as the content and stuff in the game i, I know you're asking about like what's immediately next as well yeah. is basically closed alpha 2 uh the main things that we're looking at for that is right now we've got six tiers of content in the game we're going to add at least two more maybe uh up to four more we'll we'll see how that goes um but like you said it's like adding the content once you've got all the systems in place is very easy so like going from four tiers of content to six tiers it's really just like get the art for the new resources and you know the icons and because they're drag a down in excel yep and then like you guys have all the the flags on each one of them and that's that's a very easy that's a good place to be when you just want to add content to a game it's a really yeah. good place to be and I think the thing that goes with that is like, okay, we added an extra like 900 hours of content to the game, but if it's just getting slower and slower and longer and longer, that can obviously get um, very repetitive um, over time. And so we want to make sure there's enough texture and like other stuff to do. And that's where the other thing for closed alpha two is going to be adding the empires. And so, you know, passively in the background, you're kind of grinding away and leveling up your skills so you can get to the higher tiers. But really like what you're focusing on doing during that, the goals that you have is centered around like, hey, how do I like earn money so I can buy a bigger house? How do I, I want to get a better boat. I want to join this empire and become like a lord in this empire. And so I wanted to like prove my worth to the, to the emperor. And I want to help deliver supplies to his, 
you know, colonies. And so once you have more of these things to do in the game, the XP grind kind of goes into the background and like you're still progressing on that and unlocking new tiers and stuff, but the you've kind of got more textured stuff at the front of your mind. Mm -hmm. No, it makes sense. Makes complete sense. I think the other the other thing that's coming, maybe not in Alpha 2, but maybe Alpha 3, is a lot more kind of challenge, uh, challenge stuff, stuff and adversity. So, um, so like environmental challenge? Environmental challenges, more adversity with the, you know, like maybe uh, animals or monsters kind of like you need to defend your base against, you know, aggressive animals as you advance. You need to, when you go into some of the runes or the, um, the, uh, more harsh biomes there's you know stuff that is more oppressive than just a temperature debuff um we used to have stuff where like at night there would be like wolves and stuff that would come and attack you and you had to like build light sources to keep them away and build walls and stuff um but we it was just disrupting the early game as i already mentioned so making sure that we like add that in in a more sophisticated way that it kind of comes into the game at the Makes right sense. time yeah yeah we want to build that out um uh, I think that'll also, you know, things like uh, the way we see the kind of the runes is kind of like uh, if you're familiar with like uh, Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom, like shrines and mm -hmm. like the, the puzzles and stuff. But some of them are also like combat challenges. And I think really like making those a thing where you can basically cooperate with any other player, regardless of their profession level, like their their craft and gathering skill level. Like you guys can just make some swords, go into a dungeon together and try to like solve a puzzle, fight a monster you know, something like that to get some cool reward that's kind of universally useful to everyone mm -hmm. uh, is something that we also really want to make sure like there's some cool stuff to do like that, that you and your friend can just jump into the game or especially if you're bringing a friend in for the first time, like, hey, you got to play Bitcraft. Let's go on an adventure, like hop in my boat, grab a sword. Let's go. Um, yeah, definitely. Let's go do a challenge. Uh, oh, we got ads again. And then I'll get you get to you with uh, chat questions. I'm going to need a snack one sec. <laughs> <laughs> Got 50 seconds left. Is there PvE? Right now they're they're like fighting um, animals for harvesting stuff, and that's about it. It's mostly the true meaning of PvE, which is player versus environment. Yeah, it looks like pretty soon here your environmental uh, challenge is going to be lack of trees. True. How quickly do those re regrow, by the way? Yeah, so with, this is something that we're obviously still tuning, but the way it actually works is there's a global supply of each type of resource, and then as that gets depleted, there's like an elastic respawner for that, but it respawns them globally. So if you clear cut in whole forest, that isn't maybe coming back super quickly. You, you're going to need oh. to like do some logistics to bring in resources. Eventually, if everybody's clear cutting every forest, then the trees will regrow kind of everywhere. But um, if you just deplete an area, uh, so, yeah, you can also replant trees. I see people saying that in the chat. You can get seeds when you're cutting them down and pot those and nurture them and plant them. What about mushrooms? Like if, I, if I'm if i over harvesting mushrooms like this, are they just gone? Because I can't replant those, right? You can't replant mushrooms right now. Um, so yeah, you're going to have to explore further and further to get more mushrooms. Uh, so you oh. might need to... Uh, you might need to provide more compensation for your mushroom shop at some point. Yeah, I changed it. I changed it so it's 15 mushrooms per skewer now. 
I see. Yeah. Making a little yeah. profit, are we? Yeah, I gotta get a little bit of profit out of it. You know, a little bit of mushroom profit. You know, the shroom economy. Mushrooms are becoming more rare, Chet, so I need more mushrooms per skewer, right? It's a it's a quality thing. You know, it's high quality mushroom skewer. They're rarer now, you know? Good nobody's, luck getting your own. Nobody's buying my mushroom skewers anymore. <laughs> Too rare. Too fancy. So I think it's interesting. At that point, it'll come down to kind of farming. Like, what farm materials could you do? Because you could have the inter-guild economy at that point of, like, having these farm plots for, like, star bulbs, you know? Because star bulbs at that point are going to be really, really helpful because if you get a whole bunch of people doing star bulbs, then star bulbs can turn into, you know, more materials, more foods, things like that, and then you can craft those. But it's not as, a, like, a very fast thing because when I'm out here just claiming these, I'm claiming them one at a time, you know? Yeah, the, the UX on that is going to change for sure. Basically, uh, every day I'm impressed by the cleverness of our designers because it'll be something of like, okay, we have active and passive crafting in the game, and, but we want to add farming. And someone's like, it can't be done. And someone's like, well, what if we just made a whole bunch of passive crafting buildings that have one slot? And so right now we're using the UX of passive crafting, but uh, we have plans to, once we have more development resources, we want to make that uh, feel more like actual farming. But it's like, how could we add this to the game with what we have? You know, we've figured out, I think fishing is another one where it's like, what if fish are just a resource that you gather with a tool the same way you cut down a tree? And so. Yep. That's cool. It's a good way to do that. Um, Honestly, I also you, noticed, that's great. I noticed what? that you have um, the wisp weave, which is for making cloth, and the star bulbs, which are uh, food, but you can also use them to make oil. But you haven't planted any of the grain yet, which we you can use for baking, and that's how you get some of the best food. Uh, we got to plant the grain. Got to plant the grain. I actually haven't been doing the planting, so I blame the farmers. All right, cook can only make good enough food based on the materials that he has provided. It's your fault. It's the rest of the rest of the company's fault. All right. <laughs> Can't bake bread. No grain. It's bad. Also, if you take a look across the river, you'll see some of the claims are white. Uh, they're, mm -hmm. they're borders. That means that they're basically inactive. So these are people who, if you look, they basically have a campfire and a shelter. It looks like they essentially came in, played a little bit. Maybe they decided, hey, I, I'm just going to join Thor's claim across the river. And mm -hmm. so they abandoned their claim. So basically, you could go over and salvage all those buildings. Or you okay. can take over their claim. Give. All of your things are mine. Then. Let's see what they got. Let's see what they got. Claim ownership. It's mine now. Uh, now if you I'm... are the owner of this claim, you can only own one right now. But uh, you can deconstruct it. Yeah. Oh, well, that's cool. That's interesting. So if you find something like that, you can just deconstruct it, take all the stuff. Yeah, if someone builds near you and then they abandon it and you want to expand, you can just get rid of their stuff, salvage it. Hmm. Well, that's nice, because that allows you to not only clean up the environment. If you don't do it, does it eventually automatically disappear? It will, yeah. So the, the once the claim is zero, all the buildings start decaying. It takes quite a while because you really you can just actively deconstruct it whenever you want at that point. But eventually, nature will get will rid heal. of it and clean it up. Yeah. Nature is healing. That makes sense. I like that. Because like, that's always one of the big concerns, is how does a crafted world repair itself over time because otherwise players just, they're going to annihilate it you know it's just going to turn into mush after a little bit but this does make sense i think this is actually a cool way to do it and it makes it really easy to understand and easy to work with i need to take this and move this can i move this i can move this yeah you can move any of the buildings within the claim if you hold right click i'm not the, the owner building. of the claim chronos is unfortunate i see he can make you a co-owner or building permissions okay. now will allow you to do it yeah because i want to make a i want to make a camp actually can i cook on this as well oh it's only got two active project slots but i, I don't need more than that really the, the campfire does have i think it uses more materials than the cooking it? station for the recipes damn so you're you're more efficient on the cooking station it's a rough I'm cooking sure, station. Yeah, Kronos could probably give you building permissions to move stuff around. That is true. Oh, oh, I think it crashed. Oh, wait, no, there we go. I'm trying to see if I can fit all this. Kronos, are you there? It looks like you have permissions now. Hey. Yeah, because what I want to do is I want to move this 
<laughs> behind there. You might need to do some terraforming. Oh, no, I can't move it. I don't have the permissions. No, no, the, the first move option, this is confusing. We're going to fix it. The first move is move your player. The last the thing at the bottom of the list is move the building. Oh, it's <laughs> it's the move move. We, OK, yeah, we, we, we've had this internally. People are like so many times we need to fix this. We need to take this option out. And uh, there's a lot there's more pressing things to get the alpha out the door than that. So we'll, we'll get to that very soon, though. It's very funny. Put that there. Is this actually like a cart that I can drag? How does this one work? Because this doesn't have the move. The, so the cart here, I can uh, I can give you a cart. The cart is a uh, a vehicle. So it basically it's owned by someone, whoever deployed it, and hmm. basically uh, only the owner can put it away and move it. Right now, where this is something that we need some balancing to to fix because i know if anyone who's played eco will remember that um one of the worst things that can happen is 10 people leave their carts on your claim and you can't do anything about them basically oh. uh, so we, we need we need to still add some some stuff for that to make sure that um someone can't just like leave a bunch of carts littered around your town at least they don't have hitboxes in bitcraft like they do in eco so oh i see bad, but now it makes you can sense. also i think I think if you hit tab while you're in there, you'll see that you can have like a stockpile inventory uh, in the cart. That's the kind of the main use of it. Or sorry, not tab, I. I have my stuff rebound. So I is showing my inventory. Is there a secondary one okay. somehow? No, I guess it doesn't open anymore. So okay, if you hold right click on it, you can click uh, something like open storage on the Store vehicle? Cart. No. No, no, open. There should be open storage. Open storage, there we go. Okay, so it's got six stockpiles that we can put in it. Yeah, and Sick so right ones. now, you'll see as well, some of the stockpiles can hold multiple of the thing. Yeah. We don't have that clearly communicated right now in the UI. Um, but, you know, you can imagine as you get better and better vehicles, you can hold more and more cargo. That's cool. That's awesome. See, I'm everything that you're showing me is like, this is getting more and more interesting as we go. And now I'm just like, give this to me. I wish to play this game forever, please. Thanks. <laughs> There we go. Just box me in. I live here now. Super efficiency. This is it, chat. Food crafterman. Oh, here's an interesting one. So if I put the stocks in here that I need to produce something that takes three items, right? Or two items. Can I add multi to this? So if I go, say, add new listing and I want to do add offer for the trail mix... I yeah, say you can that. you can have you can request I think up to looks like up to three things right now, but I think that's mostly just the limit of the UI right now. I think mm -hmm. that's something we can expand. Wild grain. Okay, that's awesome. I'll make this three and three and for one. The number of orders is unlimited. We can say save. So now we can actually get that. And if I go into the stock now, I can just put in you got it. these that I've got in there now. And I can also put in all our mushroom sticks now. We can go back to our listings. I'm not going to make this take 15 anymore. We'll make that take probably 12. Save that out like that. So now I get a slight margin of profit for more material. And I can throw all that stuff in there. Which is great. And now I can go out over here. Take all this stuff that I don't need. Distribute it to the guild. There we go. Just have it. Just have it. It's all yours. Salt for you. Oh, and I can eat these. And now I have my little my little hovel. Actually, I'm going to move this a little bit farther out. There we go. Maybe more like that. And now what I can do is I can kind of stand here. I can cook. Like this. And I can have my little, my little hovel where people come and buy mushrooms. And I can cook everything on the way. Or whatever I want it to be. I just cook whatever I want. And since the stockpiles are going through, they're already buying these items for the things that I listed the, the trades up for. And I can just set up my crafting like this. And just have my crafting going while they're buying the items. And I'm getting a slight margin of increased amounts of materials so that I can just do that forever. And players can get whatever they need without having to do individual trades with me. Hey. You got it. We've had a few I've, people like start playing the game and they're like, oh, it's kind of annoying that I have to stop and get food all the time. We're like... 
what in the first five minutes that's the case but the the vision for the game is like people are going to very quickly realize that they can start doing exactly what you're doing and yep. then you don't need to get the food you just need to go find the the person who's running the food stall and just get whatever you need i'm i'm happy running the food stall this is actually something that i really enjoy yeah immediately becoming like the economic guy like you guys can go do whatever you want i'm gonna cook you the food just come here and keep you know just keep coming back just keep it bring me all your stuff it's fine I can even put really good foods up for rare items. So if I want a better, you know, piece of gear so that I can cook faster, I can put up a request for that and people can put it in. Oh, an actual trade offer? Hmm? Oh, you're just giving me mushrooms now. You can do that to the stall. See, I don't need that. I don't need that. Just do it to the stall. Watch. See the stall right here? I can go into the stock. We've got all this in here. Oh, where do they go? Where do my mushrooms go? Oh, there we go. Claim. I have those now in my inventory. We just put it in here. You trade it right to it. Done. Easy. And now I can just go right back into crafting this again. Easy. Easy. I love this kind of stuff. Being able to give me some kind of a route to do efficiency where I'm interacting with those. And I can keep all these menus open too, which is my favorite part about this. Is I can kind of manage that. And I've also changed it so that I can have this set up in a way where these are transparent as well. So I'm managing the whole shop. I'm setting up the inventory. I can see the stock of items in here at any time. I can see that my level is going up for cooking. All this kind of stuff, which is great. So we can just manage the whole thing. Yeah. The game design is impressive in general. I agree. Because we can make it as micro as, as we want, like this, where I'm like in this little microcosm of just doing my profession, just providing a, a service. Or I can make it as macro as possible, where I'm like out there exploring the entire world, finding new resources or, or running an empire, right? And I find that to be pretty compelling because I can be effective in both if I want to. And that's, that's fun. I find that to be really fun, actually. Need to make yeah, I think you'll see as the towns get more developed, uh, a lot of people end up building like whole market areas where they basically have like, okay, here's basically every item that you uh, can kind of need, buying and selling. And then basically what that means is any player who joins the town doesn't even need inventory access. They just gather the items they need, come to the town, sell them, buy the items they need, craft with them, and they just can buy and sell essentially to and from the town or uh -huh. sometimes no margins. Yeah. And... The town is the inventory, basically. Uh, oh, you don't yeah. need to give every random player trusted access to all the town storage. That's awesome. That's really awesome, actually. We want to add linked inventories in the future. So right now, like the shop needs its own storage thing. It was just easier to get implemented mm -hmm. that way. But in the future, you'll be able to either have like a radius and put chests in the the radius, or like directly link them. I'm not sure exactly what the UX is going to be, but for sure something we want. Yeah, it makes complete sense. This is this is actually awesome. Even this right here, I just want to do this. Even though it's like I'm not like I'm just gaining cooking levels, right? Even though I'm just kind of like providing this into the town, I actually just love this. I think it's it's nice to be able to set up my own little shop and kind of like role play as my character and do whatever I want to do with it. Yeah, I like this a lot. And I, I think the reason why is because you've taken the kind of progression of sort of an old school runescape. You've added in the idea of ownership of land, right? And building your own cities to that. And that feels very good. Just that alone feels very good. Hmm. My mushrooms, yeah, exactly. Did I lose you? You still there? I'm here, yeah. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> Thought you had accidentally muted or something. Having to restart the queue every time is a bit annoying, though. Yeah, they um they have a, a queue prevention kind of a thing where like if you crash or anything like that, you get five minutes. So that is a thing. Am I getting a direct trade? Why would you I think right now there's an issue where it's not if you're in queue you don't get you don't get back to your same spot in queue it's only if you got in game you get to skip the queue for a few minutes we're working on that I know people are crashing yeah. or disconnecting during the queue we're we're sorry and we're doing our best to fix that there we go look at that now it's good 
Now we get all of the materials forever. And you do have to run at a margin because you're eating food while producing the food. So there's always a sink, right, when I'm doing this. I'm eating food. It's re removing, you know, some of the food from the economy. It's removing materials from the economy. They're eating food, so it's removing materials from the economy. I'm definitely going to be a food vendor. That's definitely how I'm going to handle this because that is such a good spot to be because everybody's consuming, you know, it's consuming the product that you're making. Mushroom. And so if you want to see, uh, if you want to discover more stuff too, any of those items in the crafting recipe with the yellow question mark in the corner, that's an item you've never acquired before. And so yep. the way that you unlock discoveries is like when you acquire an item that is used in other recipes, then it can unlock. So if you end up getting the materials for any of those things, I definitely recommend crafting them and you'll see what you might unlock from there. Yeah, I've tried to unlock, I've had tried to like craft each one of these at least once because of that. And I was building up to make what was it this one but we don't have enough star bulbs and there was something else i was trying to make in here yeah there's a couple of these that i've wanted to make and we were like really close to building it this was one of them the plain yeah. mashed bulbs and then this so i can make a plain ground meat and mashed bulbs i am kind of interested this is something sort of an economy thing if if you have something like this the mushroom skewer is just very easy to make right mm -hmm. and that gives you 80 and then you have something like this food, which is objectively harder to make, and it only gives 150. That means that the low tier food, two of them, is equal to better than this medium tier food. Is there plans for kind of changing consumables so they have unique effects or anything like that? Or is it all just about throughput in the very beginning? Also, yeah. is there plans to increase your maximum stamina? Because at, at that point, I only have 220 max. Is it all based so on those equipables that you have on your character sheet? So the answer to both those things is yes, and it's already in the game. So oh. in fact, you if you hit H, you'll open your uh, your stats character menu, and basically you'll see the, you have some base stats, but the power sources are actually giving you slight amounts of stat increase. As you gather some things from the ancient world, repair some stuff, trade with the travelers, you can significantly upgrade um, all of your stats, basically. You can mm -hmm. get crafting speed, gathering speed, you know. Ooh. Uh, some of the things are less useful right now, like dodge chance, but the you can get movement, uh, sprinting speed improvements, sprint, uh, sprint stamina drain efficiency improvements. Uh, you can even get more satiation. And so that kind of gets to the next question you had, which was for the food, like this one's way harder to craft and it only gives twice as much. The thing that you'll notice is they both fill you up the same amount. And so right now you're not using a lot of stamina because you're doing tier one stuff. Um, that just eating kind of the lowest quality food, you'll never really get full just crafting and eating and crafting and eating. As you start to get to the higher tiers, though, you're draining your stamina way faster. You're going to need a bigger pool of stamina. You're going to run out of stamina. And if you just eat those mushroom skewers, you're going to be full before you regain all your stamina. And you're going to be makes a lot of sense. waiting. Yeah. That's where that higher food becomes a lot more useful. Yeah, so I, I did notice that. I did notice that each of these food items had a satiation. So this one's got 20 satiation, and it's only 80 stamina. This one down here, let me see if we can find this. This one also has 20 satiation, but it has 150 stamina. So at that point, it's not really about, you know, oh, I could eat a bunch of low-tier food. You're right. It's I got full on low-tier food, and I'm still out of stamina. <laughs> now you have yeah. a big problem because you have to wait for it to go down. That makes sense. I like that. Yeah, that's, that's a good why system I gave that. you those uh, tier six dumplings when we were running around so that even if you're spending all your stamina running, they fill you up a little bit, but they'll basically max your stamina at this stage of the game. That makes sense. Yeah, I like that. Man, this is... I'm finding myself just wanting to play more. We've been playing for eight hours. And I'm like, I'm just cool running my shop. <laughs> uh, and it's funny, too, because I can even leave now. I've stock stocked up the shop completely. I don't need to be here. There's no, there's no crafting that I need to do. And I can just leave and just go out and explore and then come back and have all this stuff and restock the shop if I wanted to. This is cool as hell. Will this be free or buy, buy to play? It's free to play. They're going to be doing free to play. Sick. Yeah, this is super awesome. I could even set up a thing where I could be sitting here fishing while this is going on, too. Yeah, that's true. Hmm. Hmm. I kind of want to make my own settlement now that's just a mushroom shop. I like this. Can we join your guild? Yeah, I think Kronos... So Kronos is running the guild. And um, in the game, he's got the, the settlement for him. And it's it's set up so that I think we're at maximum people right now. Let me see. 
Yeah. So actually, if you if you look at the claim, you're not quite at max. But one thing that you can do is if you go to the recruitment tab, you can actually set it up. So right now you've run out of like think of these as like job postings. You can actually create a new opening. I think you're an officer, so you should be able to make one. Oh, and you could do it um, for specific skills. Yeah. So if you realize, hey, we have we don't have anybody who's a an advanced scholar. You could say, we hey, we're recruiting a level twenty scholar, and that person gets preferred access now. Yeah. Uh, they can just immediately join without having to be invited. Yeah. Oh, for the for the monetization plans, uh, we actually have your guys' blog post from 2021 that was put out on Medium. Is that still correct? Is that still core yes. to the vision? Yeah, I, I think, I mean, we don't talk a lot about like the details of how the game will be monetized. And I don't even think we necessarily right now have that um, locked in in any capacity. But the philosophy is still our North yeah. Star for how we're approaching it. That's good. Um, we really want to make sure that Whatever we add to the game, that's like a essentially the TLDR is whatever we add to the game. That's something that you are working for is like an achievement in the game. We never want to monetize that. We want to make sure that the the analogy um, Tyler used is like medals of honor and Lamborghinis. It's like yep. if you earn if you have a medal of honor, you know that that can only be earned. And if they add a way for you to buy medals of honor, they lose all meaning. Yep. Um, versus there are some things in the game that are Lamborghinis. And uh, if you see someone driving a Lamborghini, you know that they just had enough money to buy one. And uh, maybe you want to work towards buying your own Lamborghini. And that is something you can kind of, you can earn in the game through working and doing stuff. But if someone else wants to just buy one, you know, that's yeah. kind of, it's understood that that's how they fit into the game. I super agree with that. And I think I think that's probably one of the funniest ways to put that that I've seen is these Medals of Honor versus Lamborghinis. Because to be real with you, that's, that's the way it always feels. As long as you are not disrespecting the player's time in the way where it's like, oh, I could work for this. That dude just bought it. Like, why would I do the raid, right? And it, it's something that I, I found that actually made me upset in EVE for a long time because they, they tied player progression to to that specifically, which is uh, to real money. Because what you could do is you could buy game time, then you could take that game time, turn it into in-game currency, and then take that in-game currency and buy experience points for your character through skill injectors. Why would I spend yeah. the time learning when I just buy it? And that immediately yeah. started to cause, that went down that route, of, and WoW did the same thing. So World of Warcraft did the same thing, where they had game time turned into an in-game token. That in-game token could be traded for gold. That gold then could then be used to buy BOEs from the latest raid. Or someone would buy a guild to go run you through the raid. Why would I get good at the game when I can just buy my place in a raid, right? So it's the same thing. It's the same exact thing. And I love that core tenant that you guys have, which is Lambos, Lamborghinis for buying and Medals of Honor for earning. They have to be separate. I like that. Yeah. And I think this is already kind of a little bit in the game already, whereas uh, basically experience is one of our core Medals of Honor. And so we've done a lot of kind of difficult design decisions to make it so that like, hey, there is no way that you can buy XP. Um, and it's still, still something that obviously needs balancing in some places. But for example, like there is no way that you can, uh, that if you were giving a player real money outside of the game, that they could kind of give you XP. Um, and so for example, um, active crafting, basically XP is always tied to the time you put in. And so when you're active crafting, you're gaining XP but something that you could parallelize or have another player set up a whole bunch of stuff for you, like passive crafting. So if someone gathered 100 ore and 100 coal and lined up 10 smelters, if passive crafting gave XP, you could just walk up, send someone some money, dump all these resources in the in the kilns or in the smelters, and then get a huge XP dump at the end of it. And we realized like, hey, that is not conducive to this, like keeping XP as like this pure kind of earned thing. So we had to say, you know, passive crafting just can't give XP. It, it yeah. just fundamentally doesn't uh, line up with that. Yeah, it makes um, complete sense. I've added a new, I've added a new thing on this, which I am now offering a mushroom skewer for a hex coin. Ah, see, now we can start adding different kinds of trade. Immediately, people are buying them. I like that. I like that we can start moving those currencies around like this. What are hex coins used for otherwise? So they're, I mean, the right now they're the only item that can be used for uh, house rentals. Mm -hmm. um, plan is to open that up more in the future, but for right now they are the only thing that can be used for that. They can be found kind of in the ancient world in runes and stuff, and then they also are desired by the travelers. So for most of the 
most of the way the travelers work right now, which is a temporary system, kind of using the systems we have to do what we want to do eventually, is basically they have stuff that they can uniquely create for you. Mm -hmm. um, and what they need is essentially you to bring them stuff that they want in exchange for their marks, which are kind of like reputation currency. It's like, how much stuff have you kind of donated to them in exchange for these like reputation marks? And then also generally hex coins, because um, they, they like money as well. Makes sense. Uh, but in the future, we're thinking about having those uh, those marks be more tied to like reputation and something that's locked to your character. So um, right now, we're, it's going to be interesting to see what people do with those. If people end up using like marks of Heimlich or marks of Brico as currencies in addition to hex coins because they are quite useful in the game. Um, and we'll, I guess, use that information to make our decision whether we want to have those be locked to a player or not. Most definitely. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, because at this point, it's like, I don't really have another interim currency, and it's always going to come back to, you should have some kind of interim currency, right? It's anything that is makes it easier to trade outside of bar barter once you start getting that kind of throughput makes yeah, the most I think, sense. I think the amount of the hex coins that are like coming into circulation is probably like an order of magnitude too low, because I think mm -hmm. like just having more granularity would be just better a good idea. in general. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I, I definitely agree with what you're saying. I think to some extent, though, like what we've seen in previous playtests is that in the early game, a lot of people are just like cooperating bartering. and bartering because like yeah. the items that you're gaining are just so easy to gain that they're they honestly aren't like worth that much. Like just giving something to someone so they can do a favor for you on a trustful system is kind of just easier to do at the beginning of the game. It's better system, as you get yeah. more established and people get more of an economy. There's just a lot more items piling up that you can buy and trade with and you end up with a big cash stack that you can kind of throw around on shops and stuff like that yeah most definitely that makes a lot of sense uh, but definitely agree on your feedback of like having i think having a better earlier game currency uh is definitely needed i think how we introduce hex coins to the world is something that needs more thought as well yeah i mean because but there's also I, I think the other thing that i'd be worried about is this if you have an end game option, like you talked about the idea of an empire being able to mint its own coins in game. And then you have an early game option, which is like hex coins are super abundant. Why would I ever switch off of hex coin? Oh, wait, we got ads. Gotta wait for the ads. No. Oh, good. I'll be right back. I'm gonna use the bathroom real fast. Me too. <laughs>
Alrighty, I am back. Ah, <sighs> me too. Let's see. There we go. Now I got all my coins going on. But yeah, no, this is this is actually freaking really compelling. But yeah, I, I guess the biggest question at that point is if you guys made hex coins very common at the beginning, if you made them very common, right? Um, what would happen when an empire eventually did introduce their own currency if that was a thing? Would it? I, I guess at that point, it would be rather difficult to tear people away from it. So you'd have to have some other kind of system at that point. So it, it always comes down to like whatever currency gets established first largely will be that nation's currency for quite a while. Unless you can, you know, force them or push them to do, you know, compel them to do it in a different way. But I guess it comes down to inner, you know, interplayer interaction, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think it depends too on like what is the how much control does the empire exert over the local economy? Because, yeah. for example, so imagine you had an an empire that's established like say you have a whole bunch of towns everyone's using hex coins and then an empire gets established and they want to expand their empire over yeah. the whole territory um what would how would they do that if if they want to use their own currency well they could set up a shop that is basically buying or sorry selling items in exchange for their empire coins and so nobody has any of these so people are like hey we want this stuff but we we can't get these empire coins and then they say hey let me put little shops in my um, cities around the edge of my um, empire where I'm basically if you bring supplies from the capital where you're creating them to these outskirts of the empire you get the we'll coin. reward you in these empire coins at these um, these locations and so now all of a sudden players can they want these items from the capital they want to um, they want to get these empire coins they basically act as logistical ants delivering the stuff to earn the currency they come back and they can buy stuff in the capital and over time the empire could essentially like create uh value out of that thing if they have stuff people want to begin with and they want to do that instead of with their currency instead of hex coins it's a great um, way to do that so yeah yeah i think it really depends of like what 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 value does that serve for the empire for people to use their coins i guess if they control the minting then it's kind of useful for them because they can um, produce supply of like they can be the central uh, mint for that currency. And so if everyone's using their currency, they can, you know, mint more of it to their heart's content, obviously at the cost of inflation. But um, yeah, I that think might be valuable to them. I think at a certain point, it also ends up being a form of control for that empire because they can be like, OK, we've got everything. We've got all our materials now and we're gone. And you're left with a whole bunch of these these minted coins that are worthless, because they could go off and just run off with all the materials in the area and and like move to some other place new on the world map. You know, they could just leave that way, which would be kind of interesting. Or if an empire collapsed, or if it was on the verge of collapse, right? And then everybody who has the coins has a vested interest in keeping that empire running. They're like, wait a minute, we're gonna fix everything to make sure that it doesn't happen. Yeah, it's, yeah. it'd be very funny. You know, there's there's gonna be so much. I guess the basic way it comes down to is this: in a social sandbox game, no matter what. There are stories written that the developers never knew would possibly happen because they're written by the players. And you you don't know what's going to happen that day, and it makes it more compelling and more interesting. Yeah, get rid of exactly. all the coins as fast as possible. Put them all in there, you know. Or even yeah, better, totally. establish your currency as the best one in the land and then secretly mint like 5,000 of them, right, on your local and then use your, you know empire government to go buy all of the most expensive things from all the nearby nations because you're the most you know commonly used currency and then flood the market with your coins so it's worthless now but now you have all the really expensive materials there's so many ways to exert economic pressure with this it's ridiculous yeah i think we really when we started bitcraft we knew we wanted there to be player to player cooperation and also player to player conflict um but we wanted to try and do that in a, a different way and economics was kind of the the way that we were really interested in at least like having the foundation of that be of like ultimately this is a this is a social sandbox but it's also like a simulated economy and uh player control like not only having the economy be player driven and that like players are moving stuff around the economy and creating goods and all that type of thing but having players be able to control the economy as far as like minting their own currencies and having economics at play in that sense between kingdom or like empires and kingdoms was has always been part of the dream yeah, no, I mean, that makes a lot of sense. I think that's amazing to do that in a game that is not PvP focused, right? So you, you've got a game that doesn't even have PvP in it, and you're like, you know what? Economic PvP. This is this is the trade baron's paradise, right? You know, I love that. That's super fun. <laughs> There's no risk of someone coming and blowing up your shop, but there is a risk of a dude next to you selling the same products as you for one coin less. 
<laughs> exactly. And so I think this gets into some of the questions of like how do empires fight each other or how do even settlements or towns fight each other? So say if if this town across the river was, you know, you wanted to expand across the river and they were they were in your way. Uh this isn't in the game right now, but we have plans to basically add a system where you can essentially build a thing on your claim that essentially acts as like it acts as a something that takes up it, it adds to the supply costs of both people's claims or in the area. So it basically oh. creates like a and like an out. area oh. nuke to the decay. And so you can basically like if you're willing to pay the nuke, the cost of the nuke yourself, you can use it to like drain other people's claims around you. So it's kind of like an economic battle at that point of like who gets to keep the claim of who's willing to keep their supplies um, high enough to not lose their claim. Um, but the other person, the person sending the attack needs to pay the price as well. So it's um, an and you need to economic you suppression zone is what that is. That's wild. That's that's yeah. great. See, there there had to be some kind of conflict between towns for that to work. And I think that system works really, really well. You just create an aura of nope. Like you're you're going to pay more if you're near me. Get out of here. Exactly. That's actually really and the cool. I the idea, too, is like. Well, that's kind of bad on both people, right? Like you're paying that. You, if you want to send that attack, you have to pay the price yourself, and maybe even at a multiple. Mm -hmm. it, that's kind of to be but determined. If, but if your economy is stronger than theirs, and you can take you can take the pressure, and they can't, it may be an advantage for you to do so. And exactly. you may even pick and, up some of their refugees when their town falls apart. Yeah, but you might also find that, like, hey, at some point they're saying, hey, we want to concede, like save you save your resources attacking us more don't burn all of our resources to the ground you're going to get less when you win let's merge or like let's can you recruit and absorb us and we'll despawn the claim and now we can both save you know like let's come to a truce let's make a let's do a merger instead of a an acquisition or whatever uh mm -hmm. it kind of creates an incentive for both parties there and then when um, you get merged into them remember you have to act as a guy in the shadows slowly trying to corrupt that nation from the inside until it collapses chat that's how it works that's normal yeah 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 See? and i guess on that <laughs> note too like part of what we've really thought about is like what scales of the game should have trustful interactions and what scales of the game should have trustless interactions so we, so we really want to make sure like between players you don't need to trust the other player you can do a transactional trade you can use the barter stall you can recruit someone to a claim and like you kind of you get the outcome that you expect but as you get into the higher scales of politics and organization you know in towns in settlements and then ultimately in empires a lot of the things require you to trust the person so like if you want to sell your town to an emperor you're kind of like he gives you the money and then you trust that he's going to actually hand over the town uh and so we want there to be room for some of this like espionage and betrayals and stuff like this at the higher risk higher tiers or higher scales of the game not higher tiers um, makes sense so that's yeah, definitely see, something we baked in i think at that point what i'm i'm thinking about doing is like we've got kind of kind of uh, a sort of a hodgepodge like building encampment here I'd want to create like a big economic center, large trade depot with a bunch of different stalls with different objectives for each one of those stalls. Is there a way to cosmetically change these depots or do you plan on, or not depots, but uh, cosmetically change these shops in any way? So it'd be easy for someone walking by to know what is being sold in that shop. Like, can I put an icon on it or a sign or anything like that eventually is the idea? Definitely not right now, but definitely is the intent. So we already have some buildings in the games where you can like unlock cosmetic variants of them. So definitely mm -hmm. just having like visually different looking barter cells. So you don't have like the same thing repeated 50 times mm -hmm. is very soonly planned and something that we easily have the ability to add. Another thing that we've looked at is essentially like Minecraft signs and kind of like with text signs or item frames. And so some way to basically put like essentially like a label on a, a a shop or an icon for an item or something like that i think that's something that could come in the future because i think as we've seen in past play tests like when you have a town with 20 barter stalls you end up just like running around checking the inventory or checking the ui of each of them to figure out like yeah. where is this for sale which is not um exactly what we want one other thing that is also planned is in later towns you'll be able to build like a, a market which essentially just aggregates all of the barter stalls in the whole town through one interface. And so that'll be something you can only build in like more advanced towns. But then it's essentially, it's not a central market, like a central auction house across the whole world. It is just an aggregation of all the trade in that town through one point like of interface, basically. Makes sense. Yeah, it makes complete sense. Oh, got all my mushrooms. They've been buying more mushrooms. Yeah, I love this. I think this is actually crazy compelling. I'm going to play the hell out of this every step of the way that you guys develop this. 
100%. It's, it's rare to see something so well thought out and taking that kind of a genre in a different direction. You guys are doing it. I, I'm really impressed here, man. Very much so. Sweet. I, that's great to hear. I'm excited yeah. to see how Tortuga evolves over the course of the, <laughs> the alpha here. Oh, yeah. We're going to have a blast okay. with it, to be honest with you. I'm actually yeah, thinking knows, about making guys... a, a sister a sister town that's just going to be out there that's just going to sell things. Because I, I like the idea of just being a, a chef. You know, I think that's quite cool. I think that's what I'll probably do throughout the uh, the alpha for this. So I was going to say, we actually, we headed up to the northern continent where we explored earlier today, but there's mm -hmm. actually quite a, there's a few other continents and there's actually some island chains. And if you're uh, going for the whole pirate theme, maybe you want to be uh, oh. more like an island, uh, an island city that is a trade hub in the center of the world could be. Uh, that would be really cool. That would be really cool. So is the map on each time you guys are going to be doing like the alpha beta, things like that, you regenerate the entire map. So it's not going to be the same, right? That's true. Yeah. So I, we're moving. Basically, the map is mostly procedurally generated, but the actual like rough land masses and biomes are mm -hmm. currently handcrafted. And so I set up like kind of what I thought would be a good layout for this alpha. Um, for this one, I think we're going to move towards like as the worlds get bigger and bigger, it becomes increasingly harder to like do that with like a certain level of quality and care. So we want to move towards a world where like at least most of the generation can all be procedural. Um, but yeah, basically right now there's um, a few kind of like I basically we put in like bounding boxes and we say like we want like roughly this type of um, shape for a continent here. Uh, within that this coordinate and this width and height and then everything else below that is is noise and and procedural generation values um and then we say like and we want this rough area to be these biomes and then that kind of all the resources and terrain height and all that stuff gets calculated all the rivers and lakes and all that's procedural downstream that's awesome yeah no this is super great this is this is really really goddamn cool dude see now now i'm sitting here that the the position that I'm in as a player now is win more, right? Because yeah, like that's that's once you find everything that that looks good, it feels good. The only thing that you can have at that point is I I just want to keep playing this, right? So like, what do you guys have any timelines that are available that people can latch onto? Do you have an area where they can find that timeline information when you are ready to release it? Because I I'm betting you don't have a full timeline, right? Yeah, we do, we don't have like a official roadmap at this stage. Mm -hmm. I would say like over uh, the next few months, we want to do at least a few more closed alphas mm -hmm. um and we're basically right now the biggest bottlenecks is just how much stuff we have for people to do in the game and how many people we can support in the game and we're working very hard on both of those things and so as we progress on both of those fronts we want to just do more tests and let more people play let more people play the new stuff as well and so we're just basically a lot of people ask us like when's the game coming out and the way we say it is like when the game goes to like official soft launch doesn't really matter so much or at least it won't matter so much for the vast majority of people it's going to be like before that point most people who want to play will be able to play as we move to later closed alphas open beta and that sort of stuff um it's really uh we're just working as fast as we can for that i think we're hoping to be able to reach a lot more players by the end of this year with the the rate of improvement of space time db has been amazing the last few months yeah yeah and the thing is, if we were if we had done everything we thought we could do and we were hitting the limit, we would be worried. But we have so many things. It's like, okay, if we just spend like three more weeks working on this, we can get another order of magnitude, order of magnitude improvement. And then there's another thing after that and after that. And so it's like, okay, we just need to crank through these things, and we're gonna be able to open this up to a lot more people in the future. Yeah, as you guys increase capacity, let me know. Because basically, what I'll do is I'll just I'll tell everyone in the community. Because I think this will be really really fun to play. I've actually set up a section of the Discord for you guys. If you go to the Discord right now, let me go pull this up. So we've got about a hundred thousand people in the Discord. If you're not part of it, it's Discord.gg/slash/piratesoftware. We'll pull yes, this up. I, I you go just up to joined. channels and roles up here, and you can go down to the bottom. And Bitcraft is one of them. So Bitcraft, if you if you choose any of these, it's for learning skills. So if you want to learn game dev or hacking, art, audio, video, voice acting, programming, writing, streaming, all this stuff is sections in the Discord. You won't see the channels unless you select these. And you can select them at will and remove them. So if you want to learn things, you have that option. And if you want to play games with us, we have all those different games that are actually in here. 
And you can see we've got the Bitcraft one right here, and it's tied up to their official news. So every time they do an announcement from that, it actually pulls from Bitcraft announcements from their, their Discord. We've got resources in here that are going to be things for their official YouTube and then signing up for it there. And then the general chat for the game. We're going to add some more channels to this as it goes forward and then add some voice channels for it as well for you guys. Because I think this is going to be something we're going to keep playing. And this is quite fun. I think it's really interesting. And I kind of want to just keep selling mushrooms on sticks, to be honest with you. <laughs> I got a crafting further and further into the future, too. Yeah, cinnamon rolls. Definitely. Sell, sell, sell. No, I think it's cool because if you look at this plain hot tea right there, and this plain chilling tea, these both have buffs on them that make it so that you are immune to high temperatures or low temperatures. So players will want to buy these so they can go into these harsh environments. So I'm selling consumables that actually have in-game effects beyond just subsistence, right? And I think that's good. I think it's a really good thing. Yeah, there's actually a cool system right now where if you use these consumables and go into those biomes, you can gather certain resources in those biomes to eventually make a power source that gives you permanent uh, kind of protection. Oh, The caveat that's cool. there, though, is you're basically trading off of raw stats for these environmental protections. So, you know, it you might, might have multiple it. power sources that you're trying to like, hey, I'm going to the desert today. I'm going to bring my my cooling power sources, but that's at the cost of... Uh, low stamina or low health and so maybe you decide you know what i'd actually rather keep these ones and just bring consumables keep my my high stat ones it's like having an extra slot under gear 100 percent. that's cool yeah i like that can you just do all the professions at one time you can so if you look at right here on my character we have professions and you can see all the different professions on my character i'm a level 27 in cooking right now and as i cook new things i'm actually getting more you know experience in that and i also have a number of achievements here so the achievements give you a bunch of stuff. Like I got a bunch of cosmetic gear to be a, a cook, right? And then I also got some titles and things like that. So I've got beginner cook and I'm almost an apprentice for that. So you can do that for all of the professions, anyone that you want to at the same time. And they have an equipment slot for each one of them. So you're not filling up your inventory with all the tools for all your professions. They go into the equipment slot for that profession, which I think is pretty good. That's brilliant with that. So you can see I've got the, the cooking pot here. And if we go over to the farming one, I've actually got the hoe that I've got there. And if we go over to foraging, I've actually got a machete for this one. And yeah, yeah, it's good. Is there magic enchantment? There is superior versions of certain tools, which I don't know if there's anything beyond that. Would you, do you have any information on that? Um, there, there's not like the classical high fantasy uh, version of magic, but um, there is kind of some like fantastical materials in the world of Bitcraft. And so definitely as you get deeper in the content and in the future uh, releases there's going to be stuff that maybe is like imbued or you know kind of uh empowered tools or materials or buildings that can be used for creating high level gear or really powerful stuff um, that makes sense but not in not in the classical magic sense man i dig this there's people building right outside of our base now i need that aura that aura of economic suppression it's the fine. supply nuke? Yeah, the supply nuke. We need it. It's time to nuke everyone else's supply. This is the only way. Is there any way... So, like, since you talked about the supply nuke aura, do you have anything in, in plans for maybe altering the spawns in the nearby era, area? Like, if Definitely. I did a thing of, like, we paid some resources to make it so more trees grow here, right? Right. Oh, that's an interesting idea. I thought you were talking about player spawns at first. Um, oh no, I, so, I, meant, I meant more like that. Of like, hey, what if we what if we paid for like a totem that makes it so trees are more common in the generation around this area, or berries, or anything like that? Yeah, I think that is totally possible. I think uh, especially something like that where you're uh, essentially you're essentially spending whether it's supplies or some other uh, resource to better encourage respawning in in the general area especially because it's not it's not just on your claim it's not like replanting stuff but it's it's in an area that you can't reasonably control or like claim everything but yeah. um it's generally going to benefit you i think that's a really really cool idea and definitely something we could kind of yeah i mean the reason why i brought that up is because that was the same kind of a thing in eve with sov so they had this system i don't know if it's still in the game or not it's been a while since i played 
But um, they had this system where you basically could see the asteroids, right? So like asteroids in that zone would be higher quality or more plentiful or anything like that. Um, different things like that. Or or maybe it would spawn more NPC missions or it'd spawn more, more enemy fleets, things like this. It's a sovereignty system thing for uh, alliances that owned areas of space. And you had to maintain that thing, and it was like a like a building, basically. Yeah, we've actually so there's a very similar system in a game called Haven and Hearth, which is another inspiration that we draw on. Mm. And the the interesting thing there is this is actually part of the relationship between like the empire and the towns. And so, part of the reason why the towns swear sovereignty to the empire is because the empire is essentially bestowing these these blessings upon the realm. And so I think that if we do add something like this, it's likely that it would probably come in that form where this is part of the part of the give and take of towns and empires kind of working together. And, you know, maybe another uh, an empire says, hey, if you betray the empire you're part of and join my empire and help take this territory, I'll provide better blessings to your to your area than you're getting right now. And maybe it incentivizes you to to betray or or change teams. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, anything that causes a little bit of, you know, social disruption there, it's like, hmm, maybe me as a player is more important than me as a guild member. You know? <laughs> uh, I love the double cross in games like this. I always do. I think it's super fun. Yeah, just a little conflict. A little bit of a little bit of conflict there. Yeah, I think another thing that we haven't done as much as we plan to is the player spawning stuff. And so one thing that I can mention here is like, we always want to make sure that um, by default, like new players will spawn in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And so what that means is that like the early game for every player, no matter how late you join the game is always going to be kind of similar of just like you're starting out, you build your camp, you get a little bit of resources, you build a small uh, hermit camp. Um, but then you also have the ability to maybe like teleport like a one-time teleport to a town based that's built like a some sort of like um beacon or something like that so you could all meet up with your friends at some some town or something like that um or a way to spawn at your friends claim if they've started just a few minutes before you something like that mm -hmm. um and just making sure that like the thing that you don't want is the thing that i described from worm online where it's like you spawn into the game which can happen right now to some extent of like you spawn into the game and it's just claims everywhere and all the resources are overpicked yeah um, so th there is some protection where the the things you need right away in the game are kind of on a different respawn system where those will come back again and again and again in the same spots unless you pave over them um but then the the main resources after the bushes and the the flint kind of operate on the the main respawn system yeah and i think i think the biggest thing with that too is like there's a double-edged sword there too so if you have a really powerful alliance or something like that they're always going to need new players to come and join their economy and they don't want to be in a position where nobody finds them because all the new players spawn elsewhere too so you gotta there's got to be like a balance in there somewhere that's kind of interesting it's an interesting problem to solve at the same time yeah i got a birch seed now i can actually grow one of those interesting perfect yes yeah, so you might even want to place that in the claim to save on uh transport yeah. Let me see. Where is our claim? It's all the way back down there. We definitely... <laughs> I'm just looking at the map, especially when you zoom out. We definitely need to do something here to uh, reduce the the icon spam on the map. <laughs> yeah, that is funny, though. What, you, um, you are can't... you telling me this is this is a problem? This is... <laughs> well, zoom out more and you'll see it gets it gets worse. I know, that's what I'm doing. Um, so so the, the thing is, the, the claims actually, I don't know if you noticed, but the claims upgrade and they kind of go through tiers. And as you upgrade through the tiers, you're able to build the higher tier structures and yes. craft higher tier items. And so probably what we'll do is some sort of hierarchy where you have like a UI thing that's like, hey, show me all claims, show me only tier three and up claims. And that will basically either like minimize them to a tiny icon or it'll hide them entirely. And uh, that way you can kind of say like, hey, only show me like the big towns, basically. Um, mm -hmm. I like that. That's cool. Yeah, basing it on uh, the level. Oh, that's a cool looking right. skin on that dude. Creepy red eyes. It's Kronos. Hi, Kronos. You look spooky. Uh, if you right click on the, the claim totem here, you can check out like how far the research has gone. It looks like they've been hard yeah. at work. I think your town has actually passed us, the the staff town. Oh, wow. 
Yeah, so we got to tier two. We've got everything in tier one right now, which I think they did earlier. We've got some of tier two, which is increased supplies. Area increased stuff. I was actually talking about it earlier. Um, one of the things that I found to be a little bit awkward, and I gave a little bit of feedback on this, was the the way that hexagons work is you can't actually tile hexagons unless they are of the same size. So because it's a mathematics problem, right? So because of that, I was like, I hate that the claim hexagons don't match up with the, the ground hexagons, if that makes sense. I know. <laughs> So, um, it, it, we've as we've gotten deeper and deeper. Back back when we decided to do hexagons, it was like yeah. the founder. This was before I even joined the team. The founders were like, "Oh, hexagons, hexagon grids looks really cool. It's they got do. like a style. It's uniquely stylized, um, and it's kind of different. So, like, let's do it." And they muscled through some of the initial math to like do the world, and uh, then we got deeper, and it's like, okay, well, the buildings are on the small hexagons, but the terrain is on the large hexagons, and so now like getting the terraforming right to place a building gets weird and then when you add claims into the mix well the claim has to be on the small hexagons so that it can properly cover the buildings but then it doesn't match up with the terrain and it's like i think we used to joke like okay bitcraft 2 is going to be on a square grid um <laughs> but uh i think at this point uh i don't know i guess we'll see if the hexagons make it forever it would be somewhat of an undertaking to change at this point and it is part of the identity of the game to some extent. i like it i like the hexagons because um, like the, the way that i felt about it is is exactly the thing where you're like oh the buildings only fit on the small hexagons for me just as a, a player feeling perspective not a you have to do anything um i felt like it should fit my my new claim instead of getting like a 300 extra because I can't conceptualize what 300 extra plots means right because they're small yeah. and they don't really align with anything visually in the world but I would know what five extra hexagons would mean because that's so the, the like chunks the ratio is nine to right? one I believe so yeah. there's there's uh there's nine I mean there's seven and six one third small mm -hmm. hexagons in a large hexagon yeah um, so if, but that's if, not an easy number to conceptualize so if you told me as a player i get nine more hexagons i would know exactly what it is because there's hexagons all around me i can conceptualize the size i don't have to think about it it makes sense it's the same in minecraft when you say a block or a chunk right so that's the first thing i thought is like why don't i just mm. get an extra large hexagon and i can figure out the place of my of my buildings on my own at that point right that's, that was the first thing that I thought about. And that's a feeling thing. That's not like a, it has to be this yeah. way. It's a feeling thing so, where I can understand because the world teaches me the size of a hexagon. Yeah. One thing I can show you too is the, the challenge with that is in order for the large, like the, oh. for something to be on the large hexagons, it has to cover the seams. And so if you go into build mode, oh, sorry, we're on we ads. Got ads. We just hit ads. Yeah. Just give it a minute. Sorry no about that. Uh, I they go off say, every uh, half hour, so. I was going to say Tyler, who's the CEO, is mm -hmm. also in that DM with us. If you want, we could uh, we could invite him to jump in here. He might be able to answer some questions that's above my pay grade. Oh, sure. Yeah, no, if he wants to jump in. Yeah. He, he's the other kind of... Me and him together are kind of the, the main people thinking about a lot of the game design stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, Tyler, do you want to jump in? I assume you're... He's here. Yeah, he can jump in. Absolutely. I need to open up my crafting. Hey, what's up, dude? We're on ad break right now, so they can hear you, but there's a lot of the community that's sitting in ads, so I just wait. I don't want them to get locked behind a paywall or something like that. It's it's bad. It's Give me one fun. second. I want to make sure my microphone is set up. Yeah, sure. Cooking more mushrooms. Hey, thank you for the dollar to the moderators. It's very nice of you. Yeah, he's getting his microphone set up first. Whoop. You need the key? They need the server capacity before you can have it. <laughs> I didn't get an ad. Not everybody does. Yeah. If you get the key before they get the server capacity, then you get a key and then you start complaining. That's how that goes. <laughs> I think I'm back. Hey, what's up? Yeah. The ads are almost over. About 10 more seconds. I saw you reading the uh, monetization post as well. Yeah. Very cool. 
Tyler here is the author of that one. All right. And ads are gone. But yeah, so um, now we've got Tyler on, who is the CEO. And we've got Minch on, who is, is that your, your actual name, Minch? My name's uh, Carter, but Minch Carter. is my okay. game tag. And, then, and you are the, um, the game director, correct? Yes. Yes. So game director and CEO for the game. And uh, this is for BitCraft. So hello, everyone. Now you have, now you have everybody on. But yeah. Hello. So uh, let me turn you up a little bit, Tyler. Let me get you. Okay. Sounds good. Now you guys, can you guys hear him okay? Is it better? Yeah, it sounds good. That sounds good to me. All right, cool. But yeah, so tell me about this, man. Like, I've I've been playing this all day. It's been about eight and a half hours now. I expected to get wow. on and, like, try and play around with things and maybe get, like, four hours and get a feeling for it. Because usually when games are at the alpha, especially closed alpha level, the content may be wide, but it's an inch deep. This is not. There's a ton here, and I've been playing it all day, and I just want to keep playing it. So, <laughs> so I, uh, to an extent, I, I would credit RuneScape. A little bit for that. I think that was a big inspiration for us. The game is uh, essentially kind of like take Minecraft, RuneScape, and EVE Online and smash them together yeah. into one game so that you can edit the terrain and do all that stuff, uh, but also have super deep long-term content. Yeah. No, I, I can completely feel that. And as a long-time EVE player, that's immediately what I felt. I was like, hey, wait a minute. Yeah, the, you've got me now. And then Kronos jumped into it and was like, hey, you really need to play this. Uh, because he's a longtime Eve player too, so it, it just fun. ended up being one of those things where we we're like, "All right, yeah, we're in. Yes, this makes complete sense. We understand these systems, and this is something we definitely want to get into." And I think one thing about this to notice: th this is the worst version of Baycraft that will ever be released. I said that earlier I'm today too. It. Yeah, it's it's funny because I was I was talking to the community about that. I was like, "You have to understand the server capacity that they're at now, the feature set that they have now, the depth of the co creation that they have now. This is the worst version." You're in closed alpha. Like, <laughs> yep. It's super, super, super early. And there's so much that we have planned and are going to do. Um, and even planned just for space time to be in the server that runs this thing. So yeah, uh, it's pretty hype that you guys are interested in it already. Yeah, definitely. I love walking around just deconstructing stuff that people have abandoned. Free stuff. Love free free stuff. stuff. That was the whole point. That we spent a lot of time. A lot of what we've thought about is how do we get a group of players in a shared world to be able to collaborate and um, use the same resources, right? That's like the main game design problem in this game. Yep. Uh, where, where claiming land is also a resource. So for somebody who said price, it is a free to play game and they have not chosen their monetization structure publicly outside of that. They have an entire blog post about monetization, how monetization should work in the industry. And it is directly in line with how I feel about the industry. I was actually kind of blown away reading that, by the way. It's, it's it's very rare that game companies get that. Usually it's driven by the business model in a way that is in some ways predatory and in some ways beneficial to players. You've just taken the exact same takes that I take on, on monetization and rewritten them. And it, it kind of, I, I haven't seen a studio do that. So hell yeah. I think the, the reason, so we, I wanted to sit down and like actually think about like, well, what, what is the what are the rules by which we decide to sell something and i think part of the reason that game companies sell things which end up potentially ruining their game is they just don't take the time to like sit down and really understand it and it's a big organization right i mean any yep. mmo is usually like 200 people we have 40. so um that can just be sort of a design by committee situation where the left hand doesn't know that the right hand is that the monetization team is a separate team than the game design team. And the problem is that monetization is game design. So yes, it's tricky. It is. And it's one of the things that I find is you, you said it kind of well there. Basically, when you come down to monetization, when you're ever adding monetized systems to a game, you need to think about player behavior. How are the players going to use that? How are they going to interact with that? How is that going to change the game overall? As an example, adding the World of Warcraft token to WoW. There were two things that were kind of on the forefront of the idea inside of Blizzard when that happened. One of them was, how do we stop account takeovers from RMT, which is real money transaction? Because people would go right. and buy gold in the black market, they'd get their accounts taken over, and then there would be thousands of tickets to CS. This was a, a cost issue, a massive cost issue. So right. they were thinking about this, how do we get rid of this? So they added this system to the game. Well, what did it do? It made it so people could buy gold legally. They pay right. money for a token, they put the token in game, and they get gold. Well, why is that bad? Well, now they start buying guild runs. Now they start getting items off the auction house. Now the entire game right. 
technically is pay to win legally. But it did reduce all those CS tickets. It did save a massive amount of money on that end. So yeah, you, that's one thing where it's like, it did fix this, but it also made right. the game objectively worse. And, at what cost? Yeah, what cost? Exactly. It's a player behavior analysis thing. There's a missed mark there. I, I think the same thing happened to Eve when they made it so you could buy skill injectors. Same exact thing because you can get, you know, a, a month of game time, turn it in game currency, get a skill injector, and now you have all the XP in your character's head. It's exactly the same between the two. And it's, it it's, it's, uh, it, it leads to purchasing, as you guys called it, being able to buy the Medal of Honor which is the Medal of Honor should be earned, the Lamborghini should be bought. And I love that analogy. That is fantastic. Thank you. That's uh, yeah. that's uh, a phrase I coined. Um, yeah. Oh, I actually have another blog post, um, one more, uh, about the thing you were just talking about, real money trading in games. Um, it's a really hard problem. So the, this is a problem for two reasons. One, players will do it. People are going to buy what they want, and they're going to find a way to do it. And then... Games are massively incentivized. They can either, their choice is exactly what you said, a giant pile of support tickets or free money, essentially. So it's very hard for them to not do the latter. Um, and I think you need to set up where, you're, where are your uh, defense lines on that one as well. So we wrote a blog post about that. That makes sense. Can you link to that, actually? Uh, sure, yeah, absolutely. Let me yeah, I'll link it out to them. I haven't read it in a long time, so we'll see how, if it still stands up. <laughs> Yeah, I was actually, I was in some of the meetings when uh, the WoW token was getting approved and because uh, I was in security at the time. And they asked me, they're like, well, how does security feel about this? And I was like, are you asking me as a security person? Or are you asking me as a player? Because that was that was the real thing was when WoW token got approved. And they're like, I'm asking you as security. I was like, as security, this is wonderful. As a player, I think yeah, this right. is shit. <laughs> it's like kind of how that went. Yeah. I guess before reading my post, what do you think they should have done? Or what would you have done? For WoW token? Honestly, right. I, w I would have eaten the cost of the CS tickets. I think that it eroded player trust in a way that was largely not beneficial to the game overall, and I feel that it is likely cost more in income to the studio than it would have cost to keep those CS staff employed to keep handling those tickets. So it was sort of a, a short-term I think it was a short-term gain. I think it was a short-term gain that has caused much more animosity inside of the community of World of Warcraft that has led to less subscriptions overall, is how I feel about it. Fair. Have a read of this one. Um, I don't remember exactly what it says, mm. uh, but uh, you can take a look. It, mi it might advocate for WoW Token. I actually have no idea. <laughs> Good. I mean, to be real with you, the WoW Token did give significant advantages in that regard. In, in terms of yeah, security, I, it was great for that. It's a really, really hard problem. This, this particular one is a hard problem. I don't know of any MMO that doesn't have RMT. Yeah, they all do. That they all have do. free trade. Yeah, a lot of a lot of RMT too. I've talked about this pretty publicly. A lot of RMT is actually caused by massive organizations as well. Uh, so like gold farming, gold selling, things like that is actually done by very multi-million dollar corporations that do that full time. You know, uh, managing accounts or, or stealing accounts or doing botting activities or things like that. Every time you guys see a gold seller that's inside of like WoW in a in a trade chat or anything like that, or Final Fantasy fourteen or Eve Online or any game that you've ever played most of those are working for the same major corporations that are handling that and they're it's a gold selling cartel legitimately yes so these these groups work against each other and in concert with each other to maintain the cost of gold across the entire market so everybody gets paid and you know that's kind of how that goes it's yeah it's organized crime effectively yeah but it's not crime it's just it breaking is. tos <laughs> well it's very interesting that you, you bring that up as organized crime because you're essentially outlawing something and yeah. it's some, so whenever you stand whenever you create a law between something that people want and uh like basically people and what they want if you make a law between that there's going to be a cartel that's like yep. that's how it works yes so you got to be careful about that yeah it's it's, it's going to have your speakeasy gold trade you know that's just kind of how it how it is so let's see all games with free trade particular mmos kind of escape real money trading correct Real money trading necessarily makes part of the game, in some sense, pay to win. True. Actually, something that's really interesting about real money trade, uh, one of the largest gold sinks in World of Warcraft is actually real money transactions. Because when those players or those rings get caught, all that gold gets black holed. All of it. Oh, removed amazing. from the economy. It's actually one of the largest uh, gold sinks in, in the entirety of the game. And it's it's but crazy because also... players are like, they don't do anything about gold, so it's like, no, they, yeah, they do. They remove all that gold. <laughs> they also... Uh... All that gold was likely botted in the first place, though, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, a huge amount of it gets added because of RMT, and then a huge amount of it gets removed from the economy because of catching RMT, which is quite funny. Or you'd be surprised. 
some of it is botted. Some of it is stolen. It's about 50-50. So account right. takeover and theft of gold is also very common. Yeah. Right. So then the that runs into about, other problems, right? Yeah. The fact that you can bot gold, that you can mine, that you can sort of earn gold by killing things in the world is also a problem because it allows it to be essentially botted by these cartels. Yeah. Let's see. Free trade is inherent to the vision of Bitcraft and will constitute a big part of the game. Good. Therefore, irrespective of what we, the game designers, want, and it's inescapable that players in Bitcraft will trade items for real money. That's correct. Rather than fight this, ignore this, or live in denial of this, Bitcraft is designed in balance with this in mind. We also carve out areas of the game which involve non-transferable things and are thus protected from being paid to win as best as we are able. Yeah, I noticed that through your guys' vault system, right? So, like, once you once you have it in the vault, it's just in there? Are there other items that are like that, too? So items always are tradable. Vault mm -hmm. things are sometimes tradable if you can convert them to items. Okay. That makes sense. So, for example, Thor, some of those things that I gave you earlier, like the vehicle or uh, the mask, convert to the, deed. Those, yeah, those can be converted. But if you'll see the um, the cooking outfit that you earned through the achievement, cannot. So, like that is on your account. There's no way that someone can get that without leveling to level twenty cooking. So I I like that because that that is my medal of honor. That's my I I sat down and did that, you know, my cook belt and was able to do it. Actually, wait a minute. It does say convert yeah. to deed, but it's grayed out. It's grayed out. Uh, yeah. So I can't we should probably it. just not show the option there, but yeah. it, it's disabled. You you can't do it. Yeah, because like the only way, if you see someone wearing this, you know that they've gotten to that level of cook, right? So you know That's that they went through the process of doing it. That's the Medal of Honor for doing it. You still need a beginner cook? Yeah, I'm almost an apprentice. I'm actually, I'm running my trade shop here trying to get more mushrooms in, but nobody needs mushrooms anymore. <laughs> slowly but surely, slowly but surely buying all of my stock. I've got a bunch of hex coins though. Hey, actually, I'm going to change the listings on this. One other thing I'll say about our game is we don't know that we're going to get it right on the first try. This is incredibly difficult. Uh, we're going to yeah. give it our, our best shot. So, I'll tell you right now, this is incredibly compelling. Um, everybody in the community is having a, a good load of fun. I'm getting most of the most of the community is like, hey, when, where can I get a key? Where can I get a key? And I keep having to explain to them, if if you want a key right now, understand they need to have the server capacity. Otherwise, you're going to have a key and you're not going to get in game and you're just going to get mad, right? So they, they're they scaling everything up as we're doing this and that's why they have the keys. It is not to keep you out of the game because they don't like you. It's because the servers aren't ready for this shit yet. That's what closed alpha is for, you know? We are going to be trying to get as many people into the game on this uh, playtest as we possibly can. So we're going to be giving out many more keys as the month goes on as well. Yeah, good, nice. It requires in general that items are not restricted from trade, soulbound, or otherwise tied specifically to your character, while free trade item enables fun gameplay around setting prices, bartering, moving goods, and trading items. It also comes with game design challenges, namely real money trading. Yeah, this, you've, you guys have a very good grasp of this world, which is good. There are really only three strategies that game designers have to fight this. Aggressively police RMT. That's the way we win at Blizzard. Uh, restrict trade between players. They did that. God, what game was that that they did that in? Diablo 4. I think it was the big one. They aggressively restricted trade between players on Diablo 4. Made it like basically impossible for that for a little bit. RuneScape, yeah. Diablo 3, they did that too for a little while. Diablo was a big one for that. Old school RuneScape tried it and then stopped. Yeah. Mm. Sell tradable yeah. items directly to players for real money to undercut RMTers. That was something that we did in Diablo 3 with the auction house. The funny thing was, and it, it's, it's kind of sad, the auction house actually wasn't a failure, as weird as that is. The, the community thought it was a failure because they thought, oh, I have to buy items to progress. That wasn't a failure of the auction house. That was actually a failure of the game. The game was imbalanced as hell. The only way you could progress is you had to go and fight Izual on the hardest difficulty, not beat him because no one could, and there was a weapon cache right before you went into his fight, and you would just keep reloading in the game and opening the weapon cache and then selling those items on the auction house because no one could beat him. It was basically impossible to fight him because the game was so badly imbalanced, so people felt like they had to buy those items in order to progress because the game was badly balanced. It wasn't even an auction house issue. It was a, it was a game balance issue. If the game had been correctly balanced the way that it was is now, and there was an auction house on there it would have been fine so it ended up being kind of a scapegoat for that unfortunately which is sad but it would have it would have destroyed the rmt market it would have absolutely killed it absolutely killed it yeah By monetization game design yep i think that would have been an interesting case study for that of using you know in-game rmt to undercut the actual rmtiers and make that a safer environment because it the goal with that was to stop rmt from happening because rmt leads to account takeover 
Because for every account that is engaging in RMT where they don't get an account takeover, there's like nine others that get account takeover because there'll be a service that's like, oh, yeah, you want to buy gold from us? Cool. So send us this PayPal money or send it to me on Venmo and then give me your account details. We log into your account. We put the gold in your account and your account is mine. And it, they, that, so they get money from you on Venmo that can't be returned. And then also they take your account and then we have to give you your account back was the idea with that. It was just awful. It's a horrible part, experience. So, question about that. Do you think it would be better? Mm -hmm. in that scenario if the game just allowed rmt and actually had a way to facilitate it i think if the game allowed rmt and had a way to facilitate it you would have run into less of a problem uh, in terms of security right you get right. rid of the security flaw of account takeover you know what you sell out though the future of the game instantly when, when you do something like that players lose faith in the game because they're like why do i want to accomplish anything i'm just going to buy it Immediately you get that Medal of Honor thing. It's like there's no point in going and farming herbs. There's no point in going and farming the raid. I can just buy in-game currency and pay somebody to go get me to run through the raid. Why would I get any of these materials? Because I can just buy them with my credit card, right? And that is absolutely true. Assuming that people view items specifically mm -hmm. as Medals of Honor. So yep. immediately when you do that, you can no longer think of items as Medals of Honor. If you, if you do that. Yeah, and that's, that's the thing is since... In this, for instance, items are tied to progression. They're tied to me, like me getting more mushrooms because mushrooms are restricted to the environment, right? Based on how many that people are able to find. And it looks like we've slowly capped out on this. We don't actually have very many mushrooms anymore. People aren't able to trade them anymore. I need to start trading for other, other goods to kind of shift the market in that direction. Since that is the case now, that is now kind of a Medal of Honor thing. If you have mushrooms, I am gaining experience. I need more mushrooms in the game. I will be willing to pay for that. But how much am I willing to pay? Am I willing to pay real money? Maybe. There might be a threshold there. And now now you are buying progression for real money at that point. Well, one interesting thing that we have done in this is that I, purely items cannot give you experience. So you must always add in your own time actually carrying out a task to do it. All passive crafting does not provide experience, Interesting, mm -hmm. interestingly. So if you have to cook the mushrooms in a thing, you will not get experience for that. In a, if you if you cook it passively, that is, so you put it, you can build fifty ovens, put them all in there, things like that will never give you experience. Yeah, makes sense. The typical pattern you see with game developers is that they initially design the game with quite an open free trade system, along with pol policy stating that RMT is forbidden. The accounts will be banned for RMT. Yeah, that's kind of how that goes. What all game developers find is that as their game becomes more popular, RMT becomes rampant in the game and almost impossible to ban away. Much like Prohibition in the United States, you end up with, uh, trying to thimble out the Titanic. <laughs> Not only that, but you place an enormous moderation burden on the company and enable creation of entire industries focused around gold farming to meet the demand of players. This is exactly how this has happened. Exactly how this has happened. So I'm not surprised. Policing RMT ends up being a burden, a cost burden on the company. And it comes down to, is the cost burden worth it? And many companies go, why are we spending so much money on RMT? We can just get rid of it. And that's why you lead to the other choices, restricting trade and things like that. But I, I, think, I think companies could do better by getting more time spent on understanding player behavior before jumping into the other roles, if that makes sense. Yes, it does. Actually, if you go back to the top where there are three different things, are there any that I missed? The, so, the, the three different options. You've got aggressively policing RMT. You've got restricting trade between players. You've got selling tradable items directly to players for real money to undercut RMTers. Let me think if there's any other ways that we do this. Everything effectively fits under those. I mean, you could do nothing as well. You know, you just, you just ignore it. Ignore it is an option. It's not a good option, but that is that is an option. Restricting is, trade between player. players is no trade. Yeah. RMT is real money transaction. Not having a free market, that's restrict trade between players. That's what that is. In-game RMT. What What's up? It says do what EVE Online does. That was one... one uh, do what EVE chatter. Online does is is uh, sell tradable items directly to players for real money to undercut RMTers. I see the idea of selling a, a game token, a, like a, a subscription service, for real money that you can then use as an item in-game to trade for currency as number three. That's, that's directly Thank in line you. with that because you're selling a tradable item directly to players for real money and then they can trade that for, for money. That's exactly what that is. So it's the same.
So let's see. Yeah, I don't think I don't think you've missed anything there. I don't think so. Okay. I, I can't think of another way that we've ever approached this problem outside of these three. Because aggressively policing RMT, we've done things like tagging gold with UUIDs so we know exactly where all the transactions are going. We've done things mm -hmm. like um, restricting trade between players so players can't even trade items anymore, or doing things like soul binding items. We've done sell items directly to players for real money to undercut RM tiers with things like like World of Warcraft tokens. Like all of this has been done. And to be real with you, none of it works. None of it has worked. So when you're aggressively policing RMT, it's a massive cost burden on the company and RMT still exists. When you're restricting trade between players, they hate you. <laughs> it's, it's, they really, really hate you for that. Uh, when you sell tradable items directly to the players for real money to undercut RM tiers, you lead to effectively pay to win with extra steps. So, Okay, I, so I'm, I'm keen to actually uh, see what you think of the rest of our reasoning based yeah. on that. I'm gonna I'm gonna read through all of this now because I am now I'm actually really excited because those are the those are the general standards for how this gets this happens. So once game developers fully uh, you realize the futility of policy uh, policing RMT, they begin to restrict trade within their games. This of course not only restricts the behavior of RM tiers but also the behavior of all players who enjoyed the free trade aspect of the game and all the liveliness that it brings to the world. Yeah, you immediately you players hate this. They hate when you get to this phase. This is the harshest cut to the player base is when you move from the policing RMT phase to the restricting trade phase. Once that happens, play, a lot of people leave immediately. One example of such an attempt to restrict free trade was when asymmetrically valued trades were disallowed in RuneScape 2. This eliminated a whole class of gameplay for players who like to do arbitrage and prevented players from gifting their friends items. In more extreme cases, the developers will simply remove all transferability for items by making them soulbound or otherwise non-tradable. Oh, Liz, thank you for the rating party of 790. How's it going? We're playing Bitcraft right now, and we actually have the CEO and the game director on, and we're talking about selling items to players, RMT, restricting trade, and ways to police real money transactions in games, and reading their blog post about this, and it's, it's good. It's actually really good. So nice to meet you all. How's it going? My name's Thor, for you new guys. I've been in the gaming industry for about 20 years. I used to work at Blizzard Entertainment. Um, I was there for a very long time. Then I worked at Amazon Game Studios. Then the United States Department of Energy. And now I own my own game studio called Pirate Software. And I stream on Twitch. So, nice to meet you all. How's it going? So, let's see. Of course, the problem with this strategy is that when you are only able to solve real money trading by exactly the amount that you're removing the fun and interesting aspect of trading. You are. So, when you, when you start restricting this, it does remove RMT. But it makes the game really stale, and suddenly nobody can interact with each other, and you're removing that that social cohesion of, of trade. You're removing that kind of aspect of the game, the gameplay around all of that, and it, it kills it for a lot of people. If all of the important items are non-transferable or soulbound, then all that remains to trade for stuff that people aren't interested in, and all the fun trading is removed. Also, if all the items are soulbound, then what you do is you end up trading for runs in the dungeon. Most soulbound items are going to be your end game items, so people start trading to go to raids. They start trading to go to dungeons, and that's that happens quite a lot. Let's people see. are going to buy what they want. Yep, they're going to find a way to buy it too, no matter what it is. So it, it's even funny because if you look at this, I've actually already set up a number of listings here for other players. I've got a little bit of an overcut here. You can actually get um, like I set that way too high. I don't know when I set that to fifteen, but all right, one moment. <laughs> Let's let's fix that there. There we go. Save that back out. Um, I'm giving out one mushroom skewer for 12 of the mushrooms. And I'm giving out one plain trail mix for 13, three and three of these. This normally costs 10 to make. This costs two and two to make. I'm also selling those for two of these hex coins. And I'm selling or I'm on to buy the next upgrade for my stuff for 100 of the hex coins. So I've got this market stock going where people can buy these materials for me. And they can get stuff, right? And then I can get the materials to make more of them and then put them back up on my market stall. And I'm basically running like a small, like, cooking shop here. And I can set all the trades and anything I want to do, which is quite fun. It's actually, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a market. It's a market, yeah, real market Thor, an RMT for me. Fantastic. Just yeah. a heads up, I think you edited the listing count on those to one, so you might... Uh, it, oh, or it might have automatically defaulted Sick. back to one when you edited it. Totally did. Yeah, the UI here is a little confusing. Oh, look at that one. Integer cap. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> Back to infinite with you. Wow, they are they are actually changing energy cap. I wonder why. All right, that should be good. I will also mention that everything you see here is running inside a database. 
if you're yeah. interested in how that works, we can talk about that later. Yeah, SpaceTime DB is awesome as hell. I've actually been reviewing some of the documentation for that. I don't have a full grasp of what it is that you guys are doing yet. I'm going to be reviewing it with Primogen, so we can have a talk about it because it's it's quite cool. And the fact awesome. that it's running all of this at this scale and that you guys are adapting it as quickly as it is is pretty wild shit. So I'm into that. All right. Uh, so for the people, uh, sorry, who are asking, the Space Time DB site won't load. If you don't have cookies enabled, it, you won't. And we know of this problem, and we are going to fix that as soon as possible. Uh, we've just been launching an alpha, so we're going to get there. Apologies. Yeah, there we go. I'm going to link that in chat for everybody. You can have that. Boop, 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 boop. Thank you. Nice. All right, cool. I'm going to link it there. Oh, Metal Storm. How when can we try this? So it's in closed alpha right now. We keep giving out keys, but the problem with this is that their server capacity isn't high enough yet. They're scaling that up, and they're giving out more keys as it's scaling up. They don't want to give you a key and then have you sit in queue and, and not be able to play the game anyway. So just, you know, we're just going to hang out and talk about it while it's scaling up. And I'm just going to keep playing this. We've got a section in the Discord for it, and we'll just keep adding things for it. Only streamers can play? No, there's a number of members of the community in here. We, can, we gave it a bunch of keys today. So let's see. Selling items to players. So the third option is to sell items that are being RMT'd directly to the players. So they don't feel like they need to buy items from the other, you know, from the third party. And they're just buying it from you instead. This doesn't remove RMT, but it makes it so that you buy the items from the game developer rather than normal players or gold farmers, which remove it actually reduces account takeover, which is a very big deal with that. It actually reduced, I think it reduced our account takeover by like 80 or 90% when we did it, which was like, wow, security win. And then the players are like, why play the game anymore? <laughs> so the, the other side of that sword was very bad, right? It was not good. So with that, you know, this is true if you're you're talking about a cash shop or a more indirect subscription token system. Real money trading is still happening. The only difference is that the game developer is cut in on the action. After all, any real money is changing hands, then logically either players or the game developer have to be the ones to receive it. Notably, the strategy doesn't even eradicate player RMT, player to player RMT. It does not. It just makes it so that the seller has to sell their items for less than what it would cost to purchase them from the company, which they do. They will end up undercutting whatever the standard rate of gold is. In fact, what we saw in World of Warcraft was quite funny. Whatever the rate of gold is on the WoW auction house, the gold selling sites are actually automatically pulling that information using bots that are in game that are constantly refreshing the auction house. They pull that into their database and then they actually will automatically undercut it on the website. Automatic. It, all of it is automated. The whole thing is automated. So the prices will be automatically listed at around 5% less than whatever your region's auction house will show at all times. It's great. It's amazing. Yeah, fully automated luxury RMT is what that is. It's ridiculous, dude. You've it, the, the cat and mouse game gets really deep on this stuff. So <laughs> it really does. Yep. Oh, we got ads. We're gonna wait. We're gonna wait for the ads. One moment. He's not. It's not Joe Rogan. You goblin. I swear. <laughs> No, this is a really good write-up, though, man. Like, a really good write-up. Thank I'm you. Glad... We've thought about it a lot. It's, it's yeah. been, like, five years of working on this thing. It's crazy to see it now in front of people. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm actually really glad that you guys have such a deep understanding of this as well. Because these are concepts that I talk to the community about a lot. And, and that's over the experience that I've had in the industry for so long. So having other people talking about this is very good. Like, really, really good. Yeah. I'm surprised it got so close to what you have seen because i haven't worked at uh, a company like yeah uh, blizzard yeah no this I've is seen it firsthand, so. this is directly in line with that i mean this is my day-to-day -day stuff when i'm doing security shit because like most of what we had to do is is fight against that gold selling fight against you know the methods for doing that kind of stuff and it gets a lot darker than just real money transaction there's a whole underbelly of that that goes on in fact i'll, I'll talk about it after the ad break so that you can understand how how deep that I rabbit hole goes yeah yeah because it's, it's pretty wild. Link to the write-up. I'll put it in chat for you guys so you can read this. It's also, people think that uh, cryptocurrency is the first RMT. It's like, it's been going on for like yeah. 25 years. So I yeah. don't know what they're talking about. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of how that goes. It's always been that way. Always, always. Where do gold sellers get the fr gold from? That's what we're going to talk about after the ad break. Yep. 100%. Because there's a lot of different ways that this goes. I'm super excited. Yeah, there's RMT in Diablo 2. Yeah, dude. 
Oh. Trade offer. Oh, I got these mushrooms. I love mushrooms. <laughs> oh, I don't need those logs. Thank you, though. I do not need log. I need mushroom. Something more mushroom. All right, there we go. Okay, so I'm actually going to pause this so we don't have the uh, the ding. Uh, so with this in mind, when we're talking about RMT, RMT comes from a lot of different sources, right? You actually will have a major cartel, and that cartel is actually made up. We call them a cartel generally, but it's a massive multi-million dollar organization that sells gold across every game you've ever seen in your life. There are three major ones that I know about, and the reason that I know about them is because they fight with each other. There was an exploit a long time ago where people had gotten around a two-factor authentication. And the way that they got around this two-factor authentication is they found an exploit, and we found out about it because suddenly one person had their account taken over even though they had two-factor. Then it was five. Then it was 50. Then it was 500. And it just kept spreading. We started freaking out. We were panicking because we didn't know how this was happening. We had no idea how this was happening. And we're looking all over the forums. We're looking all over the place. And then like a week into this, my hair is on fire. We're trying, we're like all stressed out trying to find out what's going on. Someone jumped on the forums and he said, I know how this is happening. And this is how it's happening. And he gave us the method. And he said, I, I want you to fix this because the price of gold is so low now that none of us can make a living. And the other groups that are doing this are short-sighted and they're going to ruin it forever, all of us. And none of us are going to be able to feed our families. And he was right. We actually fixed the exploit. The two-factor authentication bypass was gone. The price of gold shot back up into the roof. And all the cartels got to get along again. It was it's like it's the mafia, dude. That's what it is. It is it is cartels that are in competition with each other, and they're willing to go and sell out their future to get a quick buck sometimes. And some of them go, wait a minute, no, this is a bad idea. We're actually screwing ourselves. Yep. So you, know, you have to understand. Do you know why it's feed our family? You have to understand that these cartels, these big massive groups are actually run by micro corporations along the whole way. And this is where it gets really interesting. There will be a group, a company within this, all they do is account takeover. Account takeover is them stealing your accounts, but they do it through a certain method. They'll go find passwords that have already been leaked and they try them against accounts in Final Fantasy, World of Warcraft, EVE Online, etc. And they'll take those accounts and they'll drain the currency from it and they move it off to another company. And that other company, their whole job is to take that currency and clean it in some way by transferring it through a whole bunch of different bot accounts to try and find different ways. And there'll be another company over here, and their whole thing is that they run bots that actually farm in-game stuff to try and get as much currency as possible and transfer it out. There are so many micro companies that do different activities to put this together, and every one of them gives back to the major company that then sells that, and they all get a cut of the profit. It is a collection of businesses, and they all work in concert with each other and come competitively with one another to try and keep the price of gold up or down. And these are the massive structures that I have fought against throughout most of my career, is finding these things, finding the way that they operate, and shutting them down. And it's wild, frankly, because some of the methods are as crazy as, you know, bypassing two-factor or breaking into your account. Some of them, I'll give you a good example. One of the methods that we had a long time ago was trying to do a geolocation fence around the area in which your IP address generally exists, right? Making sure that you have to be within about 100 miles of wherever your IP exits at in order to log into your account with having an extra two-factor prompt. They found out about this. They started doxing players, finding ways to dox them through other social media sites, building massive profiles, buying data about them, and then they would use a VPN to try and be within that radius so they could try to log into your account. These are incredibly sophisticated adversaries. It is not as simple as, oh no, I, my password is bad. And they, we've, you could even put a thing on this where you put a timer on it. And you're like, oh, if you get a bad password within five minutes time, they'll do four minutes and 59 seconds. They will automate around any, any wall you put up, they will automate around it. That is why it is a cat and mouse game. The whole entire thing is red versus blue. You are fighting them. They overtake you, then you overtake them, then they overtake you. It is going back and forth forever. And the, the methods get more and more extreme as it goes on, and you are not fighting one guy in his mom's basement selling gold. You are finding a massive corporation that pays people in a local area inside of some place in the world slightly above the average of normal income in that area. So that dude inside of that micro corporation is making more money than any other job in his local region, which does in fact feed his family. 
So they have a vested interest in keeping that job and making sure that machine is well-oiled because they make more money doing that than they would doing anything else at all. It is a wild, wild business, dude. So when we're talking about RMT, we're talking about not just mom and pop shops, individuals trying to sell items to each other. We're talking about organized, massive businesses. Yeah, it's, it's a crazy thing. Absolutely crazy thing. It's a wage problem? Yeah, it is, sometimes. But you're not going to outwage it. They just still pay slightly more. So yeah, I hope that opens your eyes a little bit into like how this works, because it's nuts. <laughs> is there anything you wanted to add to that? Because I heard you were talking, talking about it there. I think uh, the one thing I'd say is uh, when we had the cryptocurrency people coming in, the, the botting, um, yeah. and it wasn't even botting, really. It was just people coming in who were interested in cryptocurrency into our Discord. I took a few of them aside, like three or four, and I asked, like, why, why do you play play-to-earn games? What is the... And what I got um, universally was, uh, hey, look, here's the thing. I'm not really here for anything other than money. Uh, I need to feed my family. Like literally that exact quote that you said. Yep. I need to feed my family. And if your game isn't profitable, we're going to leave. That was the, what I heard from them over and over again. And they said, hey, we're based in, I'm based in Indonesia. This is the best money I can make. That's what I'm here for. Yeah, Sounds like exactly the same thing. Yeah, it's, it's a desperation thing. It is usually a desperation thing. It is, is, it is a, I am doing this because it's the best job. Not because I'm a bad person, not because I want to tear games apart, not because I want to do RMT. It's because it is the best job in my area. And that is why this happens. It's the same reason that anyone works for a corporation. If you're working in tech, you're going to go where you're going to get paid the most. This is not new, right? It's the exact same thing there. It's just paying. It's a better paying job. And it is a job. Nothing more. There's no emotional attachment to it. It's a job. That's it. Yeah. It's the best chance. Just like you would take the highest paying job doing the thing that you want to do, right? Easy. Yeah. So play to earn, though, is not play to earn. It's work to earn. That's yep. what it is. I agree with that 100%. And in fact, uh, just so you guys understand, let me pull this up. Um, I'm going to do from Bitcraft Online Crypto. So you guys got hit so hard by the crypto community, you put out a statement on this. And it says on their official Twitter, they say there is no crypto, no Web3, no blockchain, no NFTs, no drops, etc. in block in Bitcraft Online. Bitcraft is an upcoming open world sandbox MMORPG that we hope you and your friends will enjoy. If you showed up expecting crypto or similar, there is none. We hope you will stick around to enjoy the awesome community and our game once it is out and ready to play. So if you had any qualms about this, if you were worried it was going to be anything like that, it's not. It has nothing to do with that whatsoever. None. And if you were here because you want NFTs and crypto and everything, it's, it, none of this has, none of it, none of it. They've made a public statement on this, no. And if they went back on it, they would sell out the entire community because the community has been built up on that trust that that's not going to be a thing. So it's not in their best interest to do it. Yeah. So let's see. Pay to win. The main motivation to fight RMT in the first place is that RMT effectively enables a form of pay to win. And pay to win is unfair. So what does pay to win mean exactly? I define pay to win as a player paying real money for an advantage over another players who are trying to achieve the same goals. That is part of it. I would agree. The main driver that I have seen inside of the business is that it costs the business a shitload of money. Every time someone goes into RMT, usually, and this is the sad part, the solutions that are provided right now for RMT are provided specifically to reduce the costs of customer service for giving back accounts to people who have been uh, victims of account takeover because of RMT, which is real money transaction. So when a person goes and buys gold on the black market, there's it's like an eight to nine out of 10 of those get their accounts taken over. And it's because they'll go to some shady site. The shady site says, hey, give me access to your account to complete the process. Many of them do this. And if there's enough value on your account, they just take it. That's what they do. They'll just take your account and then it's over. And um, then you have to go through the entire support process, which means you have to contact an actual support representative. That person has to then be paid to do this. And the company has to keep that person on retainer to be able to pay them in case your ticket comes in. And it ends up being a problem, right? Just ban the buyers. A lot of the times they do get banned. They do. Yes. Usually they'll get temporary bans, things like that, because a reformed player is still valuable while a permanently banned player is gone from the ecosystem forever and you have to understand something when you're permanently banning a player and you're doing that en masse right a, an en masse banning like that you don't just ban that person you reduce the chance that all of their friends stay in the game 
And that's something that a lot of people don't understand about large scales like that. This is the main driver for those types of thoughts. It doesn't mean it's correct. It doesn't mean it's good for the game. But these are the things that people think about when they're talking about money for major games, right? When they're talking about player retention. They're like, well, let's not permanently ban everyone. Let's do it on a scaler. These ones over here are irredeemable. Let's ban them permanently. These ones down here, give them a one-day ban. That's the norm. That's the absolute norm, right? So let's see. So for example, by this definition, purchasing XP boost or subscription that allows you to collect two times experience per hour would be pay to win. I agree with that. This also means that buying things that can only be acquired by buying them is not pay to win. I agree with that. I like buying cosmetics. I think that's totally fine. So that's pay to play. For example, if a subscription allows you to join a PvP arena that is off limits to non-subscribers, that is not pay to win. Why? Because the goals don't overlap. Non-subscribers aren't even allowed to compete in the arena. You have to be very careful, though, because in this example, if the PvP allowed players to gain more XP per hour than you could otherwise, it again becomes pay to win. Yes, 100%. Because if you are giving them an advantage, even if they paid, you know, even if it's through gameplay, if they had to pay extra for that gameplay, and they now get an advantage over non-payers, it is, it is pay to win now. I agree with that. All of this is to say that RMT is clearly a form of pay to win because a player can pay money for items in a game, and if those items afford any advantage over other players over a certain goal, it's at least a little pay to win. Not all pay to win is treated equally, however, and some are more egregious than others. We typically see pay to win come in three forms. Pay the developer to win, pay other players to win, pay the developer via other players to win. I think there's, a, there's kind of another distinction that I use as well, and uh, I call it two different things. I call them the Kraken and the Siren. I'll give you a good example of this. Have you ever, have you ever played like a phone game that gives you like a, a town that you have to build and you get a shield over your town for three days? Have either of you guys oh, ever yeah, played? Yeah. No. So the, the way that these ones generally work is you get a three-day shield, like a 72-hour shield, and you have to build your town and it takes time to build the town. And then when that shield falls off, you are forced into PvP. And they'll sell you another three-day shield for like a buck ninety-nine, right? Whatever it's going to be. They'll sell you a shield. This is a Kraken. And the reason why this is a Kraken is because you are forced into a PvP scenario with other pay-to-win players unless you pay to stop them from doing that. It is a Kraken. You are forced. It grabs onto you and it forces you to engage, no matter what. There is no escape. That's the Kraken. The Siren is more like Diablo Immortal. Diablo Immortal, you don't have to engage in PvP. You don't have to engage in the leaderboards. You can just play the game. You could buy this thing. It could give you a little bit more power. You could do this. Come on. It's just one purchase. It's just $5. You could be a little bit stronger. You don't have to, but you could. That's the siren. It's trying to lead you towards the rocks kind of a thing. So that's kind of, the, there's a little bit of a difference between these two things. I think they're both bad, but I think they're a different kind of bad, if that makes sense. All right, let's go pull this back up. Number one is the most egregious form. That's pay the developer to win, yeah? Because it's akin to paying for a cheat in the game. Agree. We, we grew up on cheat codes. Now you can buy them. <laughs> cheat. Credit card is the best cheat code of all. Essentially, you give the developer money, and the developer uses god powers to give you the advantage that you want, even if it means unbalancing the economy. Typically, the more money you give the developer, the greater the advantage. Although, in practice, this advantage is usually capped or limited in some way, e.g. diminishing returns. Number two is RMT. You pay another player to give you an advantage. This is a less egregious form of fade win because it's not the same as a cheat. Unlike the developer, the player you're buying the advantage from does not have god powers and can only transfer you the advantage they already possess. Total advantage in the game is pre uh, preserved, just transferred. I agree with this. This is a really good analysis of this. You, you've written this wonderfully. Number three is one I've actually re referenced above as a subscription token. There's a very clever system whereby you pay the game developer for an item which is redeemable for a game subscription or other cash shop goods sold by the developer. In this system, the developer gets the money, the pay-to-win player gets the advantage they want, and the selling player gets what they want from the developer, either subscription or cash shop goods. Note that number three is actually just an indirect combination of one and two in the case that the token is eventually redeemed for cash shop goods. It's effectively equivalent to one, just indirectly through, the, through another player. In the case that the token is eventually redeemed for a subscription, it's essentially just number two since one player is paying for the subscription of another player. There's an extra to that. Anytime you have this, let's say that the subscription is $10, the token is not $10. The token will be 15 The developer gets an extra cut on top of this every time. I have never seen a system where it gives you the token 
for the actual cost of the subscription. There is always a premium on top of it. So there's an extra. There's always an extra cut. Every time. Yeah, it's well, the cartel cool. always sells their services, so it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Hey, sorry, I just wanted to chime in. I, I've got to jump off for okay. a, a little bit, but I'll uh, I'll see where you guys are at when I get back. Yeah. And uh, but yeah, enjoy the conversation, Thor, and uh, happy that you're enjoying Bitcraft. No, I'm actually really loving it. And I, I love this talk too. You guys have this. I, I think the thing that's got me the most about this man is not only the game is super compelling. You have a complete understanding of player behavior inside of this environment, which is very rare. And that's going to lead you in very good directions for the design of the game. So you're kicking ass. Yeah. Awesome. Cheers. Do our best. Yeah. Thanks. See you, dude. So game developers have almost universally adopted number three. As with number one, all the revenue goes to the developer while still allowing the players to benefit from the exchange as in two. Developers are highly incentivized to have this system because it generates significant revenue while reducing the ability of gold farmers to operate. That's correct. It is, it is the best solution that I have seen currently. Might as well have to have it go to the developer rather than funding gold farmers. Bingo. It also reduces the cost of uh, customer service. It reduces the cost of account takeover reversal and uh, item theft reversal as well, which is a, a massive, massive reduction in cost. The important point is that all these three systems are pay to win. Free trade, no matter how you slice it, will end up creating an element of pay to win in your game. It, it's funny, on our Minecraft server, we had the same thing. We actually have uh, in-game coin that can be a physical item. And when you die, you actually lose it if it's in your account. But if it's in your inventory, you don't lose it. So what ended up happening was people were creating, they were buying Minecraft accounts and then putting all of their items on a mule, a secondary Minecraft character, and then trading it back to their main character <laughs> so that they wouldn't lose it when they died, which is effectively just, you know, paying money to get an advantage <laughs> in a Minecraft server. It was great. Yeah. So it, it will always exist, no matter how small the server is. That's how that goes. As a developer, the worst case scenario is when you restrict trade and have the above system, so you end up in an unhappy medium where you have pay to win, but you also don't have free trade. So Bitcraft, free trade and Bitcraft. So what does this all mean for Bitcraft? Let's review the vision of the game we're trying to make. In nearly all existing MMORPGs, the main way that a player progresses through the game is having their character fight and gain combat power. Essentially, you play through the main content of the game by fighting monsters. Once you reach max level, you either fight more monsters in raids or fight other players, often max level, is not the end of your progression because you continue to increase your power of your character through often untradeable gear upgrades, yeah, through dungeons and raids. These games are great for what they are, but our vision for Bitcraft is fundamentally different. Our dream is to make a game in which the progression is instead centered around rebuilding civilization from scratch. Players progress in Bitcraft by building and creating things in world, by improving the character's ability to build and create. It is a game that focuses on the aspects of MMORPGs that are often left in the periphery. Trade, craft, and building towns that actually have a cost to them so you have to keep them maintained. But the huge number of players love things like fishing, farming, crafting, socializing, trading, building, creating. Combat can be a part of Bitcraft without being a central part of the progression. The key part of the civilization, a civilization is not a collection of buildings, it is a collection of people working, competing, and collaborating together. Our job as game designers, therefore, is to make the players feel like they are building a real civilization, as real as any exists in IRL. As a good example of this, what am I doing in game? I've set up a trade stall, and I've been trading materials back and forth with these players over and over again. They're trading me back materials that I need to craft these goods, and I'm trading them the crafted goods, which are foods, and over time, I'm actually skimming a little bit more off the top so I can make more of them than it costs me to, you know, sell to them. Just by about 20% on each one of these, which is quite funny. See, I'm getting a little bit of extra. We've already started doing this in-game. I'm running my little trade stall right here, where I've got my little encampment in the middle of our town. And I'm they can go up and just buy stuff from my vendor, and I can cook it right here, and they can see it. And, then, you know, everything's going on, and it's good. And if we go and look at this, this is actually what I'm crafting right now, is this, this plain mushroom skewer. So we've already got this system running. It already works, right? Yeah, I think that's actually quite cool. What'd you say? It's amazing to see. Yeah, no, I love it. I actually think it's really awesome. You guys, your systems in place are quite cool. Really, really cool, actually. All right, let's pull this back up. Why is free trade important? In my view, it is absolutely central to what makes an MMORPG feel like an MMORPG. And I would be even argue it is perhaps the primary defining characteristic of MMOs. Why is this a defining characteristic of MMOs? Because free trade is the reason that you even care that there are hundreds of thousands or even millions of players in a single world. 
A dedicated player can only interact with a few dozen people every day, but trade connects you to everyone. It allows you to interact with the huge numbers of people indirectly through the markets that they create without having to meet or speak to any of them. Correct. I could walk away from my trade stall and people can keep trading with it. Trade, particularly localized trade, can be one of the main reasons in an MRBG to meet and interact with new people. Centralized auction houses may be convenient, but they fundamentally destroy the part of the game that forces you to explore, travel, and meet new people through trade. Bingo. I can set up anything that I want through this and set someone else. Effectively, I've become a quest giver. I go, you know what? You want this food? Go get me a bunch of mushrooms. You can't cook those mushrooms, or you can't cook them as fast as I can. So why don't you just go bring me those mushrooms? You have a quest now. Bring me the mushrooms, and you can have the cooked mushrooms, right? I've set up a quest system, effectively. Social sandbox MMOs are largely created based on players giving quests to other players. You are generating the content for others. The game itself is just a sandbox for that generation. This is what we're doing right now. It's already happening. Even at this early stage of this game, this is intact and is is exactly what it should be and compelling, right? Let's go pull this back up. Simply put, free trade is a central part of the vision of Bitcraft, and therefore a non-negotiable pillar of our game. In my opinion, it is manifestly obvious that all items and resources in Bitcraft must be tradable. Love that. Love the hell out of that, frankly. If you approach free trade from the mindset that this is only a small feature in a larger game, then you've set yourself up to begin restricting trade when issues do arise. And, there, and before you know it, you've got a single-player game with other players in the background, rather than a true civilization with a thriving economy. This might not be a bad outcome if you set out to make a combat-focused multiplayer game, but if you want to create a social MMORPG like Bitcraft, I think it's an awful outcome. Rather than approach trade in Bitcraft from a restrictive mindset, I would like to approach trade with an open mind to these kinds of things that players will create in their own civilization. If eliminating real money trading required restricting trade completely or relegating it to meaningless corner of the game, then I would sooner wholly accept real money trading than remove free trade. I believe our mantra should be, let the people trade. Do you want to talk about that? I think that's a really good take, frankly. I really do. So what led you to that, I think is the big thing. I think... Well, I suppose I don't know that I could have put it better than I did in the actual document, which is that I, I, I was there when RuneScape 2. What, what I, here's what I did in, in RuneScape 2. I stood by the bank in Barak, and I did arbitrage. And that was my fun game. And I remember very explicitly when they disallowed trade, I was like, okay, well, I guess my game is over. That was, that was the game that I like to do, and now it, it, is, it has ended. Uh, and I was actually super low level because what what I found interesting in that game was not the leveling. I think it was level 37 mm -hmm. for combat, but more so the fact that it was real in some way, in a very uh, intangible way that was hard to express. And I think it was because more than in any other game I had played, and I had played WoW, the other people being in the game mattered. And so I knew when we wanted to create this game, a lot of people talk about what's been lost in, in MMOs over time. And I think the community aspect has been lost. Mm -hmm. And I suppose it's at the altar of fixing perceived problems. And so I think if you don't set out to say, look, we acknowledge that these problems will exist and they will happen, and we're going to proceed nevertheless, you're going to be in a mindset of somebody who will essentially make a Faustian deal and sell your soul, the soul of the game and not even really realize it. So that's yeah. kind of where, where we ended up there. Yeah, no, I think that makes absolute sense, to be honest with you. I think it's a, it is always an issue of this is expensive, this is costly, we need to reduce costs because we need to reduce costs because we're a business. Let's do this. This makes sense to reduce costs. Well, what about the players? And then they don't do right. an analysis on that. And it, it ends up hurting the game. I agree. Super agree with that. Yeah, I mean, you can't also be um, sort of uh, in denial about the costs or, or say, or, or sort of imagine that you're going to operate in this magical world where you don't have to make money. You absolutely do. And so you yep. need to definitely think very, very deeply about the problem. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I super agree. So let's go pull this up. Good takes on this. So another way forward. If a free trade is an inherent part of Bitcraft and free trade always leads to real money trading, despite the best efforts of the developers who try to prevent it, uh, it follows that real money trading is going to occur in Bitcraft. We should be clear-eyed about this reality so that we can design and balance Bitcraft to match the reality instead of burying our heads in the sand and pretending that this won't happen. 
or that we'll be able to prevent it from happening like so many developers before us. So how do we address the issues created by real money trading? Scams and fraud are always a part of a system when players have an incentive to cheat or steal. Yeah, it's a core thing in EVE Online, actually, is um, you're allowed to scam in that game. You're allowed to cheat each other out of stuff. If you don't read the contract, you don't read the contract. That's your bad, not the developers. So they've they've offset that one from themselves. And to be real with you, I kind of enjoyed that. <laughs> to be honest, it added a new interesting gameplay layer where it's like you need to actually pay attention to what you're dealing with. Because if another player scams you using in-game mechanics, that's on you, bud. And like that was that was an interesting take on that. And I, I always found that to be compelling for me, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's 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 a scary it's a scary thing you got to read, right? When real money is involved, those incentives become much more serious. They do. So when it's a real money problem, then it's a real money problem that ends up being much worse. MMORPGs have been dealing with scams since they first uh the very first games of this type because of the potential for RMT in those games. With this in mind, we have designed the back-end game engine on which Bitcraft is built with a full auditing capabilities and extremely powerful analytics so that we can record and track every single transaction that happens in the game. Bingo. Good. That is exactly the same thing that we did in WoW. All of the transactions are logged, everything that has ever moved. There were massive bot networks that basically you would, if you would get like, someone would buy like 100,000 gold or something, right? And then they would take this and they'd split it up into packs of between 500 to 1,000 gold. And they'd trade this like 10,000 times through this massive bot network and then trade it out to a player piecemeal in different ways. Uh, they even tried doing things like buying, like the player would have to put up an, a number of auctions at a certain rate and all these different bots would then go and do this, right? Did I work on, well, I worked at Blizzard for seven years. Yeah, I worked on everything from World of Warcraft vanilla all the way to Overwatch minus Burning Crusade. I was uh, offensive security when I was at Blizzard. I was lead of application security when I was there as well. I built that team. Yeah, it was all of Blizzard's websites globally. And then I, I worked on the red team where we actually went and, you know, banned people for doing bad stuff in the game. So like with this in mind, they'd go and trade all of his money in small amounts across thousands and thousands of accounts and then they would buy people's auction house auctions specifically because that person had bought gold and it would always add up to roughly the amount that they paid real money for we were able to track this and ban all those things and ban the entire networks for this because everything was actually tracked so we knew when the hundred thousand left that one account we knew when every single one of those bot accounts was doing this because everything was tracked and you could just do a search and be like oh it all came from there <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. So having a strong analytics base on this is going to help them immensely in this regard. So we'll be able to uh, replay in-game events and track the movement of items and goods throughout the game world. You've, you've redeveloped the exact same system that we used, man. That's great. We'll also be able also, to... Oh, what's up? Uh, Go for it. One other thing we can do is actually... So we store everything in the database. So yeah. it's super easy for us to do this. We can actually... Um, when I made a demo of this a long time ago, but we can actually replay the game, including all the player movement. So you can see them walking around the world as that happened back in the time. And you can actually jump into the world and like fly around and see that happening, which is pretty cool. That's insane, actually. Dude, what? Yep. Fully like That's why it's called space time DB. That's where the time component comes in. Cause it's at the space and time that it was oh my god, dude, that's nuts. That so, is um the game that you're playing right now, we're actually recording every single thing that uh, happened. The first thing that people say to me when I tell them that is, uh, okay, well, isn't that a lot of data? Well, yeah. uh, in my previous company, I was in data science, and they used to snapshot the tables uh, every 12 hours. But you're actually copying a whole bunch of data that didn't change, and it ends up being more data anyway. So it's just better to just store the whole uh, history of data. Yeah. Less data. That makes sense. That makes complete sense. That's wild, actually. You guys are going a completely different direction. This is what I was talking about before, is you need to understand what the rules are. And then in order to fix any of this stuff, in order to kind of move forward and try something, you need to know why the rules exist and then when you can break them. Yeah, no, I'm actually yeah. really impressed. I'm really impressed. Yeah. Thank you. That's We're not doing easy. our best. <laughs> That's, it's not normal. You're doing it. This is, this is cool as shit, man. So instead of wasting our time and, and resources trying to police all RMT, we will provide safe and well-designed UI and mechanisms to reduce scams and fraud while limiting our a policy, limiting our policy to the fraud and scams that deliberately harm our players. So your your stance on this, if I scammed another player, that would be against the rules in game, correct? Uh, that is 
Correct. I think it depends on the, the type of scam, right? So, so for example, go ahead. If I put up, let's say that I have two listings, right? I'll give you an example. Right. And um, the players only see the listings that are active. Is that correct? Yes. So I put up a listing here that is one skewer for, you know, 10 mushrooms, right? Which is a good rate. And the next one is one skewer for 50 hex coins. And right. they see, they come up and they see the stock set to 50. And as I see them coming up, right, as they get up to it and they're, they're spam clicking, I change it to stock of one. So they are spam right. clicking this to try and buy it. And they, they buy the next one and they lose all their hex coins. Am I bad for that? Yeah, is that is, is that over the line? Yeah, I, I, that's a. I think this happened to be in RuneScape. So there mm -hmm. was a there's a, a scam where um, they would put up like let's say you're buying a rune plate body for fifty five thousand. They'd have like five 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 five, and then just as you clicked accept, they'd switch it to five 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 five, which is like one less five, and then you hit accept again, and they would take your stuff. Yep. Uh, so, so that one's not yeah. okay, right? Anyway, go. That go, one, keep going. It's a it's a similar thing to what you're saying, right? You're yeah. you're changing the deal right at the last moment to try to scam someone. Yes. Um, I think we'll have to think about that. I, I think one thing I suppose I would put under the the scams and fraud category is obviously account stealing. Like we want to really really avoid that. So I would say that's a pretty clear cut one. That is. I think we'd have to. So one thing we can do, of course, is make the UI better and better to make it less likely that these problems will occur. And I think that's the step one. And then step two is make it very clear that this can happen to players in games, so you should be careful about it. And then obviously step three would be to take action based on that. It's very hard. I mean, we could replay it, replay and see exactly what happened. But it's manual process uh, but now. It's very hard to know. Yeah, that ends up being manual process. And that manual right. process review scales badly because the larger right. your player base gets, the more costly that becomes on your developers because you're going to have a whole team for risk and fraud, right? That's, that's how that ends up going. So I could see that. I could see that. That's why I asked about that one specifically because that's a hard one to detect without manual review. That is it a is. difficult one and it is possible under the current system. So now let's do another one. Let's say that there's not my interaction. I just put up a really shitty deal. I make this right. 100 hex coins for one skewer and a player clicks it. I've technically ripped them off but is that counted as a scam under your, your guidelines? No, that would be, you know, caveat emptor, buyer yep. beware. Okay, good, good. And the reason why there's a difference between those two things is one of them I used game mechanics to trick the player when they saw the, the understanding, they saw it. I used that in a way that was basically not okay. It was, it was an extra thing on top of it to try to use the UI against the player, effectively turning what would be a bad deal into an exploitive behavior that tricked them into doing it in a way that they didn't want to do it. The idea is in EVE Online, if you're going to scam a player, you tell them the whole thing. You tell them the deal. They just weren't paying attention. That's fine. If somebody gets scammed out of a deal because they weren't paying attention, cool. If you're using clever use of game mechanics to exploit them into accepting that deal, then there's a problem. You end up having an issue there. And I have scammed players in EVE Online. <laughs> I, was, I was a villain in that game, so... Kind of came with the territory. Let's see this. Let's go to the next piece of this. Oh, of course I did. Yeah, absolutely. No, it wasn't doubling ISK. No, I was a I was a Triglavian. So we would take over whole systems. And uh, one of the times I went into those systems, there was a guy there and he was like, I can't leave because I'm I, the Triglavians have moved in. I was like, oh, I'm a Triglavian. I can help you move your stuff. And uh, for the next hour, he handed me all of his ships and I flew them away. <laughs> and then he asked for them back and I went, what ships? It's not a not a good deal for him. Yeah. <laughs> so let's see. Do you, you want to know why I ended up taking him, by the way? I was actually going to give him back. He just shit-talked the Triglavians the entire time. That was at my fault. You're giving it to the, the leader of the enemy faction while shit-talking his faction. What do you think he's going to do, man? Ridiculous. So issue number two, pay to win. As we've seen, free trade leads to RMT, and RMT introduces pay to win in the in in gameplay. <coughs> Bleh. Even if the other players are receiving real money rather than developer. It's clear that while important parts of the gameplay should be transferable between players, they should also be important parts of the gameplay which are not transferable, and thereby not subject to RMT. By clearly delineating which aspects of gameplay will not involve free trade, we can be sure to avo avoid having free trade, RMT, or pay-to-win accidentally leak into those aspects. good example of this is actually the cooking gear that I'm wearing. So I'm actually wearing a, a set of, of cosmetic gear right now, 
And I got that specifically because I reached a certain prof profession level in cooking. So when I got to level 20 in cooking, I got all of this gear that is not tradable, that is my badge of honor for being a chef, right? And I think that's a cool thing. This is clearly defined as not being tradable. It is a badge of honor item. It cannot be subject to RMT. However, there is always going to be a market for this. And the way that it can have a market for it is by selling the items that are required in kits to craft that to be able to get to that level, which will happen. <laughs> and most notable, RMT all these, is, huh? uh, I'm sorry. Uh, people are asking what RMT is. RMT is real money trading. Yeah, real money transaction, real money trading. Yeah, so people spending real money to get in-game advantage against the will of the developers. Pretty normal stuff. Selling accounts. Yeah, account selling will be a thing too. That is part of that as well. Yep. Selling one to 300 engineering kits for $15. Yeah, exactly the thing. Most notable of these skills and experience system, unlike buying items in game, gaining experience will always and everywhere require putting in time and effort into the game. There will be no way to directly buy skill experience either from us or from any other player. No skill scrolls, no passive conversion of items into experience. This will require the players to actually play the game in order to be able to do high-level activities. Just as in the real world, skills in Bitcraft are non-transferable. They are inherent to your character and what you've spent your time doing. Characters in Bitcraft are non-transferable. Similar to scams, instead of trying to police all RMT, we will aggressively police players attempting to share accounts, which is generally a more manageable task. That's true. That's much easier to track down. Hopefully, we will be able to become create stronger defensive lines around this smaller set of things. So number three, fun becomes work. Personally, the biggest issue that I have with RMT is if we were able to sell my items, is that I would always feel like I would constantly need to decide if I wanted my items or the real money I could get by selling them. This happened in Diablo 3 with the auction house. This is awful for the game experience. Nobody wants to be thinking about money constantly while playing a game. We never want a casual player of the game to feel like they have to make this decision. Good. Good take on this. The best way to avoid this predicament is for the game to be balanced appropriately so that prices of the items that players need in the course of the game are sufficiently low that it will always make more sense to just use the item in game or that the player would clearly rather have the item in the game than the money then try to sell it to another player. I also think that subjectively, making it more difficult to sell your items or putting many layers of in interdiction or indirection between you and the real money helps distance the items from real money for all but the most dedicated RM tiers. Achieving this is a question of an MMORPG economy, design and supply and demand. That's a topic that's too long for this post. One we'll have to explore in the future. And we've got ads in a moment, so I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. But so far, dude, this is a brilliant write-up. You have a deep understanding of this issue, and um, it's something that I, I see very rarely in the industry. So, you know, props to you. This is great. Thanks. I think the thing is, we don't have a solution. We just have an analysis. Yep. <laughs> totally understood. One. And I, I totally understand that. But your your understanding of this is a, is better than not than having a solution, frankly. And the Definitely. reason why is this is likely an unsolvable problem. However... By having a full understanding of the issue, you won't fall into the pitfalls of those that came before you because you know where those lead. You already know those roads. You've seen them. You've seen other people take them. So, Yeah, we have the benefit, I suppose, of hindsight there where a lot of people yep. don't. Yep, I agree. Oh, now Bezos is here. Hello, ads, man. <laughs> <laughs> I do this actually because uh, the ads are very, very good for the channel monetarily, and it's very good for the community because we don't get pre-roll ads, so new new viewers don't mm -hmm. get a wall of ads when they first show up. And um, I wait for the community so that people who are not monetized don't get left behind, because that's not fair to them. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I think that's that's super cool. It's also fun to see Jeff Bezos show up. It's just slowly sliding on screen, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's Jeff Bezos, the old god of money. There he is. Yeah. I have to say your community is amazing. They're um, pretty rad. Yeah. <laughs> we uh we don't deserve the the goblins. They're they're fantastic to be honest with you. They're fantastic. But if you tell them that their heads will explode, which they are now. Look at them. Look at their heads exploding. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I'm I'm actually really excited to get into this game with the community, man. Like it's uh this is great. I think you guys have a very good outlook on this, legitimately. 
and I'm, I'm uh, like, excited for it. So I hope so. I mean, we're gonna do the best we can. We definitely chose a game type which is difficult, very hard. It's yeah. just very hard. It's it's we started with maximum difficulty. Um, so we'll see. It, it's because there's so many aspects uh, which are are difficult, like the shared world, the single world, from a technical aspect, from a game balance aspect, from an RMT aspect. So we will see. We're going to give it the college try. See what happens. Yeah, I think that's that's one of the most difficult things, though, is you've you've chosen the most difficult path, but you have a full understanding of all the things that would make that path even more difficult. So you've done it. That's that's all you can ask for at that point, right? All right, ads yeah, are over. You. We're back from the ads now. But yeah, yeah. So like to be real with you, um, you guys have the most deep understanding that I've seen of this so far. There are many studios that don't understand these things and will largely lead themselves into these three failure points. Even if you don't have a solution for this, you do have an understanding of the pitfalls that came before you. You have an understanding where these loads, like these roads lead. And because of that, you, d you won't make the same mistakes. You'll make new mistakes that no one's ever seen before. And you'll learn from those. This is a brilliant position to be in. This is exactly where you want to be. Because you can avoid the, the mistakes that every other company has ever made with this. And that's, uh, that's good. That's really good. That's a good thing to be, you know. Yeah, we will hopefully make it through. But there's no, there's no guarantee that we will be able to do it. But at least, I suppose, we're in a good position to try. Yeah, and I, I think that's, that's the best thing you can ask for at that point, right? Is like, it, it's one of the things that I always, I, I, I learned very heavily when I was at Blizzard, right? Is I, I sat around and I, I watched everything that they did. I watched everything that every employee did. I watched all the all the things that went right, all the things that went wrong. And I went, when I run a studio, we're not doing that. Whatever it was. When I run a studio, we're not doing that thing, right? And I, I found that to be very fun for me, is to learn all that kind of stuff and have all this. And this is the first time I've seen a write-up that understands this entire world to the same degree that we understood it on risk and offensive security. This is the general understanding of the risk team, and it is always at odds with marketing and monetization. Marketing and monetization is like, hey, we should put this out. We want this to be a thing. And security is like, hey, this is this is going to, you know, we can save the company some money in this area. Marketing says we can save some mon company, mon money in the company in this area. And then you've got the development side that goes, we're going to lose players because you guys are implementing these things. There's, there's always like these teams fighting against each other with this. They're always at odds with each other for this. But you have a full understanding of the issue on all sides, which is good. It's really good. It's nice to see. So hell yeah, I'm going to link this out to chat. So you've got the, you. the last piece on this is the mission. We believe that we are resolute in our dedication to free trade and equal, equally resolute in our defense of those aspects of the game that we should not be related to, uh, which should not be related to trade. We can create an ecosystem that mirrors much of the complexity of real world economies and is just as fun and interesting. I agree. I really agree. And it's it's fine to not have a solution. It is fine to not have a solution to an unsolvable problem right now. There is nothing wrong with that. No other company has solved it. There is no silver bullet here. If there was, we'd all be doing it. And we haven't over decades of trying. We've just found a lot of ways to fail. <laughs> I think the one thing we definitely are not going to do is say, oh, we're not going to have free trade. Like that, the whole point of this game is that we're going to have free trade. Yeah. Uh, and thus, we are going to have real money trading. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, real money trade is going to happen, whether you want it to or not. So having a full understanding that that is the case is in a better position than trying to act like it never will. It's part of the reason we've we've tried strategies like, for example, you cannot come into our game. Let's assume you can buy items, right? Yeah. You have to start with that assumption because that's what RMT essentially implies because they're tradable. So let's say you can buy them. Well, how could you convert items into experience? One way is you could build a bunch of buildings, right, which all take items and you can do them all in parallel and just get a crap ton of experience that way by uh, pumping all your items through those buildings passively over time. Yep. So for that reason, we made sure that Passive actions, that is to say, actions that don't require input from your player character. Passive actions never give experience. They can't. Because if they did, you can essentially just convert passively items to experience. Yep. And thus, dollars to experience. Um, whereas, at least in, in this particular instance, even if there is real money trading and people can trade items, you can't convert those items into experience without standing there with your character and actually doing it. Now, that doesn't obviously preclude bots from going to town, uh, but at least it's a start. And then we can look at to 
how can we detect bots? And that's an arms race in and of itself. Yeah. Yeah. Detecting bots is the hard part too, because yeah. right now what a lot of companies are doing is they're going down the route of kernel level anti-cheat to try and detect those bots. And if you guys don't know the difference between these, uh, any program that's on your computer, any one of them, if I go and reopen this, any program on your computer, uh, think of your computer as a big box, right? The program you're running is a piece of that box. Now, legally, the developer of that program is only allowed to read the memory of that program. That's what they're allowed to do. Or anything that Windows or the operating system is sending into that program. You can only see what's inside this program. Now, in the case of kernel-level anti-cheat, they install another thing at the kernel level. That kernel level gets full access to everything on the machine. You are allowing them to do this. Now, here's the funny part. This program can already do that. They're just not allowed to. This program, you've said yes. That's the only difference. They could always do this. They just couldn't legally do it. And when you say kernel level any cheat, you're saying, yes, legally, you're now allowed to. I don't like that level of access. That level of access is weird. So I end up running those types of games on a secondary computer and piping that video over to my main machine. I'm also a hacker of 20 years and deeply paranoid. So, you know, that's me. It's not the same for everybody. <laughs> So when you're doing that, think, yeah. what's up? I, I would do the same. So yeah. uh, there's no planned kernel-level anti-cheat for us at all. Nice. That's awesome. So at that point, you've got heuristics to detect people. You've got different ways of catching people for that kind of stuff. And it, it will lead to things like manual process. However, there are two different ways of kind of hacking games like this, right? You'll have two different ways of doing this. The first one is what we're going to call in-process. If your computer is a box we'll say this amount of memory is being used. Let's say this part of the memory right here is actually a program like Bitcraft, right? And you're trying to hack Bitcraft. You're trying to do something with that. Let's say that this amount of memory is being used by Bitcraft and all of this is things like textures and audio and whatever's being in there. Let's say I load another texture to memory. It looks like this. Load another texture to memory. Cool. I leave the environment so it unloads from memory. It unloads from memory. Now let's say that it loads to memory. It's the same asset and then it loads to memory again because it lost it and it loaded to memory again. This is a memory leak. This is what we mean by memory leak. It just keeps piling on stuff into the memory, even though it's never reveal, like re reducing that. It just keeps loading the same asset over and over again, or it loads them into memory and it never stops. Memory allocation issues. There's all kinds of stuff with that. Now, in process means I develop another program as the hacker, and I distribute this to people. Say it's a bot, anything like that, and I inject it into the game. It becomes what is called a code cave in an area of memory that the game largely won't overwrite very rare or it never touches that portion of memory right at the bottom of any game's memory at the very bottom of this stack right there will always be an empty space in the assembly and we inject into that location the code cave is then protected because it won't be overwritten because the game program doesn't know it's there doesn't realize it and now this can tell the game program to do stuff because it knows all the function it knows everything that's in there this is called injected now here's the problem when you inject into a client, their risk team now sees you naked standing in their living room. That's how that goes. You're, you're standing right in the... Because they're allowed to see everything inside of the memory space of their program. You're standing right there in front of everyone like, Hey, how's, how's it going? And they're like, why are, you, why are you naked in my living room? Like, why are you here? I see you. Why are you doing that? Right? So, attackers have tried to find a better way to do this. They largely will try to not inject. Now, here's the big thing. Many bot creators online will say, oh, we never inject. So working on World of Warcraft, I have to tell you this right now, out of the dozens of bots that we went after, every one of them injected. All of them lied to you. Every single one of them made up false claims to try and get you to buy the bots. And we banned millions of players as a result of this. It was ridiculous. In my time, I banned over 2 million accounts myself. Hey, feels good, man. So yeah. And I would go on own core forums and watch people cry about it and laugh at them the next day. It was very good. It was a good time. Yeah, we usually had pizza parties for it and laughed at them together. It was awesome, actually. Yeah, 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 lying on the internet's illegal, though. Yeah, I know. But so with this, they tried to do what's called out of process. Now, out of process is you've got your game client like this. And what it does is instead, this other program is here and it is reading the memory from that. Now, remember, you don't need kernel level access to read all the memory of the computer. You just need that program to be on the computer. Otherwise, you'd need kernel-level access for every virus that ever existed, which you don't, so it doesn't make any sense. So with this, this program can read the memory of the main program, the game, and it can go, hey, I can show you something here. Now, this gives them a couple of advantages in some ways where you can't see them doing this. But 
it also reduces a couple of advantages where they can't directly tell the game to do something as the game because it's not part of the game client. So these are largely used for things like map hacks. The reason why we use them as map hacks is because things like StarCraft II, all of the units in the game are actually in memory. We know where all those locations are, even though Fog of War is there. And then this game will create an overlay over the top of it and display where all those units are in real time to the person who is cheating. The only way that you can actually catch this is somebody has to go back and watch Fog of War. Now you need a physical person to manually watch to see if that person is cheating by watching their game over. That's rough. So that ends up being, it ends up being difficult. That being said, I don't really see any advantage for somebody using an out-of-process hack in Bitcraft other than for botting activities, which you can catch through heuristics automatically in many, many different ways. So their job is a lot easier here. We don't have fog of war. We don't have a competitive advantage in that way. Botting is really the only path forward for the attacker and is largely easy to catch through all the current methods anyway. And you won't need Colonel Love and Annie Cheat to do that. So you guys are in a uniquely good position to fight this, frankly. How, so how much um, was bot detection uh, done by analysis of server actions? Or was it almost exclusively client-based? A lot of it was analysis of client-based actions. The server is, is usually the decider on everything. The client is just the dummy. And you can analyze the interactions going through the client to the server in that, in that way. Um, yeah, even building up clarify. profiles. What's up? Uh, what I mean is... Um, Based on what the client is, how much is looking at what the client is trying to do on the server versus looking at the clients, for example, for injected code? Does that oh. make sense? Oh, both. Both equally, to be honest. With both you. equally. Yeah. So like trying to look for injected code, that was a whole one side of it, right? Because that's looking for the injected process stuff. Um, trying to look to see if it's doing things like uh, interacting with the game in a very weird way or interacting with the server in a weird way that it shouldn't be doing. That's one. Or just trying to look at the behavior of the client to see like, hey, wh what are you doing there? Why do you click this button every 4.5.0000 seconds exactly on the dot, right? Or, or even within a range, right? So like, let's say that you're doing like a headshot bot. And it's, it's completely out of process, and it's, it's trying to get headshots. And uh, if you pull enough data for that player, even though they get a headshot and the head is maybe shaped like, like kind of like this, and the bot actually misses sometimes, if you pull enough data, eventually it might almost look like a perfect circle because random is not random, right? And then you're like, oh, that's not a person because now I have enough data to show that it's, it's mathematically impossible that's a per person because it's a perfect circle with enough data, right? right? Yeah. But all of those have to be done without manual intervention because otherwise it's just completely intractable, right? Yes. So you have to really take a data science approach to this. Yep, data science, 100%. Yep. Yeah. Makes sense. Cool. Is that the direction that you guys are going with this? Because it seems like it is. It is. That was the idea yeah. behind uh, Space Time to be really from the beginning is to be able to get not only the state of the game as it is now, but the full history of it, including all of the player positions. So if a player walks from A to B to A to B to A to B to A to B back and forth with no deviation... Um, probably uh, they're a bot. Now, you have to get much more sophisticated with that because, of course, you can just throw randomness in it, like you said, but uh, it's definitely part of something we've been building in from the beginning. One of the most difficult things that I have ever found in this industry is the behavior of a very efficient and very trained player is indiscernible from a bot yeah. many, of, many times. A good example of this is uh, high-level players, pro players in video games. Uh, Shroud looks like a bot. Shroud is wicked good at FPS games. He moves like a robot. Dude's a mutant, right? So with that in mind, largely could get banned in, in many FPS games because of the way that he moves. And it's very, very clear that it's like that. Yeah, he's, it's, it's a really, really normal thing. Um, the same thing could be said of people that are very good at running. Like, uh, I'll give you an example. There was a dude when Diablo 3 launched that we banned right in the beginning because we thought, he was, we thought he was botting. He actually just played the game for 72 hours straight out of a cafe bang in South Korea. That was it. Dude Dude just played 72 hours straight with no breaks. I, his bladder must have exploded, right? But like that was, he was a real person and he was like, no, I'm playing out of a cafe bang. You can check all the connection history. And, and sure enough, dude was not botting. Dude was just like a mutant, right? And like that's, you, you will yeah. get these kind of behaviors. So you have to largely ban people on things that are impossible, not things that are improbable. And finding the way to thread that needle is a difficult task. Otherwise, you you lose player trust. Um, it looks bad. It ends up being a black eye. It ends up, it's a difficult thing to do. It is really difficult to do. So we'd have to 
Uh, that's why we did the checking for injected stuff into the client, because that's something a player can't do unless they're cheating. Right. You know, that is a that is an impossibility, not an improbability. And so that was always a smoking gun one. But there were other ways to do it, too. We could find other ways to catch people where they were doing things like clicking buttons that weren't on screen yet or interacting in ways that are impossible with a client or using locale codes that don't exist. There's so many different ways that we caught people doing that kind of stuff. And it was just based on is it impossible, you know? You guys buying yeah. all of these now? Jesus. I'm so rich in mushrooms. It's going to get a lot harder because there's starting to be um, AI that can look at the pixels on your screen and then reason about it and click. They're not, the latencies are too high right now. Yep. Uh, but it's getting to that point. Yeah. So it'll be really hard to discern that. We've actually seen that as well. Um, there was one that was like that for Diablo 3 that was running riffs for people. And um, the way that it was running riffs is it was completely out of process. And it was basically using screen data capture to try and run the rifts. And it was running with a certain number of certain types of characters could do this, but not all characters. They were doing it with a lot with monks because monks were quite easy to survive on this. And um, it would just see an enemy, it would click an enemy, see an enemy, click an enemy, and it would pull the data from the game to re render the actual map from the assembly in the game client because it could read, but it couldn't write, right? So. It was actually re-rendering the entire map. It was re-rendering the actual screen, and then it was doing analysis on that to find out where the character should go, which is not even using screen pixels, but fully re-rendering the game to understand where it was going, which is just bonkers, right? Completely bonkers shit. The way that we caught this one was stupid, is when it went back to town, it would delete all the items in the person's inventory, and we'd click a button in town to do that. Well, it would do this through a Windows click interaction when it was doing this, just like a normal person would. And the way that this would happen is it would just send the input click the moment that it interacted with the NPC. Problem was, is that menu was actually off screen at the time and it would jump on screen so that it was pre-cached. They were clicking the button before it existed on screen. 64,000 players got banned for that. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Super dumb. It's very funny stuff. Yeah. You'd, you'd be amazed. You have to get them on something that's not possible. You have to get them on something that is impossible for the average player. So you guys have a... That's a tough task. But I think with this, since you have so much tooling for analytics, you are in a uniquely positive, like, powerful position here, frankly. Uniquely powerful position. Yeah, I think you've, you've got to be. I mean, because it's not, it's not, as you mentioned, a silver bullet. It's a forever game that you're yeah. playing against people. So, Yeah, you not only have to do it now, but you also have to do it with, I'll give you a good example of this. You have to do it in the most clever and stupid way possible every time. You can't hit them on something that is obvious. We had one a while back, which was a botting network that was logging in to try and brute force people's accounts. Now, Blizzard's accounts, or Blizzard's clients, connect with a uh, language and, and uh, country code like this. Lowercase en, uppercase us, right? The bots were connecting with this. I banned them all based on that. It took them six months to adapt. It took them six months to find out that I caught them just because they capitalized English. Mm. That was it. So you have to find a clever way to catch them that's easy for you and hard for them to figure out every time. And it's that's why it's cat and mouse. And eventually they did. It took them six months to figure it out, but they figured it out. And that's that's a full time job, man. It's not an easy way to do it, but you, you know, this is the kind of fight that you end up getting into. Now that's further down the line. In the beginning days, it was very easy. It was, you know, here is a, a dude that has got, you know, a bunch of bots that are running A to B. You put a rock in the middle, all the bots get stuck on the rock, and a GM shows up and bans them. That was that was the original way of catching people ban like botting, legitimately. And it evolved into this just crazy arms race that it is today. So yeah. For the ENUS one, did you add some randomness to that so you didn't sometimes ban people based on that so they couldn't kind of distinguish? No, the way that we actually do it is you wait three to six months. You collect as much data uh, as possible and then you ban them all at once and then you stop You stop doing the detection. <laughs> that's so they're like, idea. what do we get banned for? And they're like, I don't know. You'll never know. <laughs> there's there's two reasons to do it that way too. And this is kind of funny. I love, I love this reasoning for this. This is why we always do it. You wait, you form your detection. You do three to six months. Then you ban. Now, there's two things that happens out of this. The players think you're doing nothing and they hate you for a little while. Then they see the ban wave and they're like, should have done it sooner. Why don't they ban them immediately? You can't for two reasons. One, this is more effective. Dramatically more effective. You catch so many more people for this. Number two, 
is if somebody is botting, you're not actually attacking the players who are botting. You're attacking the dude selling the bot. Because there's a company on the other side of that that is selling the bot to those players. The players are ammunition. Now what they do is they all go back and they go, I got banned because of you. And they charge them back. They scream at them. They downvote them. They flood their forums. You've turned them into an army of angry customers. And it works. It works really, really well. It is phenomenal, frankly. This is why we do the three to six month ban. That's the whole reason. It is fog of war and using your, your you know, the bad players as ammunition against the enemy. It's a war, dude. It's crazy. And you're a veteran. Yeah, I've been doing it a long time. <laughs> and you have to think about like the player behavior in there too, because players don't know. And because of that, most of the time, they hate the developers. They think developers are lazy or they don't care or anything like that. So since I've gotten now on the outside and I run my own studio, I can just talk about this stuff and let players know and kind of be an advocate for that and be like, no, devs actually care a lot. They're just fighting a war in the shadows that you're not allowed to see. Because if they tip their hand, the enemy would know. And that sucks. Because it ends up in a situation where you think they're lazy and, and you hate them. And they're just trying to do their best and there's nothing they can do. They can't tell you. Yeah. So it's it's a, a bad position to be in a lot of the times, but it's not the dev's fault. And it uh it ends up kind of that way. It's a player perception issue. So we had that recently happen with Apex. Apex Legends had a major, major hack and all the players went out to attack the developers and I talked out about it to show people like, no, this is the actual way that these wars work. It's like all fog of war. It's kind of sneaky. It's cat and mouse game. And it resonated with a lot of people because they just didn't know. They had no idea. They're like, oh shit, wait, the devs care? Yes, very much so. Very much so. Uh, How could they know? They, they kind of only know what, what they can see happening. And so yep. it's very hard to make sense of uh, when you're trying to deliberately obfuscate what you're doing. Yep. And that's that's the biggest part. You know, you got your, your special ops guys trying to be sneaky and everyone's like, they don't exist. They don't care. Right. <laughs> oh, it's quite funny. You're talking about Valve? No, we're talking about any game company because they do care. They do. Sometimes there's nothing they can do about it. That's just how it is. There's nothing they can communicate to you anyway. And to be real with you, um, in times where it is it is directly accessing servers or anything like that, there's a federal level problem because it's a federal crime. It's against the computer, you know, Computer Access Act in the United States. That's a that's a federal crime that goes through the FBI, which people don't realize. They're like FBI, they don't do anything. Like no, you. Many companies have FBI contacts specifically for this. We did. It's kind of how it works, right? It's, <laughs> it's normal. Yeah, too bad we're not all American. Uh, many countries actually have the same thing. They have their own versions of this, and they have their own versions of like their federal level investigation specifically for this stuff, for illegally accessing computers. Yeah, normal stuff. It's it's a lot. It's a lot more ridiculous than you would expect. Very much so. Yeah. Tibet is lost in one point five hours. No. What's up? I see some people saying, "Is this RuneScape?" It's not RuneScape, but no. it is inspired by RuneScape. Yeah, there's a lot of features that we've seen in here that are very similar to RuneScape, and the progression systems feel very much so like RuneScape in a way that I like this much more than RuneScape. So you've done something right, I think. And I think it is more compelling to me than RuneScape is. That is, uh, that's quite uh, high praise, I must say. Well, we will endeavor to live up to it. I think the main distinctive factor for me is this. I can build towns. Like yeah. you have, you can have all the exact same gameplay as RuneScape, but I can build a town in this and I can run a shop and I can, I can do that anywhere. Not just out of a tiny little shitty stand. I can make a place and people can come here. We can have a place in the world for that. Also, it looks like they've sealed me in. So they I'm now, I'm now the permanent chef for the town, which you know what, to be honest with you, I'm fine with this. This is, this is my <laughs> town now. My chef's, my chef village. Ooh, well, look at that. I'm taking these and I'm putting them up on my, on my stall. There's so many mushrooms now. I'm slowly building up in Hexcoin as well. It's good. Yeah, I'm an NPC now. Did, uh, did Carter talk a little, at all about the Empire system? Yes. By any chance? We were actually talking about okay. the Empire system because it was like, it would be really cool if you could mint your own in-game currency, right? If you had a way of doing that kind of stuff, that would be quite fun. And um, yes. like if you, could, if you could be like, oh, this is our Empire's currency, whatever it's going to be, that would be interesting and fun. Yeah, we've thought about that very briefly, but um, I think it would definitely be something that would be a privilege of empire of emperors, right? To kind of yeah. make your own coins, because then you you have to trust them that they're not going to inflate it, mm -hmm. uh, and so sort of an interesting 
gameplay there because they have total authority yeah. over minting. I'm I'm going to be completely real with you. I would um I would make it really heavily restrictive. I would use it to buy all the best materials and best you know possible anything in the game in our entire region, and then I would flood the market with it and make everyone else poor because that's what you do as an emperor. That's how that goes. <laughs> that is. It's happened many times in history. I'd be like, oh, I have everything now. It doesn't matter. There's, I've already won. I've already won. Yeah. So that's that's how you do it, right? That's yeah, evil evil moment. It's hundred percent it. But I think it would also be fun to. Uh, so the the idea behind the emperors is the empire system is obviously you can claim the map essentially as sort of a skin, and yeah. get your name on it, and get your banners up and all that stuff. But then also having the people of your empire sort of feel that they're on that team uh, and contributing to that is yeah. pretty cool too. Plus, think, the world is dynamic in a way that MMORPGs just aren't really right now. Like, Stormwind is Stormwind, and that's where that's going to be. And the Alliance is the Alliance. Yep. But what if you could participate? Yeah, what if you could? I, I like that. I like that a lot, actually. There we go. Hex coin. Make this unlimited. Save. One yeah. other thing that, that I think is interesting is I mentioned, uh, obviously, I was very low level in RuneScape, relatively. Yeah. Uh, and we want to allow players to play the game in the way that they like. So if you are the guy who likes to sell mushrooms mm -hmm. uh, or buy mushrooms, whatever the case may be, uh, and make a bunch of money, that you should be rewarded and celebrated for that act uh, in and of itself without maybe even being high level. Like that should be, if you want to be a merchant, we want to make the game show that that's what you're good at, if that makes any sense. So give you titles to that effect, give you... Um, different cosmetics for that yeah That's i actually i really really enjoy this kind of gameplay um they've sealed me in already so i am trapped here now forevermore but uh it's it's actually kind of cool because i get to sit here and i get to craft the whole time and i'm watching i'm almost level 30 i think i am i might already be level 30 i'm, like, I'm level 30 now in cooking so being able to hit that while doing this is actually kind of fun because they keep i'm running my stall and my stall is barter so they barter me the materials and then I craft the food, and then I I barter them back the finished food, and they they're actually sending me a slight increase in materials over the cost of actually making them, which is kind of fun. And now I have a higher, you know, higher tier. I'm now an apprentice cook. You've done it. Have you gone on an adventure yet? I've gone on an adventure. I walked around the entire world. We went all through that. Unless you mean a different kind of adventure. Well, how many biomes have you seen? I suppose. Oh, um. How many biomes did we see earlier? So I went, yeah, we went all over the place. It was massive, actually. So we went around. Oh, <laughs> oh. game crashed. Uh, we'll work on that. It'll be fine. It happens. I think it's because we have like are. a million settlements right next to each other, and it just freaks out sometimes when I open the map. <laughs> I see. That was a UI crash, so I bet it's just uh, if you have certain UI up with uh, with the uh, map. We we made a thing called, um, for those of you who are familiar with, I suppose, uh, React and uh, sort of reactive programming in the web, we developed a thing in Unity called Rish, which is React-ish, which is the same kind of UI framework, and it's brand new. So we're going to probably either open source it or at least make it free on the Unity App Store or the Unity Asset Store if you want to give it a try. That's awesome. Yeah, so I've seen all of this. Oh, we got ads. <laughs> Worst timing for the ads. I'm going to wait. It's funny. Oops. One moment. My bad. I appreciate your patience with, with me on stream here, too. What do you mean? No, this is great, dude. I, yeah, I'm not used to streaming to 17,000 goblins. There's a lot of That's goblins. Great. It's true. Just remember, all, all of them are seeing you naked right now. Oh, wait, yes. you're supposed to be in the reverse. <laughs> yeah, that probably made it worse. Yeah. <laughs> I think that didn't help. <laughs> we uh, worked, we had uh, 1,200 people in, in our stream yesterday, though, so that that's was awesome. Great. That's really awesome, dude. Like, I, I think I think you're going to find very quickly that this game gameplay is very compelling for a lot of people. You've hit on something that is not seen. This is not not really normal in the industry, and I think it's it's a lot more of a good idea than I think you guys realize. <laughs> So we've we've definitely put our souls into it. I, I think the thing of it is, it's it's too risky of a thing for any large company to invest a bunch of money in. Bingo. So it could only be done by a team that's smaller. Silly. If I had known, 
the scale. I think the first thing uh, you must do when embarking on a large task is grossly underestimate the problem. Otherwise, you'd never start. Right? You'd never do it. Yeah. Yeah. So. And then when you're all the way in, you're like, well, it's too late now. We're here. <laughs> How's it going? Oh. And I think the result is cool. I just want to make something that people love. So we're trying it. Yeah, you are. Um, I think this is very, very good. Is this town actually named More Wood is Needed? <laughs> I think it is. It's fantastic. That's great. You got 10 seconds left on the ads. <laughs> I had no idea that this kind of a game, I suppose, would resonate with you in particular. Yes. Um, absolutely. So yeah, there we go. Ads are gone. Yeah, no, this this kind of a game absolutely resonates with me, 100%. I, I love social sandbox games, enough so that I was so sick of seeing them corrupted with RMT in the way that I watched that I built one in Minecraft out of spite. And that's what we've been playing. We've literally been playing... Game? Yeah, that's block game. It's a social sandbox MMO. That's... <laughs> I got so sick of, of playing these ones and watching them get corrupted. I was just... I'm just going to build it in Minecraft. I'm sick of this. And we did over the last two years as a side project for funsies. And we just play it every day. <laughs> but you, uh, you... You had... You saw RMT in there as well, right? Or no? No, there's no RMT. I, I saw RMT happen and I shut it down. Yeah, I see. And I went through all those same exact actions, which is like, how do we fight this? And eventually, I came to the point where it's like, just de-incentivize the shit out of it. Just make it right. so that it's it's better to just play the game than to do any of this other stuff. And people who are gonna RMT, they're gonna do it. And there's not much you can do about it. But it's it's so it's so dumb to do that that the general player base sees it as like, why would I do that? Just play the video game, right? And if you if you can get the game into a state like that, and it takes a while. You can get to a point where like RMT isn't the right action because it's not the most efficient way to do things. And that's basically right. what I've tried to strive for. And that's a very tough goal. And you'll slip all the time. Like it's just like I'll implement something new and they're like, oh, I'm going to go back to buying that with real money. It's like, damn it. <laughs> so, I guess what are the strategies you use in that game to to avoid that? Or like what what if you could get into sort of examples? Yeah. If that makes so, sense. so like super generous with the player, right? So like it's not beneficial to go do real money transaction with stuff because it's really easy to just go out and do things like even though pvp is kind of central focus to block game because that's something we wanted heavy pvp related conflict because i like mm. kind of that kind of dominance over each other there's also the economic dominance over each other so you could actually have that and if you do have pvp between towns inside of ours you don't actually blow up the other person's town they don't lose anything it's more like a badge of honor of like you are my peasants now and they're like well what does that mean nothing right it's just like a haha, -ha, you know, that's that's basically what it is, right? So we add these kind of systems that make that compelling for role playing, but not for destroying the other person's gameplay. You know, it may make them upset to be a peasant, but it doesn't actually mean anything, you know, at the end of the day. And then with that kind of a stuff, it's it's mostly around building those systems to be more open trade on lots of stuff. We're trying something we've we've tried something for a while now, which is to make it so that exploration is the highest earner of progress for the character so if you want to gain levels killing monsters is one way right but then that incentivizes people to build mob grinders because it's it's minecraft right, right? they just build a, a hole in the ground and they summon a million mobs so the way we fixed that was we made of monsters gave less experience but the better way to get experience is to go out in the world and find chests and by finding chests they're able to go and open that up and there's a book inside that gives them a thousand experience so that ended up being a thing where it's like oh i have to explore now, people could sell that for real money, but now they're at a major disadvantage because they're not able to progress and they're not able to do the dungeons or anything else that actually leads to them being able to pay for, you know, the coin for their character to be able to progress and keep their character's upkeep because your gear has, you know, uh, repair powder and things like that. The idea to try and stop RMT is to make it so that unless you are producing something into the economy at all times, you will actually fall behind and not be able to maintain your character. That's the, the most that I could possibly do it. So the most efficient thing is to actually use the items you produce or to put them into the market to use other items that other people produce. And if you try to extract it for RMT, you actually can't because it's not efficient. It's not easy to do. It is not, I don't think it's the best way to do it, but it has worked better than the other three options so far. It just takes a lot of maintenance, if that makes sense. 
Yeah, it does. I mean, that, that, that makes total sense, and I appreciate the, the insight there. Yeah. I think this is why monetization is game design. Yeah, it is. So it's all it, the same. So this is how much of the, the map that I've explored, and then we, we teleported up here. We did a dev teleport, and then walked all the way around this entire area. So it's a oh, huge wow. amount. It's less than 1% of the overall of the map. I think it was like 0.91 or something like that. But we saw all the biomes. We went and looked through all this kind of stuff. And the world is beautiful. There's a lot of really cool stuff, frankly. And I, I think Gotta that's quite cool. give the art team credit for that one. Yeah. It's, it's really, really nice looking. So I was... I think that's what did it. Do you see that? Look at the text when it does this. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's, that, that might be what ended up crashing. That's quite funny. There's probably some some, you know... Piece that just really did not like displaying that text. It's the only thing you can think of with that. Well, there we go. My market is back up. Fantastic. But no, I, I really, I really enjoy that. I, I think that's um, for me. I like the cat and mouse game. That's fun for me. So I never see it as like a, a detriment of like, oh, people are RMTing it. I was like, oh, people are RMTing it. Let's go do some shit. Because like for me, it's it's I get to go fight in my war again, right? Whatever it is that's going on, and that I find solving that puzzle to be fun. That is engaging for me, if that makes sense. It does. Yeah, I do enjoy that. It's a, it's your kind of game. Sounds it like. is. That is my my end game is catching you cheating at my game. <laughs> it's, it's very very fun for me, legitimately. Oh man, I've become too efficient at this. I started with so few mushrooms, and now I have so much food. What do I do? I'm trapped inside of a. a I'm gonna have to. Oh, I'm gonna have to undercut myself. Hey, so, we're, having a, um, we're having a deal right now. That's what we're doing. We're going to change this. Is your goal just to get as much food, or are you trying to make money, or what are you trying? What's I was goal? actually, I was actually trying to make it so that I, um, I could be sustainable on this, and I gave myself about a twenty percent margin, and I went from ten mushrooms, I was like maybe twenty mushrooms, to now I have all of these mushroom skewers, and I have all of this stuff in here, and I've just been slowly building up by skimming slightly off of each one of these to make it so that I'm getting more materials from the people who are selling to me than, than it costs to produce the goods they're buying and bartering my way up like this. So now I'm going to undercut myself where I, now I'm doing it on, on the exact cost of those foods. Mm -hmm. So it actually costs two and two and this one costs 10. So I'm selling it for the same amount. I'm also selling them for hex coin, which I'm going to reduce this now. So I'm getting people when they're like, oh, I have hex coin. I could just get it for that instead of going and harvesting the materials. So I'm building that up slowly and that will buy me if somebody gets it the perfected pot, which is the strongest version of this that I can use, which will be the final upgrade for cooking. So I've got all of this kind of laid out here is the idea. And the only thing I have to do is keep cooking, which is good. This is, it's so cool to see that I, like for so long, it's been just a uh, uh, hidden private secret thing that we've been doing. And to see it on stream now is it's cool. crazy. Let him cook. Yeah. No, I actually, I really enjoy it because it's immediately because the systems you guys have put in place, I was able to form market strategies. And those market strategies let me kind of manipulate the market in the way that I wanted to see fit. The one thing that I am afraid of is it looks like these cooking stations are unlocked. Is there any way to lock this with permissions to just myself or have an admin of the, of the area lock it to just me? So I don't know whether we have that in right now, to be honest, because it's been changing frequently. Mm -hmm. But what I can say is that it's very easy to add that should we decide that that's a thing that we want to do. That's awesome. Also, I wanted to say, Blades Runner, I did see that earlier and I didn't say anything yet. Thank you for the 25 gifted subs five minutes ago. You are freaking amazing. That is really, really nice of you. Thank you. Seriously. And yeah, capitalism. Capitalism. It's what it is. I'm slowly building up more and more material. See this? Now I got those. And the thing is, is even if I'm selling those materials at the same amount that it costs me to build this, it is allowing me to build up my cooking skill. So I'm at level 30 cooking already with this, which is good. That's a, that's a positive thing for me. So even though they're getting it at cost, I'm still gaining something out of it, which is I'm finding it interesting because there's no durability system in game. So I can do this indefinitely, which I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. I'm not really sure. There's a durability system planned. It's just we ran out of time. That makes much more sense. Yeah, because if there's a durability system plan, then I need to always do this at a profit so I can trade for what is required for that. In block game, we actually use what's called repair powder to do this. So anytime people are doing professions, they spend durability on their gear. And then that goes into them producing value into the market. And they're always producing more value than it costs for the repair powder. And then they can convert their their materials into repair powder and some of them into other things to progress other players. So there's uh, professions I see as a, a rising up 
where you're always making revenue. And Dungeoneering and stuff is is you are producing a different type of currency. So Dungeoneering, they produce coin. And then Professions, they produce materials so that there's an inner kind of uh, discipline economy between those, if that makes sense. It does. Yeah. So it, it's very interesting. Um, I My undergraduate degree was actually in chemical and biomolecular engineering, which doesn't sound like it has anything to do with games. No, but that's wild. It actually does have a lot to do with MMO game or really just economy design. So um, in I'll just very briefly, if you if you will. Yeah, yeah. A moment, uh, explain Sorry. sort of what that was all about. So chemical engineering is very often about, hey, we have chemicals and we have a plant and we want to have things um, react with each other and turn into other things. And we want to do that at what's called a steady state, meaning nothing is changing with time, right? So you have materials coming in, converting to other things and returning, and you just make a lot of it over time. So this could be plastic or could be insulin or whatever you want to make. Mm -hmm. And that sounds like it doesn't have anything to do with games, except for the fact that if you think of molecules as items instead, so molecules combine with other molecules to create other types of molecules, that's very similar to crafting, right? So if I'm taking items and other items and converting them into a third item with the byproduct of experience or something else, um, it's actually very similar. And so what you can actually do, and I have a blog post that I've wanted to write about this for a long time, which is uh, MMO economies from a chemical engineer's perspective. Um, you can actually see that all of the same math applies and that what you actually want to do in your game is set up a situation where you've achieved a steady state, mm -hmm. meaning there isn't anything accumulating in your game, right? So if you have a, a, a durability, if you don't have a durability system and people craft items, then they will accumulate and the price will just uh, fall perpetually, right? Mm -hmm. So what you actually want to do is a way to absorb those or to uh, destroy them in some in some fashion. So we have sort of, this is the whole thing with sources and sinks. It's actually extremely similar to chemical engineering where you have sources and sinks, uh, which is in, uh, in minus out. So the, in, in chemical engineering, there's an equation. It's in minus out equals accumulation. And that's like the whole thing. Um, and so in this case, uh, we have sources, which is players doing things in the world, creating items from the resources, which we spawn. Uh, and then sinks, which is, hey, I'm using this item which has durability and eventually breaks. Or what I call sponges, which are things in the game which do accumulate, but are able to absorb a lot of materials into them before they saturate. Mm -hmm. So a town would be an example of a sponge because it take buildings absorb materials into them and they get increasingly f more saturated as time goes on. So you want to make sure you have that all in balance. Yeah. So it's no, kind of interesting. Practice. That completely makes sense. Like uh, that's exactly how I'm designing that whole system. I don't, I didn't know that concept behind that, but the concept of item sinks and games, currency sinks and games, there's always going to be something to pull it down. And if you're not threading that needle as closely as possible, you end up having, as you said, accumulation, massive amount of accumulation. And that just goes, through the roof it ends up being a massive problem because now you have this thing that is completely not valuable at all and uh right. that's the way that goes this is largely why uh, the reason why i chose cooking as the profession i'm doing this is because it's the one that has the most amount of sync for players since there's no durability in the game currently i don't want to be a blacksmith mm. the reason right. i don't want to be a blacksmith is because people will only buy from me once for that tier with food they're constantly consuming this since they're constantly consuming it there's always a demand that's exactly where I want to be as a person selling items in this game. So that's He's way ahead of us. That's ex yeah, that's why I've done this already because I I have already seen the game systems at play and it's like, oh, be the guy who sells food. Be the guy who sells potions, be the alchemist every single time. Always. This is right. why you want to do that in World of Warcraft. It's exactly the same, right? It is. It is exactly the same. And I think um the thing is, accumulation is bad, or you want to at least manage it, because accumulation yeah. in chemical engineering means explosion, so you want to avoid that. Yeah, don't blow up, uh, but that's bad. Games. Blowing up bad, got Take it. it. Yeah. Chat, chat wants to know if uh, water is just rusted hydrogen. Is water <laughs> rusted hydrogen? I guess, yeah. I guess you could. Kind of, yeah. Could Eve Industry enters the chat. Yeah, dude. I was trained in Jita. Yeah, it's true. That's how it goes. See, now I'm level 31 cooking, and I, I have not left this spot whatsoever. I have just been sealed in, and I am. there are other people buying goods for me. They're getting value. I'm getting value. And it is now a perpetual process of value trade.
the oh, thing actually. about the chemical engineering thing, if I had one more comment, is just yeah. that now if you if you recognize that these are very, very similar things, you can take all of the techniques that they use to manage like oil refinery plants and convert them to be used for game economy balancing. And I think that's super underexplored, and I think it would be really, really cool. Yep, I agree with that. And see, this is this is why I tell you guys all the time, people are like, oh man, I've, I've done all this other stuff for my career, would I be good at making video games? Yes. Everything is transferable information. All of it. You've now taken your background in chemistry, and you've taken that over to game development, game design, and it's led you in a direction that's made a very compelling game where you can actually manage that in-game economy correctly. That's really important. All of those skills, those in extra things lead you to better ideas inside of the industry because you get something unique that other people don't know. You're adding something to the medium, which is quite good. So yeah, this is why I talk about this all the time. I couldn't agree more. I think it's very easy to underestimate how much your background might translate over. I mean, everyone's perspective is, is helpful for this. Mm -hmm. Super agree with that. Super agree with that. Yeah, that's. I think that's largely like a huge success thing because you have that kind of a background, you have that kind of understanding, and it's led you, not only that, you have a very good grasp of player behavior and the understanding of player intention and reasoning behind these things. I think many developers will just be like, oh, they cheat because they, they want to cheat. It's like, no, there's there's behavioral reasons for that. There's psychological behavior and behavioral reasons for that. And it looks like you've explored those quite deeply with your write-ups, your blog posts, which is great to see, frankly. That's gonna that's always going to leave you ahead of the pack in that regard because We've many studios just will do that. Do it more. <laughs> it's always going to leave you ahead of the back because other studios either don't have that understanding or don't want to, you know, invest in inside of that kind of a thing. Which I, I think is kind of bad. Generally, I think they should look down that route a little bit more. Um, even major platforms, you know, it's it's really easy to fall into a weird pitfall because you're like, oh, I'm, we're just going to make this change. Well, have you thought about how people are going to react to that change? Yeah, they're going to love it. How do you know they're going to love it? What about if they take it the wrong way? What if they take it this way? How do you how do you manage the perception if you don't analyze what perceptions could possibly arise? You know, and that's I think that's where a lot of people stop. They they don't realize that perception management is part of that game. What if they want to throw hands? True. True. I have so oh my god, I have so many mushrooms. I have too many mushrooms. Okay, we're doing we're doing a discount now. We're doing a discount. We're making it eight mushrooms per per thing now, so I can reduce my total stock of mushrooms by twenty percent, because I currently have way too many mushrooms. Dear God, the mushroom overload has happened. This is this is nuts now. There we go. I've produced all of the what mushrooms. Do think, uh, what do you think you'd name your empire? Mushroom. <laughs> mushroom. Love it. Uh, we actually named it Tortuga because we're pirates, you know. City of pirates. Yeah. Well, that's your city, yes. But what about the empire? When, oh, we, so empire is not a game yet, but they're coming. We'd probably name the empire Tortuga. It's kind of how that okay. would go. Yeah, we we definitely name it because like Tortuga would be like a collection of pirate cities. Maybe we name each one of them mm -hmm. after like an area, like a cool pirate island or something sense. like that. Tortuga would be the main one. We call it the Mushroom Kingdom. Yeah. That also works. Yeah, speaking of piracy, uh, it's something that we're considering adding to the game uh, legitimately. So, so we want to avoid. I don't know if you've talked about PvP at all, or Ricardo no. mentioned that. No. Um, so, PvP is something that we want to be extremely careful about adding if we indeed ever do add it. Because um, the thing is with PvP is it allows you to kick down other people's sandcastles in the sandbox. Uh, yes. And that is great for people who love that, but also not great if you just built a sandcastle. Yep. So, if we were to add it, we would make it opt-in. And I think one very interesting place we could potentially add it is in piracy. So if you're out on the, the high seas um, and you want to interdict an emperor sending supplies from one place to another, um, that could be a, a super fun type of gameplay. So may maybe you can only attack empire ships, for example, who are uh, transporting empire supplies to feed their empire. That could be interesting. That makes sense. Yeah, with the... Um... With the PvP that I put into block game for that, it was only town. It was it was nation attacking a town, and the way that that would work is you have to form a nation to declare war. So it couldn't just be like I pop up a, a little junky town and then I go after you, right? Because that just led okay. to people making a million like basically shell towns and just going after people constantly. It was kind of toxic. It didn't make any sense. So we did that as a nation attacking a town. So there was significant investment from the attacker, 
and there had to be like a declaration of war. So there was significant investment on, on you put money on the table and whoever wins keeps that pot of the gold, you know, the coin that was put on the table. So if the defense wins, you lose everything as the attacker. So you couldn't just keep going after them. There was risk involved. And I think it was, it was quite cool because Minch was actually talking about the idea of putting down a totem or something like that, that would put economic yep. pressure on a nearby town, but you also get economic pressure on your town, which that is largely the same sort of a system, which is we're making a bet right now who's going to blink first. And I like that because it is I'm going to cut, you know, we're, we're going to have a knife fight and then I'm, we're going to see who dies first. And that's kind of how that's going to go. But we're both going to get injured in the process. But I'm making a bet. And my bet is that my economic, the economics of my town are better than the economics of your town. And I'm going to win. And I, I like that, you know, the idea of there being significant disadvantage you know, to engaging in PvP. It is it's a a choice that you have to make, you know, not just a, I get to push on everybody because we're the strongest. It's like, no, I'm still, it's still going to cost me. It's still going to cost me to do this. And I have to think about if that's, if that's valuable to do or not, you know? Yeah, betting on your own success is fun. I do like economic PvP. I do think that's cool. Piracy is an interesting idea though. Is it, so it would only be on the ocean then it would be yeah in an opt-in area so maybe on like the the deep ocean or something while you're way out there um because that's that's going to be a a very clear best way in some respects to feed your empire across the ocean so it's really about logistics and trade and moving supplies to be able to feed your your outposts uh, that you've set up to claim land so, so it's, a, it's an idea it's an idea here's an interesting point since you have space time db and you can yes. recognize all logs of all transactions of anything that's ever happened. Is there a chance that we can get some of those logs for adding and removing items as a log on a station for officers and above in a guild? Because I know that there's going to be a situation in which a player joins another town and there's a permission that's set wrong and they will steal everything and the town owners will have no idea who did it and no way of looking back. <clears throat> So technically speaking, yes. Then it's a question of a game design thing. Do we do, do we think to? it's interesting that you won't know, or do we th want you to know? Yeah, that's the that's basically the question I have. Is what what do you think about that scenario? That's a good question. I, it's, I would... it's spycraft, but also there's in Eve we had spycraft, but there was counterplay, and the counterplay was logs, right? So that's right. I think without logs, I don't see a way of counterplay other than like I watched him do it, you know. <laughs> So I think what could you can make a lot of interesting uh, gameplay up by allowing the the town to choose. So may, maybe, for example, um, the higher level people you don't get logs for, but you do get logs for the lower level people in the town. Um, that makes it so the betrayal is more intriguing when it happens, if it does happen. Um, but I don't know. We we have to balance that. We have to yeah. uh, see how it feels. Okay, that makes sense. I mean, even if it came down to like a maybe I have to put a little bit of resource into the logging machine that's hooked to the building or whatever it's going to be, right? Yeah, for example. Yeah, that would make sense. Like even if it was a an economic drain for me to do it, so the town would be like, well, do I want to spend the resources on logging everything for the next 24 hours or do I think we're secure? And then you're like, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to invest in the security system and then you get robbed blind, you know? So like that, yeah. I can see that. Yeah. Now you're thinking with gas. That's a that's a fun uh, game design thing. Yeah. So like I'm I'm always thinking about that kind of stuff. It's like what's the counterplay to it? Well, omnipotence isn't really a cool counterplay, right? Because then the logs are running at all times. So maybe there's a disadvantage. Maybe there's a cost. Maybe it's maybe I have to think about if I have security or not. And I I like that kind of stuff. I really enjoy that kind of stuff. It's always fun. I I like the direction you guys are going with this because it leads so much interest to it. You know. And remember, guys, yeah. these are these aren't me things of being like you have to do this. It's like a what do you think about this? I'm always interested in seeing like what other developers think about like the direction for their game. You know, oh god, absolutely. I think we try to um, rather than commit to individual things that we're going to do or not do, just think about the philosophy by which we decide what things to do. If that makes any sense, it does. I have too many mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's so many mushrooms, dude. Is the 12 your food? All of this is my food. All of this is... I'm going to have to... Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. I'm trying to click the mushrooms out. I've, I've changed it so I only get 80% of the materials required to make the next mushroom. So that I'm... Yeah, we're having a sale. 
Um, I'm also going to change this one up here. So we're going to get 50% of this. So I'm going to be able to drop out the, the trail mix as quickly as possible. And I, I'm just rapidly clicking so that when somebody comes by and sells me mushrooms, it instantly goes into my inventory so I don't have any problems. So that way it doesn't fill up and then break the shop, which is great. I'm going to go back to making this right now. Because I have 118 trail mix in store here. Yeah, shrooms, shrooms are us. They love it, dude. They love my skewered mushrooms, all right? They're great. I make the best in the land. And I'm, what am I? Level 32 cooking now. Yeah. Yeah, I'm actually not uh, wholesaling. I'm selling at a loss because I my stock is too high. I have too many mushrooms. You thought it was a cookie? You know, it's trail mix. Yeah, it's trail mix. If you look really closely, it's like trail mix. It does kind of look like a cookie, though. It's quite funny. Yeah, I'm slowly, slowly selling at a loss so they can have unlimited mushrooms. But no mushrooms. Yeah, but no mushrooms. What uh, cooking level was I when I set up the shop? I think it was like 22. Maybe 21. Somewhere in there. And it just kind of evolved naturally where I was like, well, this is more efficient than going out and harvesting it myself. Like, why would I go out there? I'm just going to have them come to me. So building a shop naturally evolved out of my gameplay style. And my gameplay style was to just, you know, sell foods and things to other people. Why can't I start this? What's the problem here? Oh, I'm out of, I'm out of stuff. One moment. Yeah, yeah, I forgot to feed me. Oh, wait, no, I don't want to do that. I'm eating into my profits. I'll eat this other thing. I should probably be sleeping when I'm out cooking. I'll just sleep on the ground. I'm in my little my little pit, right? I live in the mud. I sleep on the floor, and I cook mushrooms. It's a great life, really. It's a good life. It's a good life. Literally eating my profits right now. That's true. Yeah, it is. It's a good life. It's a good life. Sleep for work. those of you who are having problems with the Bitcraft website also, we're working on a fix. Okay, awesome. Yeah. And uh, for those of you who want a key for the game, understand that the server capacity is not enough for you. There are too many of us. And because of that, they're slowly releasing keys over this month while they increase server capacity. It is it is not ready for you. That's why it's a closed alpha, right? They It's not that they don't want you to play. It's that they don't want you to sit in queue and, and cry about it because you will. And I know you will. That's kind of how humans are. They'll be like, why did they give me a key if I can't play the game? Well, that's why you don't get a key. Now you're like, why didn't they give me a key? They must hate me. No, no. You just have to wait. You just have to wait. We don't. We love the goblins for what it's worth. That's awesome. The goblins are amazing. Yeah, no, this is... I'm I'm really excited to play this. We actually set up a section of our Discord for it, if you haven't seen yet, um, for Bitcraft, so that we can get more people into the game over time. And we've got it hooked up to your guys' alerts from your Discord to go automatically into ours. So that as you get release alerts, they ping on ours as well. So there, there's also two other, I suppose, space time to be things that I, I do oh. want to mention because I think you might find them interesting. Oh, we're going to hit an ad. We got ads. We're going to wait. Ad. going to be fun. We'll wait. Ah! One thing, so one thing we've considered doing also mm -hmm. uh, is, sorry, I don't know if you were going to. Oh, no, it's uh, good. Okay, but. Um, we could consider opening uh, open sourcing Bitcraft. Why? Because it's built on SpaceTimeDB, and SpaceTimeDB is also another product that we have. So, like, what's the worst case scenario? If somebody builds a better game with our source code. They've got to run it on SpaceTimeDB. So it's uh, it's a it could be the first open source MMORPG backend. Yeah. But uh, we'll see. Hmm. We're we're not sure about that one. Hmm. If that ends up happening. That'd be wild. That wouldn't be a failure for you guys, though. No. That'd be an be, absolute success. It's so a win-win. With, with Spacetime DB, since you guys are open sourcing it, you're not monetizing that in any way, would you? So uh, with Spacetime DB, there are essentially two versions. There's the Spacetime DB standalone version, which is just a single server. And okay. then that is open source. That's Well, that's under the BSL, which converts to open source. Yeah. Um, it just prevents Amazon from running it. Sorry, Jeff. Um, <laughs> and then... Fair. Fair. There is the uh, SpaceTime DB Cloud, which is the multi server um, distributed system version of that. That is not open source, but they use the same library, if that makes any sense. So yeah. most of SpaceTime DB is open source. Oh, geez. I forgot we're in the middle of ads. We're going to have to talk about this again after the ad break. <laughs> we can talk about it again after. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I was... <laughs> it's so interesting. I don't know. It's, if, uh... No, it's good. It's just so interesting stuff. And I know that people are going to want to hear it. So I don't want them to miss it. Jeff Bezos is pogging. Look at him. 
he's excited that he can't he can't run this technology. Great. Jeff Bezos, uh, well, AWS has been taking database software, which has been open source and very much according to their rights of open source, have been selling the service of the databases so that the database companies can't make money on it. F. Because they sell the service. The service Correct. itself then, instead of the database. Yeah. Exactly. And they have all the customers. So All right. Ads are over now. So now we get back to it. So tell me about Spacetime DB. So tell me about right. the way that you're, you're monetizing this because that is kind of the backbone of the game. That is the entire core of this video game. And you want to have an open source version. You want to have a separate version that is paid. Is that correct? Right. So there, so there's two forms of Spacetime DB. There is a single node server, uh, which is called Spacetime Standalone. Uh, that is up on our GitHub. It's under the BSL license. So the BSL license essentially says, hey, this is going to convert to open source in four years. Um, you can use it for whatever you want now, including in production. The only thing you can't do is sell it as a service. So you can't sell Spacetime DB as a service, a.k.a an anti-AWS clause. Mm -hmm. um, but then it eventually becomes fully open source and you totally can sell as a service. So that's okay. one part of Space NDB. The other is Space NDB Cloud, and that's a distributed system that we've developed, which has a multi-node Space NDB, essentially, which allows us to run uh, Bitcraft. And there are two forms of that. Either you can use our uh, cloud service, Managed, or um, we haven't done this yet, but um, you could license it from us and then run it on your own uh, servers if you wanted to. That makes sense. That's cool. So do you, here, here's a big thing. With the monetization method that you have that, with that, if that catches on, do you mm -hmm. see that running your studio in the current cost structure that you have? Do you see yourselves being stable with just um, Spacetime DB? Or do you see that with, you need more funding from Bitcraft specifically? you need it to do well enough for you to be able to be stable and keep the studio running? No, they are uh, their own separate products. And that's also partially the reason why we decided to open source it. Because if somebody wants to use Space Time to be, they need to know regardless of what happens to our studio or Bitcraft or anything like that, they can still use it. And they're still going to have that, that code down the line. Cool. That's good. Is your... Do you find that if like this is going to be like the hard the hard questions, right? Do you find sure. that your studio are you worried about the financial future of your studio in any way, whatsoever? Uh, no, uh, we are not. So we have we were very fortunate to raise money uh, at a particularly good time, and we also have not spent it very rapidly. We have an extremely small studio for a company making a game like this. So we've got many years left in us, and um, I think we're going to be growing both the games community and Space Time TV over time. So I'm, we're in a very, very fortunate position. Uh, and I, I thank my lucky stars for that every day. Was that, was that money raised from crowdfunding from players or was that from investors? Zero crowdfunding. It was all from investors. So venture capital, which has its own trade-offs. Do, do the venture capital in this case, is it just them trying to get a return on their investment or do they have some kind of creative control whatsoever over your studio? They have no creative control. We have a majority ownership. Uh, we're the, my co-founder and I are the only ones on the board. Uh, but they, so they're for monetary investment. You that changes, it. by the way, if you raise a lot more money uh, yeah, and then they get board seats. Yep, that is correct. Uh, that's why I wanted to know. That's a, that's the correct action. Good job. Good job. Savvy. Very good. We were, I suppose, both savvy and we got lucky. I mean, we got lucky with uh, the timing and everything. Um, and I think the vision too. Yeah. I, I think you guys have done, it, That's this is rare. You have done all of this correctly. And that's, that's not normal. Um, you've got the understanding of player behavior. You've got a compelling game. You've got a new technology that that compelling game runs on. You've got a team that's rapidly developing that. You're doing open source stuff with this that actually brings up the rest of the entire industry. You've got a path forward for monetization. You have no concerns about funding. You've done venture capital in a way where you didn't lose the soul of your studio or your game or the direction of your vision for any of this. Y you got it, man. You did it. You did the thing. Yeah, it's, no pressure, no pressure. We're yeah. going to do our best, but uh, yeah. I'd love to convert that. Yeah. I'd now, just don't, that. just don't trip into a, a pit of lava and you're good to go, right? Is basically what this is. Like, this is, this is like some, some sweetheart story kind of shit because this generally studios don't do it well. They make a mistake on one of these pieces somewhere in a way that is irrecoverable. Like, they're just, they, they screw it up so badly. They're like, oh, I didn't know that would happen when we did this. F, you know, and that's that happens yeah. quite a lot. So well, you, you guys say, have done this right. A lot of that is also luck. I mean, we didn't know what we were doing when we started this. Right? I had several oh, yeah. years of software engineering, but I had no experience in raising raising money, and we got lucky. I think our first, so our first money in was uh, Supercell, 
Mm -hmm. uh, and they even chose to do it in a way which, unbeknownst to us, was actually really good for us. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, props to them for sure for that. Yeah. I mean, that's sometimes that happens, right? Like you'll, you do everything that you, it's, it, there's two kind of ways that this goes. You're like, well, we're going to do everything that seems correct at the time. And I hope we were right. And part of that is, you know, the dumb luck going through. But if you look at all of the blog posts that you wrote, if you look at all the decisions you made, you made informed decisions, not just random decisions, informed decisions along the way with as much information as you could possibly collect from all of these sources. It's much harder to lose under those systems, which is why I always tell people like, go, go think about it before you go through with it. Try and research as much information as you possibly can before you go forward. And that's exactly what you've done. So it's harder to lose under those constraints. Much You can still lose, but it's harder yeah. to lose, you know? And uh, one of the things that I always tell people is um, I love Star Trek. Like, and one of the one of my favorite quotes from it is, "It is possible to do everything correctly and still lose," and that is that is still true here. So they could have done all of this right, and they still could have failed somewhere. They could have st still failed, even though they did it correctly. The market could have shifted in a different direction. Uh, they they couldn't have found players that were interested in this type of game. There's all kinds of different ways to fail here, right? But they've they've succeeded. And what they've made, I think, is very compelling. And I think the market is going to find this very compelling. And they're not at a, a disadvantage because their business decisions were correct along the way, which is great. Yeah, which is great. Yeah, Picard's awesome. Love Picard, dude. We could still step step on a landmine. So uh, let's. Could. we're going to keep it in the pocket until we have uh, oh, yeah. profitable. But, there, uh, there, is no, the... there is no guarantee on any of this succeeding. There's no guarantee that you don't step on a landmine. There's no guarantee that you don't run into a situation that is irrecoverable. There's no guarantee that you, you for instance, you, you could find a limit to space time DB at one point. And you're like, right. oh, shit, we actually can't scale this technology further. You could find an issue where uh, the game isn't monetizable in the way that is sustainable for the studio. You could find a, an issue where people find an exploit or something like that, and you, you can't fix it because of the architectural way that you've designed everything. There's so many ways that this could still fail. It, there's no silver bullets in life. But they've gotten this far. They've done it in a way that is good, and they've done it in a way that's, is, that is compelling where you've succeeded for now. And that's all we can ever do is succeed for now. So you've done it. And I, that's something to be super proud of, man. Super proud of. Well, I appreciate it. We're gonna we're gonna try and do do well by by all our players. I think that's all we've ever wanted to do. So that's all you can crack. Yeah. <laughs> all we can do too. I'm gonna keep crafting mushrooms. That's what I'm doing. For some reason, nobody wants to buy any of my trail mix. They just want my mushrooms, which means there must be a massive supply of mushrooms somewhere, and I don't know where it is. Or they're buying all of my mushrooms and then selling them elsewhere for more mushrooms, and I'm getting ripped off down chain. And I'm not sure which one it is, and I can't go investigate. Because I'm here selling mushrooms. I may be part of a larger scam. Am I getting... I, I don't know. There's somebody. It's suspicious because it seems only one person is buying my mushrooms. And they're buying all of them. Every time. That's a lot of mushrooms to buy. Somebody's scamming me, I think. Okay, this one only bought one. That's fine. Or two. Maybe I'm not getting scammed. I don't know yet. I don't know. Yeah. It's one of the two. All quests completed. I know, right? What level am I now? Am I still cooking? Oh, somebody's cooking inside of my, my cooking spot. I found a big place full of mushrooms. Nice. Yeah, buy all my mushrooms, dude. Buy every mushroom I have. It's all yours. And I'm selling them to you at eight mushrooms per skewer, and they cost ten. So you know it's a good deal. Plus, I put a little something extra on there, right? I got some secret seasonings. So you got to come to this shop for them. Only this one. You won't get it anywhere else. It's true. Definitely not a scam. Definitely not. That this the seasoning may not be me getting experience. It might not might not be that. Could be anything. I'm not duping the shrooms. They might be duping the shrooms. <laughs> uh. so, uh, one more interesting point I want to say about space time to be. So oh, yeah. the fact that we're doing this in a in a database makes it much harder to dupe items. Why? Because Every transaction that happens is atomic, which means it's an, it's an atom. It happens either all or none. So either the whole transaction goes through or none of it goes through. And a lot of gold dupe bugs come from the fact or that you were halfway through a trade or something, and then you threw an error, and the items were created but not deleted. Yep. So it's a super cool thing about Space Time DB.
My favorite dupe that we've ever found was in World of Warcraft, where they were using the mobile bank, which was an item where you create a, a object on the ground, and they were under the water in the side seat of a motorcycle, because you could have a side seat on that. In that state, even if you plug pull, your character doesn't log out of a local version of the world. So they would interact with the mobile bank underwater in the side seat of a motorcycle and then make all the transactions go through. They would queue up on the client and then they would pu plug pull and unplug pull, which is pulling themselves out of the internet and do it over and over again. And it would shave the transactions. It would like partially send them over and over again and it would dupe everything into the mobile bank. It was, it was insane. And it would only happen under those conditions and it got fixed. And I was like, what is... Like, what is the mad with you? <laughs> yeah, now that's an edge case. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. Lag switches, all that kind of stuff. Do that. Wild stuff, man. You, you see some wild stuff with this. But it's something that <clears throat> can't happen in space. I mean, at least that particular yeah. one. Because Big there's deal. no half anything. It's, you, it's all going to happen or not. With that in mind, you've actually cut out an entire branch of duping. Right. So like that's that's huge. Um, you've removed the possibility with that, which means you've you've actually removed the possibility of having to spend time or money or anything like that on uh, investigating that, which is great. You know, that is that's a good place to be. One hundred percent. How do you even figure that out? Uh, they send me at it. That's how they figure that out. Yeah. That's that was my job. It's like, oh, we got to figure out how this happened. What a, put Thor on it. He'll find it out. I'm like, cool. Give me all the logs. What do we do with this? I'm going to put all the pieces together like this for the next 10 hours. <laughs> yeah. So they'd send me at it to try and find a way to reproduce. And uh, we did. We did a lot. We found a lot of different ways to do it. Sometimes that took OSINT data. Sometimes that meant I was going out into like own core forums and things like that or cheat forums and trying to find ways that people were doing it by um, maybe I'd have, you know, certain privileged accounts inside of those forums to go and look at the more secretive posts that people didn't think that anyone was looking at and then see them discussing the method. That was fun. Or I would sit in the game and try to do it myself knowing the general Lego pieces that were used, but not how they were used together. So try and reform them until I found the way that it was done. And that was also very fun. It was always about solving the puzzle, either by being a sneaky spy man or by uh, doing it myself and reverse engineering it, you know? Yeah, I love it. My job was to cheat. That was the point. My job was to cheat so we could catch dudes actually cheating. There's the whole idea. Love catching dudes cheating in video games, man. There is now, nothing they, funnier than that. Okay. What's up? I was going to say, once that you found that <clears throat> dupe bug, uh, did they reverse the transactions? Like, did they yes. make those items go away? Yeah, not only did they make the items go away, they take it from everyone downstream. Um, there were certain conditions where people downstream wouldn't get it taken away, like certain things where, like, a person was clearly not engaged in RMT. They were clearly not engaged in any that kind of stuff. And like they bought it off the auction house and they didn't know, right? But they'd remove the upstream gold and anything like that from the game. So the the player still has a good experience. They got their cool item, right, that they saved up for through legitimate gameplay. But the gold is removed from the economy so it doesn't inflate currency across mm -hmm. the game. You know, like there's there was always certain constraints and like like ways to do that where you're not impacting the general player that didn't do anything wrong, you know, cause it's not his fault. It's never his fault. Cause if you take his item away and then you give him his gold back, he's like, they'll lose faith in the game and they feel really bad about the scenario and they, they may not want to play anymore. And that guy didn't do anything wrong. Just let him have the item that he bought, you know? <clears throat> Makes sense. Yeah. Must've been it's, a lot of work to, it is. to figure out all of the downstream effects though. Yeah. It, it always was. Every one of those types of scenarios is always very, specific where you have to kind of figure out like how are we going to handle this what's the threshold you know um w w when is it bad enough that we need to ban a player i think that was one of the big ones and it, it usually kind of worked like like sort of this is you have a curve right <clears throat> say that we found an exploit and the exploit was like you could buy an item from a vendor and then sell it back to a vendor and it gave you more currency this is a common one actually so like you buy it for three and it sells back to the same vendor for five. This this was actually an exploit that was in WoW many, many times. So what you get is you get a graph that looks like this. And these are people that did it one time. And these are people that did it one million times. And the length of ban is directly correlative to how many times they did this. Mm. Uh, essentially. So like people up here, anywhere from like there up, permit. Anybody in like this area, 
30 day ban. Anyone in here? Three day ban. Anyone here? Probably a normal player. Didn't even know it happened. They just bought it. They may have double clicked it because there's millions of players. They didn't do anything wrong. So you get like a three day, a 30 day and a perma. And this is generally how that kind of ban behavior goes because it's not a blanket solution. Some of these people in here, they're like, oh, they did it 10 times. A yeah, one to three day ban is fine with that. These guys do it maybe, maybe 300 to 500 times. They clearly knew that they were cheating at that point. It's very obvious. You're sitting there spamming it on the vendor. Like, you know what you did. Like, don't, don't bullshit. And these guys do it millions of times, right? And then you're like, okay, that's a, they, not only did they find the exploit, they know what they were doing and then they automated it. And it was like, those guys get permanently banned because like you've gone so far over at that point. So like, these are kind of the ways that we would investigate that stuff and then ban people for it. Cause like you can't give the same, you know, heavy handed approach to everybody. Cause it's not really their fault. Anytime someone says, Hey, there's an exploit with this. They're like, Oh, I'm going to go see if that works. Wow. I made a couple of gold. Whoa. I'm not going to do this. I might get banned. That's all the dudes in here. You know, like that's just a couple of dudes. They're, they're getting caught on with it and they're interested in it. And they're like, they want to go, they're a tourist, right? It's a tourist exploiter, not an actual person who wants to cheat. They're a tourist. And it, that happens all the time. And uh, like, to be real with you, either they get a very small punishment or no, no punishment, right? Yeah, that's neat. Moving on, exactly. They go back to doing PvP for 20 hours a day, right? <laughs> what would you do for people who reported exploits? So I like that kind of behavior. Um... I wanted to build, in, in block game, I'm actually going to be building a system where if you uh, put in an exploit, you turn in an exploit, I'm actually giving in-game currency. So we give them coin or something like that, but I actually want to give them a specific like token of gratitude for this that is exchangeable for cosmetics. I like the idea of giving somebody a, well, as the way that you say it, a medal of honor for mm. I made the game safer, I made the game better. I found an exploit, and now I get a cool hat. I got my cool hat of I turned in an exploit for the video game. And I really enjoy that. I actually turned in an exploit for EVE Online a long time ago, and they gave me a month of game time, which was nice, right? I found a duping exploit in EVE, and I was like, hey, I found this duping exploit. You guys should fix this. And they, they gave me a month of game time, and they fixed the bug. Nice. Cool thing, right? But um, yeah. a badge of honor, a little a little thank you, tip of the hat, whatever it's going to be is good. Hat of the narc. You're the guy who I would ban. You right there, the salty <laughs> one. You're one of the people in that million, aren't you? Yeah, permit. Permit. It's true. You know it. Don't lie. Hat of the Dark. How dare you? I love that hat, dude. Get, doing cosmetics like that is always a nice thing. And um, if it's an egregious, like, major exploit with technologies, Bug Bounty Program. Bug Bounty Program is a big thing. We I actually built that when I was at Blizzard. Is um, I built that on the team with me and Brett built it together. And I was the lead of application security at the time, which was all of Blizzard's websites globally. So we made a bounty program for the websites where if you found a vulnerability, you could turn it in. And it was vulnerability with the websites and you'd get money for it. And we'd pay you. I'd be like, here's here's some money for that. Thank you for doing that. You've made the entire company safer because the cost of that being exploited would be dramatically higher than running the bounty program. It was always a, it's a cost savings thing. And it allows you to get a lot of coverage in areas you wouldn't expect because there's so many different methods of hacking things. So many different ways of looking at that from a security perspective. How much did bug bounties pay out? Oh, dude, some of them were thousands of dollars. Some of them were outrageous, right? Because they'd find things that were like, oh, Jesus, that would have crippled the company for a day. Like, God, you know, you pay them like 10 grand, you know, like this. Some of them are huge, man. Absolutely enormous. Because that's how it should be. That's how it should always be. Is that bounty program considered white hat? Yes, because you were responsibly disclosing the vulnerability to the company and then they fix it and then they, they compensate you for that for what you've done. Yes, that bounty programs are not a small deal, guys. In fact, if you go to Hacker One or Bug Crowd or anything like that, we actually ran ours through Hacker One. And, it, and when you do that, you as a company can set that up through that website and then people can go and engage in that. And then they, they find vulnerabilities. They turn them into you securely through that. And then you fix them and you can compensate them either with swag or, or credits or money or whatever it's going to be, right? You, you set the terms of your bounty program. Yeah. Yep. What if you get banned while attempting to bug bounty? Uh, you, you can reach out to, to support and be like, hey, this is what's going on here. Happens all the time. Yeah, that's that's a normal thing. Be like, hi, I engage in the bounty program. They go and verify it with the risk team and the guy gets unbanned. Happens a lot. Yeah. Yeah, the, the key redemptions, that's handled by the moderators now. They have all the keys. It's great. There's no... It's, do gray hats also get money for bounty programs? We don't use those terms in the hacking community. No one says black hat, gray hat, or white hat. We're hackers, man. We find interesting solutions to difficult problems. And if you're in scope, we get to solve you. Yeah. <laughs> that's not what you want to be. You don't want to be in scope. 
Yeah. It's really complicated making a game. Yeah, it is. I, so uh, I'm going to have to head out. But okay. um, I just want to say thank you so much for uh, inviting us on here. I really oh, appreciate it. No, this was and a blast, thank man. You so much for also just giving the game a try. I think yeah. um, it's really cool to see you, you playing it and selling your mushrooms. Yeah, no. Buying I, your mushrooms. I'm going to be real with you. I'm going to be doing a lot more than giving this a try. I'm going to upgrade that section of our Discord for this because I, I think there's going to be a lot of people in this community that are incredibly interested in this. I'm going to add a bunch of channels, build a bunch of stuff out so we have more infrastructure for this and kind of organize it a bit better because this is this is very cool. In fact, it is immensely more impressive than I thought it was going in. So you're doing it. Keep doing it. It's amazing to hear. It's <laughs> yeah. amazing to hear and thank you to you and also to your community. Um, you know, we're always around if you guys have questions or uh, need any support um, or just want to know how we think and uh, what we're trying to do. Yeah, this is great. Keep it up, well, thank man. you so much. I will see you later. Thanks for having us on. Yeah. Oh. This is fun, man. I really enjoy this. We've got a bunch in the queue, don't we? Oh, God. I've done none of the queue. I have to do the queue. Or my head will explode. Kronos has sent me messages. Oh, my God. There's f We have five companies. We have five towns. We have a hundred goblins on the server right now. We're about a fifth of the community, says. Either a fourth or the fifth of the entire community. It's wild. Goblins. Glo goblins. Globlins, dude. I'm running to the point now where I, I think... I think I've hit the right amount of support of mushrooms. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change this listing a little bit back. There we go. We change this back up to ten. Now we're at, at we're we're hitting the same amount, which is good. I've changed these down to fifty percent off, so they only take one and one, which is huge. So I'm losing I'm losing fifty percent on every transaction because I have too many, too many. Take my Bezos box, thank you. You're wonderful. All right. Maze Q underscore time. Jolt with six hundred bits said hello. Long time oh. lurker. So question. It has been some talk about DMA, cheats, in Fortnite Latly, and how can any kind of cheat be undetectable? There is no type of cheat that is undetectable. Um, it's just a matter of time. It may. I, I think the biggest thing you have to remember is this. It is undetectable right now. That's it. That's all that it is. And over time, that shit changes. That, that changes. That marker changes over time. There's no undetectable cheat forever. Uh, it's just there hasn't been a detection method yet. Yeah, they'll always find you. I'll always find you. Like, that that was my job, right? Yeah, that's that's the whole point with this, is that what we do is we find ways to find you, and then you find ways to not get found. And we just keep playing the game. It is a red team, blue team. It is cat and mouse. That's it. It's, it's a normal thing. So when you're cheating in a video game, you're cheating for now. And maybe that for now is a long time because, the you know, the cat isn't clever enough. They don't have a team that has enough clever, you know, ways of catching you, or they never thought about specifically the way that you were cheating. I've actually even had detections fail, man. Like, horrible ways to fail. Yeah, it's a game within a game. It really is. So, like, I, I tried to put together a detection one time for fishing, fishing bots in WoW, and I was like, I want to get fishing bots. I'm going to go after them, and I formed all these cool detections. I had all these cool methods, and I put it out into the world, and it banned three people. I ran it for, like, six months. Yeah. <laughs> in a 10 million concurrent player game, I caught three. And I was like, God damn it. So, like, dude, we fail too. We fail on the attacker, on the defensive method all the time. The attackers fail all the time too. It just comes down to that, right? It comes down to very interesting ways of catching you and very interesting ways of you escaping, you know, detection. Yeah. It's, it's always that. It is, it is a cat and mouse game. And nobody in that scenario is dumb. One side is more clever for a minute, and then the other side is more clever for a minute, and the other side is more clever for a minute, and the other side is more clever for a minute. And what the players see is they see bots in the game, and they see a band wave going off every three months, and they think the devs are lazy. So the attackers, the, the guys producing bots, end up having a, a perception advantage. 
and the defenders, the devs, have a perception disadvantage. But both sides are very clever. Very clever. Yeah. Duke <laughs> Finn with 500 bits said good morning from Finland, Thor. You have inspired me to start and try making games. Mm. I have no programming skills, but I'm somewhat good in art and I'm a quick learner. Okay. I was thinking of doing smaller projects and game jams first to see if I actually enjoy the process, but I think making games would be a great way to further my art. Where did my items go? Oh, they bought it with coin. Oh, hell yeah. I was like, where'd they all go? They used hex coin. I have 65 hex coin now. Yeah. Yeah. That's the rare currency. I got a ton of that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Mmm. Mmm. Stonks, dude. Stonks. That's fantastic. Can I play this game? Um, it is in closed alpha right now, so there's keys that are going out. I have one key left. You guys ready for the key? It is the final key that I have. It's the final key. The way that you have to do it, you have to read the pin message. Okay, they're no longer being out. The way that you have to get this, you have to go to their Discord. Discord.gg slash bitcraft. Go to their announcements. Install the game. I will wait five minutes. We will give out the key at 11.15 a.m. my time. When you install the game, you will use the key in-game to get access. In the client. Yes. You're at work. You can't do that? F. 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 So that's, you have to use the game. So I wait five minutes, then we're going to use it. I don't want you to miss out because you didn't know how to use the thing. It's, it's weird, I know. But thank you for watching from work, by the way. Remember, boss makes a dollar, I make a dime. I'm going to watch Twitch on company time. That's how that works. Yeah. Yep. Spare time underscore gamer with 500 bits said, Yard cheer 500, good morning, Thor. Come I on. just want to thank you again for the DND corner in your Discord. Just yeah. last weekend, we had a fun one-shot with Awesome DM Whiskey who incorporate our favorite Goblin King Thor and Noodles in our adventure through Avernus. That's so, cool. your alter Goblin Ego is stuck for 20 years in Avernus who? Must be rough. That is rough. That's horrible. Oh god. Oh god. That's not good. That's not good. Super Not Deadly with 1000 bits said, I like how you're controlling B-I-T-C-R-A-F-T Thor. CBT game no, looks no. good. No, no, no. Roper Siler with 500 bits said, Yar cheer 500 high, Goblin Lord. I am starting my own business at the moment. It's nice. content creation for TTRPG games like D&D. &D. Nice. I have Hell worked yeah. on this for years, but we're finally ready to launch. That's great. As somebody who just went through this, do you have any tips or suggestions? No. Please feed a lowly goblin with your knowledge, Kappa Infinite. I don't have any tips or suggestions. My tip or suggestion is always going to be the same. Talk to a lawyer that understands business creation. You need to know about your specific goals and aspirations for the business. You need to take that to legal representation. You need to talk to them. Yeah, we've got ads. I'm going to wait till the end of the ads and we're going to explain it again. It is about talking to a lawyer. Yeah, lawyer up every time. My legal advice is to talk to a lawyer every time, every single time. One moment. It'll be fine. We wait. We wait for ads here. I'm going to play some music. Turn the master volume down. I don't have Twitter, Pepe. F. How do I enter the giveaway? I'm just giving them out in chat, my dude. There's no, there's no giveaway. I generally don't like giveaway systems because I find that it, uh, it kind of inflates the viewership with people that aren't really there to engage with the community or have fun with that kind of stuff. They're just there to get a key and then leave. And I don't think that's a positive thing, honestly. I don't think it's positive for the game. I don't think it's positive for your community. It's not It's not a positive thing. So I just throw it in chat. When we get this kind of stuff, I just put it out, right? I don't like doing gave away shit. Yeah, I'd, I'd, rather, have, I'd rather have people that are having fun here and, and enjoying it, you know? Engaged community is more important than inflated community. Always. Key loot goblins, true. How do I enter a key? You gotta go to um, discord.gg slash bitcraft. Join their discord. Go to the announcements. Install the game from there. 
and then go into the game and, and get ready to put in the key because it'll be in game. Twitch chat, Twitch or YouTube? I'm going to be putting it on the Twitch chat this time, yeah. Eventus. Been lurking and watching YouTube shorts for a few weeks. Decided to follow. Unable to sub because Ed Balkans. Really interested in the game. Cool having a dev talk about stuff. It wasn't just the devs. So we had the game director on and then we had the CEO on as well. Uh, so we had them on for like six hours, something like that. And this, to, to be clear with you guys, this stream is not sponsored. They didn't pay me for this. They didn't expect me to do this at all. I am legitimately interested in the game. That is it. There is no money changing hands. There's no backroom deal shit. None of that. None of it. None of it at all. Because I'd have to, legally, I would have to disclose that as of the FCC. Or the federal government crawls into my skeleton and removes it. Because that's what they do. Yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. No. Yes, that is correct. Yes, they would remove my skeleton. So no, it is not sponsored in any way. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. By the way, we do have a sponsor that's coming up, though. We have a new sponsor that will be in here. That's right. We're having a long-term sponsor. Instead of one of the Flashpoint sponsors, we're having a long-term sponsor, which is going to allow me to hire more moderators, which is great. So more of our moderators are going to get full-time employment when the, when the shift happens, because we're getting a long-term sponsor. It is not a VPN surface. I hate VPNs. No. It is not Raid Shadow memes. I hate gotcha bullshit. Yeah, no. None of that. None of that. Not gonna happen. Nope. It is not G Fuel. You don't need to be sitting on your ass and drinking an energy drink to watch my stream. No. 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 Let's see. What is Vita Ramen, dude? Wait, what? What is Vita Ramen? Oh my god, the mushrooms. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god, the mushrooms. You filled my inventory with mushrooms. Holy shit. Cook the mushroom. Ah, ah, ah. You bought all my mushrooms. That's so many mushrooms. That's so many mushrooms. Oh, it's not kick. Jesus, I love myself. Are you kidding me? But yeah, so um, the, the legal advice that I have for you, Roper, because you, you messaged me with that asking for legal advice for your business, is to talk to a lawyer. Talk to a business lawyer. I did. I went and formed a corporation this last month. Let me tell you. Have you ever tried to pull out your own teeth with your bare hands? That's what forming a corporation is like, but with more math. It's great. I highly recommend it. Don't do it. Don't. Don't do it. Please, God. Don't. Don't. So instead, talk to a business lawyer. Talk to a lawyer. Any legal advice I give you is, is to talk to a lawyer, always. Lawyer up. Um, they know best for this kind of stuff, and they're going to know your local laws. They're going to know your national laws, depending on where you are in the world. And they're going to be able to form a better solution for you, which is why I won't give you legal advice. Because, one, that opens me up to liability if I gave you legal advice and it was wrong. And, two, it's probably going to be wrong because I'm not a lawyer in your local area. Easy, right? So, yeah, now we formed a corporation. That is done. I actually got the corporate accounts made on the 2nd. And I'm waiting for them to verify so that all the Twitch money and the YouTube money and everything else goes through those accounts now. And it is a legal entity that is separate from me, so it's not me. And if I abuse it in any way, then I go to whatever, something happens, some bullshit. So now it's not me. It's over there. It's that thing. That thing is the thing that is outside of me. It's like having a baby that doesn't exist, that looks like an old man. That's what forming a corporation is like. That's exactly what it is. No, not an LLC. An actual, it's a C-Corp. Yeah. Yeah. It's a baby that's an old man. That's what it is. Yeah. It's the worst, actually. And it makes more money than you, and you're not allowed to touch its money. Yeah, we did a C-Corp because I'm doing international employment. So with international employment, um, I wanted to make sure that our European moderators would be able to, you know, be on there because we have a moderator from, uh, we have moderators up from the Netherlands. We have moderators from, from uh, Germany, from France, and there's a lot of stuff with that. So it's going to be, it's a whole thing with it, right? So actual corp, actual corp, not an LLC. And uh, that goes along with a lot of other pieces of that because we're running the ferret rescue. We're running the um, the stuff with, you know, doing everything with selling Heartbound. We're running all these pieces. There's a lot of pieces with this. And it ends up just being a whole thing and it's much easier to just do it all in, all in this. And the way that I came to that conclusion was by talking to a lawyer, which you should do. Yeah. You make sure you re-onboard with Twitch once your corp is legal. I did, actually. So I've already done that. 
Um, I've already gone through that process. I did that yesterday. Once the bank account was finished, I've re-onboarded with Twitch as a partner. I re-onboarded with YouTube, and I've reconnected my accounts to the corporate account uh, for payouts from Twitch. So I'm just waiting on all of that to go through, and I think it should. And I'm hoping it does before this month's payout, because if it doesn't, then I have to tell the tax man, and I'm just going to be very sad about it. It's just going to be a whole lot of... It's more paperwork, and I don't want more... My, basically... If you don't understand what setting up a corporation is when you were doing a sole proprietorship before that, it's like getting a a new, like a like a really new lawnmower, and it's a pull string lawnmower, and you pull it, and you go, and all the pieces fall out, and you're like, shit, man, and you're like putting it all back together, but it's still kind of running, and there's blades in your hand, and you're like trying to put it on without cutting your hands off, and like then, and you're hoping eventually you could just walk away and the engine runs itself and it's fine, but like, oh, oh it's, I'm just building an engine while it's on is effectively it. But knowing that eventually if I don't cut my hands off and the engine runs itself, it'll be much less work. And that'll be great. That'll be fantastic. Yeah. If you did it yesterday, that is really close to cut off. I know. I work in accounting, so I know people. Oh, no. I hope it's good. I mean, it's, it's, it should be a mountain of extra paperwork, right? That's, that's all it is. I'll, I'll do it begrudgingly which is what it is to what what it means to be a ceo is doing a lot of paperwork begrudgingly that's what we do you're like oh i have to do that paperwork gross and then you do it and you do it and you cry deeply you know while eating a pie or something whatever it's going to be yeah <laughs> it's great the joker with 500 bits said has there ever been a game that you were excited for and really wanted to enjoy but were left disappointed in the end for one reason or another for me, that game was Anthem. Yarch here yep. 500. Anthem was a big one for me, actually. Anthem was a very, very big one for me for that. Um, the way that Division 2 played out, where eventually it, it fell into a game that would crash every 30 minutes for like two years, and then they launched it on Steam in that state, that killed it for me as well. I really haven't picked up Division 2, even though they fixed the, the crash bug finally after about two and a half years. Um, that killed it for me as well. And I was so excited when it came out. I loved it. I played the shit out of it, and then it slowly fell into like bad maintenance, you know? New World was another one. I played the hell out of that game. Had over a thousand hours of gameplay. They did, yeah, they fixed the crashing bug. Finally. Finally. In Division 2. It's actually amazing to play now, but I just don't... I just don't play it. <laughs> you know? Hellgate London? Oh, God. Oh. You know... You know what's funny? I got my job at Blizzard because I wrote a review of Hellgate London. When you, when you applied for a game tester position at Blizzard, you had to write a game analysis. And my game analysis was on Hellgate London. No joke. Yeah. I, had to, I wrote a whole analysis on, on what, uh, how I would test Hellgate London. And that was, that was actually my analysis that got me the job there. No joke. No joke at all. I loved that game. I loved it. It's coming back? Dude, I don't know. How, are you, how do you have so many mushrooms? Where are you getting these mushrooms? I'm level 33 now in cooking. How do you have so many freaking mushrooms? What is this? You have hundreds of mushrooms. Oh, yeah, we got the key. You ready? Ah, and it's a jet. It's a jet. It's a jet. I've spammed it many times. What the... Shay made me waffles, dude. Okay, so I guess the real question is, Shay, am I dying? Is Did you find out I'm dying or something? Is this poisoned? Is there something you particularly need? I wanted to use the waffle maker, but that was it. You wanted to use the waffle maker. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> there had to be a reason. There had to be. Three waffles. Might be poisoned. Only a little bit though. Poisoned as a treat. That's that's the way that it goes. Poisoned as a treat. Oh my god, you actually have unlimited foods. Hey, good. I needed those. That's a good shout for that. Whoop. There we go. I've got so many running tasks. I'm going to have to... My character has to sleep in a moment though. Oh, actually, no, he doesn't. Eat the food. Eating the profits. Eating the profit. You got it. Nice, dude. Nice. Very nice.
Amphi 139 with 1500 bits said hey I downloaded a few of your VODs via YouTube to keep my sanity while I was moving and stuff. Oh that's awesome. Got internet oh, now though so yes. you cannot escape. I'm sorry. I just realized I haven't I haven't queued up the short for the day. Let me go look. Let me actually go look. Oh god, oh god, oh god. I didn't queue it up. It's in 30 minutes. Ah, what is what is this short? I only have one short. It's a good one. It's a security one. It's a security one. It's good. <clears throat> you have shorts still? My dude. I have a short that goes out every day at noon. We have like 400 of them. I never stop. Birthday waffles. It's not my birthday. It's not my birthday. My birthday's in July, you goblins. Yeah, no, I, um, I release a short every day at noon. Who knows why? What's the reason that we release the short at noon, guys? Huh? Some of you know, there's a method to this madness. Every day at exactly noon. Some of you get it. Yes, it's lunchtime. So the reason that I do this in this way is because of player behavior. It is player behavior. At exactly noon in the United States on the west coast of the U.S. is when people get off for lunch. Largely people from the tech industry which are the general people that watch the stream or the general people that engage with the shorts content that I have. The reason that we do this is because tech industry people either eat at their desk or they go out to eat with buddies, usually. When they do that, they immediately look at their phone. Shorts content goes live at exactly the moment they get out for lunch. Hey. So then what happens is they watch it and they send it to their buddies in the regional offices around the world. We actually see it hit the entire West Coast of the U.S. and then immediately, within two hours, spread everywhere. It's making sure that the people who want to watch my content are able to see it at the time that they're watching content that fits the model that I am making. That's all. That's all that it is. It is directly targeting it to the kind of people that want to watch it the most. And you have to do that anytime you are generating anything on the internet. Is you are targeting it to the kind of people that want to see the stuff you're making. How do you figure that, this out? You think about it. I worked in the tech industry. I know what we do on lunch. We go out to places and we look at our phone the whole time while somebody else drives. Kind of how that goes. Thor's hacking human psychology and behavior. Witchcraft. It is a little bit of witchcraft. It's a, okay. Look, it's it's a small bit. Of, it's a tiny bit of witchcraft. All right, but it's 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 just a little bit. It's just it's not weird. It's a small. It's it's just a little bit of witchcraft. All right. Small, small, small witchcraft. Not that big. It's not that big of a deal. You know. But no, to be real with you, and if you want to, if you want to have your content get noticed on the internet ever, you need to think about what it is that you are making. You need to think about what kind of people want to watch this stuff. You need to think about why you like your own content, and then from there, you need to go and generate that content and put it out into the world at the time that they are most likely to see it. And if you can't answer some of those questions, you need to investigate your content or how your content fits into the general ecosystem of the internet more. That's all. It's research. It is research. Yeah. Research and analysis, my dudes. Always, always. And that is important no matter what it is that you are doing. Absolutely is. Why is that only 25? Was it 25 before? Hmm. Where do you enter the key? It has already been used. It has already been used. Well, this game costs money. It will be free to play. Yeah. Where does the hyper-optimization end? It doesn't. It doesn't ever end. I love optimizing. If I can shave 1% off of my total workflow for the day, I'm doing it. <laughs> that 1% is awesome, dude. That means every 100 days I get a free day of more work. Like, think about that. That means every year I get 3.65 more days. That's awesome. Think about that. 1% is great. That's freaking rad, dude. 
That is freaking rad. That means, that means if I live to 100 years, I get an entire extra year at 1% efficiency increase. I get a whole year. No one thinks about that shit at scale. 1% is awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And that means that if you optimize early, the benefits are much higher because you have much more time for that optimization to mature. So do it. Optimize your shit, man. 100% do that. Computer Cowboy with 1000 bits said there is a YouTuber, Accursed Farms, doing his best to create an amateur's approach to battle devs killing games that people own. You can find mm -hmm. it at stopkillinggames.com. Of course, amateur approach, but better than anything I've seen, and I thought this community would resonate with that. I'm gonna look into it. Um, a lot of people have been talking about this today, I don't know much about it, so I wanna look into it. Yeah. Not a spiff cobot with five New Zealand dollars said I made my portfolio into a website and not sure how to present it when applying for jobs or was it a waste of time making it? I don't think that's a waste of time. Uh, artists generally do that as well. Just keep it brief. If you're gonna do it as a website, do it as one page, right? If you're gonna do it through ArtStation because you're an artist, three separate pieces of art. You want to be brief and impactful. And when you are doing your portfolio, what you need to do is show the work that you are creating and then show the time that it took you to get there. You're not just selling the work you can do, you're selling the efficiency that comes with that work because of your mastery over that skill or subject. Do keep that in mind. Dickles89 with 500 bits said I tune into stream and the first thing I hear out of Thor's mouth is, time to penis. <laughs> there's... There's a reason for that. Okay, let me explain. Let me... There's a reason for this. TTP is a widely known thing in game development. And the reason why is anytime you give players the ability to be creative, the moment that they're able to be creative, they will draw a dick. That's what they do. It's called TTP or time to penis. The, any, every game has this. It is a well-known thing. It is a documented metric. If you let them draw something, it will be a dick. Every time. Diablo 4 has a very low TTP. Because when you walk in the snow, you leave divots in the snow behind you so you can draw a dick in the snow. And they did instantly within seconds and then they posted it on Reddit. There's whole Reddit communities built around that, calculating the, the most optimal TTP for whatever video game that they're playing. Every time. This is a super... In, in World of Warcraft, Warlords of Draenor, one of the first quests actually had a barrel on your back that would drop uh, gunpowder behind you. They drew a dick with it. Instantly. Yeah, speedrunning TTP is a normal thing. It is a normal thing in the video games industry. We all know about it. And we, we it is an in-joke among game devs. Yes. Yes. It's very funny. So we all know about this. Yes. Zelda Shroom with 500 bits said hello Goblin King. The Crow Dynasty has come to bring you a message. We love oh. Yar and you are welcome. Also call 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 call. Thank you for the cause. I'll be I'll be sure to join the cause and I'll give I'll give a bunch of delicious snacks to my local crows later today, which I do all the time. Shay does as well. We're building a crow army. They love us. Crows love us. It's true. Yeah, call. 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 Sean Dash awesome. 33P with 10 pounds said Thor, grats on the record and the emote. Caught you on shorts a few months back and you have been on my mind since. Glad to be a goblin following our glorious leader. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. And to be real with you, I wouldn't be able to do this without all of you guys. And I, I'm glad to draw attention. I, I think one of the things that I've, I've really been happy with is not just making games on stream, but drawing attention to other developers that I think are doing it correctly. And I, I want to do that more. We've had a number of devs on recently in a non-sponsored capacity, like just ones that I think are cool. And I think that adds value by discussing the ways that they're designing things to show you guys examples and also gives value because it shows people their game that otherwise not a lot of people would have seen or maybe like they're, they're just starting out or building that kind of stuff. I want to keep doing this because I think it is very cool for the industry and I think it's cool for you guys and I think it adds value to everybody involved which is awesome. And you guys are already monetarily supporting me, so it's not like I'm hurting for a sponsorship in that way. Like, it's it's just a positive thing. It's just a positive thing. So it ends up being really cool. It's cool and incredibly interesting. I'm glad. Yeah, like, I, I liked covering Bulwark the other day. That game is an awesome game. I think it was really cool, and the dev is rad as shit. He was like the, the weird Dutch version of me. 
It's like absolutely insane, to be honest with you, who's exactly like me, the way that he felt about things. And these guys have largely the same sort of design philosophies that I do from a more technical and player-based behavior approach, which is quite cool. I just, I, it's rad, dude. It's rad meeting other devs that are doing the same shit that I think is cool. And like, it's great. Yeah. Really like the interviews you're doing. Yeah, I recorded the whole one today. It was about 11 hours long and the playing of the game too. So I'm going to be passing that on to Steve so we can get a, it cut up into pieces because I think it's quite important. Yeah. You went wrong. What went wrong with Sea of Thieves? I don't know if anything went wrong with it. It's still got a pretty thriving player base of people that really enjoy it. For me, I just don't like progression that is only cosmetic based. That's boring to me. And largely that's what Sea of Thieves is about. I'd rather have strength based advantages. And uh, it just wasn't that interesting for me. I do think that some of the best time in Sea of Thieves was watching people, like major streamers, troll in that game by like sneaking out of ships and like mess with children that were trying to pilot ships. I thought that was hilarious. That was deeply funny to me. Also, I'm going to eat one of these waffles real fast. Yeah, Summit was hilarious, dude. Summit 1G on that shit was awesome. Oh my god, these mu- these mu- Oh my god, these waffles are so good, dude. Holy shit. If these are poison, I'm happy. I'm so poisoned right now. I'm fine with this. You want me to show you the waffles? Why would I kiss and tell, my dude? Hell no. This is this is a private interaction chat. There's one waffle left. Oh, it's so good. They do look pretty good. They're really good, actually. I need to make my character sleep. Oh, you know what I need to do? So the next time I build a little fortress like this, I'm going to put a bed in it. So I'll have a bed... And then I'll just be resting and then generating stuff and then resting and generating stuff and resting and generating stuff because I'm in I'm in my NPC prison and my NPC prison requires me to only be in menus crafting and selling items infinitely we can optimize this I need to be more of a vendor my vendor life will improve it will it's good Minecraft simulator? Just carry about everywhere? True. I could do that. You could remove your legs and sell them. You know? Then I would almost always be close to the ground. I wonder how close to the ground you have to be to rest. Huh? Can I can I cook while resting? I wonder if I can cook while sleeping. That's safe, right? If I cook while sleeping? That's a good idea, right? It's like taking a nap during your commute when you're the driver, right? That's great. That's a good idea. Yeah? Yeah? Definitely, right? Hmm. 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 Zinectric with 500 bits said, Yarchir 500, thanks for making a great relaxing stream to watch and listen to while working on projects like putting together Gunpla. Putting together Gunpla? What's a Gunpla, dude? It's gonna be a Ligma, isn't it? It is. I'm waiting for the Ligma. Oh, Gundam? Wait, it's a Gundam thing? Dude, I don't know anything about Gundam. Dude, I grew up poor. You think I know anything about Gundams, dude? You know what I about you know about I knew about Gundams? Everybody else is like, I got this cool Gundam, and I was like, um I got a fork. <laughs> it's, it's like, I got a plastic fork in my lunch. Yeah, I don't know shit about it, dude. 
I know shit about Gundam. Seriously, none. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't even a plastic bear. It was like a plastic spork. And it was the one that got washed from yesterday. That's how that shit was. Yeah. I got a better spoon than you? Dude, yeah, you would. I got a spork and it's almost clean. Oh, the burrito index. I actually have horrific news. I did the burrito index. And it was not good. I, I pulled all the receipts because I always buy them on the first of the month. And I pulled all the receipts and I, I got all the burrito stuff together for the burrito index. And I have horrific, terrifying news. Let me show you this. The cost of a burrito has gone up. So this was 2022. This is 2023. And this is 2024. It's gone from $4.72 for a five-layer burrito at the Taco Bell up the street for me to $5.39. Oh, you can't see it. There we go. Yeah, $4.72 to $5.39. The cost of a five-layer burrito is now over $1 a layer at the Taco Bell right up the street for me in Washington State. And we started tracking the burrito weight. The burrito weight hasn't noticeably decreased. So it's just increasing. It's not shrinkflating. It's just inflating costs. By a lot, actually. By a lot. A little bit, little bit over 10% increase in like a year and a half. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little concerning, frankly. It is a little concerning. However, I will tell you that during the month of March, um, you guys were generating 35.8 burritos per hour by watching advertisements on Twitch. So thank you for that. Thank you for generating so many burritos. This is actually the amount of calories per hour that you were generating in burritos. Yes, well done. Congratulations. Thank you for doing that. Yes, this is true. This is we, we generate, we figure out how much ad revenue the channel makes, and then we determine how many burritos they could possibly buy. And then we track the inflation cost of burritos. And the reason that we do this is a little bit of a lesson on economics, right? Kind of economics at scale. And also to show you that ads are actually impactful and very helpful on Twitch. They are a good thing to run for your channel. But beyond that, and I have something to show you with this. This may this may be surprising to you. So let's go let's go grab this. If I can find the damn thing. Wow, you're crashing? Windows? You freaking out there? You having a time? Mm, I think it's dying. Oh wait, no, I found it. It's it's showing you that over time, we're actually seeing a increase in burrito costs, which unfortunately is a burrito stinks situation. I know this is upsetting. It's very upsetting to see this. The burrito stinks. I know. The cost of the burritos increasing is absurd. That's, that's outrageous. A five-layer burrito being over a dollar a layer is insanity, frankly. And Taco Bell should be ashamed. What, what the shit is that? Uh, over a dollar a layer? Is there barely even a layer? That's, that's ridiculous, frankly. But also, the amount of burritos per hour has gone up immensely because ad revenue on Twitch is up because we're getting past January and February, which actually leads to an overall burrito stonks situation. That's right. Burrito stonks situation. It's very good. It's very good. So thank you for watching ads. You guys are wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You're fantastic. You're the best. Thank you, chat. Thank you, chat. So yes, the burrito index. The burrito index. We've done it. We've done it, chat. For democracy. Yeah, burritos for democracy. Burritos. Burritos. Yeah, no, so all of that stuff goes to me running the ferret rescue and hiring the mods. That's like the grand majority of the expenses for the business. And it's um, it's out of ad revenue. A lot of it's out of ad revenue. Huge amount of it, actually. And then you guys do things like break the world record hype train. And, uh... Buh. Buh. That is insane to me. So thank you very, very much. That is absolutely, absolutely wild. And I, I have to say, <clears throat> did you guys know what Twitch did with that? Did you guys see what they're doing? We don't actually have it today, but they're implementing this going forward. It may take them like about a week to do it, I think is what they were saying. Wait for this. I'm going to turn this on. We're going to turn this on. Watch this.
They made me a global emote, man. As a banana. <laughs> if you were part of the train, you're getting this. They're going to be delivering this over like the next week or so. Um, it's actually got code in the background if you look at that, which is awesome. And then it's it's the moment that I yelled, did I break it? Because the API was broken. And I didn't know what the hell was going on. And the only way that people will get this again is if they beat your record. So beating your record gives them this emote. And that's the only way. So you guys are the only ones in the world that'll get this too. Look at that. Okay. That's so wild, dude. It's really, really wild. The long lemon, I know. It's, um... I, I know some people were kind of, like, weird about this on social media. They were trying to, like, bash Twitch and stuff and be like, Oh, he, he made you all this money and you give him a, an image. To, to all you people out there, stop white knighting for me. You're being a dumbass. This is a massive honor for me as a streamer. It's a huge deal for me. It is. Enormously. Um, every streamer dreams of having a, a global emote on Twitch. Like, many of us do. And it is awesome as shit. And I, I can't thank you guys enough. And it's not what I expected at all. I didn't expect that whatsoever. I was like, well, they got the cap infinite. That's freaking rad. And then they were like, hey, we made you a global email. I'm like, what? And I didn't know until they posted it on social media. I found out when you guys did. So they kept it a complete secret. And I think that's cool as shit, frankly. I think it's a really awesome way to do it. Is to be like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. So that's cool. Thank you, someone. You, your name was anonymous in there. For gifting $20 to the moderators. You rock, dude. So yeah, this is, this is rad, dude. So they're going to... I don't know when everybody's getting this, but everyone's supposedly getting this sometime this week. They actually put a thing in here underneath this, and it says, everyone who contributed to the hype train will get Did I Break It? The only the only other way to get it is reach level 106 rolling out this week. So it's, it's sometime this week is what they said. We just don't know when. Yeah. Don't know when. I think it's awesome as hell. Yeah, you get Kappa Infinite and this. Yes, you will You will get access to this. If you have Kappa Infinite, you'll be getting this. Yeah, Doig Swift's there. Doig Swift's a good buddy of mine. Doig Swift's rad as shit. <sighs> so that's freaking rad. So thank you. Yeah, no, it's 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 really cool. Some people are really salty about it, though, but like, don't, don't white knight for me. Don't do that. I'm happy about this. Very happy about this. To me, that is a huge honor. And I, I can't, I can't be more happy than I am, frankly. It's very cool. Yeah, some people shouldn't get Kappa Infinite. If you didn't and you were part of the hype train, you need to put in a support ticket. Yeah, it's a global emote, dude. I just... Blows me away. Completely blows me away. Rally and Rilke with 1,000 bits said for the Ferret Army, sir. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Alucard with $5 said Discord set a record on YouTube for the most views in 24 hours by accidentally creating a viewer bot. They did. Uh, they got 1.6 billion views, actually, if you guys haven't seen this. Uh, they screwed up really bad, and I'm waiting to see what, like, the repercussions of that are. Uh, Discord loot boxes are here was the video for this. It is, yeah, it's 1.4 billion views, actually, 1.4. This is, and this is not good for one reason. I'm going to show you why this is not good. Let's, let's just look at this. Do you see this? See how this has a Shopify ad on it? See, this is 1.4 billion views. The reason this happened is because Discord actually added it into their UI, and it was auto-playing as an iframe through Discord to everyone who was on that page. They view-botted a video that has ads on it. Now, I don't know if YouTube is running an ad on here, because YouTube's running ads on it, or if they had a, their video up and the video is monetized. There's no way I can really tell for that. I don't know if there's a method to do so. But that's a pretty bad thing, frankly. That's a very not good. <laughs> yeah, because this just played an ad on it. So that's not, uh, that's not great. That's really not... You, this sets a really bad precedent. Um, I know it's obviously... Discord did not intend for this to happen, but Discord now has the most watched video, I think, of all time, at least within 24 hours, on a, a view-botted video. Well. <laughs> not great. Yeah, it's not great. Yeah. 
Unbreakable world record, yeah. A little bit of W, a little bit of L, right? You just kind of combine them and it looks real weird. Yeah, it's not... I don't know what to do with it. Imagine if you do this by accident. I'd be banned. What do you do to Discord? I don't... I don't know. Oh, we got more mushrooms. I love mushrooms. Mushroom farming. This is the optimal strategy for mushroom farming. Did you know that? It's true. This is actually how you farm mushrooms in the game. You put up a shop and then you make other people farm the mushrooms. Hmm. More mushrooms. It's true. It just appeared at the bottom right coordinate. It didn't matter where you were. Oh, so it was just playing all the time. That's insane. That's completely insane. David Yakovino with $10 said three ferrets here. How do you handle six? How do you handle what? Three ferrets here. How do you handle six? Uh, we don't have six. We have 35. We run a rescue. Uh, most of them have medical conditions that make it so that they would die without care as well. Yeah. We have 35 ferrets. Yeah. Yeah, we're actually going to be scaling up to 100 of the next year because of you. Did you not know that? Yeah, we're actually going to be scaling up to 100 because of you. Um, if you if you look at this, we go to uh, barrits.live is the domain for this. It'll send you to this Twitch page. Shay is actually in there right now. Look at Shay. And uh, Shay is looking at, it looks like Grandpa. Shay is getting Grandpa right now to check him, it looks like. Giving him medicine. Medicine for the ferret. Medicine for Grandpa. So with that in mind... Here are a bunch of the ferrets, not all of them, but a bunch of them. And this is the primary cage. There's no other ones. And they don't stay cage bound. They actually run around the room. We actually have a huge, huge amount of this. A uh, huge amount of play area for them. And the new house is going to have even more play area. So I think this is... Let me grab that one. There we go. And this is Henry. Henry has vestibular disease, so he has very bad balance, basically. And Shay is holding him here so that he can actually eat. But uh, this whole room is theirs. They get to run around and have playtime and everything outside of the cage. And uh, everybody gets to run around and have fun. And they have rice bins and toys and all kinds of stuff so they can do this. And it's good. And the idea is to give them the best possible life for the rest of their lives. So the next place that we're going to be doing is we're bringing them a new place, new house. Then we're building a facility. And then we're scaling it up to have up to the capacity for up to 100 ferrets. Now, here's the cool part. One of the, one of the, you know, the best part about this? We don't take donations. It's not even a charity. It runs completely off of ad revenue because you watch the stream. We took ads, which people hate, and made them save animals. <laughs> and I have no intention of stopping. <laughs> it's actually amazing, frankly. So all you have to do is, if you want to help, just watch the channel. That's all you Don't have to sub. Don't have to throw bits. Nothing. Just watch the channel. That's all you got to do. It, uh, it runs... Three minutes of ads every 30 minutes. So it's like 10% of the time viewed is, is ads. And then uh, that's it. That's all that it does. And you, you can watch the channel. You can leave the ferrets on all day. It plays our heartbound music on the channel as well. And that's it. That's what it is. Anyway, we got ads, which I'm going to wait for now. I hate ads, but we can do cool shit with them. You know? I have it on 24-7. You kick ass. You kick ass, dude. Ban you. Why would I ban you? Why? I find it interesting that there are people that come in and the only thing they do is they scream ban me. They they want the ban. No. I won't do it. I won't do it. It's funnier to me this way. It's I won't look, alright, I'm not gonna kink shame. I won't. It's twenty twenty four. But sir, you have a ban fetish. You do. You do. And uh there are places for that, but that place isn't here. Yeah. It's not. It's not here. I won't I won't give in to your ban fetish. I won't. One of the moderators might though. But uh that's up to them at that point, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't even I don't even know what part of the internet there is for that. There's there's many kinds of weird fetishes around that, but this is not this is not the place for that. It isn't. No. Yeah. Yeah, it's mostly just sad, right? I just kinda look at you, I'm like, mm. That's unfortunate. I won't judge you, but it is it is unfortunate to watch. Unfortunate. Yeah, that that'd be the word I use. Oh, I can't believe those people said Mountain Dew. Ban him. Disgusting. Disgusting behavior. Disgusting. Bon me? Dude, I love Bon Mies. His account got deleted by Twitch mods. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> nuked from orbit. That's so funny, dude. That's so funny. Oh my god. Thank you, Twitch. You're wonderful. Look at all these mushrooms. Holy shit. I wasn't paying attention to my shop. The throughput of my mushroom shop is enormous, dude. We are capturing the market, my dudes. We are entrepreneurs in this chat. What is my level now? Dude, I'm level 34 in cooking. Hold up. I have a 41% crit chance. No! Oh, you gave me you gave me a little house. You did. I've been given a small house. Dobby has been given a sock. Dobby is still trapped. Permanently. Can you um Can you seal me in over here? I can almost escape there, and I don't like that very much. If you could just take this box and like kinda kinda block me in, if you would. Yeah, please. I, I this is this is making me uncomfortable. There's too much space for my NPC mind. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. I want to. I need it to be sealed in. Yeah, it feels unsafe. The outside world and exploration could get in. And we just can't have that. No, no, not the stone one. Not the stone, the wood one, but like angled. Yeah, like... Dude, oh. Oh. Yeah, there we go. Now, that one in. A little bit. Yeah, there we go. Now I'm boxed in. By an actual box. We did it. We did it. It's wonderful. It's good. Yeah, seal me in. Seal me in. This is my sarcophagus. My mushroom farming end of life is what's happening here. I, I exist for one purpose. Generating food. And consuming mushroom. It's beautiful. Beautiful life. I am a vendor. I am a food vendor. It's great. Zamazaki with two dollars said internet hazing. <laughs> oh no. Oh shit. I'm being bullied. <laughs> Amphi 139 with 1,500 bits said just finished moving, bouncing around like a madman now that my internet is up, finally able to relax in my nights again. Hell yeah. Can I please kill birds? I'm so bored. No. Don't do that. Birds aren't real. Anyway. Also, if you go to the block game server, they're definitely not called government drones. Definitely not. Raven underscore Blackheart with 500 bits said indie dev to indie dev. I just discovered you two days ago because of the train, and I already learned so much just listening to you while I work. Really glad. All hail Thor. Also, apart from Unity Dots, what engine will you recommend for something that requires the ability to spawn like a few million objects? Unreal tried to eat my computer when I did a test with a few hundred chickens and I need the ability to spawn like, maybe a few thousand, millions. If you're trying to do that, I would largely look into working with um, shaders, to be honest with you. There are some wild things that you can do. Like, uh, one of the games that we reviewed recently was Bulwark. And let me show you what Bulwark has done, because I find this to be highly compelling. Incredibly so. Let me find this. I actually ended up playing Bulwark off stream for a an amount of time. Um, just, just a bit. You know, just a little... Just, just a small... Don't worry about it. And if you look at this, this was actually a player-built uh, town that was made over 32 hours of gameplay. And this is, when you're talking about millions, you're talking about a lot of vertices. Now, there's no LODs in this. All of, it, all of the texturing is actually done with shaders. There's no textures on these objects. They are flat objects with shaders. Yeah. Yep. And it runs so clean. It is insane. And all of this is in real time. And it is a it is a town building game that is amazing. It's made by one guy, too. It's made by one person. He is a solo developer. And he contracts out work for like uh, music and uh, I think one other thing. So music and something else. Yeah, incredible. So you're looking into shaders and performance reduction. Or like performance improvement, rather. Not reduction. And I think that would allow you to do that in many different engines. Not just, you wouldn't be restricted to just to one engine. The engine will carry you a certain distance, but you have to find tricks and break things. Look at this. Look at this. No LODs. No textures. Completely done with shaders. Some wild shit. Some wild shit. So the engine may carry you a certain distance, but 
you know, you you have to carry it further. This is a game called Bulwark, uh, Falcon Ear Chron Chronicles. And I found the game very compelling. I, I enjoyed it enough that I played it a whole bunch. And I played it mostly off stream. And we had the developer on. We actually had the developer on uh, a little while ago and in interviewed him. And it was very fun. And uh, yeah, I enjoyed that. It was great. He, he turned out to be like the Dutch version of me, which is that he dropped F-bombs every five seconds because that's what the Dutch do. I've learned about your culture, Dutch people. I've learned. I've learned that, that you guys curse a lot, and it's very funny to me. It's very, very funny. Why do, why do Dutch people curse so much? What happened over there? It's wild, dude. <laughs> it's so funny. No, we don't. I've met a lot of Dutch people. Many of them do. It's very funny to me. It's very, very funny to me. But now the game is great. The game is fantastic. Mushrooms. Number go up. Okay, so... What is that? How... Who put bread in here? How do I make bread? Hey, uh, goblins, star bulbs. There they are. It's a basic star bulb plant. I need a basic star bulb. Can I have eight star bulbs instead of the plants themselves? How do you husk it? It needs to be husked. How do you husk it? There's no husking option. Is it in my inventory, maybe? Husk. No, there's no husking. Alright, it's back in there. Whoever put it in there, please. Please husk it. I can't leave. There's no husking allowed in here. This is a no husk zone. I am trapped. You can husk it for me? Thank you. Yeah, I can't do it. What game is this? Bitcraft. It's very fun. I am Falco with 500 bits said how do you handle owning six ferrets? I have three and can barely keep up. We have 35. In the rescue. It's a lot of ferrets. Uh, we work very hard to make sure they have the best possible life. That's what we do. It's a lot. It's a lot. It was the same guy it was. Uh, he, he got caught in the queue and he thought that he had to do it Black again. You Mesa don't have to. 56, just hit 500 bits said, Ya cheer, ya cheer, ya cheer, ya cheer, ya cheer. Finally what? found the confidence to apply for an internal transfer to pen test and red team office within my company. Mm. Wish me luck. Also, you should check you out Oli Oli World, my favorite niche game at the moment and deserves more love, Imo. I definitely will. You are awesome as shit. I hope you get the job. And understand something. Even if you don't get the job, you have a target and a goal now, which is worth a lot. So, if you don't get it, don't despair. Use it as a pivot point to go learn a ton of shit. And then go back and win it. A no today is not a no forever. Or I ate half of another waffle. That's so much waffle. They're not fake. They're not fake. You're fake. Did you already respond to the XZ situation? Yeah, I'm actually waiting to see what, if anything, happens to the producer of that backdoor. And the reason why is because I find it highly unlikely that that person's account was compromised. Highly unlikely. Based on their previous behavior and based on the way that this went through, because in, uh, I think it was 6.5. Remember correctly? Or is it 6.4? Let me look it up. XE Utils. Yeah, XE 6.5.0 and XE 6.5.1. The reason why is because they had actually released, uh, or no, it's 5.6. Why did it say 6.5 on this? Yeah, it's 5.6. So 5.6.1? Let me look at this. Let me make sure. Yeah. 5.6.0 was vulnerable. 
but the vulnerability, the back door, was crashing, basically. So they updated it in 5.6.1, which means they had back and forth to fix the back door. Which is... That's not an attacker, dude. That's not, that's not like a third party. That's absurd. Yeah. If state actor, if state actor, which state? Don't know. Could be, you, you know, to be honest with you, it could be a state actor. It could be a private group. It could be a company. You never know. Tracing that money back is going to be very hard unless you catch the individual that did this. And to be honest with you, here's the interesting part. It's a very high likelihood that this person wasn't just doing this here. They could be hundreds of personas across the internet. And on top of this, it may not even be that one person. It could be dozens of people. And that's it, man. It's really simple. Yeah. It's kind of funny for that. Hey, Toxic Return. Uh, I was wondering, were you the dude that we banned because you put a racial slur into an, a, an actual dollar donation? Because you have the same exact patterning of name for that. And you used your real actual account name when you did this? On one of the donations on accident? You remember that? You were, weren't you? You should probably come up with a new way of naming yourself on the internet because you're, you're giving yourself away. Gotta be a little bit more clever, bud. Bye. Yeah. Valasia Thrathwing with 500 bits said, Dear King, for the 3THI came in the name of the Archduke, the Wiggle of Ferrets, with the message that they requested pats and hugs, on and a question if I have an idea to make a game about should I write it down.